to our coverage of the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt. Consider Germany's urban playground along the banks of the main river, Frankfurt proudly hosts the professional female European Championship. Today's field is a world-class competitive one, so we should expect this to be quite a triathlon showdown. Frankfurt is the most populated city in the German state of Hesse. With over 790,000 inhabitants, it's the fifth most populated city in Germany. Frankfurt is a hub for global finance as the home of the European Central Bank. It's also rich in culture, tourism, and transportation. The city is home to influ influential educational institutions, including Goethe University. Frankfurt has many uh, downtown high-rise buildings that form its renowned city skyline. In fact, it's one of the few cities in Europe to have such a skyline, which is why the Germans sometimes refer to Frankfurt as uh, Manhattan, combining uh, the local river Maine and Manhattan uh, because of that, that scenic skyline. So along, alongside my good friend Matt Lieto, <laughs> I am Dita Griesbauer, and we are here in Frankfurt for what is going to be a stupendous showdown here for our professional women, Matt. It is for sure, Didi, and uh, no place better to, to have a, a race of this caliber than uh, Manhattan. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, the European Championship certainly brought a bunch of uh, the best competitors uh, in uh, the sport of Ironman triathlon on the women's side. And uh, every time I've, I've watched this race or been involved with it, it's been a spectacular event and I, I can't wait for today. And a lot of great headliners, some, some key American athletes, obviously some Europeans, some local Germans gonna get an awful lot of support out there uh, from the hometown crowds as we take a look at some great overhead shots of our swim venue. Let's talk a little bit today about what the athletes are going to uh, are up for. Actually, let's talk about the race in general. Of yeah. course, we talked about um, professional female European championships, so no professional males, only professional females today. 2,600 athletes registered, representing 64 countries, uh, 450 tri-clubs, with a total of 890 tri-club athletes uh, competing. And let's talk about some of those Kona slots. Yeah, no, they've got... And uh, knee slots. Yeah, they got four <laughs> professional female uh, spots up for today for uh, for Ironman Kona here in a few months and a, a, a bunch of spots for age group men and age group women. I uh, believe it was uh, 50 age group female spots out there today. So uh, a bunch of uh, opportunity for people to still get to Kona and to Nice. And I, I know I'm excited for those two races down the road, uh, but we can't look past today. No, no, lots of opportunity. A lot of our professional women already have qualifying slots. So those slots are gonna roll down yeah. to some, um, some fierce competitors that may not ultimately be at the front of the race. No, I think that's a great point. I mean, most of our uh, favorites, I think, if we were uh, going to do that, we don't play favorites, do we, Didi? No. Uh, they're already kind of, uh, this might be a test. You know, when you go to try to go to a world championship, clearly qualifying for that world is part of it, but you want to know you're ready to race the best in the sport, and that's why they've come to this race. Today. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about this iconic course map. The swim will take place. It's a one-loop, 3.8K or 2.4-mile Roka swim course in the Langa Walsi. Um, it is two laps where the athletes uh, make a uh, an out and back. They have a quick Australian exit, and then they undertake what is the longer of the two loops to bring them back uh, to the shoreline and that first transition. That's a super, super unique swim, Didi, and that Australian exit is always uh, always exciting. It means they, <laughs> they have to get out and get back in. That's all that means. Uh, then they go through transition and then onto the full gas bike course, uh, 182K or 113 miles, so just a tad long. Two loops uh, on this full gas bike course begins in downtown Frankfurt and leads through the beautiful villages surrounding the city. But, uh, you know, from images we've seen and being out on course, uh, it's a beautiful place uh, going through downtown Frankfurt and out into the countryside. Absolutely stunning. And of course, then they make their way back into the city center for one of the most iconic marathon courses we have. This Hoka Run course, 42.2 kilometers, 26.2 miles, four loop, Matt, four loop run course. Yeah. Um, set. You've got the backdrop of the city skyline around downtown Frankfurt. While it's flat and fast, this course can be challenging even for the most seasoned athlete um, in, in the high summer. Our, our weather today is pretty mild thus far, so I don't think yeah. hot weather is necessarily going to be a factor, but the crowd support out there with a four-loop run, I mean, let's just talk about it. Yeah, Didi, uh, 
four four lap run is always going to bring drama. I've, we've seen a lot of drama on this course uh, early and late in the marathon here, as we see uh, Sarah True and Sky uh, Monch with uh, Sebastian Keenly uh, just loitering in transition, uh, making his uh, transition out of uh, the sport here at the end of this year. But uh, see him uh, making sure everybody's ready and, and have what they need. But yeah, that run course, the athletes can keep an eye on each other. They always know where their competitors are to a certain extent, and it uh, allows people to to maybe push a little bit more than if they didn't have eyes on. But uh, speaking of pushing it, clearly all the women on the screen here that have already qualified uh, for the World Championships in Kona, uh, they push it to get there. And, and some of them that are racing today, including uh, Lauren Brandon on screen there. And uh, you know, Beck Clark, another yeah. one racing out there today. She's got her slot. Um, we talk about Taylor Nib uh, earns a slot to the Ironman World Championship by virtue of her win at the 70.3 World Championship. And of course, Kat Matthews with yep. her sort of historic comeback race after those devastating injuries last year. Is it October yet? I'm so excited. I, <laughs> I know, right? I can't wait. Um, luckily, these uh, women racing today have more time than that. But Sky Motch, uh, another one athlete that is racing today uh, that's going to be out in Kona. And, and she's certainly won and Maja Stage Nielsen certainly one that wants to continue to practice racing the best in the world uh, to be able to actually try to win a world championship. But some of these women on screen, including uh, Daniela Reef and uh, Chelsea Sodaro, are going to make it pretty hard for anybody to anybody new to win in Kona this year. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, Sven Jato's racing here today. Sarah True also with a qualifying slot. Um, these women are going to be quite a race once we get uh, to October, but a lot of racing, exciting racing underway here today in Frankfurt. Yeah, no, absolutely. We get uh, another little shot of our swim course. We're not too far away from uh, the swim here today. So another little view of that. It is very unique. We don't often have a swim course that kind of makes that many. Well, with two turns. different shaped yeah. routes. Uh, this is interesting to me. Uh, Daniela Blymel there on the screen in the blue cap in a wetsuit, but I thought I just caught a glimpse of Lauren Brandon, who was in a swim skin. Our professional women appear to be in swim skin, so curious why yeah. our defending champ is in her wetsuit. So there's times, and, and, and I've done this in the past, and, and that to warm up, if it's close to that wetsuit legal, yep. it's cold. Yes. You go in there, try getting in a pool when it's 72 degrees. Uh, well, let's take a look yeah. at our let's take a look at our weather today. Yeah, 58 degrees right now, so not too warm outside, 81 degrees. Uh, or sorry, 81% humidity with wind at uh, just 5K, so not too bad at all, but very, very good conditions for a fast race. But to what you were speaking to, pretty cold if that yes. water isn't, you know, it's uh, you know just over uh, that wetsuit restriction. These athletes warm up in the wetsuit, get out, and then they're good to go. Often you'll see racers, quote unquote, warm up in a swim skin, and then they're shivering before the race starts. Sure, yeah. well, that's a, it's a good hashtag pro tip. Uh, wear that wetsuit <laughs> for your for your warm ups and yeah. uh, and um, strip it down as we take a look at some of our professional, uh, notable professional professional women racing here today. Uh, Daniela Blymel, she will uh, wear bib number one. She is our defending champ. She will also be wearing a light blue cap. Sky Munch has come over from the United States to test herself against some of these strong European women. She will also be in a blue cap. Sarah True wearing a black cap. Sven Jatos in gray. Um, Matt, Maja yeah. Stage. Yeah, and then uh, Clark is in uh, in pink as well as Maja Stage. And then uh, women on screen, we see uh, working on her chip there is Lauren Brandon uh, in, in blue. Uh, uh, Sphinx is going to be in a gray cap as well, and Lev Ryder is going to be in yellow. And so, Didi, as far as the names we see on screen, you know, we're looking at the swim. That's what we're focused on. Obviously, Lauren Brandon is one we're looking out for. Who else is going to kind of shape this swim course? Uh, I think Beck Clark is going to do her best to get away with Lauren Brandon. Lauren's get out speed isn't superior, so I bet Beck will get out with her, but yep. I think once uh, once Lauren gets underway, Lauren will lead the way, but Beck Clark chasing behind again. Sky Munch uh, going to have her eyes on Sarah True. What a great rivalry there. No, it's, it is a great rivalry, and, and speaking to that, is... It's an order for Sky to try to keep up with an athlete like Sarah, right? Like sometimes yeah, Sky yes. has that swim, but yeah. do we do we think she's going to be out with those main competitors? With a non-wetsuit swim, my guess is it's going to be an even larger challenge as we take a look at Sky here, um, getting ready to get underway. But that's going to be in her mind. Those are her key competitors. You talk yeah. Sarah True, uh, Daniela Blymel certainly as the defending champion, and Maja Stage there. We see in the pink cap, uh, in that black Hoka jumper there. Um, she was so close to winning in Texas. I think she's going to be a, a, a definitely a threat for the podium, if not the win here today as well. Oh, absolutely. And, and only to get bested by Cat Matthews in that race in, in pretty dramatic form. Cat uh, making that comeback running under 250. Uh, if you get beat by just a, 
a minute, uh, two minutes in an Ironman by someone that ran a 249, you got to feel pretty okay with where your fitness is, but definitely uh, she'll be looking for that top step here. Now, today. taking a look at some of these pro women, Matt, one thing is, is sort of coming to mind. Um, they look chilly. They look yeah. pretty cold. No, 59 and overcast, especially if you're in that water already, and, you know, the, the temp has been rising since these athletes, these athletes have been out there. So uh, certainly a little bit chilly, but you see the smart ones are the ones that have their, their hoodies on yep. and have the wetsuits on. And I'm not trying to pick on any, but if you're getting that emergency blanket, yes. it means maybe you haven't really thought ahead and she's already cold, yes. right? So to start a race, I've seen athletes actually in this race drop out quickly after the swim when it was non-wetsuit because that if you're chilled going in, an hour in cold water yes. can, can get you. And I think... People think, oh, it's quote unquote warm enough for non wetsuit, but it's still you got to be you got to be moving to keep warm. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll want to plan your warm up slightly differently, perhaps do an on on land as we take a look at Sarah True, uh, peeling that sweatshirt off, getting ready to, to get underway here. Uh, talk about doing an on land warm up as opposed yeah. to an in water warm up, things like that to get the heart rate up. Does does anybody in the sport have a better game face than Sarah True? <laughs> <laughs> she is like, she is, she's intimidating to me and I'm on, on the other side of the screen at this point, but uh, that woman is so, so focused yep. and she's been uh, underrated so much in her career. I think she thrives off of it. And uh, I, in my opinion, she's she's the favorite going into today uh, just because she has so much gumption. She has a little bit to prove from not finishing here in 2019. Um, so for me, she's, she's certainly one to look out for. Oh, she's definitely one to look out for, but let's not under underestimate uh, the likes of Daniela Blymel, no. who she's won here before. Um, and, and, of course, Sarah Svenk. We haven't talked about her very much at all. I don't expect to see her until a little bit later. She's had some injuries, but um, she's proven to be uh, ferocious when it comes to that bike-run combination. As we take a look at Lauren Brandon there, uh, blue cap, she's the first one to line up there. We'll expect to see her feature uh, prominently in this uh, Roka Swim course. Yeah, and Didi, on this Roka Swim course, because there's... We've also seen athletes go off course here, right? Yes. How important is it if, like, how much of an advantage is it if you're someone like Lauren who's going to theoretically have that lead kayak or paddleboard or compared to other athletes behind where the, you might have to sight a little bit more in this race than normal? Yeah, I think so. And given the nature of the course and that it, it's it's two laps, but they're, they're different shapes. Yeah. So you really have to be mindful of what the buoy placements are. Keep your wits about you. And when you go by a buoy, okay, that's not a red turn buoy. That's just a sighting buoy. Um, you, you have to have studied the course a little bit. And I guarantee a lot of these top pro women will have been out here um, reconning the, this swim course because it is so unique. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we see Lauren Brandon is that swimmer we expect to be uh, in the front for most of this one today on the far left-hand side of the screen. Uh, it's Sarah True in the middle and the black there as the rest of the athletes are lining up here. Didi, just a few few moments to go. Just a few moments to go. Nerves are high. They're shivering a little bit, uh, ready to get underway here. One of the few times you're begging for that race to start. Yeah. Uh, so you can just, if nothing else, get in and get warm. No, absolutely. You see, uh, notice Sarah, uh, Sarah True had a double cap on. Yes. Uh, keep you a little bit warmer there. And again, we had another shot of uh, Sky. She does look cold. Yes. Uh, so that, that, that could be a thing. Um, we're always trying to find drama. I doubt it's going to be that big a deal, but uh, certainly Sky's going to be excited to get in and get started. Yeah, I think all of these athletes will. And of course, they're going to have these uh, literally thousands of age group athletes uh, chasing them down. My guess is that the eight, given the temperatures, the age troopers will be in wetsuits. So that changes the dynamic a little bit as well. Yeah, it certainly does. And, and normally you'd say maybe there's a chance for an age grouper to have the fastest split, but Lauren Brandon's in, uh, in the water, even without a wetsuit. I think she's probably got it. Yeah, she's probably got it as we wait for our last few seconds here before our professional women get underway here at the Minova Ironman European Championships in Frankfurt. Four qualifying slots for these professional women for the Ironman World Championship to take place later in October on the Big Island of Hawaii. Yeah, huge opportunity for those athletes that have not yet qualified because a lot of the favorites uh, have already. So, uh, you know, the placings further down out of the top five are gonna be important for that race. And there we go. Athletes got a little off guard there. So. <laughs> yeah, <me laughs> Lauren Brandon looked a little bit surprised. Uh, she ran down, got underway there. Uh, not the most graceful entrance I've seen for Lauren, no. but uh, our women underway. But you can see Lauren, she had a plan. And as soon as she hit the water, she went right as quickly as possible. Yep. Now, Didi, is that a, a, a line wanting to get the best line or getting away from competitors trying to get on her feet? I think it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, I think she doesn't want to give anybody a free ride. Certainly, she's 
knows that Beck Clark is going to be out there uh, with her. Beck, another um, standout swimmer. Of course, Beck Clark will she's be in the pink cap, yeah. and she's the one. Again, we talk about Lauren arguably one of the best swimmers in our sport, not with the greatest get-out speed. We saw it at uh, Boulder 70.3 the last time Lauren raced. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Nib was out well ahead of her, but it takes that first two, 300 meters for Lauren to really get that threshold, that strength of her threshold speed underway. But that's Beck Clark in the pink cap yep. leading the way, Lauren Brandon off screen, and that is um, Sarah True on Beck Clark's feet. So a great start so far for Sarah True. Yeah, and Sarah looks super comfortable. And I, I will say the first 100 meters or so, it did look like Lauren Brandon did have a little bit higher turn over for her. Um, clearly that's something she knows that yeah. uh, she's uh, maybe doesn't have a get out speed, but they've all come together now that Clark has moved to the right and gotten on the feet of Lauren Brandon. And uh, certainly the one probably working the hardest to be where they're at at this point is Sarah True. Uh, you can see she has a little bit of a gap, but she's going to settle in and some t distinct groups for me. Talk to me about that because I mean, Sarah True is a, she's a fantastic swimmer. Yeah. She is a, a, what I would call lead pack swimmer, yeah. not an off the front swimmer like a Lauren Brandon, but a lead pack swimmer. Yeah. How dangerous is it for her to try to go out perhaps going to a, almost a threshold effort here to stay with the likes of Beck Clark and Lauren Brandon at the start of an Ironman? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on, you know, the training that she's put in. I think that's a great question, but I, I, she is a very, very good swimmer, and I think if she gets through the hard moments early, she'll be fine, and no better recipe for that for her than Lauren Brandon being sure. one of the people that she's trying to sit on. And Well, and let's not forget that, that uh, Sarah True's also an Olympian, so she does have a little bit of short course She did get fourth place in the Olympics, yeah. That's uh, uh, that's something to, something to say for sure. But this is tactically, a swimmer of her caliber could swim threshold and yes, maybe uh, take a little bit more energy than if she was going a little bit easier. But with the gap they had already, you know, she's one that at times can show weakness on the bike. And if yeah. she gets two minutes on the swim because she was able to stay on feet, that yep. allows her to settle in and be a little bit more composed maybe when competitors go by. So I think tactically, this is, this is certainly a move for her. Yeah, I mean, and you can see already we're two, oh, not even 300 meters in, you can see the gap uh, between the lead three uh, and the rest of the professional women. Yeah, no, and, and two distinct kind of chase groups, uh, one on the left, uh, kind of one on the right there. Uh, with some yellow caps in it, a uh, pink cap, I believe. Majestage Nielsen was in that in that group. But right now, Didi, you know, this looks pretty controlled with that front group. Here's another uh, shot of a uh, group behind. But uh, that front group uh, with uh, Clark, Lauren Brandon, and Sarah True looks pretty composed. <laughs> Lauren took her first couple of steps there. I was like, oops, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she would be apologizing. <laughs> that is too awesome but uh yeah nice and, uh, and separate uh separated field at this point yeah absolutely our professional women well underway here at the manova uh ironman european championship here in frankfurt showcasing our professional women four qualifying slots up for grabs our women in the water on the roca swim course matt we're going to take a very quick break but we're going to come back as the action gets well underway here in frankfurt don't go away an exciting day of racing ahead Coolguys is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Full Gas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. And welcome back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt. We're seeing a familiar sight here, Matt. Uh, that is Lauren Brandon, the, the lead of our women's uh, race so far. Yeah, and it's it never gets old watching yeah. her swim. It's no. uh, if you. Uh, search YouTube for best swim stroke. Uh, hopefully that would come up because it really does. Uh, it's people work a lot, uh, put a lot of time into the pool to look anything close to Lauren Brandon that she she looks at every day of the week. And uh, Clark looks 
really good too. A little bit more like a powerful a stroke uh, than Lauren Brandon does. Lauren's obviously got a lot of efficiency, moves a lot of water un uh, water underneath her, uh, but Clark looks great as well. Yeah, she does. She's got a slightly higher turnover, um, a little bit less of a kick, a little bit quieter kick out of Beck Clark than we see Lauren Brandon has. I mean, it, it, it's a blessing when it comes to the swim. She's got an exceptionally large feet, um, <laughs> and uh, they, they really do act like flippers, and, and she gets a lot of drive out of that kick. So uh, Lauren Brandon going to the feet quite a bit uh, to utilize yeah. that, that kicking strength as we take a look here at Sarah True, who is, who is tucked in in a wonderful position uh, uh, sitting on Beck Clark's feet. So yeah, and well done her. She's not going anywhere. No. She's not going anywhere. And, and DDT, your question before, I do think it's easier to, quote, unquote, risk it a little bit by going hard on a swim with swimmers that might be a little bit faster. And again, Sarah is a great swimmer, so we're not discounting that at all. But when it's a non-wetsuit swim, it's easier to, to make that gamble because you're not going to get that internal heat of part of the equation of what's going to blow up, right? So uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of push yourself there. But uh, these three women are settled in. And to me, it's interesting that uh, Clark is a little bit, like she's not touching the toes, right? She's a well, little bit off. I was actually wondering if that was the elastic starting to stretch just just a little bit. Yeah. Um, she's not right up on the feet. Uh, that's obviously where the best best draft is on the hip. Yeah. Um, but if she could get right up on those toes, she'd definitely be in a better spot. But I wonder if Lauren's just taking her to, to the max there as we look at our, our chase pack of women. Yeah, so chase pack, we've got um, kind of uh, some of our favorites in there. Carolyn Lefrider is in there as well as Maja Stage. Uh, Nielsen, and then... The two light blue caps, light Daniela blues, Blymel yeah. and Sky Munch is in that group as well. I see two light blue caps, so those two favorites also in that pack. So that is a powerful, powerful chase group. And from this angle, it doesn't look like they're too far, and I, I don't think they've lost too much time, but it certainly is a little bit more than it might look uh, from this angle. But if you've got, it looks like, 10 or 12 athletes in that group, uh, that's going to be a, a powerhouse group on the bike uh, for those three women to try to hold off. And I believe that yellow cap leading that, that is Carolyn Learider leading that, that group. Um, here we've got, um, I don't know who that, that green cap is, but those light blue caps, Sky yep. Munch, I believe that is that's her. Sky. We see that yep. classic sort of... Yep. Just going. Yeah, that turnover. <laughs> One of her training partners uh, has the has a similar yes uh, similar former uh, training partners. Yep, stroke Absol stroke absolutely. stroke rate as uh, as she does. But uh, is it surprising to you that Carolyn is the one kind of leading that second group? Um. I wouldn't say it's necessarily surprising. Um, I, she's picking her head up an awful lot. So to your point at the beginning, like sighting on here is uh, a little bit more difficult. They've lost sight of the pack in front of them, and those buoys are, are spread out a bit. So it's, it is tough to see where you're headed to next. Totally. And so by my count, that was 13. I, in know, the chase group. Yeah, in, in the, the chase, chase group. group. And that gap is big, and they're eight minutes in. So eyeballing that gap at like at least 30 seconds at this point, and obviously the, the take out of those two athletes in the front is gonna be a little bit better, but also I think the ability for Lauren Brandon and Clark to hold that pace the second half is a little bit easier. They know that they're trying to get time. I think one of the problems that might happen in a group of that size is that after a lap, Carolyn Lefrider might be like, dude, I'm not going to pull this whole thing on my own. Well, exactly. Right? And I would say, you know, Sky, at least on paper, Carolyn and Sky are very, very com comparable swimmers. Okay. Um, of comparable ability, they put in sort of similar performances. Yeah. Um, I would say a, a Daniela Blymel, who is in that group, is doing well to stay in that group. She is getting a benefit there because, again, some of her performances wouldn't have been as strong on paper as a Sky, I would imagine, to get a little bit of a, a distance there. And my stage of, of caliber of Sky as well. Totally. And from that up uh, overhead shot and from the back, you can see it too. That chase group actually looks like it's breaking into two groups. Yes. There's a little bit of a gap there. So uh, if that, break up, that breaks up, that's going to change dynamics a little bit. But uh, it did look like, uh, as you said, Carolyn Lefrider and, uh, excuse me, Sky Mach were in that front front section of that group. Uh, so we'll see if the other favorites going in. Danielle Blamhell, she's going to want to stay uh, in that first half of that group for sure. And Beck Clark doing a good job taking that buoy. That's yeah. sometimes where you can lose the feet. Um, Lauren would know that and possibly could put it in an acceleration uh, to try to get away. But uh, Beck Clark uh, cut that nice and close and, and is able to, to hold the feet of Lauren Brandon. So our, our three leaders still intact. Yeah, and what you've pointed out to, you know, 
if you can say there's a weakness to Lauren Brandon's swim, theoretically, it would be her get out speed. Yes. And that's going to be a similar thing to going around a buoy. She's not going to have that really hard tempo or, sure. or try to break somebody. So uh, these athletes are going to be able to, to stay in there. But mentally, if you're in this chase group, you now see the group already going back the direction you came. Yes. So I got a uh, DD with those uh, lead three went around that first buoy at 10 minutes flat. So they're going to be about a minute only 10 minutes into the swim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and no doubt, given the given the caliber of swimmers we see um, from our three lead females here, I mean, you've got Lauren Brandon, arguably one of the, the best swimmers in the sport. Uh, you've got an Olympian, Sarah True, who comes from a swim background, so we know that she's a strong swimmer. And, of course, Beck Clark always features at the front of the swim race. So it, it's a great swimming group but we've got a gr lot of great cyclists in this chase group as well oh no absolutely and and you know we're used to I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. And we are back and what we were saying was that these women in the front, these three women with a gap, like we're used to a gap and you're right, Rebecca Clark, Lauren Brandon, Sarah True, if they're on game, we know there's going to be a gap, but it could be four minutes if the pace holds from the front group to the very next group. That is a huge amount of time. It is a, it is a very, very large gap. Um, if it stays. If it stays. Yeah. The other thing I'm surprised, uh, actually, at this point, we're you know, t nearly 13 minutes in. Um, kudos to Sarah True and Beck Clark for staying on Lauren Brandon. I, I'm actually a little bit surprised Are at you? that. Yeah. Um, do you think it's... I, d I don't know if it's Beck and, and Sarah having a great day or if it's... Lauren just not necessarily pushing the pace on the bike and maybe wanting a little or on the swim and yeah. maybe wanting a little bit of company in the early stages of the bike. No, no, we normally say, you know, wetsuit and non-wetsuit, uh, a wetsuit swim favors the not great swimmers. Are there some great swimmers that swim better without a wetsuit still, right? Like, could that be part of it? Could maybe Sarah swims better without a wetsuit, even if she's against good competitors? Possibly. I yeah. think everyone has a preference. I mean, certainly... We know that the, the weaker swimmers are more benefited from a wetsuit than the stronger swimmers, but I think even the strong swimmers have a preference. Um, I think most stronger swimmers, just because they come from swim backgrounds, like having something on you when you swim still feels a little foreign, even yeah. when you have a great Roka wetsuit, yeah. um, you know, super comfortable, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people, gee, the stronger swimmers would prefer not to be in wetsuits. Okay. So everyone has a personal preference. That, yeah. Like, I really love my wetsuit. I don't mind my wetsuit. I would rather not be in a wetsuit. And so this woman on screen, that's our uh, defending champion, uh, Daniela yes. uh, Blemhel, is is she one that you think would favor uh, or would want that kind of non-wetsuit non -wetsuit swim? I think she would prefer a wetsuit swim. For as yeah. strong as a triathlete if she, as she is, if she has a weakness, it's the swim. And, and is she one that is, is she concerned about those three women up the road? I think it's probably in her mind right now to minimize the damage. I think if she hears a number like four minutes, that's going to be slightly surprising to her. I think she might be more looking at the two to two and a half minutes um, of a deficit. So if the math holds and they do come out a full four minutes down from our lead females, I think that's going to put her on the back foot a little bit. 
Yeah, there we go. Looks like we got our age uh, group athletes getting ready to, to roll out here at uh, the European uh, Championships in Frankfurt. Some of our age group men getting out there and uh, not wasting any time. They're going to get a running start in compared to our women that had kind of that in-water start. Yeah, absolutely. They will send these guys into the water, these guys and gals, uh, our age groupers, into the water uh, in, a, in a bit of a stagger start, starting them sort of in handfuls, um, t 5 to 10 to 7 um, per sort of wave, we see the hands going up and the hands come down and another five to ten athletes running into the water all at once. So it <laughs> gives everyone a little bit of real estate, a little bit more breathing room than the, the, the mass starts of old. Yeah, and, and you get to see the, the you know, your, your favorite pros uh, kind of coming in on that for that Australian uh, exit uh, when you're starting, starting your swim. And yeah, they're, we're, we're, getting, we're getting the numbers in right now, Didi. Yeah, no, no absolutely, and uh, a 15-minute gap between our pro women and our age group competitors, so uh, that's a nice buffer when you look at the age groupers in wetsuits. Some of those faster swimmers uh, um, from the age group ranks would have an easier time swimming into the pro women, but I think uh, with a 15-minute gap, our pro women will be largely free and clear. I, th I think they're going to they're gonna have some time uh, on their own here today, and one benefit of kind of this course, Didi, with that Australian exit is we'll get uh, a swim split. If you're following an Ironman yeah. tracker, you're going to be able to know exactly how far uh, back the chasers are from the front. And our age group competitors getting underway here. The excitement is high down at the swim venue as things are officially uh, underway here at the Minova Ironman uh, European Championship. Yeah, and Didi, I mean, I think this, this swim course, obviously, is beautiful. It's a little bit challenging because of the kind of multi-lap uh, design. But it's super flat and super uh, calm, right? So we should see some pretty quick times, even considering that we don't have wetsuits today. It should, yes, in theory, without without wetsuits, um, it is relatively protected. Um, winds aren't really a factor this early in the morning yet. Um, but yeah, a very calm swim, um, not terribly difficult technically, except the things that we've noted in terms right, right. of the different shapes of the two different loops and yeah. the buoy placements, et cetera. Um, yeah. And it might sound silly and maybe it is silly that we're talking about the like technical difficulty of the swim, but when your your eyes are an inch out of the water and you're, you know, you're fully lactate, uh, that's, it's hard to know where you're going sometimes and your goggles, you don't, can't always, uh, see w what you might, uh, want to see normally. Uh, so it's a little bit harder to navigate, but Didi, it does look like uh, Rebecca Clark's losing a little bit of uh, distance there. Yeah, it, you know, it's weird. It almost looks, like, again, the camera angles are so, it, it almost looks like there's a current. It does. Um, and that could be, you know, the age group competitors, the wave of the age group competitors going the opposite yeah. direction that's sort of uh, pushing, but it does look almost like there's a, a current. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. It does. I think that's an optical illusion, but I'm seeing the, seeing the same thing you are, but it does look like, uh, you know, Lauren Brandon is uh, veering a little bit to the left and Clark was uh, trying to stay on on those feet as much as possible but the other thing we'll notice in that australian exit is you can be good at that and you can be bad at that yes. you can be really bad at that yes. and and if if lauren brandon is controlled in her swim effort now and wants to get away she will make some really hard steps on the beach and try to get distance but i don't know that that's a strength of hers well not yeah exactly not necessarily and in, in this instance with the australian exit um it, it is one of the things that i think the pure swimmers like Lauren Brandon would prefer a one loop straight swim, <laughs> totally. right? Yeah. No distractions, no, no, you know, not breaking it up. She doesn't want people to get up and take a look around and see what the gaps are. She wants to be sort of free and clear of it all. Um, this particular Australia exit is not a long run. We, we do have some right, 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 courses right, right where there may be 50 to 60 meters of running in between loop one and loop two. This is a very quick out and back. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not not long at all, and it, it won't be too stressful. But I do think that an advantage for that swimmer, you know, yes, you're right, they'd want to be in the water the whole time. But the advantage is, the group chasing is going to see that they're minutes behind, yes. and yeah. they, so they get out of the water, they're going to look where the group is, and like, oh my gosh, they are so far off. As our age group competitors continue to roll into the Roca swim course here, our pro women are about to exit their first lap of this Oroka swim course with a quick Australian exit. We'll catch all of that action when we come back to you in just a minute. Please don't go away. So much racing still to come here at the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt.
Welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt, brought to you by VinFast, Boundless Together, and by Roca. Find faster with Roca. Well, someone that's finding fast uh, <laughs> right now, that's, uh, that's Lauren Brandon. She's at the front. They've already made that Australian exit in and out. And uh, you noted uh, off screen that she didn't, even, she didn't even look back to see what the gap is. I think she knows uh, she's on a day, but they've already been out and, and in uh, the water almost a minute now and these athletes still have a bit to go Didi, i do think we're going to be looking at four minutes or possibly possibly more could be i mean it's a little bit deceiving because i do believe with the nature of this course that the second lap is slightly longer than the first lap so yeah. oh for sure it, it's going to be more than double by the time yeah. they they get out but um I, I thought technically and we only caught a, a glimpse of it there in the corner but uh technically lauren had a really good exit and might have been able we'll get a camera view as we look at our chasers uh, coming back to the beach, it's yet to exit, um, that uh, that Lauren might have um, enabled herself to get away with the how technically clean her exit and entry back in were. Totally, and what's noticeable here, Didi, is that we do have that is Sky Mach in that group. Um, here we go. We see oh, this is the the replay of the yeah. of the Australian exit. Perfect Again, exit. Yeah. No glance. She knew they were there. I don't know if she knew how many, but she did not even look. Quick adjustment of the cap. There's the look. But a great run, and yeah. you can see it just took Beck Clark a, a half second more to get up and out, and, and that may have helped as we take a look at that frenetic <laughs> uh, frenetic stroke of Sky Munch. Yeah, just to put put it in and, and, and I, move it through. I don't think I could physically turn my arms over that quickly. Yeah, well, some people uh, can do it that way. Some people have the long finesse and perfect stroke like you do. And, and the, the other thing that is completely surprising to me is that with that rapid turnover, she still breathes every stroke. That is that's inhale, a lot. exhale, inhale, exhale. That's a so, really, really quick turnover. So here we go. That is, is that uh, that's Maja. That's Maja Stage Nielsen, uh, Carolyn Lefrider, and Sky Monch. So it is a big gap. Nina Darren in that group as well. Yeah. So a big gap to our defending champ as well, still out in the water. But the gap officially is two minutes and twenty seconds, Didi, in one point five kilometers. And I was gonna say that's the short loop. Yeah, so it's going to be over for. It's probably going to be closer to five minutes. Yes. We do not normally see. What we I think three counts as a group. We do not see four minutes separating our four, first group and our second group very often. So that is obviously not great news for my just stage. Uh, no. Not great news for Sky Munch. Or this woman on screen. Yeah. I mean, she's she's going to be another minute at least behind this other group. And when you're in a group like this, that's now third group, she doesn't have a lot of horsepower to pull her around. Yes. Right? Like, she might not be with the most experienced uh, pros as they come through here, as we see uh, Lauren Lanson has come through uh, as well. But there we go. That is uh, Daniela Blemhel uh, coming out of the water. And we'll get a split for her. So she's come out in 23.50 compared to 2027 of our first group and 2250 for our second group. Well, and the other thing, the one thing that I think Daniela Blymel has going for her right now is when I look at that group and you always sort of want to look around and su see who's, who you got. Who's on your okay. Who's on your yeah. team right now on Daniela Blymel's team is Sarah Swain. Yeah, no, that's uh, I, I noticed that, that is name one as piece well. of good news right now for Daniela Blymel. Yeah, and sometimes less is more when it comes to that. You only have one, uh, you know, person you have to deal with instead of a group. Uh, so definitely an advantage uh, for her. And here we go, a little replay of that third group uh, coming out of the water with the bib number one on the right hand side of the screen in the blue, getting ready to, uh, you know, she's almost halfway done with her uh, swim here uh, in Frankfurt. But another Iron Man that's worth putting on your list is uh, Iron Man Vichy. On August 20th, come experience nostalgic French elegance at Iron Man Vichy, known as the queen of the spa towns. Uh, Vichy offers a double race weekend with an Iron Man 70.3 on August 19th, selected by the athletes as the best Iron Man in Iron Man 70.3 races in 2021. Swim bike and run to one of the best finish line parties on the circuit. Vicky is the perfect host city because after the race, you can finally relax thanks to its many spas. Register today at ironman.com slash I am 
Europe. Ooh, spa sounds good. Spa, spa sounds really nice to me right now. <laughs> it kind of does. They got some of those here in Frankfurt. We kind of have to go bang about and see if we can find one or two. Yeah, maybe. And I think, uh, you know, the spa is going to be on order uh, for some of these athletes, <laughs> but a lot of work left to do for uh, Daniela. I think as far as what I'm seeing on screen right now, uh, the person that's kind of in the back seat and maybe not going to plan is uh, Daniela Blemhill. And I think you're right. Sarah Spanks being with her is a big deal, but she's... It, it's, it's, a little, it's not very much to hang your hat on, no. but it's something. Yeah, yeah. It is something. And here we have our lead group of three still well intact. We thought maybe Lauren would get away, but um, nope. Still, still a group of three. Yeah, and with someone like Lauren, you know, she's qualified already for World yes. Championship. She's out here. You know, she doesn't necessarily have to do another Ironman before that, but she obviously has something she wants to do uh, over this distance. Is is it likely? Often we see those splits really big for the beginning when there's like get out speed and everybody's settling in, and then we expect the splits not to gain the same throughout the distance. Lauren Brandon, she's not really going to get off the accelerator. No. She, yeah. So no. I think that's a, that's a different situation. Than I, I mean, I think if asked, she could probably do the swim twice and still hold that same sort of yeah. pace. It's, it's, it's extraordinary her ability to maintain that sort of threshold effort. Uh, and whereas I think some of the other swimmers who either don't come from as deep a swim background as Lauren does or slightly different physiologies, don't have the same swim efficiency, that form tends to break down, and I think we're going to see that gap actually grow. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so too, and that's why I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm already talking about the end of the swim. It's, uh, I'm excited to see what that gap is, but I do think it's going to be close to five minutes as we see that second group. And again, Didi, to me, looking at the kind of the impetus of this second group versus the third group is very different. These athletes are like chasing. Yes. And to me, it seems like that third group is like, just get me out of the water. Just get, <laughs> right? I, the body language definitely would yeah. speak that. I mean, you look at the the chasers here, still a great stroke rate, um, still accelerating. You could almost see the body language of the, the as your, to your point, the second chase group. Uh, we've had an athlete here who's walking back into the water, so <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't show a whole Not lot rushing. of enthusiasm there for uh, getting back in to swim yet some more. Uh, no, definitely, uh, definitely not. Uh, but here we go. Great overhead shot, and <sighs> that there's such a massive gap when you've got this big helicopter yes. shot, and you don't see. Anybody, anybody, yeah. anybody anywhere, right? Uh, it just look like they're just out on a swim on their own. But a uh, great shot of those three women. And again, you know, we're talking about Lauren Brandon. We're talking about Daniela. And obviously, Rebecca Clark's having a good swim. But this is being set up perfectly for Sarah True. A five-minute head start, maybe? Yeah, when you look at her primary competitors overall in this race being uh, Maya Stage, uh, Sky, uh, your defending champion, yes, so far, great, great day. A big smile on Sarah True's face, even though she doesn't really know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Does she always smile when she's swimming then? That must be. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she's got some work uh, left to do, as do we. Uh, we'll get more to it uh, on the other side of this break. Check this out. This is Venom Go by Hyperice. You stick this pod on this pad and boom, instant relief wherever you need it. With nine different variations of heat and vibration, you can soothe your sore muscles instantly. The tight spot on your neck, that little knot on your back, that shoulder that always bugs you and your tight calf after a ride, say bye-bye to the pain and soreness. Heating up six times faster than any other heating pad. Ooh, that's hot. It's designed to get you out and moving. What are you waiting for? Welcome back to the Manova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. On screen, we've got Lauren Brandon, Rebecca Clark, and Sarah True. Uh, Didi almost looked like, oh, they got a little company yeah. out there. Look yeah. at that. That's yeah. uh, we got a, What we got is a group of five off the front, a uh, chase group of eight with a small gap of geese <laughs> 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 trying to go across. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, everybody. Uh, but no, great overhead shot. We got the geese going one way and our uh, lead three women going the other. And again, 
huge, huge gap uh, from our lead three uh, women at this point. Uh, that last overhead shot, it almost looked like Sarah Chu was uh, a, a little gap was opening between her and Clark, but I'm betting uh, she's going to be able to get back on those feet. And she is. And she is, yep. A, a great swim for Sarah True. I mean, I think of other races, uh, the Ironman World Championship, for example, which is also a non-wetsuit swim. Yeah. Lauren Brandon would not be coming out of the water with Sarah True. It wouldn't be a huge gap, but it would be a gap. So, so far, so great for Sarah True. For sure. It's certainly something, but it's also like if Sarah heard it, she'd be like, come on, guys. Right? But we're right. But, like, but we're right. we're right. Yeah, I mean, totally. it, it could be... 30 to 45 seconds, but it's usually not on the feet of. Exactly. Yes. But I think, you know, for an athlete like this, the difference, especially, it's not just, okay, Lauren's a good swimmer and this chase group is a certain level. The reason this gap is as big as it is is because Lauren is driving it yes. right now. So I think that's the difference is Sarah True being able to stay on these feet yes. in this performance that Lauren's having. Well, but talk also, about that as a skill, the ability to draft. How much should athletes be practicing that in their training? I mean, you think of pool swimmers, whether you're doing your workout with your group or you're going to your local masters, how much are you practicing drafting? Uh, and how much should you be practicing drafting? <laughs> the answer, those are very different answers. Uh, the answer is usually nobody practices drafting whatsoever, um, unless you're trying to like uh, make the same send off as somebody that's uh, faster than you. But usually don't make many friends if you're just doing that throughout your whole swim. Uh, but you should be practicing We could have a that. long conversation about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could. No <laughs> names named, I'm sure. But, oh, uh, I'll name some. <laughs> but yeah, you have to practice that. You have to practice the, the opening section of the swim so that you're used to getting kind of beat up a little bit. Um, and But, yes, you need to practice. It's, and it's sighting. You've, people think you have to – you don't have to sight at all if you're on somebody's feet. But right now, Sarah True's not touching feet, so she actually has to kind of look ahead of her yep. to make sure she's on that same line. And, Didi, kind of to my point that I was maybe getting to before was that this huge gap is because Lauren's so, so strong right now. And – Sarah's in this group. I would say if Sarah didn't or maybe got dropped on that first buoy, she would lose two minutes, right? Like she would lose a yeah. lot of time, right? So like a solo compared to yes, yes. Yes. So so this is a people say the swim is the warm up and you can't you can't win on the swim, but you can lose on the swim. I, this is a we may, we, yeah, we tactically, may look back in seven hours, mm -hmm. seven and a half hours time and say this is where Sarah this, True This is a race. big enough gap yes. that this could be it. And I do yep. think, you know, I said maybe she was a pre-race favorite before. I say 100% now she is this race favorite, especially with how far back uh, Blemhill is, right? The one thing yeah. that makes me think, again, when we talk about, we're trying to predict how this day is going to unfold. And, yeah. and obviously we're both sitting here on the edge of our seats uh, up in the booth uh, to see how, how it does. Yeah. The one thing that has changed in Sarah True's life, uh, she's balancing an awful lot right now. She <laughs> is a mother. Um, she is in school. Um, and, and I think she will be the first to say she doesn't dedicate the same amount of time. Her volumes are different than they used to be yeah. uh, when she was fully dedicated to um, being a full-time triathlete. Right now she is a full-time triathlete, a full-time mom, and a full-time student. And she's got a lot of things pulling on her time. Do those reduced volumes change her strength as we move to the bike and run? Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, she showed us that maybe it didn't, you know, her and Sky Monch had a huge battle in Arizona yes. last year that was like, you know, the elastic just snapped yes. eventually, but it was very close. But, you know, she, 2018 was when she was like kind of showing her everything going well in 2018, fourth in Ironman Hawaii. 2019, she had some difficulties here in Germany, uh, still a good race in Ironman Trump Blanc. And then she locked it down for COVID as a lot of us did, but certainly a lot of life changes, as you said. And then no races in 2021, one race in 2022, or 2020, excuse me, 2022, three Ironman branded races, sorry, four. She won 70.3 Eagle Man. She won Ironman Lake Placid. She did DNF in Hawaii. Yes. If she was sick. I was. She was yes. actually sick. I was with her that week, and one Ironman Arizona. Yes. And that's all since all those life changes. Yeah. So sometimes that can like focus you. If you're it an overachiever, your focus. she's yeah. an overachiever. Yeah. Right. If you know all about overachieving. <laughs> um, I know nothing of the sort. But uh, I think I think for her, she's 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 in a good spot. We don't know exactly the type of training uh, she's been doing, but little. Yeah. She's. That, like, two feet off of Clark's, it's, no, yeah, now it's opening. It's, it's yeah, opening. It's, it's starting to open it's just opening. a little bit. Um, 
again, I, she's going to fight like heck to, to keep on those feet because yeah. from what we see now, that one meter could very quickly become 50 meters by the time they get out of the water. Right now, the effort that Sarah True is putting in is maximal. maximal. She's she's uh, eating a lot of pain right now because yes. it's and she'll try for 30 seconds or a minute. And then yes. if she can't get there, then her, like basically she's just going to tighten up like because it'll be too much it, right yes. um, but she's putting but in an effort look at this gap to the next chase group it's huge. it's enormous one thing i did want to mention as we uh Please. check the splits from uh that 1.5k quick aussie exit back into yeah. the water here is that um one of the athletes that did not make it out uh is oh. svenjatos um she bib number five svenjatos uh one of the german athletes is is out of the race uh confirmed so any but any svenjatos fans out there looking for her split uh, you will not see it. Unfortunately, had to uh, retire from the race. Yeah, be uh, curious to see what the uh, what the reason was uh, for that, and I'm sure we'll we'll get that uh, as well. But definitely, she's an athlete where uh, you know all want to see race and have a, a good day out there uh, today. And we never like to see someone's day end that early because we know obviously that's that's not what they were hoping I for. I mean, you can hypothesize she was ill and, sure. and you know woke up not feeling well. Uh, we talked about the colder temperatures. She is a smaller athlete. Uh, maybe the, the colder air water combo got to her, but uh, yeah, she is out of the race as we look at our lead three women. Lauren Brandon leading the charge over uh, Beck Clark and Sarah True. Sarah fighting She's to back. hold on to the feet of Beck Clark. And, and fight is one thing that Sarah knows how to do yeah. better than really anybody in the business, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, stubbornness is a is a skill and a gift in the sport of Ironman triathlon. And, and uh, Sarah certainly is stubborn when it comes to letting other athletes get away from her. But we'll see if she's able to stick on those feet when we get back from a quick commercial break. Fullgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Fullgaz has transformed the way that I train my athletes. Welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt, brought to you by VinFast, Boundless Together, and by Roca. Find faster with Roca. Okay, there we go. That was uh, one of our chasers that did look like that was uh, Maya Stage Nielsen. And we're giving all the credit to Lauren Brandon because she deserves it. But Maya's stroke is beautiful as well. She looks, she looks great, super smooth um, in that chase group. Uh, it does look like uh, Carolyn Leftrider is the athlete uh, on her feet. So, again, these are those athletes in that second group that are, are still, you know, chasing hard. Not that the athletes behind aren't, but you can tell they're doing a better job of limiting their losses. I think that, that gap to that third group that's is going to be over two or three minutes alarming. from this, too. Yes, like, that's, yes. Uh, I think Blemhel might be seven, eight minutes down. And look at this. Look at this right here. You yep. can see how confused they are. They actually almost came to a complete stop. And, and I'll say, sometimes you have to do that. It is better than swimming off course. But, but look, this whole still. group has come to a complete stop because they, they didn't know where the next buoy was. And that's because the gap is so big. Because yes. the, the front women didn't go through this because they had... Uh, that's my that's my just stage in the in Maya stage Nielsen in yeah. the in the pink cap. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And she uh, that's uh, Carolyn behind her. Again, it almost looks like they're in a current. Uh, you know, they're kind of spinning a little bit here. She's and almost, still... I wonder if she's having a. Okay, the, she's fixing the goggles. I mean, you can see the impact behind her. Well, wow, this is not going well for this chase group, and there's something going on with uh, with with Maya. Uh, for sure. Let's let's try if we can stay with her. There's it almost looked like she's having a I bit of a panic attack. I think they all think they're off course. 
they're like they're all i think at this point think they're off course so that front group has gone a totally different direction yes and this front group the group to the right or the bottom excuse me is realizing there we go yep. another athlete in that front group i believe that is lair rider uh noticed that she was going the oh, wrong way yep. and now they're coming back so that dd it was already going to be four five minutes it's going to be even more now like this is unbelievable and again i still think that group behind is going to lose more time but That's hey you know what break. we were right it's yeah. technical it seems silly to talk about it but when you come around that buoy and you don't have the lead paddler or a boat like the front group does it's just when you have five minutes so you can't see anything in front and, of you. and here's the thing while a lot of these athletes will have come out and and maybe done a practice swim right here at the swim venue the buoys may not have been dropped in yeah um and, and because this is such an unusual i want to say slightly unorthodox swim course here we have it again so here we go it was the yellow cap here out in front. And I think it was the pink cap of Maya Stage who was the first to sort of realize, guys, yeah. this isn't right. Like, yeah. there's no buoy there. She adjusts the goggles just to say, am I not looking at what I think I'm... I thought she was having a panic attack, no, honestly. It, it did look like that. And Didi, tell me how hard is it to be on somebody's feet and be like, okay, I got to stop and figure this out. That yes. is a lot. That is very alert. Uh, because racing nine, for nine times out of ten, I would give the advice that you stay on the feet in front no of you, even if they're swimming uh -huh. slightly off course, because it's it's better to be on the feet. That's the benefit of the draft. But when they're drastically off course like that, it's, yeah. Totally. And so what we see there, that's their lead kayaker. So this is why there's an advantage to that front group, is because this lead kayaker can see the buoys. They're going straight to the buoys, and this chase group uh, can't really see it. So now they're they're settled back in. Uh, we still have uh, Maya Stage Nielsen at the front. Uh, Left Rider is in there. Uh, Sky is in there as well. And I'll just give a little bit of unsolicited advice. And the way, if you're going to a race and you don't have maybe as many buoys and it's a difficult course like this, you go in the day before and you see where the buoys are going to be. And you practice sighting big. Yes. Right? So you go in and you're like, I don't care if there's a buoy. There's a building there's a back there. There's a cell tower. There's These a two mountains yes. come together in the foreground so yes. you always know the sight lines and when you're looking at those sight lines you don't have to pick your head up as much because they're further away and higher sure. than trying to look at something in the same level as you so not that these athletes didn't do that and i think i bet i bet maya did and that's why she was able to stop so quickly and be like wait I mean, this isn't she right. wasn't that far in yes. to notice that so it, intuitively she just knew something wasn't totally. right um, it, it is, it's, it's terrible. And, and I don't want to say we've all been there, but we've all been there. We've yeah. been sort of confused. Um, uh, yeah, you know, they came around this buoy and they picked the, you could see where's the buoy, where's the buoy, where's the buoy. Yeah. They all almost stopped. And it's the, it's the, it's Lear Rider who took them off. Yep. It's Lear Rider who started swimming in the wrong direction. And it was Maya Stage who stopped and said, wait, no, what are you doing? That's not right. Totally. For a second, she's like, okay, well, f Everyone tells me, stay with the lead, like, stay on the feet, stay on the feet. And then she finally had the wherewithal to say, no, this isn't right. Totally. And you make a good, you make a great point. And I do think, you know, that was an error, but Maya just saved this whole group because yeah. she noticed it so quickly. And yeah, just a great awareness from her. And you say, we've all done it. And I mean, D -D -D, the, the men did it at 70.3 World Champs last yeah. year. Like a Not fair... nearly as drastically. It... Well, I was in the boat. It felt pretty drastic on water level. I'll tell you. I'll tell I mean, you what. It's a world championship, and it was four or five strokes. But totally. Literally for, for Maya to stop swimming, they're really struggling out there. Yeah, and that's not a replay, folks. That's uh, her still trying to figure it out right now. These women in this chase group, in a different manner than that third chase group, they just want to be out of the water. This is not going this well. Is, yeah. This is not going well, and it is going to be. Five, six minutes. Here we go. Another replay of, uh, you see, on the up, up, upper side of the screen and to the left of the swimmers, that's Lair Rider going the wrong direction and Maya being like, no, we're figuring this out right now. Let's go this way. And it didn't actually take uh, Carolyn that much longer uh, to realize and see everybody else in the distance. But you're right. We've all been there. Uh, but right now. And Blymel taken along in that group as well. Yeah. She, uh, no, she's in the group behind. That was Sky Monch. Oh, that's Sky. Yeah. So, uh there's there's a lot happening here and as i said earlier we always say you can't win in the swim but you can lose this race is being drawn by this swim yeah these are huge gaps like you you expect five six minute gaps on the bike ride or on the yes. run right not but to, to start, start not to start because even as you know you you folks uh, watching at home 
you might be like, okay, I can't wait to get out of the water. The, uh, you know, that, that's what we want to do. The pros are the same way. No matter how good you are, you still just want to get out of the water. And at yeah. a certain point... But let's talk about, like, even Lauren Brandon, who's a great swimmer, wants to get out of the water because she wants to know, okay, where am I at? Where do I go from here? Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. She wants, to, she wants to have that information. And to some point, all of us still feel like the swim yeah, is... Yeah, sorry, a, you're right. That is, Sky. Yeah. yeah. The, the, some of us feel like it's still a warm-up, right? Yeah. Even, we know the gaps are different, but if you're starting the like bulk of the race, six minutes head start. Yeah. It's like Sarah True is gonna be like, wait, what was that? How much time <laughs> do I have? Right? They're that... still like yeah. on the other side of the lake. Yeah. Um, as well as the other two women. And Sarah, man, she's give her she's credit. Yeah. She's now had that uh, a couple foot gap off and on for a lot of this swim and she's hanging in there. So she's doing some of this on her own. Again, a lot of the reason she can stay close is because she doesn't really have to sight that much. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and Lauren's got the benefit of the kayak. Uh, we talk about, you know, the lead swimmer and everyone's like, oh, you're so lucky you get the kayak. Sometimes if the kayak is too close, yep. they end up pushing water back in your face and it can <laughs> actually be really annoying. But can. Uh, credit to our lead kayaker here who's doing a great job. And, and tell us, you know, you spoke uh, a lot about the reason why Lauren Brandon is one of the reasons she's so good. She has large feet. They're very flexible too. Big, that's big, a, hand, big, big hands, big feet. That's a big thing. Yep. When you have a big kick... Is it, am I wrong in thinking that, that Rebecca Clark, the second athlete, has a little bit of advantage? Yeah. The more you kick, the more drafts you're going to get the athlete behind you. It's theoretically, yeah. It, it, and I don't know the, the hydrophysics behind it. <laughs> oh, I certainly don't. <laughs> oh, come on. Make something up. <laughs> Sounds smart. Math. Come on, you can do it. No. I, don't, I don't know the, the necessarily the rationale for, behind it, but yeah, if you have a, a bigger kick, um, it does tend to pull a yeah. little bit more. Um, then if I, I look at Sarah True and she almost looks like her legs are sort of floating behind her. She's got yep. a sort of a, a two beat kick, um, just different styles, certainly effective. She's swimming roughly the same pace as, as Lauren Brandon. Yeah. And here we go back on screen is our bib number one, Daniela Blemhel. Uh, again, it doesn't look like this group is really fighting at this point, right? It, it does seem like that kind of that energy is the get me out of here. Uh, thing and, and I don't know if it has something to do with the the. It's just slower turnover, less powerful swim strokes. Yeah, yeah, interesting. But uh, yeah, no, the race is certainly uh, developing a lot uh, right now already. We're not even 50 minutes into this uh, into this race, and and you and I have uh, raised a few octaves already. There's drama. We rarely <laughs> see drama in the swim, but we've already had one dropout. Yep. of one of our pre-race favorites. Uh, we've had our, our pre-race favorite on screen right now, bib number one. She's at least five minutes behind the lead right now, and not even in that, that not chase even group. Second, yes. And our chase group of a lot of those favorites is at off least course. four or five minutes. Yeah, off yeah. course, four or five minutes back. And if we're being honest and not, I'm not trying to be harsh, but the only pre-race favorite or favorite to win this race, in my opinion, that's in the front is Sarah True. Yeah. Right? So she's... Normally, we would have thought that some of those pre-race favorites would be in that first group together. And do you think that is a good thing for Sarah or Beth? Because she's not cycling's not her strength, right? She usually kind of sits off, like will pace off of groups. Is is that going to be harder for her mentally to be on her own this whole bike ride, or try to stay with Lauren Brandon? What, what do you think about that? I think, I mean, I think that Sarah True is every bit as strong a cyclist as Lauren Brandon. So I think yeah, they're going to okay. find. Yeah find good company in one another if anything lauren is in the more unusual position right now in that i don't think she's necessarily accustomed to having company right. out of the swim maybe at the iron man world championship when lucy charles comes out but then the two yeah. of them don't ride often very much together um i think it's actually great news for lauren brandon as well because she does do well we think back to her where she picked up her qualifying slot at, at iron man texas she was alone at the front until she was caught by Maya Stage yeah. uh, and Jocelyn McCauley, but then wasn't dropped by them. Right. She enjoys the company. She is happy to let somebody else sort of set that pace. Um, so I actually think while Lauren will be slightly, I'm slightly surprised yeah. that Beck and Sarah have been able to swim with Lauren. Uh, I think Lauren's actually going to be pretty happy about it to have company right yeah. out of the gate on the bike. Yeah, and I, I, I didn't uh, I didn't mean to say that Sarah w ha wasn't as strong as a cyclist, but it seems like she always keys off of other athletes. And so are you saying you think that uh, Lauren Brandon and Rebecca Clark are a, 
uh, the type of athletes that she's she's not going to try to get away from them. She's going to key off of them and and stay in that group. I, I still think she may try to to get away from them. Yeah. I mean, we saw it in in Lake Placid where Sarah won last year. Uh, she went off the front of the bike, I believe, on her own yeah. um, and, and was alone setting the pace. So, I think Sarah's had enough race experiences that that she's probably I, she's certainly not going to defer to Lauren and back. And she can kind of do it in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she can go. She's got a lot of flexibility. She can go a lot of different ways from where she is right now. But where she is right now is extraordinary. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think she's going to be absolutely tickled to have put in a swim that puts her within seconds of Lauren Brandon out of the water, but more so that due to the strategic error is going to put her four or five minutes ahead of my stage, uh, oh, yeah. ahead of Sky, For and sure. perhaps six, seven, eight ahead of Diana Bl Blymel. Yeah. Daniela Blymel. And let's, you know, you alluded to before that, you know, she's got, you know, more responsibilities now, you know, maybe a little less time and, and how that's affected her training. What I'm looking at as I, I see the, you know, in 2022 versus the previous years when she, she has a new child, she's in school, uh, you know, maybe her focus isn't just racing. What I think is different is that she's picking the races and focus and keying on specific races. So like we, we kind of underestimate her. So you're like, oh, let's see, Sarah True hasn't been raced, but it's like she knocks it out of the park every stinking time. Every I actually, time. I actually spoke to her before the race. Yeah. And she just said, she's like, I just need to take the advantage of the opportunities to race when I can because of the other demands in her life are so different than what they used to be. Yeah. Um, and she is an athlete that wants to race the big races, right? Yeah. She doesn't want to back down and go to a smaller, quieter Ironman where she might be off the front alone all day as we see our lead three athletes getting ready to exit this Roka swim course. She wants to race the big races, so the fact that she is in great competition here, um, yeah, a st strategic, and it's going to give her a lot of feedback as she makes her preparations for the World Championship in, in October. No, I think that's a great point. And, man, the, the helicopter can't get high enough for us to see the group behind. Yeah. And, I mean, that shot from the front, and we'll see it uh, maybe here again, there's nobody behind. I mean, there are three buoys back. Yep. You know, there's nobody. So here we go. We've got Lauren Brandon uh, getting to dry land first. Uh, you know, she's not waiting around, getting that jog on. Rebecca Clark right behind uh, Sarah True uh, coming through in third. We're going to get the times uh, coming up here in just a second as these athletes. 52-19, unofficially your swim split presented by the Wahoo Element rival. 52-19, 2.4 miles, 3.8 K for Lauren Brandon. Yeah, I mean, that is for a lake swim with that many turns and an Australian exit. That is a very, very fast swim time. Yep. And these other athletes behind are going to be in the 57, 58 range, which isn't terrible for a non-wetsuit swim. But if you go the wrong direction, you lose feet right away. That stuff starts adding up. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of work. And the faces of these athletes, when they get to shore and hear the gap, there's going to be a lot of double, triple takes for sure. Almost to the point where you question if that's accurate information. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, 100 yeah, percent. As we see Sarah True trying to get uh, her top on at this point, a lot of these athletes in that swim skin, you'll see some Dee Dee with the arms all the way down while they're swimming. Yeah, Beck Clark did that. Yeah. That's what she opted for. Often, you know, the, they make those suits to be aerodynamic in the aero position, not really to, sw to swim all that effectively, and, and that affects some athletes more than others. And you see Sarah True had hers tucked underneath her swim skin, and then that's what she's doing now is trying to pull that on. And in a long transition like this, it's not that stressful, but still feels pretty stressful it's, in the it, moment. It, it's something else to focus on as we see, you know, the two athletes, Lauren Brandon and Sarah True, both had those race kits down, had yeah. to pull them up. Bet Clark opting not to. So she's got a little bit more of a relaxed run, but yep. it certainly hasn't cost Lauren anything. Um, it hasn't cost Sarah anything that, that you know, it just, it's, it's another stressor on your time. You're not just necessarily, not just running, you're running and dressing at the same time. And if you don't think this is a big deal, go for a swim and yes. try to put a, a piece of spandex on right when you when get out of the water. Right, yeah. uh, it, uh, it rarely goes that well. And Sarah hasn't been able to get that front zipper on yet, so she's probably going to wait until she gets into this tent and stood still and 
you know, she might even ask a volunteer to help, but yes. um, uh, she has the ability to do that. So here we go, that second group splintering just a little bit there in the middle, but uh, we still have uh, Maya Stage Nielsen at the front, and, sh and she's not giving up at all. We see Sarah True is in the back of that group and Carolyn Lefrider in the middle of that group. So still some of our contenders in that second chase group uh, as we have an overhead shot uh, of our women outside of the tent uh, kind of getting all their things together and putting everything back so in that it looks bag. Like they're almost like an official is having a conversation with it does look like that, but I think they have just maybe a volunteer there or, or ask for some assistance. Yeah. But that's a long time to be standing there. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see if there's anything else going on. But right now, it does look like uh, we had our first athlete. I think that was Rebecca Clark was able to make it through, and then we had uh, Sarah True getting all those things in the bag. Here we go, Rebecca. Clark running her way through transition and uh, you know shakes her hands out. We see Sarah True in the background there. So um, oh, I think there these, we go. That yeah, is Lauren. Yep. They're just making sure everything's in the bag. Uh, that official making sure they're not leaving anything around. Lauren, can, you could tell she she noticed that she lost some time there, and yep. you don't want to lose the front group on the bike by having a slow transition or being confused somehow in transition. But first to the first to the bike. Uh, so far today. Yep, so this will be Beck Clark as she makes her way. Just checking the tire quickly. Hopefully everything is okay. <laughs> um, taking some of her, so yeah, and this is, so this is what Lauren had stopped to do before, and now Beck taking the time to do it now. Tucking those snacks in um, to the various pockets in those race kits uh, so you have access to them. Um, Beck Clark took a minute to do it there. Lauren took a minute to do it uh, a couple of minutes ago, and now we've got Sarah True still futzing with that zipper. She finally got it. Yeah, she's got it, and there we go. Lauren Brandon still kind of. Oh, uh, you know what around. this is? I am betting this is a tracking Tra device. Transponder. Yeah, That's what I was saying. It's a, it's uh, a tracking down. device. That yep. is what they've all got to have. Um, and it almost looks like they weren't given to the athletes pre swim, they were just on their bikes. And so a lot of them are asking, like, where is it? Where does it go? Et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Yeah, so uh, they, they've got that all under control. They all had to deal with the same thing. They're still right there. So. There we go at the top of the screen. That looks like that is Lauren Brandon. She's getting on the bike in second place. And Sarah True uh, just getting over that mount line in third. And they're getting rolling. And they won't be too stressed about it. They'd be even less stressed about it if they knew they were five minutes up on the group behind, right? Uh, right now, you know, they don't know what that gap is. You know, they would have peeked over their shoulder a little bit as the group is splintering. Sky Monch not having a great swim. She's just hanging on the back of that group and getting getting splintered out the back. Yeah, definitely some drama in that chase group, uh, getting lost there in the middle of that second lap at the swim course thing's not necessarily ideal. I think they'll have a, a sobering realization when they get out and get that split as to how far back they are uh, from our race leaders. But any professional has to have the ability to have a very short memory um, put it behind them and move on to the next discipline because if you dwell on it, it's it's certainly not going to improve. Um, and that's where, like again, an athlete like my my stage comes from a golfing background. She used to be a golfer, really? right? Yeah, wow, a very good golfer. And to me, what that says it's the, like the mental toughness. I was going to say, yeah, very short memory. Um, put it behind you and move on, and that's what they're going to have to do because those are going to be some jaw-dropping numbers. No, it's huge, yeah. and we still we haven't gotten any uh, any sign of, of them coming through yet at this point. And it's been six minutes almost, uh, DD, since these women have gotten out of the water. So this is huge, huge gap. And, uh, and here are our transition times presented by Morton uh, Beck Clark at 3:52, Sarah True 4:13, Lauren Brandon just a second behind 4:14. 4 so. Again, Beck Clark uh, was very quick through transition. Sarah had some struggles with her zipper. Uh, Lauren was tucking some nutrition uh, into her yeah. kit at various places. All of the athletes look to be putting either a tracking device um, into their um, race kits as well. Here we go, Didi. We've got our chase group coming out of the water at this point. So it looks like uh, Maya Stage Nielsen uh, coming out of the water, getting her swim skin off. And she is 58-46, so that's six and a half minutes behind our leader. That is not a gap any of us would have expected. It's not good news. No, no it's, it's definitely news. not good news. But I believe here comes the, is this the, well, that's, no, that's no, Sky. This is that's the, the splinter back group. half of the group. Right, that's yeah. that back half of the group. So Sky is going to be close to, yeah, she's almost seven minutes. She is 651 behind our leader. That That is, that will be 
again, as you said, a gap that she won't believe is real. And then once she does, that's going to be a, a very hard mental game to get over. Iron Man is long. In the end, seven minutes is frequently the difference between first and second. That should not be the end of the race. But it is so much time that you get to deal with as we have a shot of one of our athletes putting, that was uh, Rebecca Clark, putting a uh, transponder in her jersey there. Uh, it almost seems like she's got a little pocket for it back there. So she's putting that in and moving along. Um, but, Didi, that, tell us a bit about what, is going to go through these athletes' mind, talking themselves into thinking this is not a big deal, that they're seven minutes down? Um, they're telling themselves it's a long day. Yeah. Um, they're telling themselves that that's the worst it's going to be, right? That That's the biggest thing. You know, they've got to think positively. That's the biggest the gap is going to be. I can go. I can get out now and, and go to work. For a lot of these athletes, they have their best two disciplines still to come, right? You've got... Um, You've got Daniela Blymel, strong cyclist, strong runner. Uh, Daniela, argu arguably one of the strongest cyclists in the field. Um, Sky, we tend to think of as being a pretty well-rounded athlete, but if there is a weakness, we're going to say, yes, it's the swim. She can now go to work and say, I can go about chipping away at that. But I don't, in the back of their mind, they're saying that was dreadful. But, but <laughs> I, I, yeah, totally. But I want to say Sky. <laughs> that was not good. Sky has been getting better. So, like, she's been making groups that we haven't yes. ex expected her to make. So sh she's going to hope that that progression continues. And it's a big backslide today. And it could be because of the cold. It could be because of non wetsuit But you brought up Daniela Blumhill. She's still out there. Yeah. And she's a fair bit. So she's going to be close to 10 minutes yep. off the lead. Uh, this is going to be a gift to Sarah True and the three women in the front of this race. Again, I think if you're, if I was predicting ahead of time, I would have guessed a gap for Daniela Blimo would have been on the increment of six or seven minutes, but yeah. 10 is a whole different, yeah. Oh, it's huge. And, you know, a, a, a few minutes it looks like to that first uh, chase group as well. So there's a lot. And she's an amazing athlete. She, the way she rides that bike, I mean, certainly she's going to oh. going to cut in a ton of time on I these I mean, weather. she still may well post the fastest bike split of anyone in our field. Oh, she's got that talent. That is her that is her talent as we take a look at Maya Stage making her run uh, towards the bike. Now, she is a woman on a mission. She totally. is likely angry about what transpired during the swim. Certainly not ideal, but no time to dwell on it as the rest of these chasers make their way uh, to their bikes to, to get to work and chip away at the, this massive gap that they've got now. Oh, uh, yeah. Massive, massive gap. And I think uh, Daniela is has to have the fastest bike split at this point, yes. right? She kind of does. She has to go to her strength. There she goes. She's out of the water. So she hasn't lost a ton of time to that uh, second group as we're going to get her split here in just a few seconds. Uh, she's about ready to go over that timing mat. Uh, so as Laura Jansen went through in 102, and that was uh, almost three minutes behind uh, Sky Monch. So we're going to look and see. Hasn't quite come through yet. Uh, but we will get that gap uh, as soon as it does come across uh, for Daniela uh, Blumhell. But again, it's going to be in that. It's going to be 10 minutes. It's going to be at least 10 minutes yes. at this point. So a uh, lot left to do. Race is still a majority of uh, the many hours are still left to be raced. But again, a head start uh, given uh, from this woman here to a bunch of her major competitors. You know, again, another thing that that Daniela is going to have going for her. This is her this is her hometown race. She is going to have so much support out there um, from the German fans that I think that's also going to help sort of inspire and 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 bolster her as well. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you know, it it feels like you've got a tailwind uh, when you're when you're kind of in the hometown. You got people cheering for you, especially when you get on that run. She's going to feel like she's floating yes. a little bit if she's got the energy. Uh, but uh, she's got a lot of work left to do. And, you know, she looks, you know, uh, contained. Uh, it doesn't look like she's overly stressed, but um, we're not sure how many splits she's gotten uh, at this point as far as how far back. Uh, people are telling her how, bar how far back she is, but she was 102 in the swim. So she lost exactly 10 minutes uh, to our front athletes and then uh, a fair bit of time. So is that four, four minutes? Uh, actually, just over three minutes to that next group. Uh, with Maya Stage Nielsen, Carolyn Leftrider, and Sky Monch. So she's going to be able to get up to that group probably, um, you know, by halfway point, uh, unless those women up front are really trucking. Uh, so she's definitely still in it uh, for that for that podium on the bike. But to catch that 10-minute gap on the caliber athletes we have in the front is going to be a big it's a, one. It's a tall order. Yeah. It's going to take a. It's going to take an extraordinary effort. Um, 
absolutely in order to do that. But she can't think about that right now, right? I mean, how do you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. So she's just got to take, absolutely just take one bite at a time. Sorry for the elephant fans out there. That's a terrible analogy. <laughs> it's not the best, but. I'm just saying, it's, a, it's, it's an overwhelming prospect to, to try to do, right? So you don't do yeah. it. You just set about the task at hand and, and go to your process-oriented goals and, and process-oriented you know, checklist as you make yeah. your way through the bike. Yeah, you look at the uh, at what happened as the past and whatever's to come is the future and all you can control is the future. Um, and uh, that's what these athletes are gonna be are gonna be doing here. They're making sure they've got that tracker in uh, the spot that they need it to. There we go, getting everything loaded up so folks can uh, track these athletes when they're out on course. But there we go, more competitors getting out on that bike ride and we're gonna have a, a good little group here in that third group uh, to try to catch up to the second group in the remainder of the race up the road. Yeah, and although I think uh, wearing bib number one, she's gonna look at this group around her and be like, yeah, see ya. <laughs> totally. uh, uh, all of these athletes plunking those trackers into their various pockets on the race kit. Uh, that is a, a, a tracking device that uh, you, there's a link on the, the Ironman Frankfurt website that you can track along as well as um, get these athletes out onto the bike course here and uh, all sorts of volunteers racing here, there, and everywhere down there. It looks like a busy morning in transition. <laughs> no, it certainly is. Uh, everybody's on point, though. It looks like everything's uh, getting done and every, the athletes are getting taken care of as we see that bib number one getting over that mount line. Uh, so there we go, another one of our uh, chasing athletes uh, going through transition. Uh, but the leaders are out on that bike course and they're moving through it uh, quickly already from our spotters out on course uh, as we get more athletes getting those transponders on to make sure you all can track them at home, putting them in that, that top of the kit. Uh, I think a lot of the athletes are trying to go for the pocket, but they're being told to put it at the top so it can get a good signal there. So another one of our competitors getting out on course here, getting ready to attack the Minova Ironman European Championships here in Frankfurt. As we see, Didi, overhead shot, uh, <laughs> beautiful shot of our yeah. age groupers on that Aussie exit. And again, another overhead shot here of transition. This is back uh, earlier. Those yep. were our leaders making their way through transition. Again, a lot of the athletes getting instruction on where to drop that tracker. I think that's what some of the sort of confusion was for some of the, yeah. the leaders here, some of our pros coming out. Um, just instruction on what it is, where to put it. Um, last minute adjustments like that uh, have to be flexible and uh, get on with it. So well <laughs> underway here are our leaders out of the Roca swim course on to the full gas bike course. Lots of race dynamics happened so far. A lot's still to come, Matt, so don't go away. We'll be right back to the action here in Frankfurt. watching the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt, brought to you by Roca. Find faster with Roca. And by Qatar Airways, going places together. There you go, Lauren Brandon, that beautiful aerodynamic position we're so used to. She looks so smooth, just as smooth as she does uh, while she's swimming, but now she's on land and moving really, really quickly uh, across this course here early in Frankfurt. And she got out of transition uh, in between Rebecca Clark and Sarah True, but Sarah True pretty close behind. I'm sure these two athletes will uh, bridge up to Rebecca Clark. I would doubt that Rebecca would want to be on her own for too long. She's not gonna give up time, but um, when you've got this much time left in a race and you've got certainly as big a gap as they do to that second group, it's nicer to feel like you've got camaraderie out there. 
I would think so. Yeah, again, I don't think she's going to sit up and soft pedal and yeah. wait for the other two women to come by. But uh, definitely was a little bit more efficient through the, the transition there. Uh, and these are just the small details. I mean, Lauren has... Um, a bunch of snacks, you know, tucked into her race kit. Obviously, all of the athletes had to put that tracker yep. uh, into their kits, but um, Beck had that the race kit up, so she didn't have to sort of fight with that right, race totally. kit as well. So Lauren and Sarah both um, took a minute to get that race kit up. Uh, Sarah struggled with the zipper a little bit, but we are now well uh, underway here on the full gas bike course. And Lauren Brandon just settling in making adjustments to the helmet, making sure that's sitting right so the, the tail of that helmet sits nicely in between the shoulder blades there to maximize the, the aerodynamic benefits. Yeah, no, she's looking really, really good. We're looking, I'm just double checking through uh, T1. It looks like no big, big changes there. Uh, the gaps that were out of that swim uh, were very, very similar through transition. And it was a long transition, about a four minute, uh, just about four minute transition. Uh, so that does have a little bit of an effect, that long run and, um, as you said, kind of those technical things they had to, the athletes had to deal with. But all that's behind them at this point, and Lauren Brandon cruising along, uh, looking smooth in that aerodynamic uh, position and, and trying to settle into a 113-mile bike ride. Yeah, a little bit a little bit longer here in, in Frankfurt, just the nature of the course. So uh, an extra mile to just soak it all in as Lauren Brandon does Lauren Brandon things. <laughs> uh, great swim from Lauren, uh, came out of the water first, gave up a little bit of time in transition, now sitting in second place, getting right on that nutrition. You see she takes that straw, um, getting um, her nutrition on. We had a chance to chat with Lauren about why she came to Frankfurt. I mean, she got her Kona qualifying slot back in Texas. Um, so why she made the trip across the proverbial pond to race here in Frankfurt. Let's see what Lauren had to say about her race here in Frankfurt. Welcome to my small German hotel room. <laughs> and I did my first half in 2015 and then watched Kona at the end of 2015. I was like, just remember being glued to the TV watching. I just got so excited about it. 2016 was my first year doing full Ironmans. And yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, I would say, the past eight years. Yeah, it's been amazing to see how much this sport has changed since I started. And I feel like these past seven, eight years, like, gotten so much faster. It's super competitive and it's definitely different getting out on the course. You're never the one chasing, you're being chased. I don't have the strongest run, so I know that I need to have a good strong bike combo in order to be in the mix, especially here at Ironman Frankfurt. There's a lot of really amazing cyclists, like super strong cyclists. Hoping I can be up in the front on the bike too, so that when the run comes, maybe there's a little bit of a gap. <laughs> I can try and run as fast as I can to just be in the mix. Like, that's my goal for this race. I just want to be here in the race and yeah, so we'll see. <laughs> well, there you go, Lauren Brandon. One of the fan favorites, always a smile on her face, always very kind and gracious yeah. to the volunteers, competitors, training partners, you name it. So um, great to her, have her out on the race course here, getting all the race experiences. Again, I think a lot of the athletes choosing to come to this European Championship uh, for the opportunity to race people they wouldn't necessarily race in their in their home countries and and know get a solid data point on where they're at at this point in the season when they can sort of script how they plot and plan the rest of their season into the Ironman World Championship in October. Oh, for sure. And I think it, it, it shows, you know, no offense to those that don't, but the true professionals, right? Like, it's pretty easy to stay at home and race, you know, somewhat locally and not uh, put yourself out there against the best in the sport well, and travel across I'll the planet. I'll take the other side. So this is Please. where This is why we love to, to chat and debate is that travel in this day and age is dreadful um <laughs> it, it, it is stressful and if yeah. you don't have to make a big trip like that it might be easier to race at home and get the same physiological benefit i think the opportunity to race some of these key competitors is the big attraction That's it's it. a championship event prize purse larger yeah uh, different opportunity. We heard Lauren say, hey, I want to race somewhere I've, I haven't raced before. Uh, Maya Stage said the same thing. Hey, it's a bucket list. I want to come I, I want to come race in Frankfurt. It's a different race experience. Totally. But I do think there is benefit to staying home and keeping it simple until you have to. But all those things that you're saying that make this harder are 
same at World Championships. You're racing the best, travel's hard, it's not easy, and that's how you get used to putting yourself in a position where you can perform on those days. I and see I time how you're making your point right here. In I was trying. So I can't fight back. <laughs> And welcome back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt. Matt, look at that gorgeous skyline. Ah, it's it's amazing. It's a great great place to race. Right now, Lauren Brandon's out there doing what she can, but guess what? She's still chasing down a fast riding Rebecca Clark who's uh you know taking that uh, little gap she had at a transition. No, nope, I'm wrong. Nope. Uh, we missed it. We missed the catch. Uh, so Lauren Brandon uh, at the front of this race with uh, Rebecca Clark just behind. So made pretty quick work, actually, of those uh, 25 seconds. And um, unless we miss something else, I don't see Sarah True uh, behind at this point. Uh, I do not see Sarah True either, which is slightly cause for concern just because she had come out right with Lauren Brandon. And I yep. wouldn't think that... Lauren would be gunning it so hard from the start just to drop an athlete like Sarah True. So hopefully we will uh, catch up with where Sarah is. But uh, yeah, great transition from Bette Clark. Yep. Uh, and out she went, but Lauren right back there. So these two athletes here paired together at the front of the race. Yeah, no, and, uh, and it, it, it's likely they're going to be together for quite a while. Both great uh, cyclists and, and know the tactics involved and the, the fact that you know, riding a race like this all by yourself is, uh, you know, it gets a little lonely out there. It's harder to pace yourself when there's uh, another athlete uh, that's riding well. Maybe when you have a lull, it, it always kind of holds you accountable. So uh, right now, Lauren Brandon uh, and uh, Beck Clark riding together, and, and we're going to get a, a view of uh, Sarah True or uh, some word of where Sarah True is. Actually, they just she's, went through. Yeah, she's, yeah, Sarah True is back at the bridge that uh, we saw right when we came back after that quick break. Yeah. Um, so she's not far behind, but definitely lost a little bit of time. So not entirely sure what happened there. Just a little bit extra time settling in on her bike. So, uh, but um, Sarah True's still in chase. One minute and 10 seconds lost in 13 and a half kilometers. That's so, a lot. So something, you know, uh, you know, she's settling in. Maybe something else is going on. But uh, let's... Let's go back and look at what got us to this point. Very dramatic here today. start to the race yeah. so far here. When we look back at the Roca swim course, our professional women getting underway here at the European Championships. No pro men, just pro women here today. And uh, they were off to the races. It was Lauren Brandon immediately to the lead. Beck Clark doing a great job staying with Lauren. Beck's an extraordinary swimmer, yep. but um, I was surprised to see her able to stay uh, with Lauren and Sarah True as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about Lauren Brandon maybe not having that much get out speed, but she got out pretty quick and had a big gap on that chase group, as we see, because uh, this is the moment when uh, Lev Ryder and uh, Maya Stage Nielsen just could not figure out which way to go. Yeah, the, it was it was uh, it was really almost difficult to watch yeah. uh, that group of athletes get just so confused and gave up again probably not as much time as it feels like in the moment but a good solid 20 to 30 seconds figuring out which way was which but they arrived to the beach as they began lauren brandon with beck clark and sarah true chasing it was another six minutes nearly yeah. to the next chase chase group including favorites uh maya stage nielsen and and uh uh, yeah, uh, Sky we, had, Munch. we had Sky Monch in there, and it was six and a half minutes by the time they actually uh, hit uh, the firm ground. So huge gap, uh, a lot happening there in the swim. Again, not uh, usually used to so much drama uh, happening in a swim of an Ironman, but definitely had some of that today. And curious to, to find out what uh, went on on the early sections of the bike and, and to see if any of these other athletes uh, struggle early as uh, we do see Sarah True losing uh, over a minute. Uh, just in 13 kilometers to these two women. 
Absolutely. And if you are inspired by what you're seeing and want to undertake an Ironman of your own, I urge you to consider Ironman Chattanooga. Join us on September 24th at Ironman Chattanooga, part of the VinFast Ironman North America series. Chattanooga has a vibrant downtown and is one of triathlon's best kept secrets. This event was voted the best swim course in the top three. Could that be the down current? <laughs> this was voted the best swim course and the top three best overall uh, courses at the 2022, 2022 Athlete Choice Awards. Enjoy a downriver swim, bike through backcountry roads, and run through the downtown. Experience an outdoor adventure that can't be beat. This is a great late season race and a perfect way to qualify for Nice in 2024. Register at Ironman.com slash I am North America. Yeah, absolutely. A great uh, venue for a race in the town of Chattanooga. Uh, loves their triathlon. Yeah, they and know how to do it right. They're a wonderful host community, as are the fine folks here in Frankfurt. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we see right now those splits up on screen. You can look, uh, follow ahead with us uh, if you're not uh, looking at your Ironman Tracker app. Lauren Brandon there with just a few seconds, actually spreading out a little bit, uh, three seconds over uh, Rebecca Clark with Sarah True one minute and 11 seconds back. Uh, but these two athletes, uh, I think, are, as I said, going to stick together a little bit in an overhead shot of one of our chasers, Didi. Yeah, this is Maya Stage. Uh, she was one of the athletes in that first swim chase group that got just so dreadfully confused uh, in the middle of that second lap on the Roca swim course. But uh, Maya has done a great job distancing herself really from has. those chasers and is getting absolutely straight to work uh, in pursuit of the three women up ahead. Yeah, and Dee, is it is it hard not to cu get caught in? I feel like sometimes when you have a gap like this, it can actually start snowballing because you're, if you're Maya and you're not thinking ahead or you're not thinking clearly like, Oh my gosh, I just lost six and a half minutes. I'm going to try to get two minutes back in the next 20K, right? I'm, like, I'm going to come back to, to Maya Stodge Nielsen's background as a golfer. Yeah. And say that, and, and I, I'll be the first to say, my, my husband's a golfer and I kind of <laughs> make fun of it. I'm like, ah, it's not really a sport. Yeah. Uh, but the mindset is something that I think it, it teaches you that patience. It teaches you to have a short memory and forget the last swing that you took. And I think things like that are, are going to help Maya. I don't think she's going to be irrational in her attempt to catch back up no you could i think she's gonna be very I, measured and I, thoughtful i think that. you could be right for sure but i'm not I necessarily talking <laughs> just about maya stage nielsen but it is that will be a challenge for the rest of these women right to not try to make it up quick right away and, yeah. and again for some of them that may be the key hey i want to latch on to this group i had a slow transition i want to get back on board you might give yourself that. I think if you're going to en enact a strategy like that, yeah. the important thing to do is give yourself a time limit. I'm going to give myself yeah. 10 minutes to put in a surge of X number of watts above what my plan was um, and see if I can't enact some sort of, you know, recuperation totally. from what I'm trying to fix. But you can't get reckless with it. No, but to my point you would have to say that of two or three hours, right? Like you're talking a six minute gap. You're not getting anything like that back, but looking at the splits now through 13 and a half K, uh, Maya stage has actually made back over 30 seconds uh, yep. on our front group and separated herself by 25 on this group that we see uh, chasing behind. So left rider is 623 back. And Jersic in there too. Yeah, Jersic's in there. Sky Mach is at 630 back. So she's at about the same gap she was out of the water uh, with Nina Duron at 634 and then seven back Marine DeBoer. So the girl, the women out there have some company. Yep. Um, I, I think that Sky's got to evaluate her position right now. Uh, Carolyn Leah Ryder, certainly a strong rider. Um, Jersik out of Poland, also a, a, a very talented cyclist. But I don't. My my guess is that Maya looked around and said, "I don't want any part of this group. I want to do this my on my own, my way. I don't get, want to give anyone a quote unquote free ride." Well, and she was the one. Like she she was the most attentive in the swim. It seemed like she was the one that if the pace ever faltered, she went to the front. So, yeah. like, she knows uh, that those athletes in front, Lauren Brandon, Rebecca Clark, and Sarah True, are the athletes that she's racing against today, not just the athletes behind. And maybe maybe she 
looked around and saw, oh, shoot, uh, or heard a gap on Daniela and wanted to uh, see if she could get a little bit more distance. But uh, she's certainly being assertive early in this bike ride, and, and I don't think anything above what uh, she's capable of. But it's going to be uh, fun to watch uh, what, what these gaps end up doing. But Lauren Brandon still in control of this race uh, at the front, uh, pushing that pace. And, and we say it every time, but Lauren Brandon looks like you could put a cup of coffee on her back. And uh, and she's nice enough, she'd probably let you do it. Yeah, she should. Oh, sure, okay. Yeah, yeah I'll hold it if for you. you have to, that's a little weird, man. <laughs> okay, whatever you want, buddy. That's fine. Uh, Beck Clark uh, right there with Lauren yeah. Brandon. And, and uh, Beck, of course, was third at Ironman New Zealand back in, in March. So um, taking a trip over here to Frankfurt again to get some of that race experience. I think when you have um, athletes from she's from New Zealand. Yep. Um, they will make a pilgrimage over to Europe to do some racing throughout the summer. Um, sit out the ride out the the winter months in the southern hemisphere and, and take advantage of some race opportunities. So Beck Clark doing that very thing. She's a three time Ironman podium finisher and a five time Ironman seventy point three podium athlete. So a yep. uh, very, very strong athlete and, and having a crack here at a world class field here at the European Championship. Yeah, and I mean she was she was up there at uh, Kona uh, last year. You know, she finished uh seventeenth, uh but she definitely, you know, put herself up there and you know if she can uh, have a more consistent run over uh, that distance on that course, uh, you know, she's going to put herself in uh, top 10 uh, contention for sure. But she was definitely one that, uh, you know, we all kind of noticed out there. Yep. Uh, it was her first time uh, out on that race. And uh, so to get eyes uh, on an athlete like that, you could tell she has uh, great ability and, and focus as an athlete. And again, great performance for her first time uh, at Worlds. And I think to your point, you know, she's she's continuing to try to push herself. And and to me, when I look at an athlete, you say the amount of podiums that she's had and no wins, it, it does show that she does go to big races, yes. right? Like she's pushing herself. And I think once that athlete gets that first win, then they start winning a lot more because they're already used to putting themselves against the best. But right now she's doing her best just to hang on to Lauren Brandon. Yeah, no, absolutely. Lauren setting the pace here. Again, curious what happened to Sarah True, who lost... Uh, an unusual amount of time across yep. that first 15K. We did get a quick look there at bib number one. That was Daniela Blymel getting to work. Uh, not a great swim for her, so she's got her work cut out for her if she wants to uh, plan to defend here in Frankfurt, but she's going to have that hometown crowd on her side. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we're looking through, it uh, looks like a lot of more of these athletes have gone through that 13.4K. Uh, so Daniela Blymel has gone through at 9.09 back. Uh, so moving her way uh, back through uh, the field as best she can, but still a fair amount of work to do. Uh, again, uh, I'm like looking at this race on paper coming in and, and studying up and trying to anticipate how it, it might play out. Um, no surprises to see Lauren Brandon and, and Rebecca Clark at the front of this race. Yeah. Um, I am surprised that Beck Clark had such a strong swim and was able to stay with Lauren and Sarah True for that matter. Yeah. Um, Great swimmer, but just I would have thought Lauren would have established some separation. But there, at least, as expected, uh, we knew we were going to have some strong swimmers. And then we looked to our, our cyclists and who we thought might um, come through. Of course, uh, Jerzyk from Poland. Uh, she's a very strong cyclist. Daniela Blima wearing bib number one, also very strong on the bike. And, and Maya Stage, we knew, would, would probably... Um, pull her way through on the bike as well, and, and Sky Munch. Uh, so they, those are the athletes we're looking at. The gap, I think the big surprise that we've talked about, um, was the gap and how large it was, I think, a lot bigger out of the swim than we had anticipated. Yeah, no, huge, for sure. And, you know, some athletes are, are taking some of that time quickly. We don't know yet if it's out of panic or not, but another athlete, Sarah Svensk, has yeah, already made back. Yeah, I saw her pop into the top 10, yes. Yeah, she already made back uh, over 30 seconds uh, on that front group as well. And, again, that front group, you know, if – Sarah True lost a minute to Lauren Brandon, then that's a, a benchmark that we can pay yeah. attention to. Yep. Um, Lauren's having a, a good ride, as is uh, Rebecca Clark in the front. Uh, we don't know if uh, Sarah True was just kind of pacing herself or if something happened or not. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's just how the race develops. And she realized, you know, maybe she was like, okay, I just, I heard I got six and a half minutes. I know I, I struck a huge match on that swim. I need to settle in and kind of do my own thing. Yeah, that amount of time, though, I don't think that's yeah. settling in. I, that almost seems like a, she had to dismount and adjust uh, something on her bike or uh, something was not quite right. I think for Sarah True to give up a minute and 11 seconds in 15K is something different than a settling in. And, again, watching the tracker, she is 
making some time back up yeah. on that. Of course, we'll have to wait for the official timing, Matt, just watching the dots on the screen. But um, to me, it says that Sarah True is getting herself back in. So not sure what caused that little bit of a pause for Sarah True. But uh, again, seeing Sarah Svink in the, in the top 10 yeah. for the first time. Uh, is a name I think we will also see continue to uh, claw her way towards the front of this race. No, absolutely. And, you know, we talk about the hard part for some of these athletes and what's difficult about a world championship when you're an athlete that's used to success. And the part of the reason you come out to a course like this to race the best. Are there athletes you think here that it's, it would be harder for them to continue to motivate to fight when they're sitting in, like, let's just, I'm just looking at the tracker and I see Sky Motch. She's sitting in seventh place, six and a half minutes back. Is it harder to convince yourself you're having a good day when you're just kind of in the race? You're not like moving yourself up. You're not like one of the players at the front. You're just, it, it seems it's more difficult than if you were having the same performance and you were in third at a regional race, right? Yeah, I think for an athlete like Sky, she's not going to jump to any conclusions just yet. Yeah. Um, I think she's she's in the fight for the, for the long haul. Uh, she made a deliberate choice coming uh, out here to race. In fact, she had said in social media that uh, well, during this race week that after Ironman uh, Arizona, where she and Sarah had had that just immense battle, Crazy. she was said absolutely no, I'm not doing another Ironman before Kono, but. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> she can't. She can't um, stay away. There's, there's purpose to this, and you know she's made a coaching change as well. Um, uh, Sky has, and yep. I think this was an opportunity for her and her coach to say, "Okay, how's our training gone so far? How does she respond to the taper under this new kind of load of work, et cetera, yeah. et cetera?" And learn some things going into to have an Ironman race experience going into the Ironman World Championship as we watch Beck Clark uh, move past Lauren Brandon and take a turn at the front here. And to be frank, if you, and obviously emotions were probably involved in that statement that she made, but to not race another Ironman in between with the um, the years of experience that Sky has, at, she's only well, been to Kona, like, right. you, you, it would I, be a mistake. I tend to think of Sky if I had to put her in a in a bin I'm going to put her more in the Ironman bin than I am in the 70.3 bin. Oh, a great 70.3 athlete, but 100%. her engine is much more suited towards Ironman racing. And so, yes, I think to put a focus on an Ironman race is a, is a smart move. Totally. And you just to get that experience. And to your point, she is any athlete that's geared that much towards Ironman that she's not really going to start shining till four or five hours into this race, yep. right? Like that's when you're going to see uh, Sky kind of making her moves. And uh, as the race gets difficult, because this course is a, a pretty quick course, um, she tends to do well on difficult courses. Uh, she does well on flat, fast courses as well. But in this type of field, it's harder to get separation when you don't have, uh, you know, too much difficulty on the course. But there's some, there's some sneaky climbs in here as well. Absolutely. This is just this back to this quick pass of uh, Beck Clark on Lauren Brandon. I don't think this is necessarily a uh, critical race moment, but just right. a little bit of a change in the lead here. Uh, Beck Clark doing the the polite thing and taking turns at the front. Yeah, and you can see they are going up one of the yep. little little risers, yep. getting out of the saddle and um, using that momentum to get over. And this is why it's even when these athletes we see, they've been about two seconds apart this whole time. They're not quote unquote drafting. They're not no, getting an no. advantage off of each other. But when the other athlete comes by, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, we can pick it up a little bit. And you just keep each other going. Here's a nice uh, shot uh, from the side of bib number four. That's Sarah True. There we go. Uh, looks like Sarah's up on that same hill, so uh, may close. have bridged her way uh, back up to that group. I think she's still a few seconds behind, uh, but does look to be moving just fine. So um, I don't, nothing appears to be wrong, uh, but we do wonder why she had lost that time. But she's diving into her snacks and sure is. everything appears to be on board. But yeah, unusual that she gave up a minute in the early stages of the bike, but she looks to be well underway here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we'll get another split and see uh, kind of how those things change. But in a, on a climb like this, this is an opportunity for an athlete if she wants to try to burn one of those matches and bridge back up. If, as you inferred, maybe something else happened outside of, you know, just her athletic ability, uh, this is a moment where you can bridge a little bit of that time. Um, 
but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Sarah's Sarah's pretty smart. She's gonna take that time back uh, when she feels it's best. But on screen, uh, bib number one, uh, Daniela Blemhell, uh, one that certainly wants to do well in this race today. Has some work to do, but looks comfortable. Does not seem to be panicking. And man, she is as smooth as smooth gets. She absolutely is. Uh, again, a lesson on how to ride a bike, and yeah. we'll see if she can uh, make her way back up into the top five. Uh, before the halfway point of this bike. When we come back after this quick break, don't go away. Lots of racing still to come. best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt, brought to you by Morton. Get used to it. And by Gatorade. Fuels you forward. As we just saw right when we came on, the vision of, no surprise, Lauren Brandon getting out of arrow for one reason and one reason only, just to wave at a child that was waving at her <laughs> on the course, <laughs> of course. And we know she had a, gr a big smile on when she did that. But uh, she'll be grimacing a little bit because it looks like uh, uh, Beck Clark is still uh, pushing the pace on the front, and these women are uh, trying to make sure they keep as much of that advantage as they, they earned, you know, in a – you know, with some with some good work on that swim. So these women just over six minutes uh, in front of most of their uh, competitors. Uh, Maya Stage Nielsen, just the only one uh, besides Sarah True that's in under six minutes behind these two women. One of the great features of this uh, uh, full gas bike course here in Frankfurt, uh, it's it's all the little villages that you go through along this two loop route is it's it's one of the reasons that brings the athletes to this race is the the local support um oh, keep yeah. in mind frankfurt the major metropolitan area and within just a couple of kilometers you're out into this farmland and going through these great villages as we check in on our weather here 59 degrees fahrenheit 15 degrees celsius broken clouds uh humidity 81 percent winds pretty light out of the south southwest at five kilometers per hour yeah and i mean uh, didi it can get pretty hot on this course and and there's been some race days where that's been the issue yes uh you know we saw sarah true deal with that a few years back and 59 degrees is going to feel like a gift uh, to a lot of these athletes i'm sure there's some athletes that maybe wanted to test uh you know their heat for world championships in kona but uh not today with 59 degrees already uh here in you know, decent way into the bike course, but great shot and no uh, question now as whether or not this course in Frankfurt is a beautiful one. Absolutely. I mean, it's that's I love the diversity of the course. As I said, a oh, major yeah. European city, uh, financial headquarters to to you know European banks, et cetera, et cetera. And yet here you've got you know greenery and 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 farmland um, yeah. in the same shot as the the high rises of the dense metropolitan area yeah it's pretty cool pretty cool <laughs> definitely uh unique and, and one of the reasons why frankfurt has always been kind of one of the big races that uh a lot of the athletes want to get to here's a great side shot of beck clark and yeah she looks so smooth as well great great position and uh you know cruising along and definitely not not taking it easy i mean these women are certainly no. pushing the pace no absolutely doubt. uh taking advantage of, of every opportunity that they're given they know uh, the power that is uh, behind them in terms of uh, Maya Stage, uh, uh, Nina Darren, a very strong yeah. cyclist, Sarah Svink coming up, and of course the defending champion, uh, Daniela Blymel as well, uh, trying to pick her way forward in this field. Yeah, and the only thing I'll say to uh, correct you is the opportunity that they've taken themselves yes. right like yes. uh, these women have gotten to the front and and been aggressive and um lauren brandon's going to be uh you know grateful to get some of that work repaid that she did on the swim for yes. rebecca taking some on the bike and um they definitely are some allies and and they'll be happy that 
they don't have Sarah True to be thinking about right now. I think sometimes two athletes is better than better than three. You don't have to worry about who's going to take a turn and who's not and looking around. It's a, it's a little bit more symbiotic uh, in those two athletes. And, and also because Sarah True is a great competitor and they want some distance on her if at all possible. I, I would think so. Again, I, I still want to go back and see what it yeah. was that caused Sarah True to lose contact with yeah. the lead two women uh, almost immediately as she got underway on the bike, but certainly is, is rolling through strong now and sitting sort of in no man's land. Um, certainly uh, nowhere close to being a threat from my Stodge Nielsen at this point, uh, yeah. but also completely out of touch to Lauren Brandon and, and Beck Clark as well. Yeah, it seems so. And, and that's, that's certainly going to be a hard gap uh, for Sarah to close. Uh, you know, it will have to be an intentional one. And it's one that she would be risking her dynamic ability to run in that low 250 range if she really burnt a match early on the bike. And, you know, it's a little bit easier to close later uh, yeah. if, if you have the strength to do so. But, um, you know, she looks comfortable. I don't think she's too stressed about it. And, yeah, definitely it's still going to be over that, that minute. I don't think she's made too much uh, time back on these athletes if any we're going to get another split here in a few minutes but you can see by the background it's very uh very similar stretch of road yeah similar but she's not in that same minute as uh rebecca clark is yeah no definitely not uh new bike for sarah true as well so uh this will be her first time around a full iron man course um on the bike so again a little bit later in the year to be checking out the new equipment yeah. but um Obviously, she looks great. She looks comfortable. But changes like that are, you know, changes nonetheless. Oh, for sure. And she, you know, she'd be calculated. You know, she would have uh, done the training that uh, she needed to. But, yeah, anytime you make a, a change in uh, sponsors or even different bikes within the same sponsor. Yes. Um, you know, you're, you're not really given any... Uh, uh, slack if you tell someone you had a bad race and they ask when how many times you've ridden your bike and you say oh one or two <laughs> right like that's you don't ever try anything new on race day so certainly <laughs> she's she's put some uh some time and some effort in on that on that bike that she's riding and uh you know she looks the position looks very similar yeah. to what she had before so yep. she looks comfortable and good to go uh overhead shot here of our leading women that is rebecca clark from new zealand in the front with the american lauren brandon um following behind yeah, yeah, and both uh, both rolling along pretty well with a, a a long way to go. And I think, you know, if you look at these two athletes, you know, clearly Lauren Brandon has more experience uh, on the on the longer distance side of things. And in in Ironman racing, uh, you know, she's she has an Ironman uh, victory. Uh, Beck Clark has a bunch of seventy point three experience. Has maybe a little bit more of that dynamic speed than Lauren Brandon does. You know, if you look at run splits. You know, they're not that dissimilar over the Ironman distance on average. Um, you know, I'd say Beck is a little bit faster, uh, but Rebecca Clark certainly has some faster 70.3 runs uh, than Lauren Brandon. So uh, kind of that dynamic speed, I think, a little bit more on Beck Clark. But besides that, I think they're pretty well matched on the on the last two disciplines. And, and both relative, like both rookies with very little race experience, um certainly any race experience on this course, but less right, race right. experience in, in Europe. Uh, so you know, there's Lauren just waving. She's getting out of arrow every time there's a child. Yeah, here's the thing. She she <laughs> said specifically Lauren wanted to come to this race for a new race experience. Um, this legendary Frankfurt course is one that draws these athletes yeah. in, and I think Lauren is just loving every second of it. No, for sure. And, you know, she said she, she brought her uh, husband, uh, Bear, Brandon, out uh, with her, and, and definitely more of a – you know, they, they tend to separate and do their own things when it's about work, but if it's more about of a life experience, uh, Barrett goes along, and, and that certainly is going to make things feel more comfortable. And anytime you see an athlete that's in the lead, essentially, of an Ironman, making sure they get out of arrow to wave, and not just like a courtesy, like, what's up, but like a hi, yeah. like a big wristy <laughs> wave. Uh, it's going to leave an impression, You right? know they're it's having a good time. It's absolutely going to leave an impression as they make a left-hand turn here. Some onto of the cobbles. Some cobbles. This will not be Lauren's favorite part no, of the bike ride. No, I was just about to say, this is <laughs> where if Beck had studied up on Lauren, if Beck was aggressive through here, she could absolutely 100%. separate herself. Um, I mean, you can look at the body position is very different. Lauren yes. is very stiff, which yep. feels like the right thing to do when you're nervous, but it's the opposite, opposite thing that you, you should do. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I, I don't think Lauren's not big on, on, she does a lot of her work on the trainer and she just dropped a bottle there. Yep. Um, I'm get that was obviously unintentional. I think that has to do with the rough pavement yeah. rather than 
Um, it almost looked like she threw it, but I think she was going to grab it as yes. it was falling out I of think, the front. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and so she's, and we'll go back to that as, yeah, she just hit a, she hit a funny bump there and it bopped tried up. To catch and, it. Yeah, yep. she tried to catch it and just, just couldn't get it. Um, but because she does so much riding indoors, yep. when you have a change in pavement type like this, it, it, it is going to throw you more than perhaps an athlete like Beck Clark. Oh, for sure. And I think, you know, I, I have not uh, had the luxury to race in New Zealand, but from every uh, person it's I've talked like to, it's kind of like racing on cobbles. It's like racing on cobbles. Uh, sure. Part of it's the chip seal makes those those races a little bit more difficult. Uh, so she'll be used to that. But, but we're still waiting on the split here. Sarah True has not gone through uh, that 30k split yet. Uh, it, it, it's Laura knew that about this course when she came here. Yeah. Um, so she is deliberately making these choices to yeah. take herself out of her comfort zone and have those experiences. It's going to make her a stronger athlete ultimately, um, but definitely a bummer to lose your nutrition this early on as well. And she does have a, a bladder on that yes. on that bike setup, so she still has some, but she's going to want to, you know, make sure that she she grabs uh, bottles as you go. And you know, if I'm uh, going to be critical, which up is what we get to do here, Sarah True, making that same minutes. left hand corner. So two minutes. So she's lost another 50 seconds. Uh, if I'm being critical, I think the one bottle and then the the in in the bike hydration is. I'm watching that. Sorry, risky. I'm, yeah, I'm no. seeing at that rear bottle of Sarah True that's bouncing around in there. That's coming out as well. Yeah, so you can see it's only halfway in. There, it's about to go. Um, so this is one of those there situations. It goes. There it goes. And and so those. Wondering there, there is if an official is around, there's a 30 second uh, penalty if you lose or litter or drop a bottle and you know that you did. Yes. Um, so Sarah didn't even look like that she knew that she did. Lauren did, but there wasn't an official there. Yes. You have the option of stopping and getting it to yes. not get that penalty, but it ends up uh, being a wash. But again, the official has to be there to see that uh, to get a penalty. And I think the I'm not sure. And again, as we talk about the difference, the, the defining line between yeah. intentional and right. unintentional. In, in both cases, it's unintentional. They're on a bumpy stretch of road. But the awareness. We saw it with Matt Sharp yes. at if the you Boulder 70.3. Yeah. We knew he, he dropped the bottle and he shook his head as if to say he knew it. I don't know if Sarah still knows that she dropped that bottle. It would be loud. Those aero helmets are loud anyway. Um, things tend to echo. There's a moto by her. Yeah. She may not have hit the, heard the bottle hit the ground. You can you can see where her head was. There wasn't any any mo motion. Yep. She didn't uh, reach to around that. to say, "Is it there?" Lauren exactly. definitely knew it was there. Uh, Sarah would may not have even known. And, and the difference, uh, you know, just because we're talking about it, if you intentionally litter, that's a five minute penalty. Yes. Uh, and I believe if you do it twice, it's a disqualification. disqualification. Uh, but anyways, th that is something that these athletes, if they looked at the course and they knew, and they've got a bottle on the back that's full, they should have a rubber band or yes. something to hold that bottle on. It's, it, that is not bad luck, what just happened. That is those athletes yes. maybe not doing everything they could. And there's only so much you can do. You run in a stiff disc wheel and stiff wheel and an aerodynamic bike, it's going to reverberate a lot. So there's things there. But if you literally tie that bottle down through until you're through that cobble section, you're going to have a lot better luck. But we're going to get back to some more cobbles and drop bottles after this quick break. Coolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Fullgas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. Welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championships in Frankfurt. We're back on screen with Lauren Brandon, 
and Rebecca Clark. They're at the front of the race, uh, being chased by the woman on the right-hand side of the screen. That is Sarah True, uh, bib number four, and uh, also down one water bottle. Uh, so some of these athletes are dealing with that. It looks like Lauren Brandon already picked up a water bottle from uh, maybe one of the aid stations uh, to replenish uh, the one that she lost earlier, uh, as we saw on screen. Uh, but right now, look at that, Bebek Clark going up one of those uh, little rollers and having a good race today at the front of the European Championships here in Frankfurt. Having a great day of it, and, and so far the only one in our top three to not lose her nutrition so far. That's <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good odds. Um, lots of good racing uh, over in Europe, uh, over here in Europe, and certainly one not to be missed is Ironman 70.3 Zell MC Caprone. On September 3rd, come experience Ironman 70.3 Zell MC Caprone. Spectacular Lake Zell is the center point of the race for the swim and then for the run. Having the glacier covered mountains as the backdrop showcases Austria's majestic scenery. The rewarding climb past the iconic chapel on the bike course is followed by seemingly endless descents through the Austrian Alps. You won't find natural beauty like this anywhere else in the country. Register today at ironman.com slash I am Europe. And back to the action here. We were, we've got Beck Clark at the front of this race with Lauren Brandon, not far behind. Sarah True giving up another 50 seconds through that 30 kilometer mark. Uh, Maya Studge Nielsen sitting at 551 back. That's another five seconds closer, but roughly unchanged. Yeah. Um, and Sky Munch has has moved up um, now under six minutes back. She was 6.30 back at yep. 13 kilometers, so Sky moving forward as well. Yeah, so now a, a group basically developing with uh, Nina Daron and Jessica Jerzyk, Carolyn Lechreiter, Sky Munch, and Maya Stage Nielsen. So uh, it's a powerhouse group, yep. uh, all right at about uh, six minutes. So, well, yeah. and remember, Maya was so aggressive out of yes. transition and had 30 seconds on that group and now is back. But as we look at our race leader, Rebecca Clark here racing in Frankfurt for the first time, we had a chance to catch up with Beck about her decision to come race here in Frankfurt and her expectations on the day. Let's see what Rebecca Clark had to say in a fighting chance. One of the goals for Sunday is um, it's a flat, fast course in the run, is so to run a, a marathon PB. I chose to come over to Europe. There's just so much racing in Europe. Um, you've got so much choice in your racing. Yeah, the European Championships fitted nicely into the schedule. So yeah, really excited to be here. Yeah, so obviously I'm, I'm used to being out the front and, and having people chase me. So. Hopefully I, I will have some company. There's uh, you know, a couple other strong swimmers. Um, there's Lauren Brand in the field, so uh, maybe we could work to have a, have a gap around from the rest of the field. But um, yeah, I know there's strong, strong bikers. So yeah, you're, I'm always used to having um, you know, people chasing me down. You always kind of hope the day that you do stay away and, and don't get caught. Yeah, so I'm in New Zealand. Um, it was a close race. I, I was close to the win, so it made me hungry. That I was like, oh, so close. And I feel like I haven't done my like best marathon run. I feel like my run has improved that I can run, fa run faster so it's one of the goals for Sunday is um, it's a flat fast course in the run is so to run a, a marathon PB. You know what's interesting that tells me straight away she's looking for a run yeah. PB. She's while she's at the lead and seems to be aggressive in her application of bike power at this stage of the race she's mindful of that marathon. She wants that run PB. Yes, we, we can't be certain <laughs> that she's remembered that that's what she's trying yep. to do. Uh, but I, I, trust that, I trust that she is uh, keeping that a priority. And that's how athletes make these building blocks to try to be athletes that are capable of contending in a world championship is you got to have all those little pieces before you can put them all together on the world stage. And, and somebody who's done that, uh, you know, many times at fourth place at the Olympics, fourth place at, uh, Ironman world championships in Kona is a woman on screen, Sarah true. And, uh, she's on one of these little rollers and, uh, you know, she probably doesn't, it doesn't feel that little to her at this point, but, uh, she's able to kind of use some different muscle groups, get out of the saddle and, uh, you know, get back and settle in. And, you know, she's going to, 
she's going to start having to fight off kind of this chase group or uh, just be aware that it's coming. I don't think she's going to try to stay away from this group necessarily, but uh, they're coming for her. And then another athlete that's making some moves is Daniela Blumhelm. Uh, she's down to 838 back, so she's pulled back about 30... Uh, 30 seconds from the last uh, split we had, so she's she's definitely moving moving through the field, Make, making making progress definitely, but yeah. a lot of work. Uh, oh yeah, a lot of work still to go. It's it's early going, and that's what some of these. I'm gonna call them that the stronger cyclists. They're gonna know that it, it can be frustrating at the start of a bike leg that the times aren't coming down quite the way you want them to. But yeah. all of these women are super strong professional athletes and anyone can ride that first 90k is pretty strong it's it's deeper into the bike where those gaps are going to start changing by more and more yeah and that's why they're here they're here yes. to be in a race where them going hard for an hour doesn't, doesn't move do them it. through it's, the field it doesn't again. move the needle much right? right that like they they aren't going to feel that way now in the moment but that's why them and their coaches decided that's a, a race uh, that they needed to go to. As we see Rebecca Clark going over 70 kilometers an hour uh, down one of uh, these descents. And a little replay of uh, her and Lauren Brandon. And, and again, this is another section where if she pushed, you know, she could maybe uh, distance Lauren Brandon. I'm actually super impressed to. that we see Beck Clark being almost a little bit more tentative. She's sitting up and, yep. and Lauren was the one that was aggressive in the bars. Lauren is only sitting up because she was sort of venturing into Yeah, you're right. That's an awareness of the draft zone. Uh, as we take a look at our VinFast performance analysis, a graphic and a speed of 37.72 miles per hour at uh, two uh, estimated time at the next race split will be two hours and eight minutes into race time. So a, a bit to go still there, but good for Lauren. Uh, Beck yeah. was sort of sitting up and, and had her hands on the brakes. And, and I would have expected Lauren to be somewhat tentative on the downhill section, but she was very comfortable. The only reason Lauren sat up is she was getting a little too close. No. And I was, uh, as I was mid sentence saying that yeah. Lauren's uh, going to be more tentative and, uh, you know, she proves, proves us wrong. It shows that you can uh, get better at riding a bike inside and out by riding inside. Uh, and uh, no better place to show that than a full gas uh, bike course here uh, in Ironman Frankfurt. As uh, again, these two athletes, uh, not much separating them. And I think they'll both know that they're pretty well suited to race with each other. Uh, yeah. Know, if they're both having good rides, they're not really going to put uh, each other out of their comfort zone. And, and then it'll it'll be down to a run. But somebody who's is aiming to to catch as many athletes as possible on the bike and and within range of getting to the front of and getting to those two athletes that we were just on is Daniela Blumhell. She is a amazing cyclist and she will only to your point earlier that so many athletes, anybody that's at this stage can hang on for an hour. Right. She's going to hold the same pace, the whole bike ride. Like well, she will get better as she goes. And again, we look at the fact that she is as far back as she is yeah. at 30 K. She is, you know, eight forty back, but she's only, about two and yeah. a half minutes back of, of Sky in fifth place. So, I mean, the, the, there's enough, the gaps are big enough that once she starts picking off one at a time, yeah. she's going to catapult herself. And, and let's be real here. Like, if we look at the strengths, she's two minutes behind Sky in that group, or almost. That, that is the bulk of the competitors. Sarah True seems to be coming back a little bit. That, that might come together as well. In reality, she is a much faster runner historically than... Beck Clark and Lauren Brandon. And like, she would be very confident that she could run outrun both of those women by eight minutes. Right. So like it's, she, there's no reason for her to be stressed, even though this will feel like uh, a different position that she's used to being this far back this early. Yes. That yeah. far back out of the swim, certainly yeah. not ideal, but she, she's also the defending champion here. And I think, you know, you wear that with a sense of pride um, yep. Perhaps a little bit of a sense of a, a burden. Uh, this is her hometown race. Uh, she's got her whole family out there. She's got two kiddos. Um, she's going to have a lot, a lot of support out there. And, and it's still very, very early stages. Yeah, and to your point, I think the important thing, if, if you're her or you're, uh, her coach or anybody cheering her on out on course, is that the bulk of your competitors are actually not that far up. Yes. They're, they're right there. And a two-and-a-half-minute gap, 
would never stress this woman out on the no. bike ever. No. Right. So I think that's how you, you have to break it down. And I'm glad we broke that down for ourselves. Cause I think we're a little less stressed, uh, for, uh, Daniela, but we see her moving, uh, along. Well, she's one that doesn't seem to have lost, uh, any bottles cause she's been on this course before. So she knows how to, uh, lock those bottles down and maybe choose bottles and cages, uh, correctly, even though she is, running and people underestimate like it is much stiffer when you're on a disc wheel and yes. a deep dish um you know nowadays with tubeless tire setups you know we're running lower pressure so it's not as hard as it used to be they're running 80 psi i mean 20 years ago they were running 19 uh with tires at, at 120 at 120 PSI. or 140 uh, as she fills up so she's got two bottles on the bike on the frame one on the back and then has a bladder in there as well yes. so that is also something not to be overlooked even when it's cool she needs to hydrate and she's one of the only women in the front that hasn't lost some of their hydration yeah that's that's impactful and again she hasn't had a, she's had a tough start to the year um some early season races she was suffering with a, a calf injury okay. uh but her last training block in preparation for this um particular race here in frankfurt the last sort of call it six to eight weeks have gone very well yeah. Um, she did have a 70.3 race over in Europe, and, and the calf didn't impact her. That was at the end of May. So I think she's feeling pretty confident that, that this could, could still be a great day for her. Yeah, and I mean, I think, uh, you know, overcoming those injuries is, is hard, and it, there will be nerves, uh, you know, especially calf yeah. and those things. And they are, like, a lot of it is hydration, uh, not base, but influence yes. if you're not on top of it. And you don't know if your calf's going to make it all the way till you are done essentially right like that can go pretty quickly but she's looking great right now as is lauren brandon on the left hand side of the screen but a lot more racing uh here to go and franker will get back to it back from this commercial break Welcome back to my Nova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. Uh, we're two hours into this uh, women's European Championship race. Uh, we just had Daniela Blemhill on screen, and now we're back uh, to Rebecca Clark at the front of the race. Uh, she's riding with Lauren Brandon, who she spent uh, most of the, the day with so far. Uh, yeah. You know, was uh, had a nice little social swim with her um, around the lake, and then uh, now onto the bike, and it's just been those two uh, for the last little over an hour and uh you know they're they're riding well they're not losing a bunch of time to the chasers uh you know i'm actually impressed they've only lost about 30 seconds uh through 30k at this point um, so they've settled into a pace that's good for them and and as you know we heard uh, beck say she wants to have a good run i know that lauren brandon's going to want to have a good run yeah. uh so i i would be surprised if these two athletes are going over uh, their prescribed watt numbers or, or overextending themselves. I bet they're in a good spot right yeah, now. Yeah, I think they are in a good slot, spot. And if I look at, at Beck Clark technique-wise, she's uh, this may be a little bit of a downhill section, but she's spinning a pretty high cadence. Um, she's got a little bit of a pointed toe. I think she might be sacrificing a little bit of power at the bottom part of her pedal stroke there. She's a little, uh, little toe point. Uh, I'd like to see her drive through that heel a little bit more and get a little bit more power out of the full length of that leg. But, um, yeah, she looks great. She looks super comfortable and not stressed at all. No, she. Uh, I would not use the word uh, stressed, stressed to describe her in any way at this point. Um, yeah, she looks comfortable. And, again, you know, we talk about the road conditions, maybe, uh, you know, those rougher road sections being similar uh, to maybe what she, she has time training on in New Zealand. But certainly – uh, these conditions, uh, you know, kind of the cooler conditions right now, it's a, 
just under 60 degrees uh, with some cloud cover, it's certainly going to be conditions that uh, suit this athlete on screen. And, um, you know, she's she's decided to fly to Frankfurt and, and do her do her best to show what she's capable of against some of the best athletes uh, in the sport. And right now she's comfortably in the lead. As we take a look at our race weather presented by our friends at Roca, currently 61 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 16 degrees Celsius. Scattered clouds, uh, again, shielding uh, some of the sun, helping keep those temperatures down. The humidity dropped a little bit down under 80% now at 78%. And the wind's very, very light, three kilometers per hour, uh, still out of the south, southwest. Yeah, no, perfect, perfect conditions. Perfect conditions, yeah. It really is. And, you know, the sun's coming out. It'll feel a little bit warm uh, when that sun hits them for the first uh, little bit, but they'll they'll settle into that, no doubt. We can see the uh, pretty uh, decent shadow uh, being cast with the, the sun right over the back uh, shoulder of uh, Rebecca Clark. But looking comfortable. We can see on that leaderboard on the right-hand side of the screen, Sky Monch is moved up into that fifth place, as we saw a bit ago through 30K with uh, Maya Stage Nielsen in fourth. Uh, Lev Ryder in sixth, Jerzyk in seventh, and Duran in eighth. Uh, all those athletes consisting uh, or making up a, a nice little group as we have now moved to a picture of Maya Stage Nielsen on screen. Yep, Maya's got some nice long legs, uh, those long levers pushing those pedals over. She she looks like she might have dropped a bottle as well. Um, only saying that because that cage is empty, and I think this early on on the bike you would expect to see some nutrition in there. But, um, yeah, she's good. She's got the bike computer tucked in there and, and looks looks very good, very comfortable, very focused and forward-looking. Yeah, for sure. And you can tell she's 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 pressing a little bit, for sure. She, she wants to try to bring that gap back as as much as she can and i think it's important you know as kind of we just talked through on on who are you know if you're on a good day who are your actual competitors and right now if she's on a good day and not to she she shouldn't really be worrying about beck clark and lauren brandon right like she shouldn't be worrying about getting up to them on the bike because six minutes yes. she would every day of the week if she's on a good day and they're on a good day she would be confident that she could outrun them Right. Uh, yes. I, I. The one thing I will say is that uh, Maya and Lauren raced each other in Texas, yeah. and I don't think, and that was also a non wetsuit swim, not terribly dissimilar conditions in that the water was borderline um, wetsuit, non wetsuit, which is unusual for Texas. So it was a chilly swim. Yeah. Uh, similar conditions to what we had here today in Frankfurt, and and Maya was a lot closer to Lauren out of the water at Texas, I believe. I don't think she was looking at a six minute gap. No, it was four minutes yes. at that race for sure. But she did uh, outrun Lauren by 14 minutes, yes. right? So I think that's that's the point. And it's, that's not taking anything away from Lauren, but like on both athletes on a good day, my point is that the, the spending of energy you as a professional athlete, and I'm sure they are, are thinking that is that you have to reset because you like it's all panic stations when yeah. you get these gaps. But then you're like, whoa, wait, wait, who am I racing? Yeah. I would not say that I'm racing Lauren Brandon and Beck Clark necessarily. And six minutes is fine. That's not what I wanted. But now I'm racing the women that I'm in a group with yeah. or Daniela uh, Blemhill behind. Right. So, I mean, this would be a huge I mean, you look at an athlete like um, Maya. She's got some great results, but to have a podium performance here at a major European event, I think would be a huge breakthrough for her. She came so close to winning oh, in sure. Texas at the North American Championship, um, was, was beaten um, just right there at the uh, by Cat Matthews. Again, great race, but yeah. came so close, uh, had a taste of the win there. Uh, but she doesn't shy away from the big races. She was seventh. At Oceanside, 70.3. We know that's always a hugely competitive field. Super stacked, yeah. Uh, she took a swing at, at Ironman Israel at the end of last year. That was a hugely competitive race as well. Finished fifth there. Uh, she was 12th at the Ironman World Championship last year. She she had never raced here in Frankfurt, and so to test herself again against some of the best on a, on a legendary course was, was a big appeal. But I think to put yourself in a position to be on a podium here I think would be you know huge for her. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And she continues to kind of just tick away and, and make uh, these big improvements. And again, you do have to put yourself out there. And I think all great points. And again, that that Texas is hard because it's one of those things where Kat was just on a day, day and yeah. it was a comeback day and it was a lot uh, going on for Kat. And, you know, 
the only other athlete I think I've used that stubbornness or grit comment uh, that I did with Sarah True is Kat Matthews, man. Sure. I mean, uh, she does not give up. So you could almost uh, take that Ironman Texas as a victory to an extent. Like, you know, you're capable of winning those big one of those big races. You can't uh, decide who's going to race against you. But here's our first uh, shot of uh, Sky Monch uh, on the bike. Uh, we can see her nice and comfortable. You know, she's getting a little bit of hydration through uh, that uh, integrated system in between her arms. She's got uh, some bottles or other uh, space uh, filling uh, equipment uh, in the front of her kit as well to try to maintain as much aerodynamics as she possibly can. But she's focused and, and riding well. Aditi, it looks like from the last time I saw her uh, race that maybe her positions moved out a little bit, like those elbows are a little bit further uh, forward maybe than I remember them seeing next time. It could just be, or last time, it could be making things up, but a little bit more aggressive uh, position on the bike. Uh, could could very well be. Again, she made a coaching change at the end of the year, um, so she's trying out some, some new things, and one of the motivations, again, for her coming here was to get a, a new data point on, right. on how the training is going so far as we watch Lauren Brandon again going back by Beck Clark. And again, this isn't a, a, a yes, it's a positional change, but not a, a strategic one necessarily. Just Lauren taking a turn at the front uh, as they continue to make their way. Our next timing, Matt, will be at 47 kilometers. So we anticipate that um, uh, shortly and we'll see if there have been any big changes. Again, I have been slightly surprised not to see Sarah True being more aggressive at this stage that she continues to lose time is a bit of a surprise to me, but it's but, really good. Yeah, but one, once again, kind of talking about the rem, rem, reminding yourself who you think you're racing against yes. is that if Sarah True's like, oh man, I lost a minute and then she tries to yeah. catch back up and she can't, it's like, okay, I just got to bag it and go with this group behind because those are the people I'm going to race. And if I can save my running legs to have a running battle, uh, then we go back and it's, you know, we, we, all, we talk about it as if all these things are choices, uh, often your legs, uh, your body tells you what you need to do on the day, uh, regardless. But, um, yeah, Sarah true, definitely, uh, kind of in that no woman's land, uh, at this point and, and sky Monch comfortably, uh, in the group as she's real refilling, uh, that integrated water bottle system, uh, kind of between the arm water bottle system, uh, with another bottle she had actually on board. So what she might have there is a. A lot of athletes will be starting with a concentrate yes. of hydration uh, and then be putting that in the bottle that's in between their arms and then kind of cycling through these things uh, and maybe exchanging them down the road. Yeah, it could be. The fact that she did it at an aid station, I wondered if she was going to grab. Typically, if you totally. have a concentrate, you're going to want to dose that with some water. But uh, in this particular case, that is not what she did. I also thought maybe she might be filling that bottle so she could chuck the bottle. But uh, yeah. Those are those are expensive aero bottles. You want to hold on to those <laughs> yeah, you gotta, ones. You got to throw that to somebody you know uh, on course. Uh, you can't actually do that, but um, yeah, maybe saving that one uh, for later. Uh, but we see right hand side of the screen uh, bib number one, Daniela Blumhel, as uh, we get a nice little shot of the little kind of a you know artistic shot of that. Uh, the shadow as uh, Sky's laying that down early stages of the bike ride. Now, the front women, Didi, have gone through that 47-kilometer mark, so it's yes. just going to be a little bit of time till we see uh, our chasers, probably a little over five minutes uh, till we'll see the main group of chasers. Sarah True is going to be somewhere in between there, and I think depending on the size of the gap we see from Sarah True, we'll be able to know if she kind of decided to, quote-unquote, pull the pin and go back uh, to this main group and save some energy or uh, just continue to to ride as best as she can and, and try to stay as close as she can to those two women at the front. But right now, Sky, Sky Monch looks like she's still riding behind Maya Stage Nielsen yes. as they're going down this descent at a pretty good pretty good rate. Looks yeah, like I'm trying uh, to, I'm, I'm, 80, 80 yeah, k an I know, hour. I know, I'm yeah. squinting my eyes. Your eyes are get better my, than mine. Got to get my readers on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Daniela Blymel still looking very, very calm, very smooth, um, very focused. She does not look stressed at all. No. Uh, she'd be laughing at how stressed we sounded for her <laughs> early in this race. Oh, my race. gosh. Did you see how far back she is? <laughs> yeah, no, she's got it. She's not worried about it. Um, here are the athletes going around right-hand corner. If I remember correctly, uh, Jan Ferdino a few years ago actually went off the road there, uh, did a little bit of a uh, cyclocross, cyclocross move uh, through the grass. I believe it was in that section or a section very uh, similar to it. Uh, but these these women getting through that no problem. Uh, Maya making uh, making the right lines through that as uh, 
Sky Monch does her best to, to stay with Maya, and I think they're they're well well matched to, to have a good bike ride out here today. Yeah, I think it's great uh, for the two of them uh, to, to have one another as allies here. Uh, so far, to my eye, and we haven't been on them 100% of the time, but just watching the, the local tracker, tracker uh, Maya has done a lion's share of the work with um, Sky taking advantage. Um, but again, we haven't been with them 100% of the time, but not dissimilar, I guess, to uh, Beck Clark and Lauren Brandon. Yep. Uh, Beck was at the front for a long time. We've only just recently seen uh, Lauren go past and still waiting on Sarah True at that 47 kilometers. She actually she just has just gone through at 212. 212 so, so another few seconds. Yeah, just about 10 seconds. So not, not a lot. So she's definitely kind of settled into her pace and in 17 kilometers losing 10 seconds compared to losing a minute and 10 seconds in the first 13 kilometers. Uh, she's definitely uh, settled in to a pace that's comfortable for her and, and not at all um, kind of throwing up the, she's not throwing out the, the parachute yet to, to go back to that group behind. So she might be on her own for a, a little bit today. Which again, we talk about Ironman racing can be a blessing and it's something that we see less and less now in the yep. women's field. Yeah. I think we used to see it a lot where it was, you are racing yourself. Yes, you're racing your competitors, but you're executing your own race and they weren't often around each other. But as the level of competitiveness rises in the sport, we've seen bigger groups in the women's, mm -hmm. in the women's races. Um, but what? in this particular case it's sort of a throwback to, to the old days when you're on your own just with your power meter and your pacing and all your sensations all on your own ah the good old days the good old days um but it, it does and we see more often in the women's field and obviously in the men's field we've seen it for a while is you aren't at risk for any in, inadvertent like oh, drafting hundred, penalties yes. or position penalties yep. so like the the stress of the awareness of everything around you is a lot less so i think that that ends up uh, paying off for that athlete you know, not having somebody else to hold you accountable necessarily is another thing. But again, these athletes are looking at a power number in between their arms the whole time anyways. So like that, that's uh, something that can, can hold them accountable. But uh, yeah, these women pushing the pace up front, Lauren Brandon uh, letting Beck Clark uh, take some turns for sure. But uh, both these athletes putting in uh, equal work as far as we've seen for the most part and still at the front of the race here, uh, more action on the other side of this commercial break. Boom, instant relief, wherever you need it. With nine different variations of heat and vibration, you can soothe your sore muscles instantly. The tight spot on your neck, that little knot on your back, that shoulder that always bugs you and your tight calf after a ride, say bye-bye to the pain and soreness. Heating up six times faster than any other heating pad. Ooh, that's hot. It's designed to get you out and moving. What are you waiting for? Back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. You're looking at our, whoop, well, you were looking at our race leader. <laughs> that was Lauren Brandon. She is with Beck Clark at the front of the race. And we are here looking at Nina Darren, um, bib number 19. She is in that chase group that includes Sky Munch and Maya Stodge. They have actually done a bit of damage uh, during that last break. They have yeah, crossed they have. that 47 kilometer marker and that, uh, that chase group that includes Maya, St Maya Stage Nielsen, Sky Munch, Nina Darren, uh, Jursik out of Poland, and Carolyn Learider, uh, they're at five minutes down now, which is a 50 second improvement on where they were just at 30 kilometers. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. And uh, Sphinx is up there as well. She's made about a minute. So 
we'll see Dan, uh, Daniela Blumhell uh, and her split here pretty quickly as we see these athletes kind of going, this is what we're talking about. Like you have to make these passes, you have to do it in a certain time period and it can be a little bit stressful. So she's made one pass and she has to go around the them. whole group yes. uh, or else she'll get a quote unquote slotting in penalty. Uh, from this angle, it's hard to tell if whether or not she had enough space, but she is being safe and goes all the way past Maya Stage Nielsen. But you know, once we get that split on uh, Danielle Blemheld, I think we'll, it, it, to me, it looks like the front two are slowing, right? Sarah Trues maintained that gap a lot better than she did before. This group has moved uh, a fair bit closer. Forward, yes. uh, so to me, that says maybe that's a sign that those front two women are slowing a little bit or just settling in and, and deciding that's the effort. Uh, but we haven't seen Daniela Blumhell come through yet. So. Well, again, I think uh, just mentally, there's got to be, obviously, because they're not at the front of the race, uh, more urgency from these chasers to sure. get those numbers to come down to more reasonable, more manageable, more tolerable. Yeah. levels um, as they make their way through this uh, full gas bike course. No, absolutely. I think well said as we look behind uh, now uh, this athlete leading uh, this small little group as they do their best to uh, chase on our two leaders and then Sarah True kind of in between and again waiting for that uh, that move by Daniela Blumhill. And another fantastic racing opportunity in Europe will happen on August 20th, where you can come experience nostalgic France, uh, French elegance at Ironman Vichy, selected by the athletes as the best Ironman and Ironman 70.3 races in 2021, the best finish line party on the circuit. Vichy is the perfect host city because after the race, you can finally relax thanks to its many great spas. You can register today at ironman.com slash I am Europe. Yeah, I've heard great things uh, about that event. Um, not heard anybody uh, that I'm not going to complain enjoy. about a spa day. No, it sounds so nice. Oh, it sounds amazing. Uh, here we go. On the right-hand side of the screen, that's Carolyn Lefrider with uh, Lauren Brandon on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, both moving along quite well. And, I'm man, I'm hitting that refresh button, and it does, it, it does not look like uh, – our bib number one has actually pulled back that much time. I keep waiting for a big move, but she's taking her time. No panic uh, from her. We're just 47 kilometers into this race, so no need to make those big moves to the end. We all know kind of that elastic stretches sure. a, a lot snappier uh, near the end of that bike course, but still, I'll admit, a little surprising to me to, to not see that gap continuing to come down. Yeah, obviously the biggest movers uh, is our first chase group yep. uh, now with Carolyn Learider leading the charge. Uh, there went from the back to the front of that group. And now it's Sarah Svenk, uh who has moved up a spot, uh, but sort of alone in no woman's land at six and a half minutes down all on her own. So uh, she's going to have to keep working to make contact. It could be um, Daniela Blymel picks her up and the two of them can work together to, to get to this group. But right yeah. now this is our, our primary pack in the women's race as we look at race leader Lauren Brandon, uh, who is sitting with Beck Clark, uh, two minutes and 13 seconds up on Sarah True, and then five minutes up on the primary pace, uh, chasers. So, chasers, chasers, you know. Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, Blumhell has gone through uh, that 47 kilometers now at 7.57. So she has made up about 35, 40 seconds uh, on the leaders, uh, not on the that chase group. So that, that chase is stalled just a little bit. Uh, but again, not too far back. She's, she's about three minutes uh, back from the front of that chase group. Um, so not, not too much time, but... Uh, and on her own, I might add. So she's yeah. not getting any help from anybody else at the moment. No, and, and to your point earlier about whether or not it's a good thing to be on your own is that you'll get caught in these little surges because you want to stay with the group, sure. even if you're looking at the numbers. Like, I'm not supposed to be doing these numbers, especially as we saw Carolyn Lefrider make yep. that pass from the back all the way to the front. That will be a substantial spike in her watts when she goes back and looks at her power file at yes. the end of the day, right? So that that is not quite a match, but it's it's different than riding. Your legs you're, respond differently yes. when you're at the same watts all day. Um, and you're the one telling your body what kind of watts you want to push instead of reacting, right? And that's, uh, you know, similar to, I believe, Lauren Brandon and Beck Clark are kind of in that zone as well. They're riding together, but they're riding so, I think, at a, a pretty much the similar same effort they would be if they were solo. Yeah, and they're doing a nice job of sharing that mm -hmm. load. Uh, I think Lauren 
has in the past been the solo swim leader and when a group will catch her she will be happy to let them do the work and she'll sit you know at the back of that group legally but being smart about her application of effort um but in this particular case she and bet clark are doing a nice job uh, sort of working it together absolutely and i think to me what i notice about how they're quote unquote working together is they're taking longer poles up front right like and i think that's the efficient way to do it when you you're a similar in pace and it's just two of you instead of like trying to like quote unquote swap turns more frequently every like minute or two getting in settling in doing that for five or ten minutes yeah and then these are the definitely other, longer duration i mean i think that clark was at the lead from the time they left the city so it's been almost 20 kilometers so it was a solid you know 30 minutes of effort before lauren went back to the front so uh definitely a shared load there and it, that's more out of I don't want to say sportsmanship uh, necessarily, but um, yeah, a, a degree of sportsmanship. Sportsmanship, and it gives you a camaraderie. You feel like you're out there with somebody else. Or there is an advantage to that, and I think because Ironman can be, it can be a little boring oh, yeah. if you're out there. You know it. You've been at the front of these races by yourself enough to know that you're a little ticked off when somebody catches you, but you're like, oh hey, you want to talk oh, a second? Hey, what's going what's on? Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, for you Lauren do, Brandon, you do start to learn there's chatters and there's not chatters. You know who's going to chat you up and you know who's not going to say a, a word. I've definitely had uh, people after the race be like, man, you should talk less. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> they usually would go through my through my brother to say it, but I just get lonely out there, man. Um, but Lauren Brandon, she's able to uh, get that uh, social activity out by waving at uh, the waving fans at the as, she, as she goes by. Uh, but she's comfortable and smooth and uh you need to tell us a little bit about like riding in that aero position is for 112, 113 miles can be hard on you. Is there, it seems like the athletes like Lauren Brandon who ride indoors a lot actually kind of benefit from that in this situation, right? Cause they're in the aero, aero bars the whole time. Well, see, that's, that's the, def that's the defining issue right there yeah. is when you ride indoors, are you disciplined about riding in aero or right. are you more sitting up? I yeah. think it is, harder to ride in aero when you're indoors because you are so fixed in that position. When you're outside in an aero, the, there's undulating terrain. Uh, the pressure points are somewhat different. If you're going slightly uphill, slightly downhill, you have the opportunity to move around in the saddle a bit more. When you're on the trainer indoors, nothing changes. Uh, right. And those pressure points remain fixed. And so I think having that discipline to hold aero is harder to do indoors, but an athlete like Lauren, who does so much of her riding indoors, also happens to be very disciplined about doing it in aero. I think where you get into trouble For is sure. you say, yes, I'm so good, I'm gonna ride indoors, uh, I can hold my, my aero position, but then you end up sitting up sort of watching, you know, your Netflix or grabbing a snack and you're not as disciplined as you would be otherwise. But Lauren in particular oh, is quite sure. disciplined. For sure. It. And I think it's it's hard to do, but it's also easy to do. You just need to make a point, point to, to do it, it right? Yes. And uh, easier said than done because it's, uh, it's hard. As we see uh, Rebecca Clark kind of uh, soft pedaling here through one of these sections as we go through. Uh, a little bit of roller after a downhill, making sure she doesn't get in that uh, drafting zone. But again, these two athletes, uh, quote unquote, working together quite beautifully, and they have gone through 57 kilometers yep. uh, in a time, a uh, ride time of 127.57 uh, for uh, Lauren Brandon and 128.20 uh, for Rebecca Clark. Uh, and again, we'll have splits on the other uh, chasers not too far behind, uh, but pretty quick little segment there. So I don't expect too many uh, you know, gave huge gaps in that moment as we see. Oh, I think she oh, got it in there. That's a two-pointer right yeah. there. So that's uh, one of our kind of trash zones. You know, we were talking about littering, and the athletes have to uh, get rid of their trash or their used bottles in these uh, aid stations. And if they really want to try, they, they they don't get a penalty if they don't make it in. Uh, maybe we should start giving bonus seconds or something. Well, yeah. But pretty, <laughs> you pretty get good seconds back if you make the, yeah. the two-pointer. Pretty good shot from. Uh, and if you're Rebecca more than a Clark. certain distance away, we'll give it. We'll give it. It's like a three-pointer. And it does matter. Like. Yeah. Tell me you don't get excited every time you make it. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, you're pumped. It's 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 the little things, right? You, you take the little. Because we're so bad at ball it. sports, we're like, oh my gosh, I did it. Um, but uh, up, Sarah True now yeah. through 56.8 kilometers has clawed back. I don't know four seconds. Yeah. So again, that gap sort of holding steady there as well. Yeah, but that's uh, again, that's a sign that uh, Sarah has settled in, and it could be a sign that. Uh, you know, these women have settled in and no matter how disciplined you are, even if you lead races all the time, 
you get kind of the little like helicopter effect when you're in the front and like the leads in front of you, you like you might oh i could go seven extra watts or 10 extra watts whatever uh, so maybe they're settling in a little bit uh to what they realize is going to be uh, a long day but uh again working very very well together sarah true uh you know having a very very different type of race than pretty much all of the other top competitors ex besides uh, Danielle Blemhell uh, on her own, where everybody else seems to have a little bit of a uh, partner in crime or a group in crime. Uh, but Rebecca Clark on screen, having a great race, doing her best uh, to prove that she's one of the best in the world as she heads into world championship season. All of these women trying to sort of do that, assess mm -hmm. not only where they're at fitness wise, but they, what they, which dials they need to turn, uh, where they need to put their focuses in the months that come as they prepare. A lot of these top contenders already qualified for the Ironman World Championship um, in Kona. Uh, historic yeah. uh, first time split fields are professional women racing on the Big Island of Hawaii in October, are professional men uh, racing at our very exciting new host community for a World Championship, not a new host community for triathlon. Lots of legendary racing has happened in Nice um, France, and that's why it is so befitting for our, our men's competition. Uh, I mean, uh, Didi, to be honest, I was so excited when I heard that's where uh, yes. we were going to take the men. You know, I was able to get over there for 70.3 Worlds uh, a few years ago, and I cannot think of a better venue uh, for a world championship, and uh, excited to see uh, the men race there this year and the women next year, but more importantly, the women uh, racing in Kona this year on their own day. And one of those athletes that's gonna be attacking that course is Maya Stage Nielsen, and who's on screen, but we were also able to get our great AFC crew uh, to sit down with her and, and kind of see what her headspace was going into this race, uh, this part of the season. Frankfurt is a bucket list race, so I'm fit and I feel like racing. I started triathlon when I was in Lanzarote. Uh, I worked in Club La Santa and they have like multiple small events there on the island. And I kind of, I went to Lanzarote because I needed a change. I've been playing golf up until then, graduated from high school and then discovered triathlon and got hooked. In 16, I then did my first full distance. From that day, I knew this is where I belong. Like, long distances uh, where I feel like I can be a part of it. I think we're all here with the same goal, and I think that it all, all only inspire all of us to go faster uh, when we have a strong field. I really, truly believe that we will have a good race here. I love the process of the sport. Uh, I love any process really <laughs> um, and I love to see how I develop, uh, I love to see how far I can get and I just yeah, want to make the very best version of myself. Well, she's out there showing us that she's uh, she is trying to make the best version of herself and uh, continues to put herself uh, against the best athletes on the planet. And uh, yeah, excited to see what she does here today. And if you love those uh, Fighting Chance videos that we were able to have during our coverage, uh, don't forget you can go on YouTube on the Iron Man channel and watch those of our Race Week series uh, from AFC. So get on over and uh, get some more insight into the professionals that drive our sport. And one of those is Beck uh, Clark, who's cleaning off. Maybe she went through a little bit of glass, so just yep. uh, touching that front tire to try to get that off. Don't try that at home, folks. Uh, I have uh, many times successfully and just a few times not. And is, that, is that one of those trips that you post on your socials uh, from the hospital? <laughs> I never went to the hospital for it, but I did get a glove ripped off pretty quick. Uh, so, yeah, careful out there. But uh, she knows what she's doing as she goes down one of these faster sections of the bike course. And she makes her way down this rolling section. She's gone back past Lauren Brandon to take the lead. Uh, and we will see these two women continue to charge at the front of this race. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go away. Lots of racing still to come. We'll be right back in just a minute.
Welcome back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt. You're watching Beck Clark lead Lauren Brandon as they make their way through one of these awesome villages off the main part um, of the bike course, the full gas bike course here. One of the really special features to this full gas bike course here in Frankfurt. Uh, you're out on a sort of a main road, but then dive off to take in the atmosphere in each of these fantastic villages. And Beck Clark navigating this more technical section um, as Lauren Brandon follows her line and follows suit. There you go, thumbs up from the cameraman. Uh, they're <laughs> both doing a great job. Uh, we do see uh, Didi through that 57 kilometer mark, another 30 seconds or so. That chase group has pulled back on our leaders and about the same, uh, Daniela has pulled back on the leaders as well. So uh, things staying coming together. pretty, pretty yeah. similar, but uh, yeah, moving around a little. Moving, moving up towards the front of yeah. the race anyway. And if you're intrigued by some of the racing that you're seeing here, think you want to go ahead and enter one of these awesome Ironman races, but unsure of what your schedule may be, I want to keep you aware of our Flex 90 program, which allows athletes that register in the first 90 days that registration is open, the flexibility to defer transfer or receive a partial refund if you are no longer able to participate in your race. You can enact these benefits up until 45 days before your race. So if your plans change, your race can too. So be sure to check out the Flex 90 program at ironman.com slash early slash benefits. Yeah, pretty cool uh, program. I think that Ironman's put together gives a little less stress. Yes. If you uh, think, think ahead, which I'm not very good at thinking ahead. <laughs> Plan ahead. <laughs> But uh, yeah, good stuff. Um, definitely planned ahead by uh, Rebecca Clark was to be at the front of this race. And uh, you know she put the work in to make sure she was able to get there. And uh, she's swapping turns with Lauren Brandon. And again, a comfortable two minutes and six seconds over Sarah True. And then four and a half minutes uh, to kind of that bulk chasing group and a further three minutes to Daniela Blemhel. Uh, but uh, you know, all pretty consistent. We're not seeing any huge movers up or back at this point when it comes to our top 10, but it is kind of solidified. Uh, Daniela Blemhel has moved into the top 10. So all of our favorites at this point, our pre-race favorites, as far as I the, can see, are yeah, on the top 10. Are now in the top 10, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, exactly. And when we talk about those race favorites, if we talk about Sarah True, uh, we talk about Maya Stodge Nielsen was second at Texas, Sky Munch, obviously, um, Sarah Svink, who haven't, talked an awful lot about but she's had a period of um injury and illness so she is very excited to be here uh racing against some of these uh powerhouse women and of course uh daniela blimel who is our defending champion here in frankfurt yeah i mean a, a super class field and you know we often would expect you know there's always attrition to some extent uh you know early in a race and we haven't really seen that we had one drop out on the swim one drop out yep uh, but that's that's about it. So to see everybody, you know, six or seven of this top ten right now are, are pre-race favorites. So uh, pretty pretty consistent there as we uh, get back to Maya Stodge Nielsen uh, at the front and uh, definitely moving through through this section of the course pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, this is just a recap of Maya going back to the front of that group. This is a, a group of five. Uh, Maya, Carolyn, Lear Ryder, Sky Munch in that group. Uh, Jersik out of Poland and Nina Darren. Um, so just some back and forth and Maya wanting to be in control. It could be very calculated as they go through sort of the more technical sure. sections. Uh, you might want to be in front of or behind. We saw that with Beck Clark moving ahead of Lauren Brandon. Not surprising, Lauren probably not as strong a rider through some of the technical sections. Yeah. Maya might have thought, okay, here comes a, a, a twisty, turny section of the course. I think I'm stronger technically. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the front and lead the way on this one. Yeah, and that's why we see, you know, generally groups move through the field and gain time back right is that you've got someone who's really good at flat fast sections that when you get to one and you're not going fast they go to the front they're like come on guys let's go and on somebody who's better at hills and somebody who's better at descent so you you see people kind of uh inject speed at different sections where when you're in a group of two or by yourself it's just kind of a steady state the whole time and Maya looking very, very good. Um, again, not a super swim. She was back a little bit further than she might have liked out of the swim, as was this woman, uh, Daniela Blymel, who now makes her first appearance inside the top 10 today. Yeah, and but you know, back to Maya, I think, again, she looked the most composed, but also the most, um, 
you know, she, she wanted to be moving forward. You could tell she had impetus to chase. She wants to be at the front of the race. She did so in a composed manner. When she had that issue in the swim, she stopped, cleared her goggles. Where am I going? Okay, keep moving. But she seemed like the one that was like very much like craving to be closer to the front of the race. So I'm not surprised that she's injecting this pace. Yeah. And, and Blymel as well, knowing, well, Blymel is out of necessity because she was pretty darn far back after that swim, but has been composed in her application of effort oh, and for not sure. reckless. Uh, she is, on paper, I would argue, probably the strongest cyclist yes. in, in the field today um, as, as in terms of pure cycling ability. So uh, just using that, using that strength to reinsert herself back into the conversation and back into the possibility to defend here in Frankfurt. Yeah, no, I think uh, very well said. And I think, yeah, if you look at, if you're with her and her coach, when they're looking at power files, there's going to be a lot of like head nods. Like, yep, that was, that was right. Very smooth, very smooth. And Where, this, this may be our first, what is that bib number there? Um, can't quite, I can't, can't quite, quite get there. It Repo- it's either a 10, zero, 20. It's a 20. It's a 20. It's a 20. <laughs> oh, my eyes are terrible. Uh, my eyes are terrible, but uh, Blymel's got some, some company out there, which is helpful. It may just ultimately be um, another athlete to sort of, I don't want to say pick off, but sort of pick off and, and chart her progress towards um, towards the front of the race. Yeah, but just like That's, anybody it's, else. It's Laura Jansen. It's Laura Jansen, um, another German athlete, um, not rated. This must be her first. She has no Ironman uh, pro races to her credit, So, uh, but she's got pretty good company when, uh, when Daniela Blymel's <laughs> for sure yeah and no matter your door. no matter who you are and if you're riding well like Daniela is, is is gonna you know you get some energy from being around another person right so it's gonna gonna boost her up uh, for sure and um, you know this athlete is is having a great ride at this point as we see her get to that kind of quote unquote technical section that we saw uh, my uh, Staj Nielsen move to the front in. yeah that was not that long ago I have not yet seen Sarah Sphinx so I think she is somewhere in the mix, obviously between the two groups. So I she believe is, that yes. so this athlete that we're watching, Laura, riding with Daniela Blymel, Sarah Sphinx, somewhere in sort of in between in the quote unquote no woman's territory. Yeah. On her own. Yeah. From what what we've seen on course, she's about a minute behind uh, that that first group, and at this point, probably about a minute and a half in front of these uh, two women on screen. So Sarah Svank and Sarah True actually are two sort of in no man's land athletes uh, wedged between uh, pairs and larger bunches as the dynamic continues to unfold here in Frankfurt. Yeah, there we go. Again, Laura Jansen on screen from Germany. Uh, she's was fourth at Ironman 70.3 Switzerland uh, not long ago at all, just a few weeks ago, seventh at Kreischau, uh, not seeing any Ironman results, as you said, but a uh, pretty consistent 70.3 athlete kind of in that uh, fourth to, to eighth uh, zone, a, a good runner. Um, so she's able to put a good bike together, you know, and it, sometimes the first time ignorance is bliss. Yes. Uh, but, you know, she's a low 120 runner. You know, that could translate to a, a low 250 your first time yep. out if you don't know any better. <laughs> right? Well, and again, a smart move. If yeah. you're going to do your first Ironman, do it in your home country where you're going to have an awful lot of support out yep. there. As we look back at our chase group and some of the dynamics, some conversations there going on between Carolyn Learider and uh, Maya Stage Nielsen. Um, maybe just communicating about, you know, efforts or taking pulls or taking turns or potentially gaps and and how they're doing and how the race is unfolding, but a little bit of communication within the the women's chase group here. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Lord Jansen is actually, you know, is one of the quicker uh, movers on course, or at least through some of that later section, she was uh, about 25 seconds behind Daniela Blemhel. So she's moved up and is uh, having a great bike ride and, and clearly using some of those faster technical sections to to put her kind of effort in to move to this uh, second chase group. As we watch Carolyn Learider exit the village and back out onto one of the straighter sections of this course, it's always just still so fascinating to me that for a major European city that you get this this rural that quickly that outside quick. of the city. It's it's remarkable. Oh, for sure. As we see Lauren Brandon uh, just a second or so behind Rebecca Clark, uh, having a great ride, staying smooth. And again, these two athletes doing their best to hold off 
obviously doing a great job holding off at this point Sarah Chu she hasn't really made up any time on them but they're certainly you know trying to hold off this chase group as long as possible because at some point it's quite likely that it's going to go from a group of two to possibly a group of eight uh seven or eight athletes kind of all together once these groups come, come together so uh hopefully they're enjoying their kind of solo-ish time uh, with those two athletes uh, spending a lot of time just uh, with each other, uh, setting that smooth pace because things will, the vibe will change drastically uh, when this group of two or if this group of two changes to a group of eight or nine. Well, the dynamic will be, yes, hugely different. Both, obviously, physically, there's a change when you've got more athletes around um, sorting out order, uh, who's going to go to the front, etc. But also somewhat emotionally for Lauren Brandon and Beck Clark, who have been battling out at the front. Um, t they may know it's inevitable. They yeah. may have anticipated it. And maybe it's later than they had anticipated. But there's always a little bit of, OK, our time at the front is sure. no more. Yeah, sure. And, and you would ex you would think that they would assume that they probably would not get off this bike ride by themselves with the caliber of field no, that's out there. No, definitely but, not. But yes, to your point, you're always... There would be... An, you're yeah. always comparing, I think, throughout any Ironman, what is happening versus what you sort of anticipated yeah, might sure. happen. And, and even you, you still anticipate seven, eight, nine iterations of what might happen, but there is always expectation. Uh, and so whether or not the catch in the past and the dynamics happen in accordance with expectation or not. Well, and it, and it changes, right? Like, I don't think either of these two athletes would have thought they would have, have had six and a half minutes on the next chase group, right? Sure. So, like, they're like, okay, well, that happened. Maybe we do lead off the bike. And, uh, you know, that that changes. But I, I do think it's somewhat inevitable that that, that first chase group uh, bridges up to these uh, women, but they're doing a great job at this point, and uh, Beck Clark certainly uh, showing her strength at the front of the course at this point, and uh, Lauren Brandon, no uh, surprise to see her, uh, you know, hanging on as as long as she can, and again, just kind of putting in uh, performances sh so she can feel confident uh, going into that uh, World Championship in October. Well, we talk about sort of as these groups might converge and and when it might happen. We talked very very quickly about. Um, sorry, Laura Jansen being the fastest mover on the course, her average speed over the last uh, little bit, 37.66 kilometers per hour. When you compare that to the woman on screen, Beck Clark, that 35.64 kilometers per hour, that's a pretty significant difference. So uh, definitely these changes in, in paces or these differences in how these athletes have settled in starting to have impact on your overall standing and obviously to, totally and to me it's it's impressive that an athlete that is her first Ironman has 70.3 experience you see her actually getting better after that hour yes right like that's uh you would expect the 70.3 rookie to be the one that to be the one that's most aggressive that goes and, too yes. fast for an hour and then uh kind of uh blows apart so uh she's having a a, a great race and look forward to uh, seeing see, more from her. Seeing yeah. what she does and saying her name a lot more uh, today as she continues to work through the field. But uh, things start to spread out a little bit more after that. We have Marine DeBoer in 12th place, eight minutes down. Uh, Katarina Wolf, uh, 10 minutes, and then the gaps start opening up, 14 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, to our athletes behind that. So I think kind of that top 10, 11, including Laura Jansen, that's uh, most likely where uh, a lot of this race is going to come from. Uh, not to discount uh, Marlene DeBoer, who's the last check was only about 15 seconds behind Lord Jansen. But again, Beck on screen, uh, riding well, running smooth and comfortable. Again, I think in that, in the conditions, uh, maybe she's used to kind of low sixties. Um, but again, this course, especially with that four lap run course to come is opportunity for some very, very fast times today, especially from this woman on screen. Let's see when we get back from this break.
Toolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Full Gas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. And welcome back to our coverage of the Minova Ironman European Championship here in Frankfurt. Uh, we've got on the left-hand side of the screen, Rebecca Clark moving through the front of this race course. Uh, she's been in the lead from the beginning of the, the swim, only taking, a, 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 sorry, beginning of the bike, only taking uh, some breaks behind Lauren Brandon, our swim leader, as we see one of our age groupers on the right-hand side of the screen. Look at that, ducking under that transition area is uh, more flexible than I am. And uh, <laughs> he's got a little bit of a uh, pep in his step, trying to get through that bike ride, made that swim cut off and is, uh, is that my bike? Yep, I think that's it. Take that one, buddy. It's all yours. As I say, you might, you might be thinking that's not my bike, but it's all I got. <laughs> that's amazing. Love it. So uh, it's a great juxtaposition to see uh, Beck Clark on the left-hand side of the screen. You know, we we focus obviously in this race coverage our elite athletes, but it is the age groupers that uh, make up the majority of our racing here at Ironman. He gets a little advice. Don't get on yet. You'll get uh, <laughs> get a penalty just like everybody else. So he gets to that mount line. Uh, he's going to throw that leg over and get on the course. And uh, again, it's uh, anything is possible. And it's often uh, the age groupers that really uh, show us that, not just our professional athletes. So awesome to see that and uh, appreciate that coverage from our, our camera folks. Well, and awesome, just awesome. Also awesome to see the enthusiasm and the support that that oh, athlete yeah. is getting uh, from the first athlete on on course uh, to the last as we check in with our race weather presented by Roca. It is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 18 degrees Celsius. That cloud cover starting to break a little bit. A little There's bit. a few cr few clouds. Sun starting to peek through. The humidity continues to drop now at 71 percent. Wind still negligible at three kilometers per hour now, just out of the south. Yeah, but just five degrees in uh, almost three hours. Yeah. Like that's that's not a lot. I I don't think we could expect to see it get much over uh, seventy here. And and as you said, as that humidity drops, it it's yeah, really it's not going to pretty pretty ideal not gonna feel pretty too ideal bad. racing. Yeah, and I think for, for this woman on screen and someone who's going to have to put a lot of power on that bike ride and then be consistent on that run, uh, put herself out there a little bit. These conditions are great as we do see uh, our lead women going through that 73-kilometer mark. Uh, Beck Clark goes through 153.40 and Lauren Brandon 153.22 for ride time. So we'll see how far back Sarah True and the rest of our women are. But no doubt this woman on screen, you know, it's it, – it, Nothing that we, it doesn't look exciting what she's doing right now, right? But that's that's how you have a fast, consistent bike split. She, I almost guarantee you, she will have the fastest last 40k of anybody on this in this field, and it's because she's just being smooth and consistent. And I say that because she's consistently done that in the past. It's it's sort of interesting too because an athlete of her caliber, as we take a look screen right here, this may be one of our last swimmers uh, making their way out of the Roca swim course. Lots of water support there. Uh, cheering this athlete uh, to make that swim cut off uh, as he gets his feet uh, on to the ground there. Make your way out. Lots of cheers from the crowds there um, at the shoreline for our last athlete coming out of the Roca swim course. Get yourself up. <laughs> get yourself across that timing mat. Oh, man. It's Maybe a... get yourself a Roca swim skin. Yep. Get all the way to that timing, Matt, <laughs> and uh, yeah, take every uh, bit of help you can. But man, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I've been able to beat down at a lot of those uh, swim cutoffs uh, in my career, uh, being lucky enough to do what I do, and it's uh, it's a pretty special place. I tell you the other thing, we just did the weather uh, presented by Roca, and they talked about the wind being negligible, but those banners are blowing quite a bit down there at the swim venue. Yeah, no, they absolutely are. I think it's a uh, pretty, uh, you know, I think one of the shots we had of uh, Maya Stage Nielsen, she was you could see the, the bib number fluttering quite a bit yes. from kind of a side wind. So the wind is coming up just a little bit and uh, we're in studio now. We'll get pictures back to you as soon as we can. You don't want to look at us. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, but we'll, we'll, we'll get, uh, get footage back to you as soon as we can. Um, but oh, uh, it, update though, uh, Sarah true out on course at mile, sorry, 73 kilometer yep. marker, uh, 145. 
down. There we go. Yes. So uh, either the the ladies up front are slowing down just a little bit, or uh, Sarah True's uh, you know sticking to a plan that she had and starting to uh, gas it just a little bit. As we have a shot here, a replay of Maya Stage Nielsen uh, looks like just passing Daniela Blumheld uh, for one of those. Uh, that's oh, sorry, Leah that's Ryder. not Daniela. That's yeah, just that's dynamics yeah. back in the pack. Yeah, yeah. that's that's Leah Ryder back and forth. The blue, you know, I get confused by I colors. Know, I know when they wear the same kit, it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it; it's a sponsor and all, but it kills me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here we go. Maya Stage Nielsen uh, at the front, uh, doing her best to to pull back. But we were, we were speaking of, and you can hear it. Obviously, they're going down a hill, but it's the wind is being buffeted a little bit from the side, so it is moving up a little bit, and that could start to be. Uh, something that affects the race in, in later stages. I think this amount of wind isn't really going to affect things now. No, no, definitely not. And, and typically we will see the wind pick up sort of throughout the day. Um, but I don't think it's going to have impact. I just was noting for oh, as sure. negligible as the wind seemed, the banners down at the swim exit were, oh, totally. were, uh, were blowing quite a bit. As a great overhead shot here of our chasers, Maya Stage, Nielsen, Carolyn Learider, um, Sky Monch in that group, and as they've well. gone. They've gone through, and they're just 320 back as Meyer yep. Stage Nielsen. Uh, so certainly, those two athletes up front are slowing just a little bit. If we're seeing that gap come down from Sarah True, and then consistently from uh, this group behind, so no doubt in the next, you know, 30 or 40 k, we're probably going to see uh, this group come together. Uh, Sarah True is probably going to get caught up a little bit uh, before that, but again. Uh, going to wait and see where the splits are for uh, Daniela Blemhel and uh, Jansen as well. So uh, definitely uh, some movement happening there, and the race is coming together. And But it's taken almost 80 kilometers for that swim gap to, to become what we kind of thought it was going to be out of the swim. But a great overhead shot here. But plenty more racing to come, definitely more action from this woman on screen after this commercial break. to the Minova Ironman European Championship here in Frankfurt. Nice overhead shot. I believe this is uh, Sarah True. Uh, she's one we've seen, kind of this dark blue uh, black kit, and she's made up time on our leaders, so she's about a minute and 45 seconds back, but bad news is uh, the athletes behind her are making up even more time, but I think she would expect that, or certainly from what she's seen in the last little bit. And I think, Dee, what we had talked about earlier is you know, your pre-race plans are one thing, and then you have good uh, intentions, and your head's in a good spot, and then you come out with like a six-minute lead. You're like, maybe I'm gonna go wire to wire, right? And then you're probably talking yourself into, no, my plan was to have a good bike ride and then have a running race. And I think Sarah True will be confident enough in her run to start with these women and have a good run. And how much she is uh, balancing at the moment between school, parenthood, married to a professional runner. Yeah. She, she, she juggles an awful lot and, and sort of, so we haven't seen her race a whole lot, but when we did see her race, it was at Chattanooga and we never really saw her feature on the bike. Right. And she made a run for it, ran 120.44 on that course. Yeah. Just off the podium. So I think she, I'll, I'll have to look back, but I think she had one of the faster run splits on the day there. So I think she's confident in what she's raced so far that her run is absolutely solid. For sure. And let's not forget that was a few months ago now, or almost a few months ago, right? Uh, I could be wrong. You're looking end of at May. me like yep. I'm wrong. Oh, end of May. That's not that long ago. Time flies when you're watching triathlon. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of that first effort. So that fast of a runtime kind of 
you know, first one of the year, yeah. that, that shows you that you got some in the tank. We did just see Laura Jansen uh, go through in 630. Uh, so right behind, you can see on screen, Danielle Blemhel at 629. So those athletes actually haven't made up really any time on that front group. They're pretty much riding the same pace as that, not front group, excuse me, that chase, chase group. group. They have been consistently about three minutes back yep. for the last bit, which is fine because that chase group is moving up on the front of the race. And generally you'll see things stall when the group catches the front. You'll see everybody's might start looking around a little bit more. I have a a theory or a hunch that uh, Maja Stage Nielsen might continue to push the pace. She just seems like she has that in her today. And I think... Well, we've seen it's Maja Stage and, and Carolyn Learider have been at the front of that group the whole time. And they're, thinking, and forth, about, and they're thinking about this woman yes. on screen. They're not too worried about the ones in yep. front. They're worried about her. They do have to obviously... Well, this whole time they've got Sky in the group, right? Yep. Like they obviously have to worry about her. And, and Sky, well, Sky doesn't seem to be worried about doing that much work. That's, no. I guess, my point is that it's been Carolyn and Maya at the front back and forth yep. of this group of five. But the other athlete who's quietly just sort of sitting there is Sarah Svink, and she is now less than a minute from that group of five. So she is chipping away at this group, as is Blymel trying to make inroads. But Sarah Svink will catch this group, I think, first. I think that's the first oh, coming together right. of the groups is going to be uh, Sarah Svink catching the chase group. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right for sure. And it, uh, I don't think it'll take that long for Daniela to catch behind, but I think you're... I think you're right for sure. Um, and if you're looking for rest and relaxation and a great racing experience, Always. yeah, then come race Ironman 70.3 Erkner on September 10th. It's just a stone's throw from the German capital of Berlin and yet hidden deep in the Bradenburg forest that lies the charming small town of Erkner. Be amazed by the idyllic landscapes of the Oder Spree region with its wide meadows, impressive forests, and dreamlike lakes. Don't miss out. Register now at Ironman.com slash I am Europe. Yeah, Some looks great like, scenery there. It's beautiful. Looks like they have a good time, too. Uh, having a good time, uh, literally, uh, the two women at the <laughs> front uh, of this course just hitting about three hours in our race so far today. Uh, the women that, you know, put the effort in early on the swim uh, got that gap and are, uh, you know, enjoying the luxuries of being able to kind of set their own pace for a while because things might start getting not chaotic but once that group catches they're going to be in the 90k 100k range and that's where people start getting tired right and so if you've been riding to hold the pace of those around you and then somebody puts an effort in and in my opinion you never know but often it'll be someone like Sky Monch, who you haven't seen do much. Yes. That's, they're like, okay, let's wait till it comes together, then I'll do my and thing. Then, and then I'll, I'll try to disrupt it and, and make a move so that this group that could be potentially eight people That's a lot. Uh, pretty shortly um, isn't eight people for long. Yep. Um, as we look at, I believe that's Sarah True yep. chasing uh, with Lauren Brandon and Beck Clark at the front. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but don't go away because we'll be right back with so much more racing still to come here in Frankfurt. Back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt. You're watching Sarah True, who's been sitting alone in third place. She was third place in the swim, had the company of Lauren Bandon, Brandon and uh, Rebecca Clark. Gave up an awful lot of time almost immediately on the bike. We're not sure why, but she's sort of been sitting back. Uh, the gap to the lead to women was as much as 2 minutes 12, I believe, and now down to a minute 39 seconds. 
Yeah, no, and it's, uh, you know, she pulled back another six seconds in the last uh, three or four kilometers, so uh, continuing to move forward. And she's going to start seeing, maybe she won't see the athletes necessarily, but she'll see the motos that are next to the athletes. She'll see this helicopter that's got the shot, and that makes things feel pretty close. As far as Sarah is concerned, like, this helicopter will feel like it's right on top of her. Oh, sure. So she knows that she's she's quite close. Uh, so good things for her, positive uh, encouragement uh, from outside sources. And, uh, again, she's she's going to get caught uh, by this group behind unless she's been uh, saving a huge move uh, that is uncharacteristic uh, for her. But I, she's an athlete that's going to be confident in her run with this field, I think. Uh, I think Sky being the bigger concern for her on the run at this point uh, – Blemhel clearly will be as well, but right now she's uh, still in arrears. But Sarah has proven to herself that uh, she can outrun Sky, uh, most notably last time in Ironman Arizona, where they just kind of went toe to toe, and Sarah just kept driving it. It was that was an amazing, amazing race. Yeah, and 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 Sarah knows she's running well. I mean, her performance at Chattanooga confirms that. Um, so I think she's confident in that. And to your point, not disrespecting Lauren Brandon and and Beck Clark, no. but. Uh, on paper, Sarah's got their number once they start running. We've got the the great thing about triathlon is we know anybody can break through on any day. Yes. But we also have all this data on what these people have done in the past. Right. And anything we're saying is on somebody's best day and somebody else's best day, this person's best. Yes. Somebody's always going to have a bad day or a better day. Um, but on paper, I'd say Sarah Sarah is is kind of that runner, and um, you know at times she can move around on the bike where it seems like she's not as confident. Like I feel in Chattanooga, she lost a little bit of time uh, on the bike that was maybe surprising at times, but she was able to get it back, as you said, on the run. But she's always there. And I mean, how long ago was her fourth place at the Olympics? Like the um, length of time that she's been at this very, very elite level of triathlon yes. is staggering. Like it's like 20 and, years. And across multiple distances. I mean, totally. obviously fourth place at the Olympics, great 70.3 athlete as well and has been uh, like fourth on debut at the Ironman World Championship you know for the Ironman distance so just a hugely talented athlete um, across all distances Um, it's an extraordinary career yeah I mean that 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 Olympic Games fourth was in 2012 yep that's 13 years ago and the uh, the amount and the the time it takes to get an athlete to a fourth place before 2012, yep. I mean, she's been grinding since early aughts, right? So uh, she has more experience and kind of race savvy. And when you combine that with that stubbornness I spoke of and confidence and uh, belief in the, um, you know, kind of the system she's working within, she's a tough athlete to beat. And I still think. Well, she's she's also sort of a no time to waste kind of athlete. I, she's not 100%. here. To, to have a, a new experience. She's raced in Frankfurt. Um, I believe it was one of her first Ironmans. Uh, she's had good races here. She's had horrible races here. And yes. we'll talk about that yeah. likely later um, into the race. She's not here to have a new cultural experience. She's not here to... She's here because she's racing the best. She has a finite amount of time to get this race in before she's got to go home, get back to her son, get back to her husband, get back to her schoolwork. Yeah. Um, and, and so she is very, very, very focused on the task at hand. There's not a lot of foof in her life. No, and I mean, that that uh, race that you spoke of, her first Ironman here, you know, she was second place to Daniela Reef. Yeah. Right? Like, and, and then she went straight away a few months later to Kona and was fourth place there. So like, and then, you know, we spoke of kind of that year where she had some bad luck, that DNF uh, here very late leading the race. And uh, then you can see she's gotten back into that consistent uh, racing that she's had and uh, just just a great athlete to watch. But a lot of other great athletes out here on course have gone through that 77 kilometer mark. So now that the gap is under three minutes, Uh, to everyone in that chase group uh, with Sarah Spence still one minute exactly uh, behind uh, that group at four minutes back and still exactly three minutes back, Daniela Blemhel. And to me, that states, you know, we're talking about kind of that momentum gained by being in a group. Yes. And Daniela's just like Pac-Man, just chomp, 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 just super steady, moving the whole time, as is the woman on screen. Like, she's stayed very, very consistent and you know, being in that no woman's land is a tough place to be. And it's, it's tough to be confident there. And 
hats off to Sarah True and uh, Svensk for doing the same thing. Well, so here's my question. When Sarah True, assuming Sarah gets gobbled up by the group of five, yeah. number one, does it happen before or after they all catch the lead two? Yep. Question number two, <laughs> when Sarah gets caught by the group, is she surprised by how large it is still at this stage of the race? Uh, I don't think I don't think it'll phase her, and I think she will get caught before she catches the front of this group. Um, you, she might even look over her shoulder and, and see that. Uh, but I think uh, Sarah Spence is the other one that's kind of like again, she's right in that minute between. Yep. She's probably going to catch that group at some point, and then kind of kick herself because Daniela Blemhill is probably going to catch within like a couple miles, right? So it always feels like you do a bunch of work. But speaking of Sarah, you know our great uh, crew down at AFC was able to. Uh, get some words with her coming into race week. So let's go down and see what Sarah had to say, had to say about coming in. And the three words I would describe triathlon with is power, heart, and dedication. Oh, wow, yeah, I always wanted to race Frankfurt. It's always been one of my bucket list races. But unfortunately, it has never fitted into my calendar or I've been injured or sick. But this year, it fitted very well and I'm healthy and I'm ready to race. My very, very first, first like trial triathlon was in my neighborhood actually. And it was a disaster. I, I remember the swim and I was terrified. I was swimming underwater, trying to avoid all the crowd. And still it was a little, little race and it was just a sprint one. I thought it was super fun and I wanted to do it again. And then my first Ironman was in 2016. Yeah. So I went, actually I went straight to the professional field. I never raced as an age group. Oh, there are a lot of good, good girls here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's the better field the more the more fun it is definitely yeah well then she must be having a ton of fun because she said that the deeper the field the more fun it is so she's having a ton of fun you know she's an athlete that i've got my my eyes on she's had a rough couple of years she was quite ill um she had covid back in 2021 and it, that led to some uh heart issues um she had a uh, something called angina pectoris, uh, where apparently the heart was not getting enough blood, and that was a huge setback. She's had a foot injury, um, and um, she is another one in the field that has a new coach, so a sort of a fresh start and a fresh perspective, and uh, having a go at it. And she's about to merge with this larger group and, and, and having a super race. No, she is, and when she's racing her best, she's one of the better runners yes. in this field, yep. right? Um, so you can't you can't look past uh, Sarah, Spence, Sarah Spence to be one of the players uh, late in the stage of this race today. But certainly on screen, Daniela Blemhelt uh, is one we expect to see later in the race, uh, having very consistent ride at this point. Again, staying about three minutes behind uh, that chase group for the majority of this ride uh, to this point. Yeah, I mean, I would love in theory for for. <laughs> Uh, Daniela to bridge that gap to the chase group of women by the time they get back into town because I think the bigger crowds in town would go nuts to see uh, the defending champ and the local sort of hero um, back in the mix but uh, still quietly stalking at three minutes back. Yeah and uh, staying, staying consistent and again looking smooth as she does and uh, Laura Jansen is a little bit back. She's lost about eight seconds so still in that range but not like easily connected uh to blumhell at this point uh but still right there and having a great race in 11th place just six minutes and 14 seconds back from the leaders and waiting for the athletes now at 91.1 kilometers so making their way back towards town uh, on this two loop bike course uh, a little bit long 113 miles here in frankfurt uh, just to get all the way around the course, uh, but lots of spectacular uh, crowd support out there at the various villages that uh, dot the main part of this full gas bike course. Oh, for sure. And then, uh, you know, those spectators, again, once we get to the run, it uh, kind of changes oh, next level, changes the level for sure. Uh, as we can see this great information uh, through 76.7K, what Daniela Blumhell is doing. But back on screen with Sarah True, uh, 301, 19 through that 76.7 K mark. And again, she's moving up on those first two 
uh, women as she's looking at uh, her power meter, make sure she's staying in the range that she's trained for. But uh, yeah, it looks comfortable. You can see it, kind of that soft jaw, uh, no, no real stress there. She's not pressing necessarily. And again, that kind of Ironman effort that's that's about visually what Ironman bike pace looks like looks to me, like, right? Yeah. You're kind of going, but you're not really going, it's, but it, you're kind of right. going. You're not relaxed. I mean, at this stage of the bike, I hope these athletes are still saying, hold it back, hold it yes. back, hold Great. it back, Great hold point. it back. I mean, yep. it, it, it's almost like they cross a line at some point, uh, hopefully well after the halfway point where that holding back is pushing to still achieve that same number on the power meter. But at this stage control, control, control. I feel good. I feel comfortable. I have another year if I need it, but this is all I need to do right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's, you know, for those watching at home, that's how you want to want to race. You want to always feel like you can kind of get on the throttle, you know, last third or last quarter of the race. And if you don't feel like you can, you've probably Done spent, spent too, too many much. chips. Yep. Really. Yeah, but she looks she looks good. She looks relaxed. Looking up the road to see, sort of straining the get, are they there? Can I see them? Um, certainly, some of the lead vehicles. She'll be getting possibly some cheers, possibly some some splits. Um, one of the probably downsides to being a foreign athlete coming here to race in Frankfurt, you're not going to get quite the same shouts and cheers that certainly the local German athletes are going to get. This is yeah. one country that. Um, triathlon is insanely popular. Oh, for um, sure. And they're going to give a lot of extra support to those to those German athletes, no doubt. No doubt. And one of those German athletes, uh, as you see Beck Clark passing Lauren Brandon, is Daniela Blemheld. And Didi, I just went through and looked at uh, you know kind of her pace and where she's at now. We said she's very consistent. Her split last year to win this race on the bike was 4:46:47. If she stays on pace as she's on right now. It's 4:46:33. Wow. Um, so she's she's got a plan. She's sticking to it. We never know if these uh, you know uh, projections always pan out, but she's on a pace that she knows that she can ride well and then have a great run off and, and win the race. So uh, we'll see how that plan goes after this commercial break. To the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt. You're looking at race leaders Rebecca Clark from New Zealand and Lauren Brandon from the United States. These two have been never more than further <laughs> apart than they are right now uh, since the start of this race. Uh, Lauren led the swim, and Beck Clark happy to sit on her feet. And the pair have been going back and forth uh, since they started the bike. Yeah, absolutely. And, and keeping that, you know, couple second difference, not uh, ever really getting uh, anything close to people thinking maybe they're drafting and uh, just kind of using each other's motivation. And again, very well matched, I think, yep. uh, for all three disciplines, really. Uh, I think Beck Clark having a great uh, swim to be able to uh, swim with Lauren Brandon here today. And uh, Lauren Brandon is going to be excited to have uh, her as company and vice versa with Beck Clark. But uh, a lot of racing left to go. But this, these two athletes up front have been setting that pace all of the day uh, with those two, but the faster pace has been being set from behind yes. of athletes like Maya Staj Nielsen and Carolyn Lefrider. Uh, and this woman on screen, very consistent. She's not the fastest at this point, but about the same split as that chase group consistently throughout the day. You know, you made the interesting point that uh, Daniela Blymel holding almost nearly identical Pretty speeds much. Uh, to what she did a year ago on this course when she was able to come away with the win, but 
the dynamics play such a role. And we talk about this group of five being more powerful uh, as a group of five than, than one on their own. Uh, taking turns, Carolyn Learider uh, and Maya Stage Nielsen doing a lion's share of the work at the front. Haven't seen Nina Darren doing any work. Haven't seen Sky Munch at the front and certainly haven't seen Jersik at the front. Um, strategic choices from those sitting on to Maya Stage and Carolyn who are really trying to drive the pace here. To, to shut down that that gap, but that dynamic being so different to the what it was a year ago, even the same pace may just not be enough. And she doesn't seem to be making many inroads yet to that group. No, not really. And you can see she is straining a little bit, so she is, is pushing the pace. And the fields are different, right? I mean, right. and I'm not taking anything away from her win last year because you raced the field, but this field being the Women's uh, European Championship, there's a lot more competitors out there that she needs to uh, try to beat. And she, you know, she welcomes that challenge. She, she's got the bib number one and uh, kind of the local vibes here. She gets uh, passed by one of our first age group men that uh, started started behind her. Uh, but, uh, yeah, still continuing to have a very consistent consistent ride. And, of course, all of these athletes trying to put, uh, put a pin on the map to see where they're at at this stage in the season as after this, they will move forward and take a look at where they're at in preparation for world championship season. And for the first time ever, Matt, the VinFast Ironman World Championship will be co-hosted in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii and Nice, France. The best professional male and age group athletes from around the world will descend on Nice. The spotlight will shine bright from, on the best female professional athletes and age group athletes in Kailua, Kona. These iconic locations have vast history in triathlon and embrace the community of triathletes. It's going to be an iconic race in an iconic location. The home and course of many, many champions fought out. It must be nice to be in Nice if you're Mark Allen. I had the opportunity to compete in my first Ironman World Championships in 2022 in Kona on the Big Island, and it was a dream come true for me. It is one of my favorite places in the world, and I feel such a spiritual connection with the island. I am personally very, very excited to be there. A race the course is going to be challenging. Kelly, hence why I'm in the hills preparing already for it. But I tell you what, no one knows how to put on a triathlon party quite like the French. The race venue is amazing, but what makes it so special is the community there and how they embrace triathletes and also our community of triathlon that gathers there every year. So I'm sure we're going to be in for a treat. Looking forward to a beautiful course in the Mediterranean. I've had the pleasure of living there for a few years and I can tell you it's going to be spectacular and worth preparing for. I felt so proud to be representing myself, my family, my daughter, and my teammates out on LE Drive and on the Queen K. Looking forward to seeing you there. Enjoy the celebrations and even more the preparations. See you then. Join me there in 2023 to enjoy the magic that is the Big Island during race week. Looking forward to world oh, yeah. championship season, I tell you. Uh, so am I. Can't wait to be out on course uh, watching uh, this and historic. A historic lot of these year. athletes have yet. To, a lot of these athletes have qualified. A lot of our favorites in the race have qualified, but a lot of athletes still hadn't. And in this professional women's only race, there are four qualifying slots up for grabs, which is super exciting for a lot of these women yeah. who we haven't actually been talking about because they're not some of our race favorites. Because so many of our race favorites. Ha already have slots, but as of right now, um, Jersik is sitting in a Kona slot, as is Sarah Svank, and those are two athletes in our top 10 so far uh, who need slots. Uh, I believe Nina Darren also needs a slot. So Jansen. Um, Jansen. So, yeah, a lot of the athletes that um, 
are in contention right now have a lot more to race for than quote unquote just the podium. A lot of our athletes racing for the podium and other motivations, but a, but a handful of these athletes four qualifying slots up for grabs. No, there's so many different reasons to come race a race like this. And that's one of the reasons I'm so impressed with uh, the woman on screen and uh, the other two uh, American favorites in the top 10 is making this big journey. And uh, Beck Clark, for that matter, too, to go to a race where you've already qualified. Yes. Right? You could go to a race that's maybe easier to try to win. Uh, but again, I think all these women uh, going for that European championship, but also going to it's not just about getting to Kona once you get to the, this, these women's level. It's about going there. How and am I going to beat these women exactly. on the biggest stage? And you want to go to these regional championship races, sort of the next biggest yep. stage. Yep. Yes. You, you're not going to learn how to beat the best by racing less than the best. Yes. Right? Um, but right now on screen, uh, we've got, uh, I think, believe that's uh, Beck still on the left side of the screen and Sarah Chu on the right side of the screen. Um, Getting, getting closer together for sure. We're going to just another few minutes till we get to that 91 kilometer mark to go. And 91, Didi, halfway. Yeah. There is a lot of bike riding uh, left to go. Certainly a lot left uh, in this race in total left to go. But uh, and again, while it seems like not that much has happened, a lot of the script is, is starting to write itself. The gaps out of the swim way larger than we crazy. ever would have anticipated. Some of that strategic error from one of the chase groups, uh, just not a great swim from Dan Daniela Blymel yep. um, wearing bib number one. So a lot of work to do, but now it's sort of converging in some of the stronger cyclists. We see Carolyn Learire and Maya Stage um, really driving that chase group uh, with Nina Darren, Sky Munch, and, and Jersik out of Poland. Uh, those three have been taking advantage of the work that Maya Stage and Carolyn Learire are doing. Sarah Svenk, all by herself, reinserting herself back into the top 10 and uh, very close to that group. And of course, Daniela Blymel trying to nose her way back in to, to, to factor in. Oh, absolutely. And uh, again, she's doing so in a consistent manner. Um, again, you know, noting her, her pace and her split from last year, she knows that that's something that she can ride and have a good run off of. And, and let's not forget what you mentioned is that, you know, she's been getting over a, a calf injury. So yes. you, you normally can't you normally don't want to overdo the bike because your run's going to suffer, but certainly if you're trying to uh, make sure a calf doesn't lock up or get, uh, you know, annoyed uh, late in the run, you want to make sure you don't overbike. So she's she's being consistent. And uh, and honestly, how, as have the rest of the women in the top 10. No huge moves, right? Like we're not seeing any, yeah. like, gaps going down by two minutes quick of someone that's overextending themselves or anybody blowing up at this point. It's all been pretty consistent. Nothing much has changed. I mean, I think Sarah True has went back a little bit. Now she's going forward. But besides that, everybody's kind of maintained a, a similar ascension through the field. As would be expected for athletes of this caliber. Sure. Again, we talked about where Daniela Blymel's headspace may be and that these gaps aren't coming down the way she might want. Um, but when you're dealing with athletes of this caliber, anyone can ride those 90Ks really well. It's, it's later in the race um, where errors earlier are going to get magnified and where sort of the, the cream rises to the top, so to speak. And, and some of these true strong cyclists will be able to use that strength against someone that maybe has overspent in the, in the early stages. Yeah, for sure. As we see uh, Clark having a, having a good ride here, uh, getting up one of these little rollers and this overhead shot, it seemed like she was maybe opening a, a gap a little bit more than had been, but it does look like Sarah True's actually on the same Climb, Stretch, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, getting getting a little bit closer hasn't hit uh, the steeper sections yet. But uh, curious to see if things start to open up. I, I might have just been seeing things there with that overhead shot, but it looked like things were stretching just a bit, and that's where about where we'd expect. Maybe a little early, uh, halfway through. You know, somebody would have to be overextending a fair bit to really start falling off the pace. But uh, about here forward is when we're going to start seeing the gaps uh, going uh, either direction. But yeah, this does look like uh, Sarah Trues on that uh, same stretch of road. I, again, I'm just struck by those stats that, you know, we had uh, we had the headshot there of, of Sarah True and, and looking at her results from yeah. last year. And while her 
volume of racing is down a bit because of all that she's she's juggling at home. Her record of racing is her percentage of success. Her hit rate is, is pretty high. Pretty high. <laughs> I mean, we're looking at a win at Arizona, a win at Lake Placid, a win at Eagle Man all last year. The obvious DNF in Kona. Uh, she was doubtful to even start that. She was unwell during oh. race week. Yeah. Uh, the fact that she even started. In retrospect, probably a little bit of, of a mistake, but yeah. that is her the only blemish on her, her resume from the last year. So I, I did notice uh, something there, and it was Lauren Brandon getting a distance by Rebecca Clark. So 10, 10 seconds, seconds now through 91 kilometers. So things have, have started to move. So we're going to see Lauren Brandon probably come back to a Sarah True here pretty quickly. Um, well, not that quickly. There's still a little bit of a gap. We'll see what the, the time is uh, here really, really sh uh, shortly. But uh, again, this is kind of the time in the race where the you know we can see who's overextended yep. or who's a little bit tired. Well, and we also talked about it in the swim, and we thought it would happen that Lauren Brandon could take a meter and turn that into 25, 30, 50 meters in, in yeah. no time at oh, all. Totally. It didn't end up working out that way, but this 10 seconds that Rebecca Clark has very quickly. Oh, no points for you, no Sarah points. True. Zero points. But points for her moving back uh, up through the field. Yes. 51 seconds back yep. now. So she's made up a, a, a fair bit of time in the last 15K. So uh, she's going to see the fact that Lauren Brandon was popped off uh, the back of Rebecca Clark and continue to move forward. And she's going to feel good about But Maya Stage Nielsen won 20 back. So just 30 seconds back behind of, Sarah yep. True. So, and that whole group. It's all coming together. whole group behind it's her. It's all happening. It's all happening. Uh, and so she is going to get caught before she catches Rebecca Clark, most likely. Uh, probably the same for Lauren Brandon. But again, once it starts coming together, it's going to be interesting to see if we see some stalling from the front. If like uh, Maya Stage Nielsen and Carolyn Lettrider say, okay, we've done all this work. Now we're going to settle in. Everybody's here. And if in that moment we're going to see maybe a sky, sky. make an effort or yep. if everybody's just riding and it's going to stay the same. But I said they're, they're well, to your sorry, I just no, totally please. ran you over. But no. it's sort of one of two mentalities. Yeah, everyone's here. This is it. But the only person who isn't there is your defending champion. For sure. But I think they will know, you know, the field that she beat last year and, and that she's got a little bit of injury. So maybe they're they're confident. You know, she won with the 312 last year. That's not going to win today. No. Um, and no offense to her at all, but it, that it just isn't. Um, but I do think it's a little early for these groups to come together and like the big power moves to come. I think, you know, 90 K in halfway through, you're not really to the point where some of these other athletes are fatigued enough. So if you make a move and it doesn't stick, that could affect your confidence. Where if you wait till, you know, 75 or 80 miles, that's when the other athletes tend to be a little bit softer. And you well, can right. Away. Will there be complacency that everybody's here mm -hmm. now we can just sort of settle and ride? Yeah. Or to your point, does Sky say, okay, now I have to do something more aggressive to so that we don't come into T2 as a group of, 10 or 12. For sure. And Sarah Sphinx is 25 seconds behind that group now. So she's moving up. She's yep. now the fastest mover on course. And so pretty soon we're going to have nine athletes and we can't, you can never underestimate Sarah Sphinx. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, you are going to have this group of nine come together and the possibility for what we were saying, the group dynamics of drafting and that stress yes. of avoiding these penalties, that is 100% well, going to be a factor. Particularly in some of these more technical sections of the course. I mean, we've seen it through the first lap. We've gotten a little bit of a preview that you're on a motorway as they are now, but then you suddenly peel off and have a more technical section through a, a smaller right. village along yeah, yeah. the way. Those are going to be opportunities for some of your stronger technical riders. We've seen Maya Stage try to take advantage of that. Uh, certainly Leah Ryder, um, very good technically on the bike um, to take advantage of some of those opportunities within the larger group if when it comes together. No, absolutely. And we'll see if it comes together. And I think it will pretty close uh, to when we get back from this commercial break.
Coolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Full Gas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. And here we go. Welcome back to our coverage of the Manova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. As we see these groups come together on screen right now, we've got Sky Monch. Uh, looks like she's uh, leading this group at this point. They can they can smell blood in the water, Dee. Uh, <laughs> they see Sarah True up the road. They see that Lauren Brandon has uh, been a little bit distance. That's uh, Carolyn uh, Lefrider uh, as well. And at the front, it is. What athlete was that? Deeran, I believe. That's Deeran in the blue with yeah. the pink top. And and I will say from these overhead shots, and this will start being an issue, things are getting tighter. Close. And when you've got 10 athletes are going to be together pretty soon, nine athletes, uh, the uh, the race officials are going to become uh, a factor to this race uh, as they do their job to make sure. Because the difficulty, the distance is one thing, but it's m moving within that group yes. is when it becomes difficult and athletes can kind of Particularly stress. when it gets technical and there's turns and corners and you someone have, hits their brakes exactly. and you're not anticipating it and you ride into the zone, but then it's technical and you can't get past them. Exactly. Yeah. So th there'll be a lot of opportunity for unintentional yes. breaking of the drafting rules. Um, right now, everything looks uh, looks pretty solid, getting a little tight there in some of these zones. But um, again, that's going to be an issue that's going to come up uh, as these groups come together. And you can see the athletes up the road. I think they're very close to Sarah True. I think around that corner we saw, uh, I believe, Sarah True, unless that group has uh, fragmented a little bit. Uh, we are going to start getting into lap traffic. I think it's going to be a while till we actually start seeing lap traffic. But um, coming through that second lap, things are getting close, Didi. And let's see, we should have had, uh, let's see, Lauren Jansen has gone through. She was 432 back, so a little bit closer. No, exactly that three minutes still. Haven't seen the split of Blemhill uh, come through, but those two athletes were riding together. So not seeing Blemhill's name is just a slightly concerning, but. Um, yeah, and you, like, that, again, is that a, tri is it a chip error? Is it a, because she was ahead of Jansen, as I recall, by. Oh, about... she was, just like 15 seconds. So it's yep. uh, no alarm bells yet. We'll give it another uh, little bit to see uh, where those splits are, but nice overhead shot of this chase group as they're uh, moving through the field. Uh, it looks like an athlete making the pass there. That's left rider making the pass. Uh, as well, uh, trying to get through as the kind of gaps start to open up. And again, being strategic about when you elect, elect to make those passes um, can be make or break. Um, as you pointed out, Matt, in these more technical sections of the course, these tighter sections of the course, and as that group gets larger. For sure. Well, uh, Blumhill has now lost 40 seconds wow. to Laura Jansen. And that's, sorry, that's 40 seconds behind Laura Jansen. Yes. She was 15 seconds in Ahead. front. So she's lost about a minute just in the last 15 K. So that little grimace that we noticed, yeah. I think last time, um, something's, something's going on there. I don't yeah. know if it's the calf or it's the energy or what, but, uh, I, I, from that moment could be a small issue. Maybe she dropped something, whatever. But if that momentum is going that direction, I think, uh, Danielle is going to be out of that race for the win here pretty quick. Uh, you know, if she's five minutes back and going backwards. And particularly as it happens at the, the same dynamics. time of this group converging yeah. where they're only going to get possibly more confused, but also more powerful as a oh. group. And there's going to be some moves, um, being made a hundred percent. It's not the time where you want to, uh, be losing time. No, but uh, someone who's made their way back to the front is Lauren Brandon. Yep. So she she was 10 seconds down. That's not a lot. And it was yep. after one of those little punchier climbs. Yep. So it's possible she was trying to stay maybe a little bit more controlled. but Or maybe the legs are fatigued and she's not powering up Maybe, the but you're not going to you, – if your legs are fatigued to uh, – to really be what's pushing you back, it would it would be hard and somewhat foolish to try to, to try bridge to, back yeah, up. It could be. Um, so hats off to Lauren Brandon for for having the energy and the uh, you know vibrance to to try to get back to the uh, the front of this race. While well, we see on the right hand side of the screen, uh, Sarah True in that very much the same kind of section of road. And again, she's been making up time on these two athletes uh, for the last little bit. But 
here's the, que- the, the that question whether or not she gets caught before uh, she catches these two. Is right. a, it's an unimportant question, but it's a curious question. And we like least. to play the games, right? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, games. you gotta, you gotta have some entertainment. I yeah. mean, you know, the triathlon itself is you know amazing, but <laughs> we gotta have these little side bets. Yeah, I gotta have side bets. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm impressed that Lauren Brandon uh, having a very consistent race uh, to this point. Not that I would ex- expect anything less, but uh, her and Beck Clark really pushing that pace up front and again being uh, quite consistent and smooth throughout the first uh, 90 plus kilometers of the bike ride here in Frankfurt. As they wait for Sarah True and then behind them, the group of five that has been largely led by Maya Stage Nielsen and Carolyn Learider, uh, Nina Darren moving up, but again, Sky Munch in that group, but we haven't seen hiding her hair of her really just sitting on the back of that group and, and watching things unfold thus far. Yeah, no, every once in a while we'd see see her like, you know, bridge, a, a, you know, close a gap that was maybe a little bit longer than it had been before. So it seems like she's definitely not like hanging on. It seems like she has that energy. Uh, if she was just quote unquote sitting on through this point, that would be a fantastic tactic and I would yeah. applaud it. Um, so, uh, you know, hard to say. We'll know at 120K if she's uh, making a making a break off the front of this group. And, you know, pretty soon when this group comes together, she's going to be like, okay, this is exactly where I want to be, right? That's I was, a, I, I was just saying, I was trying to, I, yeah, I almost thought I saw the, the other camera moto that was with Sarah True as the athletes made rounded that corner, but I... I, I mean, they're almost certainly going to be in this straightaway at the same time uh, with the way these gaps are coming down. So we'll see if we see Sarah True get into this section road. There she is. There's that left-hand corner as she and, gets caught. Yep. There we go. So the group has come together. Sarah uh, is pulled back uh, by our chase group that consists of Maya Stage, Nielsen, Carolyn Lefrider, Sky Monch, Nina Daron, and almost Sarah almost Sarah Sp- Well, yeah, I was going to say, because Sarah Svenk is with Nina. Yeah, Sarah Svenk is in that group. She got there now? Yep, she is in that group. And they are all now less than 30 seconds behind the leaders of Clark uh, and Brandon. And here is our chase group now that includes Sarah Svenk. Um, and Sarah True, they're all together, essentially. There's some bigger spaces, but yeah, they're effectively all together. Oh, they're together, and, th- and they're going to be, yeah, very, quite close uh, to those front two, just uh, 16 seconds off the front of Sarah True, but that's going to get closed down pretty soon. And now, one thing that, you know, Sarah's going to have to be aware of, she doesn't know how big this group is, right? Ideally, she doesn't want to go to the back. True right? or Spank? Uh, sorry, uh, great. Uh, true. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's been off by, by herself, so she'll, she's going to know that the group is coming. But if she's not aware and look back, she's going to end up being back in that ninth position. And then if she wants to make a move, and this is where those, like, tactics and dynamics matter, is that if... You want to be able to answer a move. If, if somebody it goes to the front, yep. and let's say it's... And I would bet if somebody was going to do it, it would be Maya Stage Nielsen goes to the front and then just goes yep. and you're sitting in ninth and you don't see it. Yep. Then you got to make a huge effort to get all the way past. And, and there it is. My stage Nielsen. We'll see what she does. She is not slowing down Didi. So she's going to go right past Rebecca Clark, uh, moving to her left. Sorry, Lauren Brandon, yep. uh, first that she catches, and then she's going to go right past Rebecca Clark. And this is an opportunity. And, and hopefully this is something that she thought through Yes. because if she wants to make an effort, she has to do it now because some of the other athletes will be like, okay, once we get there, we'll like hang out a little bit. And like, right? Like some athletes will be thinking and that. And she doesn't want to give no. anyone a chance to hang out and, and wait a little bit. Let Ryder is not letting that happen either. Yep. Uh, so there we go, come together and definitely no time wasting. But right now, so these two athletes that have had the impetus are in a great position. And if they had a rear view mirror, they would try to continue to push on because they're now separated by the two athletes that they caught, and, the slowest the athletes. Other, I would say the other group of five, or the, Is those a little left, yeah. Darren Munch, uh, Sphinx just joined in that group, but yeah. are trying to get past uh, Brandon and Clark as well. And this is where you risk that like slotting yes. in, right? Um, so this is where even if someone doesn't have intent, you have to react and like you have to think three steps ahead. I, I, and I can't see who it is, but the second to last rider who is making the move up the outside right now is basically forced to go all the way to the front. Totally. And here we go, looking at Sarah True, looking over her shoulder as she sees the moto come by and Sarah Sphinx, the two Sarahs exchanging uh, a word or two. Um, Sarah does, uh, True doesn't look too stressed, and that wasn't Sarah Spence. I'm sorry, that was Maya Stage Nielsen. Um, but uh, 
there's that pass there, and she continues to push through the front of this course. And now past Beck Clark, we have a new race leader in Maya Stage Nielsen, who had done so much of the work um, in that group of five chasing, uh, now sitting at the front of the race overall for the first time today. There we go. Yeah, and it's uh, again, it's getting getting cluttered, and it's these are the as it comes together is the dangerous time yep. for for these penalties. Again, we see someone going up the outside now has to go all, all the way, way to the front. Uh, I would love to stay with this shot to see that she makes it all the way to the front because otherwise we're talking about that slotting in, which you are not allowed to do. But burning some matches here by going to the front, whoever that is. Yeah, uh, and it's I can't see from this distance. It's not Sky. No, it is not. And it and we we saw this at seventy point three worlds a couple years ago, um, and it is. Uh, you know, it's challenging, right? Like you have to actually like almost hit your stopwatch yep. and say, okay, here's the math. There's four riders ahead of me. I got 20 seconds to patch each. Let's do it. There was an official right on it though, as well there should be. We're at the front of the race and here is the athlete. I think that is Sarah Svank on the tr on the trek. Yeah, it must be, because yep. that's the athlete we have not uh, seen uh, much of today, but she's uh, rolling well and definitely not waiting around for anybody. Here's another replay of Sarah making the pass on Maya Stage Nielsen. And so now within a span of about two kilometers, we've had three different race leaders. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be happening a lot from here on out if this group uh, stays together. But uh, again, I still think kind of big story is the fact that we've got now a gap of over four and a half minutes um, to our defending champion as all this is happening. Uh, one thing we know, Didi, as all this is happening, they're not going slower. No. They are accelerating for sure, and uh, in a way that they haven't yet today, even for athletes like Sarah, who's been on her own throughout the day, setting a, a steady pace. Um, you know, she knows that she had the strength to pull up to I, this group, and I, now I, she can try say, to What does it again. say to you that she, not only does she pull up to this group, but she said, I'm gonna go straight to the front of it. Yeah, because she's like- She didn't take a pause at all. She didn't say, okay, now I've caught the group, I'm going to sit in for a minute and take a breather. She went absolutely straight to the front of it. No, I mean, she's settled in, right? She's been in this effort, and, like, it can take you out of what's been helping you to be successful up to this point if you adjust. And that confusion is when you are maybe allowed, quote-unquote, to get up the road and yep. to get a gap. If you stay in that group, then to make an effort to get away, it's going to have to be a much more dynamic one. You're going to have to wait for a steeper hill or a technical section or just push huge watts. Where in this section, she can kind of use that momentum and hopefully just catch people falling asleep. And she's got a lot of positive momentum behind her after a couple of tough years. I think I mentioned earlier she had COVID in 2021 and ended up with some heart complications as a result. Um, she had a, a foot injury. Um, I believe that pulled her out of uh, the Ironman World Championship. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. She's another athlete. She's recently changed coaches. Uh, she's a doctor. She is now focusing full time, though, on triathlon, no longer practicing medicine. So um, a lot of positive things. She was very, very excited for this opportunity. We'll see if she continues to capitalize on her lead after this quick break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Check this out. This is Venom Go by Hyperice. You stick this pod on this pad, and boom, instant relief wherever you need it. With nine different variations of heat and vibration, you can soothe your sore muscles instantly. The tight spot on your neck, that little knot on your back, that shoulder that always bugs you, and your tight calf after a ride, say bye-bye to the pain and soreness. Heating up six times faster than any other heating pad. Ooh, that's hot. It's designed to get you out and moving. What are you waiting for? Back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt. It's been an exciting couple of minutes in the race as we have, we had a new race leader in Maya Staj Nielsen. That lasted for about 18 seconds <laughs> when the Swede, Sarah Svinks, came to the front and went straight to the lead. And that is where it stands right now. Large, large lead group here uh, that includes Svensk, 
Uh, Maya Stage Nielsen, this is Carolyn Learider on screen, Sky Munch in there, Nina Darren in there, of course, they have swallowed Beck Clark uh, and Lauren Brandon. So uh, big, big group at the front of this race. Oh, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, DD, I'm looking back at our notes from the, you know, our favorites or notables going in, and every single one that we wrote down is in this group. Yeah. <laughs> right? Pretty much. Uh, Blumhell, obviously, a little bit back, but everyone else is still there. So the consistency of performance uh, from what we would call our pre-race favorites is, uh, you know, is, is proving uh, correct here. We see Sky Monch uh, there riding behind uh, Carolyn Lefrider. Um, again, all these athletes looking pretty well spaced uh, from my point of view. And uh, again, in a very, very fast section of this course, as we see them go over this little bridge here, by uh, Staj Nielsen uh, at the front. We'll see if Led Rider makes a pass here, but these little overpasses, uh, definitely a little bit grindy, uh, certainly when you're in a group this size. And of course, the athletes making their way back out from Frankfurt along the main river there. And if you're looking for another riverside venue, I encourage you to check out Ironman Chattanooga. You can join us on September 24th at Ironman Chattanooga, part of the VinFast Ironman North America series. This event was voted best swim course and top three best overall courses in the 2022 Athlete Choice Awards. Experience an outdoor adventure that can't be beat. This is a great late season race and the perfect way to qualify for Nice in 2024. Register at Ironman.com slash IM North America. So, Didi, I think we should get used to seeing uh, Maya Staj Nielsen pushing it on every descent or technical section. Yeah. It, she seems to find herself there, and it's not by coincidence uh, at all, and, and generally stretches things out just a little bit, and that can give you a platform uh, to get away. But on screen right now, American Sky Monch, uh, again, having a, a, a solid, solid race, and certainly you know, maybe she wasn't where she wanted to be two hours ago, but she's certainly exactly where she wanted to be uh, right now. So uh, the American that's won here before and won the European Championship uh, here before is uh, looking to repeat that title. Yeah, she is. She's got a lot of work because she's got a lot of talent around her yeah. um, and, and women that not only are strong on the bike that we are not surprised to see come through, but women who are great runners as well. So um, going to have to be strategic now. Um, in terms of, I don't think a lot of these women are going to want to come off the bike with a lead group of nine. No, no, certainly not. So somebody's going to have to make a move. But I, I think the ones that maybe won't, like, I don't see Sky feeling like she has to get rid of everybody, right? I don't see Sarah being one that's going to feel like they, she has to get rid of everybody. And there's certainly athletes like a Sarah. Uh, Sphinx could surprise and maybe outrun Sky or if Sky underestimates her. But is there anybody that you feel like in the kind of favorites has to, to get rid of the other athletes? I, again, to me, a big question mark in this is Sarah Sphinx only because we haven't yeah. seen her race very much. We don't know her state of health and fitness sure. uh, because she is coming off of not only, you know, illness that goes back, you know, a year plus ago, yeah. um, but injury, a foot injury, a new coach, a lot of question marks. So I think they know on paper, but is she at the level she is on paper? Uh, question mark, certainly there. I think everyone's looking at Sarah True as someone who is pretty dangerous. And I think Sky will repeat in her head what happened in Arizona and want to put some real estate between herself and and Sarah True, certainly. I love this. We see Maya Stage Nielsen pass uh, Sarah Svensk, and it seems like every time uh, Maya uh, makes a pass, she looks over at somebody and says something, and she did then, and uh, she got a smile back. So um, possible these uh, two are going to unite and try to push this pace a little bit. But I think you make great points with the question marks that we have on an athlete like Sarah Svensk. Sh no matter how confident she is in the numbers that she's seen in training, especially when you've got something like it sounds like a long COVID type issue, yep. that no matter how confident she is, there's going to be a little question mark in her somewhere. Yeah. And that's going to affect whether or not she feels like she has to get away or do something like that to like get that gap, right? And so you kind of just have to trust yourself because on a day you could bet a Sarah Svensk could outrun everybody in this group on a good day. Not not far off, no. uh, with the exception of maybe Sarah, Sarah True. True. Yeah. 
Uh, but certainly when you look at Sky, I think on paper, Sarah says, I have run in the past faster than Sky is able to run. Mm -hmm. And even Maya, I, I have the ability on a good day to outrun Maya. Obviously, those women will want to do something about that. But best performances versus best performances, when we look at the runners and who is likely to run the fastest, it would be Sarah Svensk and Sarah True uh, with Sky Munch and Maya Stodge all you know pretty evenly paired between those two uh yes i think uh i think you're right and i think you know um sky has had had good runs for sure and she's run in that uh low three a fair amount she ran a 256 uh once at ironman tulsa but everything else is that low three and that's something that you see sarah true on her good day she's a 254 255 runner and probably capable maybe of a little bit more as some of those other athletes so sky has the confidence i think to have make this a running race but in the end she probably does need a little bit of time to be really confident and that you know uh sarah true showed her that in arizona and of course we've got uh, lapped traffic now that our athletes are having to <laughs> contend with as well but they're cheering, they're uh, <laughs> cheering on their uh, favorite female pros as they go by. Uh, at this point, it's uh, Sarah Spence that's getting uh, some good applause uh, from those uh, lapped athletes as she goes up one of these hills. And, and this is a good opportunity to see if things are going to start stretching out. This is where uh, the stronger athlete that has a little bit more of that muscular endurance and hasn't really dug into the reserves yet is going to be able to get some time. I don't think any strong attacks but often the like slow burn attack where the athletes don't know that they're starting to get into the red those those tend to be the more effective ones but uh no attack there as we see uh, uh, uh another rider. another pass by later rider Lear Rider just keeps coming back. Uh, you know, M Maya Stage was doing the same thing, yeah. sort of moving to the front, and Lear Rider just kept, keeps coming back, keeps coming back. And in this instance, with a group that's that large, it may be in an interest to stay out of trouble, uh, but she definitely keeps coming back. No, she certainly does. And uh, again, as we see these athletes uh, going through some of our lapped uh, traffic. It reminds us again that it isn't just about the pros out here at Ironman. It's about our age groupers out there going through the same experiences, maybe just a little bit further back uh, from our pros. And our Fighting Chance uh, crew was able to sit down with one of our age groupers, Michelle Ramon, and kind of get a little insight on, on why she's out here and uh, you know what why this race is important to her. This Sunday, I will do my first long distance. In 2017, I had a really heavy um, open heart surgery. I got an electric shock and ended up in the hospital. After countless tests, they found a few rare heart defects. Since I was born with these defects, I, I, I don't know that I have these defects. And it was a sinus uh, denosus defect. One of the first questions to the doc was um, if I was be able to do sports again. He showed us a photo from another patient with a similar surgery. It was a photo from an athlete at the finish line from an Ironman. That gave me hope. My first race after my uh, heart surgery was the Ironman 70.3 in Vichy. And um, this Sunday I will do my first long distance Ironman here in Frankfurt. I tried uh, many <laughs> nutrition, <laughs> never felt really good. And then I found Morton. I use Morton because um, it's really good uh, for my stomach. It's the reason why I always use Morton in races and on Sunday as well. Incredible and inspiring stories from some of our age group athletes proving that anything is possible. If you aren't inspired by stories like that and people who thought they might never be athletic again um, and are out here conquering their first Ironman, I think you, you, you take that and it, it absolutely could be you. Oh, for sure. And I think that's what makes uh, the sport so exciting and uh, inspirational. We've all got our own stories that sometimes we forget when we're just focused on the pros. It's great to be reminded uh, why most of us are out there. Um, on screen right now, we have uh, our lead two women with uh, Carolyn Lefrider and uh, Sarah, Sarah Sphinx at the front of the race. 
uh, trying to splinter up that group, but at this point, doesn't look like much is happening there. Although it does, if I'm counting, I'm only counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so a little gap to seventh there. So starting to stretch out a little bit in the back there, Didi. Yep, again, the moves are going to start happening and, and gaps starting to grow. It, it took a long time to get here, um, in part because some of the gaps out of the swim were so much larger than we had expected. Uh, but right now, Carolyn Learider, I saw her as she was going through town, uh, a coach slash supporter slash family member with a whiteboard and some splits, oh. giving her the, the hands down, like, settle in, settle in, don't get too ahead of yourself. And, you know, you go through town and there's that adrenaline boost uh, yeah, from yeah, the yeah. crowd certainly and you, you might get a little away from yourself uh, particularly when the group dynamic has recently just changed as well yeah and it's easy to get yeah as you said excited and maybe uh, burn a match or put an effort in maybe when it's not tactically the best time so probably good advice uh, for her as we see on the right hand side of the screen uh, Maya Stage Nielsen again you mentioned it a second ago Didi but these two women on screen have been <coughs> Uh, the instigators or the ones that if the pace settles at all, they're straight to it. Sure. Um, so I expect to see any of these moves uh, soon be from either these two athletes. And again, with uh, Maya Stage Nielsen, probably in a technical uh, section if she's going to want to push the pace. But I believe right now she's riding in that third position. And the fourth position there is a uh, Sky Monch as we get a, kind of a overhead uh, side shot of the top three women in this group. And to see who is still amongst them, uh, to your point, uh, is it Nina Darren? Is it Jersik? Uh, and what has become of Brandon and Clark, our, our longtime leaders of this race? Yeah, no, I mean, I think and, and Clark and Brandon, you know, ha were, would not have been as used to kind of Sky, those that's Sarah. adjustments. Yeah, that's There's Sarah. Clark. And I believe that's Jersik yep. at the back of that group. Yep, I believe you're right. And then that is... I can't tell if that was Brandon or not. Um, we'll be able to get a shot here in a second as those trees clear. Yep, that's Brandon, Lauren Brandon. Yep. So it looks like they're all still there. Did we see Darren? I did not see Darren. Yeah, so she might she might be out uh, the back of that group. So we'll see. Great camera work showing us that pan back to see if there's wow, any well athletes behind. Wow, well out the back of that group. Yeah, so unless we missed her. Nope, there oh, she there is. There she is. So, yeah, there we go. One athlete out the back, and I think we're going to probably start seeing this uh, bit by bit, Dee Dee, we'll, yep, we'll see these athletes one by one getting kind of spit, spit out, out the back. Yep. And we might see uh, some athletes come through. Lauren Jansen, again, she was a mover, uh, you know, kind of in that early third of the bike ride. Uh, so she might make herself back up there. But right now, our first casualty of those groups coming together and that uh, pace that was injected into it. And I think what we're going to see at the next split is you're going to see Lord Jansen, she's either maintaining or sh I'd, I'd bet she's probably losing time. And our defending champ, Daniela Blemhel, I think she's, is going to have yeah. lost a lot of time. She's, she is, she is, has lost a lot of time. She's four and a half minutes back. She held that three minutes to the group yep. for so long. That has grown to almost four and a half. So she is moving not in the right direction. Going to have to find another gear uh, if she has any plans to defend. But right now, all Carolyn Learider leading the group as we head into a quick break, but we'll be right back as we get underway with the second half of this VinFast bike course. best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. You are watching the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt, brought to you by VinFast, Boundless Together, and by Nirvana, enhanced athlete event experiences powered by Nirvana. 
And there we go. Still moving through the field is Carolyn Lefrider, uh, again, one of our instigators uh, of the day. And I know, Didi, you're as anxious as I am to see what this next split says for the groups behind. But mostly, this is our race. This group is our race, and we're going to see who gets popped off the back. And I think it's going to be one of those things where it's not going to be this slow attrition it's going to be pop okay you're not in the top eight anymore yep. pop okay you're not in the top seven anymore yep. it's just going to be racers out the back um probably not a direct attack off the front really just i think this this field or this group could be down to i'm guessing three or four by the end of the bike ride yeah i'm super impressed with with carolyn Leerheider here uh, obviously strong on the bike but going toe to toe with some of the best cyclists in the sport and and leading the charge um a, a talented athlete but again very very aggressive at this stage of the bike I, i'm impressed with her performance so far oh absolutely she's uh she's doing a great job and uh, being consistent throughout and uh again making it a race and and no doubt we expected a great race here at the European Championship, and we're certainly getting it. Back to Lauren Brandon, uh, an athlete that led the entire swim by herself and then a lot of the early stages of the bike ride. Yeah, she is sort of clinging to the back of this group, and uh, we talk about one of the athletes that might get popped off. I mean, certainly holding strong right now, but uh, with an age group athlete in there, I think that, that elastic is snapping as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we can see the athlete stretching a little bit. Like, this athlete is, is certainly pushing the effort, right? Like, I think this is going to be another one of those kind of uh, there till you're not uh, sort of situations. Uh, but she's been having, uh, had a great, great bike ride till now and still right up there. And that's uh, Jerzyk. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if she can hang on. But again, I think these three or four athletes in the back, if they had the effort, they'd be moving themselves a little bit more forward. And I think being in that reactive state yes. isn't a great place to be. Well, and we do see that. We see Beck Clark sort of reacting uh, with Leerheider, Svensk, um, and Maya Stage definitely driving the effort at the front, those three. No, yeah, absolutely. Here we go. One of those cobbled sections. We'll see uh, the bottle count on this uh, uh, <laughs> on this side of things. Hold but, on to your bottles. Yep, yeah, it seems like the the locals and the athletes that have been around a bit had uh, pretty good control over those bottles. Very high uh, RPM as she goes through uh, this section, which uh, can make it a little bit harder, make you feel like you're kind of uh, all over the bike a little bit. But this group all going through here at the same time. And one one thing to be aware of, man, now if there's bottles dropping, there's athletes right behind you too, so it could end up being an issue as these athletes slow through a little congested part uh, of this section of the course. And again, familiar territory for these athletes, so they chart their progress, making their way around this course for a second time, having, content having to contend with a larger group of athletes, also having to contend uh, with lapsed traffic from some of our age group athletes. Yeah, no, it's definitely going to add a, a little bit uh, to the race dynamics for sure. But uh, it's always helpful, even if you're in the front, to you know see. Obviously, they're not racing against these age groupers, but a little bit of a carrot and give you something to focus on as you're uh, trying to to get away from the athletes behind as well. As these gaps, they're starting, yeah, they're to, open starting up to yeah, they are starting to open up a little bit uh, again with Leah Ryder at the front, uh, Sarah Svensk. Uh, Sky Munch now has moved her way slightly more forward, and Maya Stage Nielsen uh, back a little bit further than she was. She was one of the ones leading the charge, but seems uh, like she is settling in as well. But uh, some definite um, dynamics happening here in the race as the group converged and is now spreading back out as they head back out away from town on the second loop. Yeah, and here we go. They've gone through that 114, 115 kilometers, and that was Nita Darren off the back. Uh, she's 40 seconds back, 46 seconds back, but it's starting to stretch so that Lauren Brandon is 13 seconds back, four seconds behind Jerzyk, uh, one second uh, between Jerzyk and Clark, and then a couple seconds between Sarah True and Maya Stage Nielsen. Uh, but everybody else pretty consistent, but I think those back, like Lauren Brandon seems like you know, that elastic is starting to stretch. And we've seen it stretch a little bit already from her. Mm -hmm. uh, so we might see her be kind of that next uh, victim out of the back of this group. And Learide are trying to uh, get herself qualified for the Ironman World Championship 
in Hawaii this fall. She is one of the athletes uh, who does not yet have her slot. Uh, when she looks around at the athletes with her, uh, many of them do. Uh, she is one that does not, so she is looking pretty good for that right now. She has only raced one other full distance Ironman this year, and that was a DNF in South Africa. That was a, a tough day uh, for a lot of athletes out there. She actually DNF this race a year ago, so she's got um, perhaps seeking some redemption as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, there's a lot of different uh, motivations for these athletes to be out here and, uh, you know, maybe different mantras uh, while they're racing in their head. Again, there's not, you know, they've got some outside input. They see these motos and they see their competitors. But in the end, it's kind of what's going on in between their ears that is the most important thing. And Dina, I'll tell you what, she looks super relaxed. Yeah, she like, does. She is not pressing at all. Like she's she's in the, she's in the zone for sure. Uh, again, I'm I'm super impressed with her because again, we can only evaluate these athletes as we see them, you know, again on paper. And on paper, um, she is not a name that I would put in with a Maya Stage Nielsen, with a Sarah True, with a Sky Munch, with a Sarah Svensk. Um, so full credit to her that she is at the front of this and leading the charge and looking very calm and relaxed in doing so. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, making all these other athletes react while she's doing exactly what she wants to do and feeling comfortable doing so, I think is, uh, you know, pretty important and impactful as we see uh, Sarah Chu going through uh, the aid station. Uh, you know, she's got uh, a bottle on board and uh, I think we did see she had a, a bladder on the bike as well. So uh, she's getting what she needs. St a big smile. Yeah. <laughs> she's saying something to the folks at home, but uh, you know, you don't, we don't, I said, she's a game facer. Yeah. You do not often see her smile to the camera. So she is in a very comfortable spot if she's smiling at the camera. I've, that might be the first time I've seen her smile before a race. Like normally she waits till like the podium to, to smile, right? So that's a, that's a sign. Yeah, it definitely is a sign. Um, it, she should be smiling. She is, she's one of the fastest runners, again, on paper. Um, and she's in, a, she's in a great spot right now. And while she rode the first loop all by herself, sort of in no man's land, chasing yeah. Beck Clark and Lauren Brandon for a long time and not a part of this group of five, she's probably happy to have a little bit of company right now. Yeah, maybe. It's some distraction for sure. But And you can just see by her... Uh, kind of her posture, look at she's relaxing, uh, you know, opening up her neck, make sure she's relaxed. She does not she, look like she's She pressing. looks like she's slowing down going up. It does. Up. Yeah. It, it honestly does look like she is actually holding back yes. a little bit on those pedal strokes to make sure she doesn't move into somebody. And Laura Jansen has gone through at 5.30 back, so she's lost another minute. Yep. Uh, so the injection of pace has certainly opened things up. Uh, a little bit and, uh, you know, waiting for that uh, gap of Daniela Blymel uh, here pretty soon. She's going to be uh, coming through this split. And Maya Stage, no smiles out of Maya Stage Nielsen at this point. No, she is, she is all business, uh, certainly uh, doing a great job. And I will say, I always mention it once. Right now, I think she's my, she's my kid of the day. Oh, you're a kid of the day? Yeah, she's kind of like a Rainbow Sherbert vibe. I'm into it, my favorite, uh, as I was a kid. But You like the Sherbert? A little bit, yeah. Uh, gap here, a little bit. I think she's fine, she's comfortable, but a little bit bigger than maybe we've seen uh, with Sarah Svensk uh, sitting there in third position, again, with kind of that uh, you know aerodynamic uh, system uh, in her jersey to make sure she fills up that void of space to maintain aerodynamics, and certainly seems to be working for her, as I, I think she might be, at this point, the fastest, fastest mover on course. Fastest mover, like yep. fastest split to here. Yeah, she's 257 through that 115 mark, and everybody else is over three hours. So yep. she's gone three minutes faster uh, on her own. Again, we think about, so she, you know, she had that foot injury that kept her sidelined, and oftentimes, depending on the nature of the injury, she may have spent a lot of time working on her bike, and I think that's that's showing here uh riding very very strong sky munch looking very good very she does controlled comfort and comfortable she tends to push a bigger gear grinding out at that lower cadence but uh she does not look stressed at all yeah she gets a little bit you see a little bit more shoulder rocking from yep. sky but that's not abnormal so i think uh you know that's the the way she she moves on a bike and feels comfortable on a bike so yeah she looks uh, just as comfortable as anybody else in this group but i mean a lot of women left in this front group that look in their face and their expression and how they're pedaling, like they've got a lot of energy left. left. So I'm curious if it's just gonna be a consistent ramp 
the last 60k or if they're going to stay in this pretty solid pace and then just have a brutal running race. Well, again, the, these athletes, they, they study each other going into these races. Um, and again, we talk about athletes on paper, but Carolyn Learider has, has not turned out a run split that's going to turn heads of, of a lot of the favorites um, that she's riding with, like Maya Stodge, um, Sky, Sarah, and Sarah. Um, Again, she is the weaker of the runners amongst the group, so they, the rest of them seem probably quite content to have her do a lot of the work and sort of use her for <laughs> what, she's, what she's good at. But she is biking better than I think I would have expected at this stage. So, I mean, she's, she's turning in a, a different level of performance. There you go. And it looks like uh, Sky Mach is making a bit of a move uh, there, a replay of a move that she made up one of these climbs. You can definitely tell she's pushing in the effort a little bit more as uh, she passes uh, the woman who's been putting a lot of the effort in uh, earlier, and that is uh, Carolyn uh, Leverator. And again, one of those little climbs there out of the arrow position, then right back into it, looking comfortable and smooth. And the first time we've seen her at the, the, the front here, uh, she was content to sit in and be patient and now um, is being a little bit more aggressive, trying to shake things up. Yeah, so what do you think here? Like for me, my thought is with someone like Sky, it's gonna be one move, right? Like she, if she makes a move, she's gonna make it and that's gonna be it. Or do you think, you know, she's one where, you know, it's possible she'll try a couple different times and just kind of test the waters? I don't know why she wouldn't try a couple of different times. Yeah. I, I think it depends on who responds and in, in, in what way and yeah. who's left um, when it's done. I think she will want this group to whittle down a little bit. I just don't think she wants to take any chances no. um, necessarily. But I also think she's probably looking around at Sarah True being in there again, Sarah Svensk. Yeah. Um, there, there are threats to her for the win. Yeah, and I think... You know, she's she's confident athlete. And I think, you know, again, with new coach and those sort of things, she probably is shooting for a PB run. Yes. That's what she needs to do if she wants to compete at the World Championship. Yes. But you Which can't... is, by the way, why she made the change, right? Sure. I mean, she's not content to go be top 10. She wants no. to go and win. And in order to do that, sometimes you need to make a change. For sure. But you can't count on getting your PB run if you want to win the race. Right. If, like right. If, she, if her goal is to win the race, she needs to get up the road and then try to do a PB run. You can't sit in that group and be like, I hope today's the PB run, right. even though every like three athletes around me have better PR runs than right. I do. Um, and uh, I think she'll know that. And at least it doesn't mean you have to drop the athlete. But if the athletes are with you and you know you're comfortable and you've pushed a pace that, you know, they say if it's hurting you, it's killing them. Yep. That's another way to do it, too. You don't have to drop the athletes to be putting in a successful move on the bike. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think she's, this is definitely a strategy from Sky, who was very quiet, very patient through the first lap, and now is showing some sort of urgency. For sure, and it, these things have opened up. So Sky's move has stretched things, right? So you're seeing uh, Kaylin Lairreader in the blue got opened up a gap, yep. and then the athlete that was behind, I can't really tell who that was at this point. <laughs> I think it's Sarah Svens. It could, yeah, you're probably right. Sarah Svens saw that gap and moved around uh, to close that gap. So these three look like they're separating a little bit. And what we'll see now for the next little bit is more athletes having to make up uh -oh. these gaps. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is our defending champion. Yeah. This is uh, Blymel. Uh, she obviously is not in a good position. Uh, she is, uh, looked like dropping out of the race, but uh, looks like maybe uh, a medical... Yep. Uh, situation here for our defending champion and, and clearly she does she's not feeling great Didi she does not want uh, people to see what uh, she's going through right now no I mean it, it, she looked very composed but just wasn't making the inroads yeah. and and based on her cycling pedigree slash resume what have you um, it, you could almost see that the fact that she wasn't able to chip away at that that larger group that maybe something was not right um, but I mean, looking and it, at and it, it's it's in Ironman racing. I tell you, if she had been able to whittle down on that lead, she might be in a different position right now. But knowing she wasn't making any progress, and if something is bothering her, 
totally. And it just it gets that much worse. And it could be that calf, but yep. worth noting in that 20k or 15k, she she only lost 90 seconds. Yep. So it wasn't a ton of time, especially but for, for what, an athlete like her. For that sure, kind but of is what telling. was what was going on in the front for sure. But yes, it it is telling. Uh, but hopefully, that's a sign that maybe she's okay. Yep. Just you know, not on a good day. But we'll check back in with how she is doing as well as the rest of the field when we get back from this quick commercial break. And we are back at the Minova Ironman European Championships in Frankfurt, and stuff's starting to happen. We saw it's that, all happening. Yeah, we saw that group come together a few kilometers ago, and then uh, as we suspected, uh, or we thought, one of the possible scenarios would be an athlete like Sky, who we'd not seen a lot of work from, yes. uh, making her move once the group kind of came together, and it, it seems like that is the case and she looks uh smooth and almost more Fair, yeah, more she comfortable looks, yes she yeah. looks better now yeah. i mean we haven't seen her a lot because she's sort of wedged into that chase group and and being careful to not do a lot of work she was saving her chips as it were uh but this is the best when we've seen her this is the best i think i've seen her look all day and, yeah. and looks very powerful but very in control as well like she's not overreaching here no, no, I think you're right. And I think sometimes athletes can look a little less comfortable when they're riding a pace that somebody else is dictating. Yep. So I think now she's at that, you know, she's looking at a number, which is a number that she's used to doing in training, and she's you know, kind of going with the flow. Yep. Um, and that's something that uh, she does quite well. And, again, looking at this uh, beautiful countryside just adjacent to uh, the city of Frankfurt and this overhead shot of our leaders in the race. And right now we see five women on screen. It does look like... Uh, we do have Sky Monch and Sarah Spence, yes. uh, Left Reader, and Maya, Maya uh, Stage and Nielsen, Troop. and Sarah Troop. So that f group of five uh, right now, we'll see what that gap is to, to the others here. Probably not so uh, distant future, but it looks like that gap is opened. Uh, nope, one more athlete uh, coming through here. I bet that's Clark from what I can see there. Uh, but looks like six right now at this point and uh, could be more off screen. So that would mean that, oh, nope, there's yep. another one. Nope. Yeah, they're, they, they're, they keep coming. they're all, they're there. They're just getting a little bit strung out the Ooh, back. And hitting the brakes there too. So like you can see these athletes really trying to keep that distance. Uh, some athletes getting into that rear wheel section really have to be careful because once you get within that 10 meters, you're supposed to go, go past and go all the way through the group yep. when it's this tight together. So again, uh, these dynamics could start uh, to affect these athletes and, and their ability to uh, stay out of the sin bin, so to speak. Interesting uh, just juxtaposition here from uh, Sky to Sarah. Uh, just in the form, um, Sarah with a slightly higher, lighter cadence. Um, Sky likes to push that big yeah, gear. She does. Um, definitely puts the muscles under a little bit of tension, but controls the power all the way around the pedal stroke a little bit. Uh, more efficient for her. Uh, we've seen her ride this way for, for years, but uh, Sarah Svens looking very comfortable as well. Yeah, and I mean, and honestly, I think right now the RPMs that Sky is pushing are a little bit, I'm not trying Heavy. to be critical at all, but a little bit uh, higher RPM than, than, what she's, yeah. than what she normally does, because yes. normally there's a really big. Uh, juxtaposition actually between her riding RPMs and her running RPMs, yes. right? Um, so I think this shows that she's kind of pressing. Maybe working. Yeah, she's uh, working the cardio system a little bit more. Or maybe just under the tutelage of yeah. a new coach oh, totally. trying to change yeah. the way that she 
rides. I think her former coach was a big advocate of pushing the big gear, um, did a lot of big gear riding in, in training and maybe trying to pair up that cycling cadence a little bit more yeah. with the running cadence so that it's not as big a difference uh, once you get off the bike and start to try to run. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, I think that's possible. There's a lay reader uh, here looking comfortable as uh, she has and kind of that quote unquote attack or that injection of pace uh, that Sky Monch uh, put in this this race at the front of this race hasn't really caused a much no. damage. It, no. it definitely put some alarm bells out and there was some movement different places. But and, and again, you don't you can't judge a successful quote unquote attack or effort just on whether or not the athletes are still there because we don't know if she put a couple athletes in the red zone that's going to damage their run later on. Again, it's not it's the final blow yeah. that you say, "Oh, look at the attack she sure. made," but it's it's the multiple smaller blows before that 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 put the cracks in there. And the ones that aren't dynamic where like the dynamic one somebody goes you're like, "Okay, they're gone." Yep. And the the other ones will lull their competitors into going over the effort that they're capable of. And those can actually be a little bit more damaging than the dynamic off the front attacks. Uh, but a great shot of Maya Stage Nielsen uh, looking as comfortable as she did early in the ride. Great RPM, great cadence. And uh, to have that high RPM with as flat a back and smooth yeah. uh, movement as she does is uh, not easy, folks. Um, but she's right now riding in fourth position. And uh, man, these women are flying, Didi. Well, and also when you interesting to see Maya in that position when the athlete ahead of her was up out of the saddle. You know, that was a little bit of a riser, and oh, Maya right. just, yeah. just tucked in right there an arrow, keeping that nice, uh, nice high cadence. So she's looking good, looking comfortable. Yep, as is Sky Monch. And again, she's one that, you know, she had a great performance uh, here at this race in 2019 to get her first Ironman win at the European championship she's had uh, plenty of other uh, great results as well uh, most notably you know as far as in th the biggest races in a fourth place at the Ironman World Championships in St. George in 2021 World Championships that occurred in 2022 and then a ninth place in uh, the World Championships in Kona in 2022 as well and I, you know, I would say it was that performance in Kona in 2022 that was the bigger disappointment and maybe prompted the, yes, the change in coaching that. that again she is not an athlete that you know she had that fourth place performance in st george part of that is i think the course suits her strengths um, yeah. quite a bit um that whereas the the course in in kona is a slightly different animal for an athlete like sky uh, but looking to take that next step to not be fourth to be on the podium to ultimately win and when you come in then 10th it feels like a step backwards Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, the confidence that she has, I know interviewing her before the race, she was like, I don't know why people are talking about the heat. The heat's not bad here. And then she ran a 319. And right. I'm sure the heat had something to do with it, to do with that for sure. So yeah, you've got it. And that shows a true professional. It's like, wait, either you, like she feels that her expectations are reasonable expectations, which I wouldn't disagree with. And if you think the reasonable expectations and you have a performance after a fourth place where you think maybe you're going to move up and it goes backwards, it's reasonable to, to, to make a change, especially, you know, we're not meant to be with the same coach for five, 10 years necessarily, right? Like these changes are, are good for you. And, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. And if you really want to be the best in the world, um, you know, you gotta, you have to make those, you have to make those moves. And she's, you know, she's 34 years old. So she, she has plenty of time, time. but not a ton of time, yep. right? Like she's, you're not, you don't see a lot of women win their first Ironman World Championships at 37, 38 years old. Yep. That's not something we see that often, especially with this kind of new crowd. So, um, you know, she's making moves. She's making changes. And honestly, if I'm being being blunt, I think her not beating Sarah True in Arizona was yeah. one of those things, too. She 100% yeah. sees herself as the best American. Yes. And she was ninth at Kona? Yeah. Who won? Chelsea Sodaro, Just, yes. another American, uh, yeah. and then she gets beat by Sarah True. So she, she's not content with the direction that was going, and uh, hats off to her. And again, part of the reason why she changed the coach but also came to a race even though she said she didn't want to race before Kona. Yeah, I think that maybe some of that is the emotional response yeah, sure. to the post Iron Man. What have I done to myself? Uh, but uh, an athlete of her caliber needs to race 
uh, Ironman competitions just to get that experience. Again, she is a veteran. We certainly know her well. Uh, but every race opportunity she has in these big fields is, is only going to help her. Oh, no, for sure. And, 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 and anyone else that is really trying, like you can say you want to do well at the World Championship, but if you're actually realistic about what you need to do to beat an athlete like Chelsea Sodaro, what she showed last year, an athlete like Daniela Reef, like you have to be really realistic. And like, I mean, even in that, like well, Chelsea Sodaro is probably like, okay, what do I need to do to beat Daniela Reef? Uh, well, based on recent yeah, performances, I think totally. most of the world is saying that, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Daniela Reef is certainly a name all of these women are familiar with, but I think a lot of people are thinking, well, her time has passed, there are new They're athletes hoping. coming up. <laughs> uh, but then with her, her performance just a, a week or so ago, yeah. I think opened a lot of eyes that, uh, oh, we, there's another one we still have to contend with. <laughs> it's funny, she opens people's eyes about once every 12 to 16 months. Yeah. We're like, oh no, she's gone, she's it's gonna be the next she's one. She's done, yeah. Oh, the, nope, the, yep, she the did it again. 47 lives of Daniela Reef, <laughs> but definitely has reinserted herself into the conversation when I think a lot of people thought that uh, while a worthy champion that her time had come and was on the way out, uh, but no, very much still a part of the conversation. So a lot of these athletes trying to figure out where they're at and where they go from here so that they have the performances come October that, that they are craving. And here again is that technical section I said that uh, caught uh, Jan Ferdino off guard uh, a couple yes. years ago. The off-road incident. Yeah, and it's it's a fast section, and if you've got wind coming from the right, it, it's uh, pretty difficult to kind of keep your line going through there, especially if you're pushing the pace. So good on these women as they're passing some lapped traffic. We've got uh, Carolyn Lechreeder at the front of the race with Sky Monch. Uh, riding in second place and again looking comfortable but certainly these athletes are, are pressing this pace and things are starting uh, to open up behind for sure and, and the more you press this deep you're getting more into the danger zone i think if you're overextending if you're overreaching this is when taking risks and um chances to try to do something extraordinary may come back to bite you so but it almost has to be done when you've got a lead group this this big um, at this late stage of the bike. Later oh. stage of the bike, I should say. Yeah, no, we still got a lot of bike riding to go, and we're going to get to 130K here pretty soon and see the split and see what's going on behind these ladies at the front of the race. We'll be right back. Coolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up for group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Fullgas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. And we're back here with Sarah True at the front of the race-ish. Uh, she's riding in like fourth or fifth position at this point. So we see her uh, making a pass on one of our lapped, lapped athletes. athletes. <laughs> Replaying the pass on the, yeah, thumbs up. There you go. Again, enjoying this atmosphere. One of the things that draws these athletes to this legendary race, this legendary course in this triathlon frenetic city and country. Uh, the Germans love this sport and they love cheering these athletes on and it really does draw these athletes in um, to make the big journey over there uh, to be a part of it. Oh, they certainly certainly do and we know y'all want to keep watching and cheering these athletes on uh, from afar so join us for part two as part one of the Minova Ironman European Championship uh, Frankfurt will end. Please join us for part two of our Facebook coverage for the finish of the race. Okay, yeah, and here we have Sarah True, again, looking so calm and collected. She doesn't look 
any different to me than she did when she was on her own, right? No. Very relaxed, very controlled in the face, responding to the dynamics, but still very, very much in control. I know you, you expect me to disagree with you, and I'm going to kind of. I think she looks more relaxed than she did <laughs> on her own. I really do. Like, yeah. we didn't see her smile or joke around. She's put her tongue out. Like, yeah. this... I think it was. She feels it, bad because Lauren Brandon's a little further back, so now she is waving to the kids yeah. on the side of the course. I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I commentated Arizona and Placid last year, and she did not crack a smile no. till well past the finish line in yep. either of those things, yep. right? And she had pretty decent leads by the end, so uh, she's feeling comfortable and relaxed, and, and she loves this race, right? And she has some pretty dark memories I was of this race, say, which is impressive. And but she, we'll, but, yeah, yeah, but she she loves it. I mean, she. She did. We keep alluding to it, but she led this race till a K, K and a half to go with a huge lead and just came apart. Just yes. had a complete implosion uh, nutritionally and could not finish the race. So so she wanted to come back, and that's the, the race that Sky won. So she wanted to come back and uh, do her best. I believe her coach uh, is, is in the, the region as well, so I think that's part of it. Sure. Uh, but... Uh, she and and that tells you the class of the athlete. Like normally, an athlete that has an experience like that, or a lot of them would be like, "I am they, not they put going that, back They there. put that on the heck no list. Back like, on the list yeah, right. absolutely right. Um, we, as we heard Sky say, "Heck no, I'm not doing another Ironman." <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have been surprised given what happened. Yeah. Uh, on this course for Sarah True, for her to say, "Heck no, I'm never going back to Frankfurt." Yeah. Um, but again, yes, it speaks to her confidence to say you know, I know how to solve that problem or right. I'm in a very different spot right now. And it speaks to the power of this race and how legendary this course and, and this fan base is that draws her back yep. um, to make a big trip away from family, away from obligations at home yep. um, to, to be a part of it again. Oh, totally. Um, and just gonna add, I don't think we mentioned uh, splits through the last 130K, this group of seven all together. Uh, except Lauren Brandon, Lauren Brandon is, is out the back yep. one minute and 22 seconds. So she's uh, she's out at this point yep. uh, as far as this front group goes. There's still a decent gap for her, for athletes chasing behind. The next athlete um, was Nina Daron that had, had gone off the back. And then uh, besides that, another five minutes back. Uh, so now we've got a group of seven. And I think we... You know, we verbalize this and we expect it. It's going to go from a group to eight to a group to seven to a group to six, and it's just going to keep going. And the yep. more efforts like athletes like Sky make, the more uh, frequently uh, kind of these exits out the back are going to happen. And as we've been saying, it doesn't have to be one magnificent yeah. swooping blow, but just tiny blow after tiny blow after tiny blow, and one by one by one, it's the next one, right? It's, it's the next small blow that someone else, the next Lauren Brandon, is off the back. Um, so the attacks keep coming at the front, uh, and the repercussions are felt uh, at the back of this this chase group, uh, or lead group, I should say. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, I'm I'm super impressed with uh, Rebecca Clark uh, still, uh, and I'm not that I'm surprised that she's still here, but uh, you know, she's she's riding well and still yep. looks as composed as she did early on. And, and you see what happened to she's talking to herself, her compatriot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she might yeah. be. Yeah, uh, Lauren Brandon is is uh, you know kind of that elastic snapped, and she's a minute and twenty two seconds back at this point. But uh, Rebecca is still still right there, and and she's not concerned with the fact that these athletes put six and a half minutes into her, nope. and some of those athletes more than that with uh, Sarah Svensk uh, putting uh, you know eight and a half nine minutes into her. Uh, but she's still there. But man, these women are flying. Yeah, this there's some high high speed riding going on right now. No, absolutely. And for these athletes at the back of this group to go anywhere else is going to cost them more than it's worth at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, here we go. We see Sarah True in the back of this uh, group of uh, she's about fifth position right now. But again, looking uh, pretty comfortable. And this is an athlete that's, again, had good success in 70.3 racing and in uh, Ironman racing and uh, both on the championship level. And, uh, you know, the 2024 VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship, it's coming. It's not too far down the road. And in December 2024, uh, Tapo New Zealand will welcome the very best professional and age group triathletes at the 2024 VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. New Zealand's breathtaking scenery will be showcased. Once you arrive, you'll be welcomed like a local. Swim in one of the world's largest freshwater lakes, ride through beautiful rural landscapes, 
and enjoy the lakefront views and spectators on your run. See you in Tapo in 2024. Go to Ironman.com slash IM 70.3 World Championship 2024. That is going to be one heck of a race. I know athletes, uh, a lot of athletes that I coach are already plotting their assault uh, on yeah. New Zealand and, and trying to figure out how they're going to, what pathway they're going to take to, to get the opportunity to compete there. Uh, just another great host community. For sure. And uh, back to the race with Sky uh, Monch on screen. If we're, we're talking about how these athletes were going to come off the back and then that was it. See you later. Yep. Nina Duran, yes. four minutes, and she she did not get dropped that long ago, right? Yeah. And Lauren Brandon, again, a minute 22, that's going to be bigger. So, like, there's no doubt the top five and probably the top six or maybe even seven of the race are going to be in this group. Probably most realistically the top five. Uh, you always have some runners coming through the field, especially with those efforts that you've been talking about with an athlete like Sky they're going to come off with a lot more tired legs than they think. So one or two of these athletes is going to crack. Yeah, but you know what's interesting to me, and I'm wondering if what we're seeing is athletes cracking. I mean, we talk about sort of the attacks and how this group is riding really strong. If we look at their paces through the last segment as compared to their paces through 60K, 70K, yeah. the pace is slowed. That sure. They're not riding as fast as they were on the first lap of this. So I think we are seeing cracks um in the armor of the, those that are getting dispensed off the back oh for sure it, but it's not like the pace has lifted the pace of everybody has slowed yeah but i, th I think the pace is more uh up and down than it was before right there's there's more efforts and then recover and then efforts and then recover Shh. than before and and that type of riding sets an athlete taxi, up for yeah. more of could a, be more taxing yep. yeah and uh, you know, the athlete's gonna blow up but yeah you're right the, the paces have definitely slowed the wind does seem like it's come up just a tad uh, so that's gonna affect things a little bit but um man the focus uh and control on uh left reader's face is she does not seem stressed or she's no. got the best poker face in the business <laughs> that that indeed and again i'm super impressed with her i mean she's a, a super respectable athlete but yeah, i yeah, just yeah. wouldn't have put her at this stage of the race in the same camp as some of these other other racers so she's having she's having a day she's having a great day her consistency across ironman racing isn't what some of these others is. She's got a handful of DNFs uh, for reasons I don't know, but yeah. looking back over some of her races, um, she's got a fair number of, of DNFs. And again, sometimes that's injury, sometimes it's I don't know what, but she um, she's absolutely having, at least by what I've seen, a career day. She's trying to order the others around her at this <laughs> point. But again, they're not, they're not, yeah dumb they know what's up they know her resume they know their own so they're happy to have her sit at the front totally but she also knows that the pace is slowed yes. to your point earlier right and i mean you're right she's you know she's pretty consistent has these dnfs every now and again but she hasn't won an iron man since italy in 2019 yep um and she had a good run there uh 306 which on that course and uh that day was a was a good a good run but i think she's in the you know, I, you're right. I think she's a good athlete. In great not, company. In, yes, in great company. And if she ends up in a podium position at the end of this race, oh. by far, uh, you know, breakthrough Banner race day. for this athlete. Hundred yeah. percent. And yeah. and that is and, and no reason to doubt what that. we could be. You know, that is yeah. what we could be witnessing. And I think to this point, as as well as she's riding, it, this is may well be one of her best bike performances, given the company that she is a very very good athlete amongst a lot of great ones for sure it, it is it, it sometimes will it should raise your hack not your hackles but it should uh you know, make you make yeah raise your eyebrows that's it do that one eyebrow emoji <laughs> yeah you're pretty good at that <laughs> is that the experienced athletes that have had the wins yes. and the podiums aren't the ones trying to wave other people through yeah Right, like you can't separate those things, and uh, you know it, it doesn't all live in a void. But it's quite possible that she just is on that day. But uh, patience, uh, you know, is is something that pays off in Ironman racing. But she is, you know, if she's her best ever is a 306 marathon, she's she's going to need better than that probably to be on the podium yes. with this group. 
Well, and, and not only that, I mean, that 306 marathon was... Oh, she's still barking at people. Yeah, I mean, she's trying to, but stop pedaling. Here's the thing. If you're that <laughs> angry, and again, I'm just going to, I'm going to coach her up right here now. If you're that angry and you want people to come through, stop pedaling. <laughs> Sit there and coast. Stop pedaling. Don't waste the energy yelling. Yep. Just stop. No, coast. because the they'll go by eventually if you're coasting. The experienced athlete would laugh if somebody was doing that yeah. in front of them. Right? And that's because what Sky is sitting behind her saying, mm, she's, Sky's playing with her right now. It's like a little cat in a ball of yarn. Because at this point, <laughs> yeah, the athlete is kind of in your pocket a little yes. bit because you see them stressed. You're yep. not stressed. Yep. Um, so and it's stressing her out more the, the, the more angry she is. I mean, again, this d doesn't look great for her. But, yeah, I mean, right now, this guy's a big old cat with a big ball of yarn in front of her. And she's totally. like, no, I'm yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah, and she said, oh, wait, Sky, you put in this move 20 minutes ago that you know was pretty like you clearly have the energy let's come on do it again yep. and no sky's not not falling for it she's doing her own uh her own thing and and i think you made a point that they are slowing and i think that is something that's frustrating uh clear reader but again this race is these seven now there's nobody they're trying to catch there's nobody they need to get more time on nope. so it's this tactics are this group and this group is all that matters and right now it's they're, it's this that is the poise run. of Sky that, that, you know, when someone's barking at you, if if that were, and I'm not picking on her because I, I adore her, if that were Lauren Brandon, she's going to be like, oh, 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 I should probably go <laughs> ahead. I'm sorry. And Sky's like, meh, meh. Yeah. No, absolutely not. And so, you know, she's got, she knows what's up. And 100%, she is not going to do any more work than she has to with anything. I, I mean, Sky's not going to do the work, but if I'm Sky, I'm still looking at Sarah and Sarah and even Maya in there and saying something's got to happen between the end of the bike because I'm not super comfortable in yeah. that company getting off to run a marathon. No. In terms of winning the race, podium, yeah, fine, but. Uh, totally. Again, she might have the confidence to think that. Hopefully, you know, the history would tell us that's that that is not the case. But to your point, you know, if Sky is is laughing and uh, cat playing with the ball of yarn. Sarah True oh, is yeah. playing with a couple balls of yarn, yeah. right? Like she loves well, she's watching a bigger cat with a larger ball. Yeah, because <laughs> totally. Because right now, Sky's just paying attention uh, to Light Raider, and yep. Light Raider's paying attention to Sky, and Sarah True's just sitting back, being like, "Okay, I'll sit here. You guys ride however you want. Let's look." Right now, this race is the run, yeah, all, right? Like yeah. this is all this is right now. And, and I think that's why Light Raider's likely upset because she wants some of the runners to come through and do some work. And why? Why would they? But we'll find out when we come back from this quick break. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. And we're back. And we're back. We certainly are. And on the left-hand side of the screen, that's Lay Reader. And on the right-hand side of the screen is Sky Monch, as you are now calling her the cat with the ball of yarn. Um, so we'll see uh, how this... Uh, a good analogy. No, I think it's good. I think it's really good. I don't think I'm wrong. I, I don't think you are either. But, uh, yeah, both these athletes having good races. One is composed, and one is worrying about things outside of her control, and that's never really a great sign. Well, but here's the thing. She also does control it. She's just got to take more drastic action. I mean, if you want someone to come through and take a pull, you've got to st stop, pedal force the issue. I mean, if she's that emotional about it, yeah, force the issue and, and stop pedaling, and th I guarantee when she stops moving, they will come around her. Yeah, no, you're probably right, and uh, unless it's a uh, you know it's a pretty bold move to uh, not pedal if you're a uh, second athlete going around there. But yeah, she's 
yeah, she's she's not playing the right game right now, and, and that's one of those times where you think, okay, if I'm getting emotional, I either need to make a regroup and come up with a different tactic, or honestly, like, make sure nutrition, hydration, right. and all that stuff is good, because that's when you start making emotional decisions is when you start, and, that, and Sky knows that, right? She's yeah. like, oh, if this person's getting pissed off, it means maybe she's about she just, to crack. She just, just... she just punched her watch, and she's totally. like, uh, the countdown's on to when that one pops. Yeah, go. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you're not wrong. And the athletes all went through 141 kilometers, so just about 40K to go. That group of seven, seven. athletes, so only separated by 10 seconds with Rebecca Clark hanging on uh, in that seventh position with Jerzyk in sixth, True in fifth, uh, Meyer Stage Nielsen in fourth, Svensk in third, Sky in first, and Lechreeder in first. Second, first? Second, first. <laughs> in the second first position. Exactly. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Well, racing here in Europe is certainly a unique experience. And if you're looking uh, for one of the more beautiful experiences, come experience Ironman 70.3 Zell MC Caprun. Spectacular Lake Zell is the center point of the race and having the glacier covered mountains as a backdrop showcases Austria's majestic scenery. Cycle through the Australian Alps. You won't find natural beauty like this anywhere else in the country, or dare I say, in the world. Register today at ironman.com slash I am Europe. There you go, Lev Reader on screen. And then uh, Lauren Brandon did go through that 141 K mark. Uh, just lost another 40 seconds. Yep. So yeah, to your point it, and to what we've seen on screen, things are slowing in this front group because they now know the race is this group yes. and it is the run. The, from here on out, unless somebody makes a big move on the bike, it's a running race. And I don't see a big move coming. I, I don't think even for the, again, we'll call them on paper best runners, it, it's just, it's not worth it. And for the on paper runners who are gonna have to have a great run to compete with the best runners, they're gonna need to cons conserve and save a little bit. Yeah, and I think that to me, the person I think might make a move, just my gut Sarah is telling True. me, is no. Oh. I, I think she's confident in, in her run would be uh, Sarah Svensk. Ah, uh, okay. Because we haven't seen her in a bit. She was one that was really pushing the pace. Yep. So if you said, okay, this is a running race. Maybe I need a couple minutes with 20 miles to go. I'm going to go. You sit in and you settle and then you go. You don't drop the rest of these people by doing what Lay Reader is doing no. right now. Um, but I will also say that I don't know that Sarah Svensk feels like she needs. Well, it's the inconsistencies of, of the last couple of years. Yes, right? like, okay, that's fair. That that's a, that's a challenge. She has the running pedigree. Yes, I was gonna say because I look at some of her for uh, sure. some of her run splits and what she's been able to do. Um, she's right in and around um, sub one twenty for some some seventy point threes. Um, well, I guess we are going back a ways. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Um, and, and some 309s, 310s, um, but a 258 at Cozumel yeah, in 2021. I mean, that, in, it, that was a year that wasn't frightfully hot, and that tends to be one of the big limiters in Cozumel. But 258.01 is a pretty impressive run split. So. Yeah, a 256 in Barcelona. But again, it, it has been a bit. So yep. if she's done some some tests and, and knows that she she has it then you're right but the only reason i say that is because we haven't seen her and she's been yeah. an instigator and maybe uh maya is uh that same person we haven't seen her in a while either she yeah. could be saving up for an effort on the bike well and maya is one that i think she if she wants to win she this race to. she's gonna have to reach to match the running of a, of a sarah true and even a sarah svensk yep Again, on paper, it's been a, it's been a minute for yeah. for Sarah Svensk, but Maya's a great, great runner, but is going to have to have a next level performance to win it. So, win, is sure. she conserving right now? I, I think you've got to do the mental math and say, does an aggressive move to try to give myself one or two minutes on the rest of these women does that ultimately hurt my run even more? Totally, and it's so hard too because if like on paper she's not the best athlete that's in this group left. Right, yeah. as Meyer Stage Nielsen, but she has all the pieces. And sometimes, if you want to try to beat athletes that are better than you, you don't try to actively beat them. Yep. You make sure you're the next one there. And if they mess it up, right. you're there to sweep, right? Yep. So 
and she's got a three-hour marathon. She showed at Ironman Texas. She can, uh, she can do that. That could, if some of these other athletes make mistakes, be enough. Yes. If everybody has a good day, it's not going to be enough. Uh, could be enough for a podium. But, yeah, I think you're right. If she wants to try to win by being aggressive, then she probably needs a little bit of time. Yeah. Just a little bit. But doing the doing the calculation in your head, is it worth it and what does it cost my marathon, right? Does Probably it not. if I can come off with a two minute lead in the remaining kilometers of the bike, how many minutes is it gonna cost my run versus if I am sitting in and feel really comfortable right here and I think all of the women probably do, the pace is slowed a little bit, but no one seems to be in a hurry to, to push the pace. Yep. Um She's going to settle in and say, I've got to have my best marathon uh, to try to win this thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, Laura Jansen has gone through in 10th place. She's 644 down, so now just a minute behind Nina Durone. So she's starting to pick off the athletes that are coming out of this group. Yeah. So uh, she's given herself a uh, definitely a great shot for a Kona spot. Yes. Um, but I mean, there's certainly, four available. Yeah, yeah. So she's she's got one for sure if she, she holds this. But... She keeps moving forward, and if these athletes are hanging on, you know, a top five is a reasonable uh, position to think maybe she can with the runs that she's had over 70.3. If she keeps moving forward and uh, kind of negative splits her effort, uh, she certainly could be up there. But right now, it's a late reader at the front of this race waiting uh, for somebody else to help pitch in because it had been that. there had This whole day, she's had other athletes coming around and pitching in. But for the last... 20 or 30K, it's just been all her. Yep. And as we look down this list of, of our top 10 women here, and we talk about those Kona slots, four available uh, athletes on screen that do not yet have one. So keep an eye on them because that is no doubt an underlying motivator is Sarah Svensk. Uh, Jersik out of Poland does not have a slot. Um, other athletes in the top 10, uh, the woman on screen who is leading right now, Lair Ryder, Lair Re sorry, Lair Reader, um, needs a slot, and, and uh, Nina Darren and, and Jansen as well. So there you go. They're there and yep. they're in it. And I think, you know, that's one where if, if Laura Jansen, that was a goal, she's doing it the right way. Yes. She's racing for her best race and racing to try to have energy at the end. Yes. Um, and here we've got. Uh, Sky Monch making a pass. It uh, looked like she was saying something, but I don't, I don't think so. I think she was gaming it a little bit. Um, but uh, like an athlete like Nina Duron, to try to hang on and then crack, that's not necessarily the best way to try to get a Kona spot. But we don't know if her goal was to go to Kona or if her goal was to try to have a top five performance. But if that's Laura's goal, she's in a, a great position and she is continuing to move forward. And, and I bet that she ends up being the first person off the bike that's not in this group of seven. But uh, we'll see what Sky does at the front now. Yeah, well, Carolyn finally got her wish and <laughs> Sky has come around. I mean, Sky, again, choosing maybe a strategic part of the course to perhaps pop another athlete, a little bit of a technical section with some lap traffic. So maybe could get just a little bit further away as we watch this replay and she comes around or it could be that carolyn slowed in that corner and uh sky got caught on the back foot a little bit and and had to go through yeah it looked like there might have been a, a little bit of that yeah. maybe that was a a break check uh to a certain extent to put the other athlete in front and if so a uh, pretty savvy uh move by live reader uh, at the front but it does look like sky is pushing the pace a little bit and uh, see if she gets coaxed into uh, bringing up the effort. But again, in, in my opinion, and I think you agree with me, if Sky wants to win this race, she either needs to get away or she needs to sit at the front at some point and make it hard enough to tire out the legs of a Sarah Svensk and a Sarah True. Like she, she has to either have a gap or really tire those women out. Yes. If she wants to win. And what is your estimation on her ability to, to tire the these women out right now unless she really does something on a climb and, and pushes it uh i i think she has to get a gap yep. for that to happen personally um i think sarah true is a fighter and i mean sarah spence has put in she's got the fastest bike split to now yes. and it, she showed once the groups came together that she had plenty of energy then yes so unless she's making huge errors nutritionally which i doubt is the case because she has so much experience i think uh i think yeah, it's going to be hard to tire her out. 
And there she is moving herself. I was going to say, Sarah Svensk uh, answering the call of, of Sky and, and going around Carolyn as well. So so Sky did use that yep. as, a, as a launching pad to put a little bit of an effort and in. And Sarah answering the call? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just shows an alertness and an awareness, um, certainly this deep into the race that is not necessarily telling, but telling that for Sarah Svensk right now, she is still alert and, and aware and, and not sort of falling asleep in the switch, sitting at you know, fifth wheel in this group. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we see that a uh, little bit of a little bit of a gap there to uh, our leader at the moment, which is Sky Monch. And there we go. We got a shot from in front of uh, Carolyn Lechreeder with Sarah Svensk now going up uh, one of these climbs here outside of Frankfurt uh, as she's trying to keep Sky Monch within sight. Yep. And again, let's not underestimate Sky is an athlete that was fourth at a world championship, 2021 world championship. Yep. Um, has won a bunch of Ironman and has a very, very consistent run. Like, I wouldn't bet that she's going to run a 255, but I bet my house that she's going to run a three hour to a 303. I was going to say, she's not going to run a 308, right? No. Like, she's right. She's as consistent as consistent gets. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think you got to keep an eye on her. That's certainly not an athlete you let get up the road because I don't think if she rides hard the last 40K, versus easy, I don't think that it's that three hours is going to turn into a 305. Right. I think it's going to be the same run, right? Um, but it uh, looks like things are spreading but, out yeah, just a little say, bit. Looking back yeah. down the road, those are two Sarah True is, is back there. Yep. Uh, Maya Stage Nielsen also back there. So it is getting a little bit stretched out. Yeah, so you're going to have to see some reactions from, yes. uh, it's, you know, Maya Stage Nielsen most likely is, is the one, if she still has energy, to make a reaction as well as Sarah True. But, you know, it's hard if you're behind the other athlete. If you're Sarah behind uh, Maya or Maya behind Sarah, you're going to be like, no, let them close it yeah. type of thing, right? But yeah. you can't play that game for too for long. For too long because then it's gone. Yeah. Your opportunity is gone. For sure. Uh, but Sky putting another, she's done now. This is the second, uh, I'd say, aggressive, somewhat aggressive Push. effort. Yep. You know, she's not attacking out of the saddle or anything yeah. like that but she gets to the front she's like well if i'm at the front i'm she's trying to hurt effort. you those. can tell that by her cadence yeah. right you can tell that by i mean could be a little bit of a downhill section but she definitely is lifting the effort a little bit here to me it seems like she had a plan or her and her coach had a plan that if she's in the front she's pushing yep. and if she's not in the front she's not pushing and yep. that's a pretty effective race plan you're either following or you're leading with impetus, and uh, it seems like she's she's doing that right now. Certainly putting some purpose behind it, and possibly with some effect. Uh, we're a bit away from the 157.7 kilometer timing map, but at least optically from our last view there, things getting a little bit stretched out from our group of, of seven now with Sky, Sarah Svensk, um, and, and Carolyn at the front, but stretching out a little bit, Maya, perhaps Sarah True, if she was just caught one wheel too much further right. back, um, and, and Jersik and, of course, Clark. Yeah, no, and, and, and again, we've, we've kind of not talked about uh, Jersik and Clark, but there's no reason for us to think that they're not in a comfortable position as well. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, they're, they've decided to be in the back. They've either decided to be the back of the group or they're they're pretty tired and they're there for a reason. But uh, someone who's at the front for a reason is uh, Sky Monch, and uh, she went around Life Reader on that technical section and uh, used that momentum uh, to kind of push the pace and say, you want me to come through? I'll come through. Yeah. And, uh, and then you're going to regret asking me to come through. Yeah, you might, you might regret that <laughs> um, because she's a very, very accomplished athlete and with great success over the Ironman distance and on this course specifically. And let's see what she can do for the rest of this race after a quick commercial. Makes me happy 
makes me feel this way Ain't nobody loves me better than you Welcome back to this exciting race here in Frankfurt. We've got Sky Monch at the front, putting a little bit of effort in uh, into the front of this course. She's uh, Monch is launching, kind of rhymed, kind of didn't, um, but uh, she's definitely putting in a good effort to be at the front of this race and continue to push her competitors. The Flex 90 program allows athletes that register in the first 90 days that registration is open the flexibility to defer if it's an Ironman registration. Transfer or receive a partial refund if you are no longer able to participate in your race. You can enact the, these benefits up to 45 days before your race. If your plans change, your race can too. Flex 90. Nice overhead shot of our lead group that seems to be right now four. So we've got Sky, or nope, three. That's a that's a lapped athlete, right? Yeah, that's Sky. Sky. That's Svensk, and I believe that was Lev Reader. And here we go. That is uh, camera back on Laura Jansen, uh, moving her way through the field. Last time we saw, she had moved herself into tenth. My guess at this point is that she's moved all the way up into ninth. Uh, and wow, she looks very composed and very focused. And for an athlete that's been riding by herself for quite a while. Riding by herself for quite a while, and an athlete again. This is this is our uh, Ironman Pro rookie, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep. No Pro Ironman re uh, results to her credit, but uh, currently sitting in the top ten in a, in a championship race with a championship caliber field. So uh, and looking very calm and collected about it. Oh no, she certainly does, and uh, you know she's an athlete with good experience. Uh, you know over seventy point three, and again she's doesn't have any wins doesn't actually have any podiums over the 70.3 distance but i'm seeing 118s a bunch of 121s that is fast That's running good running and yep. if she's a strength based runner yes to get that that could transfer into a 250 255 pretty easily if paced well and, and again could very easily insert herself into a top five finish here yeah i mean the last time we saw she's 645 back yep. if you're running a 255 you're going to bring back a, a majority lot. of the people in front of you uh, yeah a lot i mean them. again i again we're gonna bank on on sure. sky's run resume yeah uh my stage again another athlete who i think is gonna run close to 305 if not slightly faster potentially right but Sarah if i'm looking Trude, at sub three hours if i'm looking at clark and jerzyk oh yes and uh brandon you know, yeah, Brandon's already uh, maybe behind her, but yeah, she's gonna has the possibility of moving up, and let's say one of those people is on an off day. But regardless, as you said, rookie Ironman uh, debut, having a having a great race. And let's let's not forget too. Not I mean not to take anything away from her, but running a, a seventy point three, running a one nineteen off the bike is impressive, but it's a different thing altogether to run a marathon oh, off a bike sure. that's twice as far when for you've sure. never done it before. So there's a lot of unknowns out there, but the <laughs> potential is there. Yeah, no, absolutely. The potential is there. As we see, that was Lev Reader in third place. Uh, so, you know, at the last we saw with that overhead shot, it did seem like three. So it's possible that we have had a little bit of a gap with Maya Sage Nielsen, Sarah True, uh, maybe getting split after these three. Um, I wouldn't be surprised with the effort that uh, Sky Monch is putting in at the moment, but uh, let's see, just in a few minutes, we're gonna hit that 157.7K mark. Uh, but again, Didi, this is, you know, yeah, for if athletes- you, Again, if you look at the, the transponder data, okay, yep. uh, again, the trackthereace.com data, with all of these athletes wearing the transponders, uh, yeah, it is a group of three. Yep, yep, there you go. That's, uh, that's definitely separated. Uh, a little bit and not too surprising for those of us that have raced Ironman as professionals or coaches, you know that we you know, say the race starts in the last third, Yeah. you know, and that's where we're at. And yeah. the race has really started to open up after being in a large group of, uh, you know, seven to 10 athletes for, for a fair bit uh, after the, the, you know, those swim gaps were kind of negated late in the bike ride. So these three women pushing the pace again, looks like it's uh, separated, uh, you know, Sky Monch definitely at this point, literally, and uh, you know, she's she's in the driver's seat. It does look like there's a, f a fourth athlete 
Yeah, right it's there. getting stretched right there. a little bit. Um, it is getting stretched. It's a white helmet uh, with that fourth athlete. It might be Maya Stage Nielsen. Uh, again, hard to see from this uh, distance. It could be Jersey Surprising as well. that it's not true. I'm surprised by that, yeah. Um, you know, she's she's put in some efforts uh, early in the bike ride to, you know, on her own. You know, that always is kind of a, a match in itself. But, yeah, it looks like there's a little gap. We might be talking a few seconds here or there. But I, I'd also like to say credit to uh, Lair Eater, who looked to be in distress and was getting wasting a lot of energy yelling at people to, to come around. <laughs> yeah. But when they did, she's hanging in there. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. is not one of the athletes, at least thus far, that has been dispensed off the back and has answered, um, you know, the pace that, that Sky is, is setting right now. And for sure, as Sky goes into her little snack box, trying to get a little bit more fuel, uh, put some more uh, some more uh, logs on the fire, so to speak. And uh, you need to do that when you're pushing that sort of effort. But yep. looks really controlled, and you can tell, you know, an athlete, when they're eating, often it, it's a little bit harder uh, to go that effort and, and breathe at the same time. She looks very comfortable. It doesn't look like she's overextended uh, whatsoever. Uh, and, you know, maybe it helps that she trains at altitude. Uh, maybe that helps when you're eating, doing a hard effort. You're used to kind of the <laughs> oxygen restriction there. But she gets a little uh, fluids to wash it down. And uh, just over five hours into this race, we've got Sky Monch on the front, definitely trying to separate things a little bit. She's able, uh, you know, to get rid of most of the athletes, ex besides uh, Carolyn Lefreeder and, at this point, Sarah Svensk. And looking very calm, um, mm -hmm. not looking stressed uh, according to plan. Very patient first half of the bike. Um, for Sky, again, uh, some of the viewers getting upset that we weren't talking about Sky, but Sky wasn't doing very much uh, it, other than being patient and being smart. Uh, as we look at Sarah Svensk, um, who also is having a, a fantastic race. Uh, Sarah, another one of those athletes, changed coaches. She wasn't pleased with the injury cycle she found herself in. Uh, very appreciative of the opportunity that she had, but she also has changed coaches, and so slightly different stimulus for her yep. as well. And so trying out some new things um, here in Frankfurt. Yep, and uh, reached out to see if we could get an update on Blumhill, and uh, it does sound like uh, she did uh, she suffered from hypothermia. Oh, wow. Um, so we could see that's why she was in kind of that reflective blanket. And again, and that, that would explain maybe why she looked a little bit sluggish even in the swim. Um, yeah. And she was obviously concerned about it. If she did do that warm up in the wetsuit, she was aware of, uh, yep. of the cold. I'm surprised that that didn't help enough. Uh, but she, yeah, a little bit, little bit cold for her with that duration of that swim and that non-wetsuit legal temperature uh, and then out and you know, 58 degrees uh, riding a bike at 30 miles an hour yeah. like that. Uh, that doesn't warm you up, that's for sure. So unfortunate, unfortunate to hear that uh, she had to uh, drop out, but we're happy that it was uh, hypothermia and nothing, maybe a little bit more longer uh, term alarming. consequences. Yep. So the, our first three are through 157K. Uh, so that's Sky Monch, Sarah Svensk and Carolyn Lefreeder. And uh, looks like Jerzyk has gone through 48 seconds down. So that's a gap to Jerzyk. It uh, looks like that athlete we saw behind them was one of the male amateurs. Uh, Sarah True, 51 seconds. Rebecca Clark, 53. Maya Stage Nielsen, 55. So that group is it's together. It's, it's into two. Yeah, yeah, and it's consolidated. So if, if we were to see 48, then a minute five, then a minute 20, I'd say, okay, the race is blown apart. No. But if there's a group of four that's still kind of within each other and working together, they probably won't lose more than three minutes you know, at this point uh, from here on out, unless, uh, you know, Sky Monch really, uh, you know, continues to put the effort down. What's interesting to me, and I don't want to read too much into it because it's literally one data point of one yeah. moment in time across <laughs> a very, very long race. Do it. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway <laughs> and just say that Maya Stage Nielsen at the back of that group She's been an athlete who has been in a group since the start of the race. Uh, different groups at different times, and yep. but always the athlete at the front attacking it, and now she's the athlete at the back of that group. So I, I, I don't want to sound any alarms, but it's a change in behavior to what was at one point her at the front communicating with the other athletes, almost sort of yep. trying to rally some action, uh, but now sitting at the back. But so maybe just a little bit of a lull, 
maybe just being smart. Uh, it could be a number of things, but I'd, a change in behavior from what we saw earlier. I wouldn't say, not that she isn't being smart, but I wouldn't say it's her being smart because if she was being smart, she'd be in fourth in the back, right? She would have the energy to be with that front group. Uh, where being right. in the back of the second group shows... That's what I'm saying. It, I, yeah. I don't want to sound alarms, but it's, it's, it's different behavior yeah. than what we saw from her in the first... Um, certainly the earlier stages of the bike yeah. where either she's resigned to just sort of ride with this group and doesn't want to try to affect any more change and sort of gather herself um, and, and hope that someone in that front three is going to falter and she still could find her way onto a podium, but different behavior than we saw the first half of the ride. Yeah, no, I think it's fair to say that she's probably hanging on. And, and again, I think if we didn't see her for a period of time, I was my conclusion was she's either waiting to put an effort in because she's been that person or she's starting to feel all a the little, little efforts. Yes. Every time you go to the front with that kind of Drive pace, it, yes. it, it slows you down. But Sky Mach, I think she feels like she wants to be at the front for most of the rest of this day. We'll see if she can achieve that goal after this commercial. Welcome back to the action here in Frankfurt. It is Sky Munch now at the front of this race, driving the pace. The lead group that was quite large through the halfway point of the bike converged almost at halfway, um, has now accordioned back out again with uh, Sky, uh, Sarah Svensk, and Carolyn Lairreader, um, separated themselves from the next chase group that includes uh, Jurisic from Poland, Sarah True, Rebecca Clark, and Maya Stage Nielsen. Yeah, and then it's the first time I've noticed a Sky kind of look over her shoulder. Looks like she's getting a drink there and getting passed by Sarah Svensk and uh, Lev Reader right behind. So Lev Reader's going to have to go uh, past both of these athletes. Um, I, I think it's worth noting, Didi, that at this point, uh, they're committed. Yes. Right, like they, if they come off the pace, everything comes back together. Yep. Right, so uh, one of these three is always going to have to be pushing the pace at the front, or else this effort will be for naught. And I, I don't know how concerned they'll be. I, I don't imagine that Lefrieder will let that happen, um, and I don't think Sky really wants that to happen either. I, I don't anticipate that she's going to want it to happen, but it's interesting to me that after all of her. Um both vocal and emotional expression about being at the front and wanting someone else to come through the front that Carolyn, uh, Lair Reader would go through that aid station and go back to the front. Right. Yeah. No, no. It, yeah. <laughs> Surprising move. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it was one of those like accordion moments where you saw, possibly you yeah. saw just, there was a replay of, uh, sky going in for a water bottle, slowing down and everything kind of accordioning, but, yeah, no, it's surprised by it. But to my point, now she has to go, right? And I sure. think if she barks again at Sky, Sky's going to probably have to come around or else all that effort will be for no reason whatsoever. And Sky's, you know, in my opinion, she's on the right track. She's got a minute. If she gets another two minutes, she's put herself in a position where I think she could win this race if everybody involved has a good run. Yes. It'll be very tight, but it makes it a race. I think if she comes off with everybody else, uh, it's not gonna happen. And the fact that Sarah True has only lost 50 seconds mean that, means to me that Sarah has not cracked. She's just off the pace a little bit. I'm, and still, a I'm still surprised by Sarah True not being amongst the lead three. 
Yeah, but it's well, possible she was an eighth it, right? A wheel, yeah, yeah. She was not the right wheel. Yeah, we'll um, know more of the next split for sure. Sure, and of note, Lauren Brandon now um, still sitting in eighth place, but a full six minutes back of our leader. So um, that gap now that she is solo is is expanding okay, so uh, pretty rapidly. And Lauren Jensen, we could probably expect to be not too far behind uh, Lauren Brandon, but she is most likely the next athlete to come through as we see uh, Svensk uh, move through the front of this course with just a little over 20 kilometers uh, to go in this race. And then it's that run we've been waiting for. And uh, certainly a run that woman on screen has been waiting for and, and a couple other uh, women we've been talking about all day. But, uh, you know, they say bike for show, run for dough. <laughs> the, important, <laughs> the important part is, uh, is coming. And, you know, you got to set the table, so to speak, with a swim and a bike. But what really matters, especially in a race where all the competitors are this close together, is really going to be who has the best run is going to win this race. Well, most likely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, still pretty tightly bunched. We don't have conditions on the day that are necessarily, I think, going to create, contribute to the dramatics once we get to the marathon. I don't think we're going to yeah. see any blow ups we see will be based on people overreaching on the bike and not due to the fact that it's, you know, 95 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% humidity. And I, I'm, I, you're right. And I may be reaching here, but to that, does that, that to me, that doesn't favor Sky, right? Like to me, she's a, the, the, the harder it is, yes. the better she is. She's the stability the, player. Right. The slower a race course it is, the better it is. Yes. Where if it's great conditions, somebody else, like, I, I just don't know if her legs can run faster than a 258, right? Where other people can, her limiter is her leg speed, but it doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees yes. or 60 degrees, where other athletes might be able to uncork, like, maybe well, someone who was fourth at the Olympics. And to further that point a little bit, the yeah. conditions being what they are with relatively mild temperatures, humidity continuing to drop. Um, right. It is going to enable someone who does have that foot speed, this woman on this woman. screen, Sarah Svensk, and perhaps even a, a Sarah True to run a really, really fast marathon. Totally. I mean, and and w I'm glad that she's on screen right now because this could be the, like, floating uh, under the radar a little bit athlete that yeah. she could pop off a 252. I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, no, a lot, a lot could happen here. So uh, the women, the lead women have gone through that 161 kilometer mark uh, still with left reader Svensk and Monch uh, going through there all together just separated between with three seconds between them curious to see if kind of where that they came together through that aid station and a little bit of slowing and passing yep. kept things from expanding too much more again it's only been five kilometers since the last checkpoint so not a ton of time but uh, certainly this athlete on screen is excited to, to keep the pace up so we'll see if that gap has opened uh, at all anymore to those uh, chasing athletes behind. Well, I think of the women in that top three, uh, she's the one that needs the, the biggest gap based on run performances she's had in the past compared to the company that she's in. If everybody runs their best run. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Correct. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah Svensk would have the upper hand on Sky Monch, I believe is your point, right? No, I guess my point was more that uh, Carolyn Lairreader is the one who on paper needs, needs, it. needs okay, the gap. Yep. She needs the gap. Um, I think when compared to Sarah Svens, Sky Munch, okay. yep. and Sarah True. That makes sense. And so the chasers have gone through, so 115 to Jerzyk, 117 to True. Uh, Maya Stage Nielsen has lost 10 seconds. She's separated from that group, 127 with Rebecca Clark right behind. So. Now that group of four is two groups of two. Uh, so those athletes uh, chasing Maya Stage Nielsen on screen right here, making this sweeping right-hand corner. Uh, she gets out of the saddle trying to chase down those athletes ahead. Uh, and as I said, Rebecca Clark just behind her uh, three seconds in arrears. But she still, she still looks good. You know, she ha certainly hasn't come apart. It's just those athletes in front are making a uh, pointed move forward and away. Yes. Right. So, uh, and, and, and that doesn't come for nothing, right? That is an effort spent. Um, so we're in the kind of the zone here with the last 20 K to go that if they don't open up another two minutes, you know, 
three and a half minutes to Rebecca Clark if she has a good run. Like it's all not. It's still just the run. It's still yes. whoever has the best run, and especially Didi, four lap flat yeah. run course. Yep. And here's uh, overhead of uh, Sarah True. Yep, Sarah True is now um, at that 116, 118, uh, and a little bit of a gap then to Maya Stage Nielsen and mm -hmm. Rebecca Clark. Um, I was just looking up uh, while you were chatting there um, some of uh, Carolyn uh, Lair Reader's run splits, and across 70.3, we're talking. 128, 135. Uh, she yep. has an Ironman run time of 343 uh, in Hamburg in 2021, ran 328. So that's what I'm saying is that, you know, these conversations about the For company sure. that she's in. Um, she has run a 306, but it was a while ago. It was a while ago. Yep. Um, she She's riding very, very well. Like she is riding in excess of what I would have imagined at the start of this race to be in this company. So maybe she's just having that kind of day, but yeah. the marathon times of recent would indicate that she may be one whose time at the front is, is not longer, but we will find out so much racing to come as we finish up the bike and head out to the marathon shortly. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Coolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up with group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Coolgaz has transformed the way that I train my athletes. And we're back at the front of the race with Sarah Svensk uh, pushing the pace. And again, Didi, this group has separated themselves. Yep. And we, we don't know, again, some inconsistencies, as you said, illness, uh, a little bit of injury. But she might know something that the rest of us don't, which is I'm just as good a runner as I've ever been. And she yep. could just be laughing right now. I, I'm telling you, from the beginning, she was very, very much on my radar. People might have disagreed with me. Uh, but my eyes were on her for the podium. I thought uh, Sarah Svensk, Sarah True, uh, Sky Munch, that was, that was my pick. And you always say this five and a half hours into I, race. I, no, I, I, you, can, you can look back at, uh, at my picks pre-race, <laughs> and that was, that was my podium picks. Uh, I believe you. I believe you. Um, I do actually believe you. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't have her for the win, but I would have her for the podium. Yeah, yeah. No, but she's, she's in a great spot She's for delivering it. right now. That's my girl, Sarah. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think any of us would have predicted that, you know, we're saying this race is opened up at 160K and it's 90 seconds between first yeah. and seventh oh, yeah. place. This, yeah. this race is not opened up whatsoever. No. These tiny gaps are necessary for these athletes that right now, I think these athletes are trying to get away from Sarah True, honestly. Yeah. I, I think that's it. I don't think there's anybody else in that chase group where they think they need three to four minutes on. I think it's Sarah True or trying to stretch her so she's fatigued enough where she's not even close to that 255 when she gets off the bike. My, my opinion. So you're still picking Sarah True for the win? No, I'm, pick, I'm thinking that's who they're concerned about right now. I still think Sarah's in a good spot, but I'm thinking this effort with these three athletes is because of Sarah True. they do not want to be with Sarah True. Yeah, I, I, I For whoever's disagree. left. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see when they get there, but I think this woman on screen, and we 100%, Cannot doubt uh, Sky Monch uh, either. Uh, I think she's certainly one that today could be that that PB run that puts her in that uh, 255, 258 range. Uh, she's certainly an athlete that is confident that she has that uh, in her, and maybe today's the day that that she can. Well, and those are the, those are the changes that you know she made in in opting to go with a new coach. We've yep. seen a little bit of a difference in her style, slightly higher cadence on the bike. Maybe she's been able to turn that into. Uh, better run cadence as well. You talked about her 
foot speed as sort of being her her limiter in that it wasn't it sort of was that was the keeping her from running the 255 where she's pretty solid in the three hours to 304 ish window um maybe that increased foot speed is 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 exactly what she she needs to turn in that that next level marathon maybe and she probably wasn't expecting it coming out here especially the conditions she's raced here in 2019 but oh, sure. if there was a day to get your pr run it's 60 degrees and overcast sure. with humidity that's not high yeah right so i mean it, it's certainly uh, a great conditions and great test uh, for her to try to get that fast run split but still looking so smooth and comfortable even though you know she's been pressing a lot of the day is uh, a flesh eater uh, at the front of this race again continuing to push this base and lauren brandon uh eighth place still 720 down i still haven't seen uh jansen come through but that's a lot of time and i'm not picking on lauren at all here but that shows that this group is moving pretty quickly still to lose seven minutes in just 40k maybe yeah i yeah i mean you can see that lauren's pace again when we look at average paces i think lauren is falling off versus this group accelerating oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah for sure but that seven minutes is that's that's a lot of falling off right that's going both directions yep. yeah. and there's there comes jansen through at another minute uh 20 ish minute 15 back from from lauren yeah and uh that was two minutes at the last check that was shoot just 5k ago yep. so yeah she is you're right she is she's moving through pretty good but uh still riding riding smooth and a reason to doubt uh that she's paced herself uh correctly is sarah Svens because she uh, tries to get that number in a more aerodynamic position, make sure it's not flapping around too much. Yeah, the noise in itself, you know, it's these, those little things uh, towards the end that, that sort of get into your head that wouldn't bother you at the beginning, but all of a sudden this late in, it sounds, you know, really loud flapping back there and starts to bug you a bit. Oh, absolutely. Left-hand side of the screen, left reader, right-hand side of the screen, Sarah Svensk both pushing the pace, but uh, we've got... Sky Monch somewhere in between or just in arrears of these two athletes. But, man, that poker face, I mean, it does look like Lev Reader is, like, breathing through her nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She looks very, very comfortable. Yeah, other than the early emotion that we saw when she wanted the other athletes to come through, um, she does seem very, very composed. Certainly does. Well, why don't you revel in the seaside splendor of Portugal's Atlantic coast at Ironman Portugal Cascades on October 21st. With its sandy beaches and beautiful coastline, Cascades is an incredible triathlon venue. The bike course provides stunning views of the Portuguese Riviera and the unique experience of riding on the Strolli Formula One circuit. Enjoy the vistas as you run along the coastline. Get your engine racing in Cascades. Register today. Go to ironman.com slash I am Europe. And here we go, Lair Reader. Sky Munch, Sarah Svensk at the front of the race as the athletes begin to think about the end of um, this bike course here. I don't think anyone's going to do anything drastic at this point. Uh, we might see an athlete pop and a couple of wedges in the space, but to your point, uh, just 90 seconds separating our top seven athletes. Yeah, no, it's, uh, again, it seems dramatic. It seems like it's open, but... Uh, Nobody has ever called uh, 90 seconds uh, separation with 20k to, 20K to go in a bike a spread out Ironman field. No, definitely not. Um, definitely not. Uh, and, and full credit to the woman on this uh, on screen right yeah. now. She has been having a uh, quite a day. We'll see if she'll be able to follow it up with a, a career marathon as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt. You're looking at Sarah Sphinx, who's had so far is poised to put in the fastest bike split of the day. Yeah, by about three minutes yep. if she holds pace and if she doesn't uh, decide she wants a little bit more, more time. But it, to me, she seems content in this position. I, I think so. I mean, I think she was back a bit on the swim and, and by herself, uh, one of those athletes that was on her own in no man's land chasing uh, what was the chase group in the early stages and inserted herself into that chase group and ever since has just been in the right place at the right time and, and has been more strategic since she caught that group, uh, but is, is riding very, very well. And we know that theoretically is poised to potentially have a very good marathon as well. Yeah, again, if if she's brought her best self to this start line, the way she's executed this bike and the way that she seemed, the energy she had when the groups came together, uh, to me, it seems like uh, she's the one, you know, in the driver's seat to a certain extent. And Roca race weather update, uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's opened up a little bit kind of with that mixed cloud cover still. Humidity continues to drop though, Didi. So 57 degrees, that's still going to feel pretty, uh, pretty nice uh, for a marathon run again. Super flat. Yes. Four laps and a bunch of super spectators out there. So, uh, and with right at this point, seven athletes within 90 seconds and all those spots to see your competitors, it's going to be a full on run race. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the adrenaline certainly gets pumping uh, when the, you get in the midst of the crowds down there. Yep. And um, we're in store for. Uh, an excellent race um, here, and it has been an excellent race, a, a little bit dramatic. Our, our race uh, defending champion has has retired from the race with some hypothermia, so a big disappointment there, yeah. but opening the door for a new champion, perhaps. Yeah, definitely a surprise to see uh, uh, Daniela uh, Blymill uh, succumb to the conditions a little bit there. It's a little bit cold, but I'm surprised with those temps that, that that happened, but happy that she's uh, in a good good spot and getting taken care of. But again, a woman on the left-hand side of the screen, Carolyn Lechreeder, is moving along so well and looks so comfortable and composed. I mean, and honestly, all the women in this group of, of three in the front looks very, very good. I'd like to see, here we got a shot of go. what I'd like to see is Sarah True and kind of the comfort level of those athletes behind and asking you shall receive <laughs> we should or we shall and it, yeah i mean often late in a race or i feel like i have seen this before from sarah you and she gives a little bit of time you see the rpms come up a little bit and she's managing not going too deep in the hole so that she can have that marathon right so she's a she's a smart racer and again we're talking about dynamic runs uh, to get fourth place in the Olympics, you got to be a pretty darn dynamic runner. Uh, so she has the ability to, to respond to pace or maybe close down uh, gaps. But we'll see right now if she's got any other athletes she's with. Yeah, she's still with it. Looks like Yerzik uh, riding just in front of her uh, in that uh, mixed colored uh, race kit. Uh, she's had a great great race, looking looking well, looking smooth. Pushes a little bit bigger gear, starting to rock and roll. Uh, a little bit more than we've seen her uh, earlier in the day, but uh, still out there having uh, a very, very solid bike ride. And a very a very capable runner as well. Uh, I wouldn't put her in the same category even as a, a Sky or a Sarah Svensk uh, or Sarah True, but uh, certainly capable of running in the you know, 310 yeah. to 320 range, uh, which again, for her goals for this race, she's one of our athletes uh, amongst our top 10 here who has not yet uh, secured a slot to the Ironman World Championship uh, in Hawaii in October. So uh, no doubt if that's one of her goals, uh, she's she's getting the job done right now. No, no, she's, she certainly is. She's got to kind of hold on, but she definitely has a gap uh, to be able to uh, you know, hold on to that if she wishes. And, you know, an athlete that doesn't have a bunch of Ironman distance uh, s podiums or success, so to speak, depending on how you judge that, but has won a fair bit of 70.3. So she certainly knows what it takes to be at the front of these races and has those consistent half times. But yeah, that 310, 315, yeah, that, that's good for her in a top five, uh, maybe best case scenario, top three if some athletes falter in front, but uh, certainly not like a one. great performance for her. Right? Yeah, oh, like, oh, yeah, for sure. For um, sure. One of the best performances likely of her of her career um, and to secure a, a qualifying slot would be would be wonderful as well. But just looking around 
you know, we've been asking the question all day, who are you racing at this point? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it almost looks like we had some athletes coming back to that group of Yerzik and True. It's hard to say if that's some of our age group men rolling through the field. It did look like maybe it was a similar color kit to Maya Stage Nielsen, so oh, it's okay. possible she's moving back. The it was only kit. She was only 10, yeah, <laughs> the Rainbow Sherbert. She was only 10 seconds behind, so it wouldn't be surprising if she could make her way back, as was Rebecca Clark. Uh, but uh, Sky Mod starting to show that uh, she's working hard, uh, getting a little bit fatigued, which is completely reasonable when you're about 105 miles in uh, to a bike ride leading uh, European championship here. But uh, nice little shot of Lead Reader, but we'll get back to the action after this commercial break. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. And it looks like we've got a Rebecca Clark on screen uh, trying to move herself back uh, into contention here. Not that being 90 seconds back is out of contention, out of contention at all. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, there was a little bit of separation between her and Maya Stage Nielsen and Sarah True and Yerzik. And again, all of these athletes close enough to this front group of three that with good momentum at a certain time and good energy, that gap of a minute and 10 seconds could come back really, really quickly. Oh, sure. And and again, uh, Rebecca Clark, an athlete not dissimilar to uh, Yursik, who, uh, again, on paper doesn't hold the near three hour type marathons, but a 310, 315, certainly uh, definitely possible. We heard in her a fighting chance. And if you missed that, you can head over to the YouTube channel uh, to, to watch that back. But uh, she's here to go for that uh, marathon PR and she hasn't run what she feels to her full potential. So uh, again, conditions on the day that could be setting up really, really nicely for Rebecca Clark. Oh no, absolutely. And uh, again, sometimes even these athletes on screen might be thinking, okay, it's just us three. Yeah. Right. Because in, when you're in the race and it's been a long race and it's been seven or eight, you think, if you separate, then everybody's just going backwards and that's their day done. But those athletes might just there. be making They're lurking and they might be making choices. That's yep. like, man, I, if I do this, I'm going to run five minutes slower. Yes. Right. Or, you know, if I can serve, I know how I run best uh, off of the effort on the bike. So uh, we we always think that the person catching or person dropping is in the driver's seat. And generally they are. But often a very smart racer can manage those moments from behind and end up having good success. So tell me, so far in the race, we're five hours and nearly 40 minutes into racing. What has yeah. been your biggest surprise so far? Uh, I mean, it's hard for me to get past that swim gap. Yep. Honestly, uh, I think there's certainly other uh, moves and I'm surprised that the, the race is still this close together this late. I would not have uh, projected that at all, uh, but probably the swim. How about you? Uh, I would say certainly the withdrawal of the defending champion and the fact that she was obviously something was going on with her physically that she wasn't able to close down that gap. But the fact that she wasn't able to close down that gap and is now sort of out of contention, I wouldn't have put her. Honestly, she wasn't my pick to win the race, given how strong this field um, rounded out, but uh, the fact that she's no longer amongst the players, I think, is is a big surprise. Yeah, I think that is a surprise. I mean, anytime you have an athlete not finish a race, you know, and when it's the defending champion, I guess it's kind of a stupid thing to say, but it's a no. surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And I, you know, that's probably the the best answer uh, <laughs> to that question because, yeah, we all we thought that even if she had a few minute gap. Uh, halfway through the bike ride, she was going to continue to move through, and um, she just stalled and, and faltered. So, uh, yeah, that, that's that. I would say that's probably the biggest surprise 
of the day, but uh, day's not over. I have a feeling there's some more surprises. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there always there always are, right? There absolutely always are. Um, yeah, I'm surprised Maya Stage Nielsen has paused. She was so aggressive in the early stages, but again, could be a strategic choice. Um, she runs very, very well and still well within podium contention. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, okay, let's see here if we see anybody, any of these other athletes uh, kind of making their way back up. But no, just this top three. And if I didn't know better, I'd almost think it was, there's a little bit of moisture out there. Um, but doesn't we haven't gotten any reports uh, from folks out on course of that, but just uh, some of those overcast clouds uh, settling in. But we're getting pretty close. Didi, I think we're going to get a bike, a bike split at 175K pretty soon, which means the bike ride is pretty near uh, to be done. And, you know, I think this next split is going to be pretty telling. If that gap's much over two minutes and 30 seconds, then then a lot's going to gonna change here. And, and I think Sky Monch has, has put herself in a, a great position as well as Sarah Svensk. As we said, Lay Reader continuing to try to, to be as close as possible without getting into that draft zone mm. um, and, uh, you know, trying to maintain that, but uh, getting close to where it's necessary for her uh, to pass. But uh, Lay Reader out there, and she's been an instigator, uh, so definitely can't say she's a, a hanger on her uh, in this field. She's been one that's been pushing the pace all day long. Yeah, again, camera angles, and it is yeah. a little congested through here with the automobile traffic going outbound uh, and the lapped traffic, obviously, but... Got to be heads up uh, at every every point of this race and getting a little bit close there through some of these uh, tighter section of sections of the course. But uh, Sky Munch, uh, Carolyn Lairreader, and Sarah Svensk uh, making their way back to town to start this marathon. Yeah, and they've uh, just gone through 176 kilometers and a time of 4:39.04. So we continue on that pace then uh athlete like sky is going to do a 450 bike ride and a sarah spence is going to do about a 447 so that's a minute off of uh what blind mill did last year but these three again riding in that uh, comfortable group and again the big tell i think is going to be where this next split is and if we're over that about two and a half minute mark i think that will tell us a lot about the momentum uh of this this race going in to the run and again still very very close i mean two and a half three minutes four minutes in a marathon is absolutely nothing but it's enough of a head start like if sky had that replay in arizona she wins arizona oh sure right yeah oh I, absolutely and when you're looking at the consistency of performances that that sky puts out there's not a lot of vulnerability there um in no. terms of her consistency i think um Larry Eater certainly less consistent, and Sarah Svensk a bigger question mark because yeah. of health and injury. Uh, but you know, Sky, I, and I'm, I don't want to say it because I'm gonna, I don't want to curse her, and I don't want people to get angry at me at, for cursing her. But she is probably, That's if you're not gonna, real. I know, <laughs> if you're gonna put money, if you're gonna bet money, you're gonna bet on the consistency of, of, of Sky Munch. Totally, and it's not, it's not very frequent that you have an athlete that again and i hope this is her day for a pb uh, i'm not trying to take that away from her but that i would i would i would guess 258 would be like breakthrough great run for her yeah but i would never bet that she's going to run slower than a 303 Correct. like that window is so close yeah. and to me that states that she's just so tough if you just always on the throttle to be that consistent all the time like she manages nutrition she manages her pace on the bike she manages all these things for her just standard run window to be that tight is pretty remarkable. I don't, I can't remember another, like I feel like Lindsey Corbin at one point was very similar to that, but. But here's the other thing is that she's not content with that. She no. she does not want the, I mean, yes, I think she'll take the consistency award and she's probably pretty happy with that and pretty proud of it. But if she wants to make those next steps uh, to where she's not fourth at the Ironman World Championship, she's standing on the podium and presumably standing on the top step of the podium, that's where she's got to. If she, if she was trip. watching this race, or she watches this race afterwards, and hears me say, "I don't think she can run faster than 258," she'll be pissed. Is she gonna come find you? Yeah, and, totally. And, and murder I, you in your bed. Yeah, I don't know. Is, you know I would say she's a murderous type, but no, you're right. And uh, I just pulled two and a half minutes, kind of out of nowhere. But there we have it. Two and a half minutes. Sarah Drew, 228. Yep. 
and uh, your Zik 229. So to me, that's still kind of within that things are reasonable. And it's only 5K to go, so maybe they lose another 30 seconds. Uh, but this still is... And no Maya stage. No. And there's no... We still got... They might be within a, a, a 30 seconds or a minute, but there's no... This makes it quite even. Yes. Right? If Arizona was three-minute head start for Sky over Sarah, it would have been a battle. Different, yes. Right? So this is shaping up. And again, Sarah Spence, if she was watching this race, she'd be like, you guys keep talking about but, uh, I mean, again, Sky this, this is a... This is... I, I think Sky would argue, if Sky were sitting here in the booth with us, that Arizona was very different in that Sarah True didn't race it. Or she started it, but did not finish it. Kona. And Sky, yeah. yes, yeah. Sky did. So Sky had totally. that fatigue. And I think this is going to be a more level playing field in that Sky isn't dealing with that post Ironman World Championship fatigue in her legs. Totally fair point. And I think yeah. that is why when she finished that race, she said, I'm not, I'm doing, not that. doing that again. It wasn't just Arizona, yeah. it was that. That double. No, uh, very, very well said. Uh, I'm still eyeballing while we watch our, our women's leaders head towards T2. Um, still no Maya Stage Nielsen. So that, yeah. is a, that is a bit of a... Uh, uh, Clark has just gone through at 423. Yes. Uh, so uh, Maya has, has definitely dropped off the pace. And uh, kind of that uh, urgency that she raced with was yep. uh, maybe not the best... Uh, tactic for for an Ironman, and, and mo most athletes have have done that. And she was so close to a win, she felt yes. like that's what she like. She's trying the different things. Yep. Didn't work this time, but she still has her Kona qualification, and you know she has time if she wanted to to do another Ironman. I don't know that I would recommend that necessarily, but she's trying new things, and she maybe now if she goes to Kona, she's like, I'm just gonna let other people do the thing. Yep. And, and hang in there. But. I don't need to be the instigator. I don't need to, to be the one making the attacks. Um, still, you know, she's a great, great runner. And assuming that she hasn't sort of blown herself up in trying to affect uh, a change out on the race course, could still wind up on the podium. Um, oh, yeah. Her ability to run, I think, slightly stronger than Rebecca Clark, certainly stronger than Yursik, um, certainly, at least historically, faster than... Um, Blair Eater, uh, and then all she needs is for one of the, you know, other athletes to falter, could still wind up on the podium. But, Again, a lot of racing left. But she hasn't come through yet. She so still hasn't not, come through. We're not sure uh, where she's at there. And I think Rebecca Clark, like, hats off to her. I think if, you know, again, we had that six and a half minute gap out of the swim that was unexpected. But I think if you asked Rebecca Clark, would you be happy to come off the bike four and a half minutes behind the leader at this race? Yep. She'd probably be pretty content with it. Maybe not with five athletes in front of her. And Maya Stage Nielsen does go through at six minutes down, so she's a minute and a half behind okay. Clark. But I think Clark's in a in a, in a a great position. And again, I think a top five at this race, uh, European Championship is fantastic. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, again, athletes making their way here back towards the transition. Walk me through, Matt, some of the, what they're what's going through their minds right now. I want to get off my bicycle. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, all the things are, you know, hopefully getting in in their minds as far as, like, the, uh, the, the smart thoughts, right? Like, Sky Monch being like, okay, maybe I need to worry about Sarah Svensk, right? Or, like, those things. Like, okay, what have I not been thinking about that I need to pay attention to? And, but mostly intricacies of transition what i'm going to do decide what pace you're going to go out with or like just confirm what you had talked about with your coach or by yourself and know that okay no matter what svensk does i'm just going to run start out at seven minute pace and see what happens or you know what i'm racing for the win if svensk comes out and i'm speaking in uh, sky if svensk comes out fast get on her shoulder like you're thinking of those tactics and holding yourself accountable uh to sticking with those things but uh mostly i'd I'm like to get off, off my bike, bike but ooh, runs are hard yeah that's what <laughs> how I'd are my leg how are my legs gonna feel right we talked about transition of those first few steps being somewhat telling for the athletes and whether they've oh yeah sort of over overcooked the biscuit um on the bike uh whether they've managed the nutrition properly uh they're gonna know that uh, in very short order. And again, 
you can settle in. You can have a rough transition and feel pretty punk and just need a, a, a couple of kilometers to, to yeah. find your groove. Uh, certainly by no means a done deal, but but telling as to whether or not you may have overextended. And in this in this field, kind of a done deal if you're trying to win. Yeah. Right? Uh, so there's, there's, there's a lot... Uh, that we're going to be able to see when these women get off uh, the bike and, uh, you know, see where the fluidity is. But I think we can count on uh, Sky looking like Sky and being comfortable. It's not often she gets off the bike and I see her being blown or at, running in a different manner than she normally does. She's, as you said, perfect word. It's consistency for, for that woman. She is so consistent over all the disciplines, but yes. mostly the run specifically. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's remarkable, actually, how, how tight she is. And I'm wondering if maybe they've got a little gap on Sarah Svensk with uh, the motorcycle between. As we haven't gone through the 182.9K mark yet, and they're getting the shoes out. So I think we're real close to that transition. And we're going to see uh, shortly how these women look coming off the bike. And again, big I shouldn't say big surprise, but it's a little bit of a surprise to me to see Lair Reader this far up, this late into the race. I mean, again, swim bike combo is is strong for her, uh, but I would not have put her in the category of some of the athletes that she's with and ahead of at the moment. So great performance for her thus far. Yeah, for sure. And I kind of, I, I, I've got the vibe and the swagger off of her that this is like, this is her A race, right? Like I just get that. So, and I could be pulling that out of nowhere as I often do, but I do think if that's the case, she's going to be putting it all out there. But it's not just like a emotional thing. Like she looks really yeah. smooth. Like yeah. she looks great. So we'll we'll see here just a few seconds and see how far back Sarah Svensk is. Um, but again, Lead Reader is going to have to have kind of a breakthrough run to stay yes. on the podium, honestly. Um, but I would argue that she is having a breakthrough performance so far in a major championship race. Yeah, 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 I think I, I think that's fair to say. Um, and since it's been uh, four years since a Ironman, her one Ironman victory, um, this is great, great signs for her. They all get off the bike. It looks like Lay Raider's going to be first off the bike in a bike split of 449.51 with uh, Sky Monch 449.26. And Sarah if you're, Spence, ju if you're judging for steps, what are you saying? Uh, Lay Raider doesn't look that great. Yep. Sky looks like Sky. Yep. And Sarah Svensk looks great as well. Yep. Um, but lay readers, like, you know, with a bike in your hand, it's, it's a little yeah, bit different. Yep. Um, so we'll see once she drops that bike uh, how close, uh, you know, it looks to this. But she doesn't look bad, I wouldn't say. Um, we'll see if she's uh, got any issues that she's dealing with once we get there. But there she goes. She drops the bike. Or not quite. She's just moving over a little bit. But she definitely looks a little taxed. Sky looks in her face, like, pretty taxed, honestly. Like, she she looks rigid in her face, and I don't know that I'm used to that. It could just be the fact that she's still got that visor on. You can't really see her her eyes. But I mean, it could also be she that she's tense. not particularly stoked about the company that she's got in Sarah Spence. Could be. Could be. Um, do you think starting this race, you know, if you put a list on that Sky Monch was like Sarah True, Sarah Svensk, like people to watch out for, like do you think she she was on the radar before the race started? Sarah Svensk? Yeah. Um, I, I think she was a bit of a question mark. I mean, again, she's had a bit of a spotty couple of years with health and injury. Um, so maybe not a shock as we take a look here at our uh, bike split presented by Wahoo Element Bolts, time 449.26. Again, that's a bit of a long course, 113 miles, 182K yeah. uh, for Sky Munch there. I, I don't think it would have necessarily been shocking. I think maybe not guaranteed. Sarah Svensk looks very calm and relaxed going about her business She was here. looking to the right, seeing if anybody else is coming. Yep. Yep. Um, so athletes making sure they put their helmets in their bag, getting everything back in the bag. And it looks like Sky Mach is first out as Lay Reader uh, saying some words to the volunteers, uh, possibly her competitors, as she hands off her bag but has a little bag full of uh, goodies that she needs the for this run. The bag within the bag. Yeah, you've got to have the bag within the bag. Uh, nobody else threw that bike exit at this point. Sarah Spence looks really good, yeah. really good turnover, really good drive. Yep. She looks like she's been waiting for the run. Yes. 
Absolutely, and, and it kind of had that vibe a little bit when she kind of just settled in after the group started to separate. And, and really, she watched Sky and um, Lair Reader put in efforts and just kind of sat there and covered everything. Yep. Um, so it would make sense. But right now, uh, it, at the front of the race is Sky Mott. She's been at the front of this race before, not till very late in the race, but uh, Sarah True was leading that race that uh, Sky was second place in till the very end. And she looks very, very comfortable, 253. And in my head, I was thinking three minutes between Sarah True and Sky Monch to make this a very, very good race. Again, if Sarah Svensk has that great run, this is probably too much of a gap for Sarah True if they're both on good days. Yes. It's very, very tight, right? Um, and also behind... I mean, given what Sarah's been able to do, Sarah Svensk has been able to do in the yeah. past, um, it, it's, it's a tall order for Sarah True at this point. Yes. Yep. And uh, Yurzik looks looks good. You know, again, a little awkward uh, having that bike. There's a pretty long run with a bike. Often we get kind of bike catchers right yep. out of uh, transition. So these athletes makes it even extra awkward trying to... Run that far with, yeah. Run with one hand and... Uh, run without your wheel flying all over the place and your shoes kicking around, but uh, Sarah True looks looks real good. She's going to put that on and uh, get into that uh, change area and hits the lap button on her Wahoo to get in through that transition. She's going to look for that bag, uh, her run bag, or they might even have a volunteer with it. And there she goes. She grabs her own off of the rack there, gets her helmet off, and uh, she's going to start putting those socks on and getting ready to chase that three-minute gap down as much as she can. Again, she looks very, very calm. I'm sure she's not thrilled to hear the number three minutes-ish. Um, probably less concerned. I think she's feels her chances are better with Sky. I think Sarah Svensk is the big question mark. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Now, let's not forget, like, if we're talking energy, we had uh, Sky Monch to be three minutes ahead of Sarah True has outridden Sarah True by nine minutes. Wow. Right? So that's a fantastic bike ride. Yes. But there's energy that comes with yes. that. Certainly more energy than Sarah used getting that gap on the swing. Yep. So that's where late stages of this run, that's where we're going to start to see that is Sarah probably has fresher legs because she, uh, she is a good cyclist. Um, Dude, she looks fantastic. Yeah. She looks fantastic. She's calm, confident. Yeah, uh, she always does. Yes. Yeah, absolutely uh, impressive athlete. And wow, Yerzik looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, I think she, she's coming out. She's going to settle in at a pace yeah. different than what we were seeing right here, uh, as she One should. One would hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Rebecca Clark has come through 523 down, so there's only two and a half minutes behind uh, those two women we just saw go through transition as we see a nice overhead shot of Sky Monch. That's her behind uh, Moto there with the kind of lead uh, cyclist next to her as we start this run. And again, this is probably 30 degrees cooler than when yes. she won this race yes. in 2019 and uh, what contributed to Sarah Chu's issue, but Rebecca Clark looks good as well. And take a look at our transition two times presented by Morton, Sky Munch at 2.09, uh, Carolyn Lairieter at 2.13, and Sarah Sensk at 2.15. So thanks to our friends at Morton for highlighting some of those transition times. Of, uh, like to your point of a long run, a long awkward run uh, with the bikes. As we look yeah. back, uh, there is Maya Stage Nielsen coming yes. off of the bike. Um, so she is not dreadfully far behind no. Rebecca Clark. She is 626 down. No, again, and if, if we said before the race, seven athletes within six and a half minutes, we would have thought this was a tight race. But the way it's developed, it's it seems it like seems it's blown like apart. Because it was so tight yeah. through halfway of the bike that those gaps have built up. And the way the it happened. Yes. It went from a big gap to together and now a bigger gap. So uh, the athlete there that just came through seven minutes back is an equal gap to what uh, was had after that first swim as we get a nice close-up shot of Rebecca Clark as she uh, gets her goodies out of her bag, gets those socks uh, in hand, puts a hat on, and uh, gets ready to do all the little things uh, to to make sure she has a good run. And she looks she looks comfortable. She doesn't look too stressed. I will say honestly, it looked like Sky was a little 
I don't know if it was the cold, but she looked like a, obviously some discomfort. You're done riding, riding 113 miles. Um, but she didn't look the freshest, like while seated making that transition, but I've misread things many times before. But to me, the two athletes that looked the best uh, were Sarah Svensk and Sarah True. Yes. Uh, my stage looks looks very good too. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you know my concern for her is that she did give up quite a bit of time um, in the last call it 30k of the bike, uh, and some of those attacks that she had made to try to you know get things going in the earlier stages may have cost her a little bit. Yeah. That, that's my question mark right now. But I I fully back her. Uh, ability to run, and so we'll see if she can sort of regroup and, and, and attack this marathon. Yeah, no, and, and she looks good, and again, that three-hour marathon in Ironman Texas, and with these conditions here, way less humidity yes. uh, than was in Ironman Texas, I'm sure, and, uh, you know, if she has that three-hour marathon in her, she has a great shot at a, a podium position, or certainly that top five as she starts the run in seventh place. I feel like Yurzik's going to have a hard time uh, holding off uh, Maya Stage Nielsen, as is Rebecca Clark on screen. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that fully. I, I just think on paper, unless Maya has done damage to herself, yeah. you know, on the bike, which the, it might be implied based on how much time she lost in the, in the last stages there, but uh, still well within reach of the top five. Absolutely. There you go. And the top three women getting off the bike uh, very, very tight as we see uh, Sky has gone through that 1.8 kilometer mark in six minutes, 50 seconds. Uh, so we'll see how much of a gap she has on those athletes chasing behind as we have nice overhead replay of those three women uh, putting their bikes on the rack at the end of that uh, transition run area. But Carolyn Leverider has gone through 17 seconds behind. So just lost uh, about yeah, 15, 17 seconds uh, coming out of transition into the 2K mark and still waiting on Sarah Svensk. Um, so maybe not the pep in yeah. the step early. That's surprising to me to see her lose over 20 seconds at this point. Considering how good she looked, but we'll see, uh, we'll see how it plays out uh, when we come back after this quick break. Welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt, brought to you by Hoka, Fly, Human Fly, and by VinFast, Boundless, Together. Here's our rookie, Didi. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great job of it. Uh, looks calm, cool, and collected as we look further ahead on this Hoka Marathon course with Sky Monch in the lead. Uh, Carolyn Lairreeder in second place. She's 17 seconds down, and Sarah Svensk. Uh, surprised by this, she is a full minute and a half back through 1.8 kilometers. Well, so. there's a, there's her one prediction gone. Yeah. She wasn't saving it for the run. Nope. Uh, she wasn't the cat playing with the ball of yarn. Um, but no, Sky uh, was the cat playing with the ball of yarn. She was. Yes. Uh, she was. So yeah, Sarah Spence 90 seconds back, um, and Jansen uh, right now getting everything sorted, taking her time to make sure everything's perfect, so she feels good and confident. She is. She hasn't mastered run. the bag within the bag. Nope. Let's see here, man, she, she's on a mission. Yes. She is driving more than anybody I've seen coming out of transition at this point, as far as uh, just pushing forward and uh, yeah, moving herself forward. So she's she's got an opportunity here. We had Sarah True has gone through at three minutes and three seconds uh, down from Sky Monch, and that is exactly the split out of T2. So those two athletes are running the exact same time as we see Lauren Brandon coming off the bike. 
Lauren Brannett coming off the bike, uh, absent the smile. Um, she looks like she's a little, a little worn, um, but she is, again, a bit of a slower starter, so she might just need a kilometer or two to find those legs, but uh, there's Lauren Brandon. Yep, there she goes. She'll, uh, she'll put that bike on the rack and uh, put herself in a position to uh, try to have the best run she can on the day and, again, learn something from the day, but, again, the experience. So at some point, yes. that's gonna that's gonna come for her. Uh, she's gonna get the nutrition and get out there and uh, enjoy running in this uh, beautiful venue with all these spectators. Uh, we did have Yurzik go through in fifth place, 3:30 down. So she's lost about 25 seconds uh, to Sarah True, who she more or less came out of transition with. Uh, another shot of Lauren Brandon uh, from behind there. So our top five are through that 1.8 uh, kilometers at this point, just waiting to see where the uh, kind of momentum from Rebecca Clark and Maya Stage Nielsen is through that 1.8 kilometer mark. But again, kind of right now, it seems like Lay Reader is hanging in there and Sarah Svensk isn't. And Sarah True and Sky Monch are kind of what we thought they would be, at least for the early portions of the run. Yep. Um, they're going to be running even for a while, and it's going to be yeah. kind of a game of who can suffer the most, I think. No doubt as we take a look here at Lauren Brandon's T2, getting the socks and the shoes on and ready to go. Her deficit, 11 minutes, 45 seconds down. That's off the bike. We'll see if she can claw back a couple of... Uh, Seconds in transition, but she has um, got the bag back to the great volunteers here and off and running. Yeah, no, she looks she looks good. You could tell she's tired. She was kind of doing some long blanks and some yeah. head shakes, so a little bit of uh, maybe nutritional deficit, kind of that light bonk uh, where your vision's a little bit weird when you don't maybe have enough sugars yeah. in you. So um, she'll uh, she knows what she's doing. She'll do her best to to fix that. Here's a replay of uh, our. When our leader uh, of the race here at the European Championship, it's uh, Sky Monch, having a really efficient transition. She's now just run through uh, 3.8, uh, sorry, 3.1 kilometers, uh, still at a very similar pace that she did for the first two. And another little shot of Sarah Svensk and uh, Le Reader uh, getting out of transition and chasing our early leader. And Le Reader did look really good coming out of transition. Yeah, again, my my biggest surprise so far is uh, Sarah Svensk yep. um, being off the mark that much in the marathon so far. Yeah, no, it's uh, especially how good she looked coming out yeah. of transition. Yep, going uh, into and out of. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Lay Reader has now gone through that 3.1 kilometer mark at 31 seconds uh, behind our leader on screen, Sky Monch. And, you know, Sky looks... Looks good. Yeah. Looks like she does uh, when she's running well. You know, it's she's definitely on. She's got that effort in her face that maybe I'd be used to seeing a few miles down the road. Uh, you know, usually there's like a little settling in period, uh, but she definitely looks like she's pressing and she needs to. She remembers what happened yeah. in Arizona. And I, I forgot, and I think you made a great point that that's not an apples to apples. Yes. Because Sarah didn't race. Kona. Yes. Sir was sick, so there's that, whatever, but the pounding in the legs, like there's something there when you get late yeah. in a marathon. So what she's gonna hope is that it stays at three minutes till twenty two miles and then it just stays there because her legs aren't coming apart. Yep. Um, but yeah, she looks great. She's got good I wanna say she's almost got more arm carriage yes. movement than she has in the past. Um, and a little less shuffly even. Yep. Yeah, so maybe she's done some done some work with that new coach to actually change the running biomechanics a little bit, maybe some more speed work, but she looks great. And, uh, you know, our fantastic uh, Fighting Chance crew was able to go track down Sky Race Week and uh, talk to her a little bit about the race coming up. You know, we're not all out there racing thinking, oh man, like, good job. Like, no, I want to beat you. And... What keeps me going is just the possibility of improvement and the possibility of being better. And, 
you know, we're, we're addicted to like hopefully having that perfect race and uh, breakthrough opportunity. Yeah, I mean, 2019 was interesting. I didn't know I was winning the race until a kilometer before the finish line. So it was just so many emotions and obviously pure joy and happiness and disbelief. I think female development in Ironman and in sport has come a long way in the last few years. And I think just people realizing that women are engaging and competitive and fun to watch as well. I think women getting their own day in Kona last year was incredible. You know, we're not all out there racing thinking, oh man, like, good job. Like, no, I want to beat you. And I want to joke about how I'm going to beat you before the race. And even though I'm not joking, probably in a long time before an Ironman, I feel fit, but I don't feel, you know, just totally destroyed and tired. So I'm excited to see how I feel on race day and execute my race. You know, the big ladies uh, are here who love this race to make it competitive. Like, I think it's going to be a fun race, and I'm glad there's so many women to battle it out with on course. Well, you heard it here. Uh, back to the action. Uh, Sky looking to uh, execute here and uh, try to come away with the win. And so far, so good. She's got a 31 second lead on second place, the German Carolyn Lairreader. As Sarah Svenk not running to what we thought. She's already given up two minutes as those three came into transition together. And uh, Sky holding her gap to Sarah True at just about three minutes back. Yeah, no, it's a uh, 306. There's Sarah's lost five seconds, kind of negligible at this point, but uh, telling that uh, Sky is, is is running well. And I tell you, Didi, we don't have a, a video of her a year ago, but this running stride looks different. And uh, the carriage looks different. Her uh, The length of her stride looks different. Yes. It's a lot less shuffly. So that right there is an athlete that could make me eat my words on the not running faster than 258. Like those are the structural changes that need to happen yep. for her to run what she wants to, which is like a 255. And if she can hold it is a different question. When yes. you change after you're used to one thing. Uh, well, the muscle memory and the, all of it. It's, right. just, it's it, like she's, as far as I know, and I could be misreading all of this, she's never run a marathon with this stride before. Yep. So that's very, very different. And it's not a huge difference, but it's, Notable. Well, we're it used is, to, it's the arm carriage. It's the arms driving the legs a little bit, and it's the foot speed. Yeah, but we're used to her. We say shuffle every time we see her, right? She's got that Iron Man shuffle, right? And that I wouldn't. It's an efficiency run. Totally. I would. <laughs> I would not say that this is a shuffle. Yeah. She's just looks great. She looks like an athlete that has short course running experience, and yeah, I'm super impressed. And if she holds it together, again, these are the tools necessary to kind of make that next step in the marathon for her and, and bravo for her for tracking that down and finding out that that's what she needed. Or I'm noticing something that doesn't exist and she's doing the same thing she's always done, but pretty confident, at least for those first few miles that her stride was longer and a lot less shuffly. Yep, checking the watch. Uh, things going very, very well right now uh, as we come back to uh, 1.8K and... Um, Maya uh, has gone past uh, Clark. Beck Clark, but uh, only by a couple of seconds there. But the differential in pace is fairly significant. Uh, 18 seconds a K there. So Maya moving forward uh, now in sixth place. Uh, and Laura Jansen hanging in there in eighth place. She's 940 back. But Maya, with where she's at, there's a, like, right now I'm, I'm doing the math and I'm looking at things. And if Carolyn Layreader holds it together, Maya's in a good position for fourth. If Carolyn doesn't, there's a podium potential yeah. for Maya if she continues this this pace on the run because we're going to see Sarah Spence come back to her. Uh, most likely, we're going to see Yurzik come back to her as well. And uh, if she gets anywhere close to that three-hour marathon, uh, podium is certainly uh, certainly possible. Well, I, I will say Carolyn Lairreader has, has impressed so yeah. far. Uh, and continues to do so in the early stages of this marathon, currently sitting in, in second place. Um, doubtfully chasing Sky Munch. I think uh, Carolyn's got her eyes on her own prize at the moment, but yep. uh, certainly in a very, very competitive position sitting in second place. Yeah, and that's a, a spot, as I said earlier, if she wants to win this race, she just kind of needs to hang out there and hope that yeah. uh, Sky fades and maybe uh, Sarah True doesn't have the run that uh, maybe she's capable of. Uh, sun's coming out, so it's going to start probably feeling warm for these athletes, even though it's only 
70 degrees, and as we uh, have noted, the humidity's uh, a little bit a little bit down, uh, but certainly a lot uh, better than uh, we've seen in years past as far as the heat goes here. But uh, we did have uh, Maya Staj Nielsen go through at 638 through 3K, so running pretty well, but uh, slowing just a little bit. And Rebecca Clark hanging in there just 20 seconds behind uh, Maya. But Sky Monch on screen looking real, real good. And uh, it's great to hear from her, uh, you know, her reminiscing about this race in the past. And, um, you know, she said she, she didn't know she was in the lead till a K to go, but she wasn't actually she, in the lead at right. all till a K to go. Yep. Uh, that's where uh, Sarah True was, uh, you know, came apart and uh, was, was taken off uh, course in a medical situation there. So it was a very dramatic uh, end of the race. And uh, she certainly seemed very surprised when she heard she was yeah. she was winning the race. Yeah. And rightly so, you gotta, gotta do all the things right on the day. And she she did and she beat uh, all the competitors out on course. And it that was kind of what she had been looking for, right? And, you know, she wasn't able to capitalize. She wanted to go to Kona. She got in a, a bike crash that kept her out yeah. of her first Kona. So she's been through a lot. She doesn't. And I, I respect that about her. She doesn't bring that up really anymore. Yeah. And that's a story that a lot of athletes would continue to bring up. But for her, it's like, that's the past. She's passed it. Yep. She's trying to win herself a world championship and uh, she's trying to find all the tools to do so. And man, uh, she she's impressing me early on this round, Dee. Yeah, I mean, it, again, she doesn't talk about it anymore because it's, no it's no longer relevant. She's had sure. uh, her performance at world championship, Ironman world championship events very impressive performance, particularly in St. George, uh, a yeah. top 10 finish in Hawaii this past year, which for her would have been a disappointment uh, going from fourth in St. George down to ninth in, in Top Hawaii. 10 in Kona is pretty great, but I, I appreciate uh, her Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I, I think for her, it was not what she would have wanted for herself, and it's it's prompted her to make some changes. Yeah, no, and I think, uh, I think it's great to see, and um, we'll see if she can keep those changes uh, throughout the rest of this marathon. And Sarah Spence looks looks good. She's like a little bit heavy on her feet, but I'm surprised with how she looks running that she's losing this much that time. That much time. She's, yeah. a little, she's a little bit, and I haven't seen quite enough footage of her running. She seems a little bit lopey in her stride. Yep. Um, my recollection of her run stride is that it's a, it's a bit quicker. It's a faster foot speed. Um, as we look at uh, Carolyn Lairiter there, um, she again, looks like another she's... one with not, uh, it, it's a strength stride. It's, it's, she's moving well. She is. Uh, she looks a little bit, a little bit s stiff, but yeah, she's moving well. And it, we're only critical, and I'm only critical, you're not at all, because over time, that that is going to be hard to yeah. maintain. Yeah. That's the only thing, right? Um, so you can see that degrading at, at a certain point. So um, where someone like Sky, if she degrades, and let's say she degrades to her old, old stride, we know she can run a three-hour marathon on her yeah. own stride, right? Yeah. So like she's kind of got two gears. Wow, Sarah's Ooh. smiling. Yep. She looks good. She's lost a little bit of time, but negligible. That could be going slow through an aid station, but she just looks so light on her feet and like happy, right? And that's, uh, yeah, that's good to see uh, from Sarah True. I, this is going to be a battle. Yes, I, I, Sky looks great. I, yeah. I, full, full credit to Dude. Sky. She looks fantastic here. Uh, is Yersik, who uh, is in fifth place. Again, looks fine, looks put together. Uh, not quite the same efficiency of run form, but, uh, but certainly uh, getting the job done and, and holding her own out there. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's, she's doing the thing, and she's getting across the course, and she looks comfortable. And, um, you know, it's hard to look perfect when you've just yeah. ridden 113 miles after uh, a long swim uh, where you're doing both of those things uh, pretty hard. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just – I'm really surprised with how good Svensk looks and that she's losing time. And yep. maybe she's turned a corner and she's running better than she Could was be. off off screen. We'll, we'll know more after this next split. But um, – I thought she was going to be going straight backwards, and with how she looks, she's she's not going to lose a ton if she maintains what she's doing right now. No, I, I, again, I my recollection is that her turnover is usually a bit quicker. Okay, uh, she's got a little bit traditionally faster foot speed, but again, I haven't watched her run enough to be able to say that definitively. Uh, but she does not look bad. I would I 100% agree. Yeah, and here we go. We see uh, Sky going through 
aid station, making sure she's getting water um, as she goes through there. No grabbing snacks at this point, but staying hydrated, even though it's a little bit cooler. Hydration is still just as important. Um, but yeah, no, it's yeah, Didi. It's hard to to know how she's feeling because she does just look different than she does. Yeah. I mean, and she, obviously she's feeling good, but her running stride, like this is what Sarah always looks like. That isn't what Sky always looks yeah. like, but I'd say it's an improvement, even not that there was that much that needed to be improved, but we've talked about it. Like there was a, a rev limiter to her top end pace and it, and sh she's unlocked something where it seems more as possible. Yeah, I mean, gotta be encouraging for her that the changes that she's made are, are having an effect, obviously to be determined if, yeah. you know, what effect they will have not only on this day, but, um, but on more important days later in the season. But uh, so far, very, very good uh, for Sky Munch, who was very patient through the early stages of the bike. Um, and uh, now our race leader. There you go on the upper right hand side of the screen. You just out of the screen now was Sarah True. So it looks like she's coming up to Sarah Spence here pretty soon. That's about 25 seconds. And, and that was a gap that was three minutes, you know, not that long ago. Yep. Right. So, uh, the Sarah is running a very different pace, that's for sure. Yeah, which is, again, I, I reiterate your point, confusing, because Sarah Spence does look like she's moving well, but the the changes, you know, the separation between her and Sky and Carolyn, who with whom she came off the bike with, and now Sarah True uh, closing down on that gap, um, about to move into third place, tells a different story. Yeah. For sure, but yeah, but look at that sky uh, through three. Great light on her feet. Dude, yeah, it's just uh, that that I think it's the the heel kick and that drive and the arm carriage that yep. is, is so different. And again, to me, it's going to be telling to see. It, it 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 would be challenging to make this change and to hold it the whole marathon, right? Like I think it seems like at some point. I it think would it's be hard. challenging for anybody to hold it any yeah, like oh, totally. I mean, even some of the sports best runners at the end of a marathon i think holding whatever the, the world's greatest form is difficult but certainly to your point holding new form form that is new to you because at some point you're going to yes. go into survival mode yeah. and the mode that she's gotten through sure. every marathon is a little different i don't doubt like obviously i wouldn't have expected her to look this different so i'm, I'm super super impressed with the work that she's done also impressed with the race uh, to point from uh, the woman on screen uh she looks, she looks, she looks okay, uh, but again, I think it's going to be hard for her to maintain this yeah. over uh, 26 miles. Just a little bit more labored, a little bit less efficient in her stride, um, but sitting in second place, can't argue that. And it's, I don't think Sarah Svenska is certainly challenging her at this point. Uh, we may see Sarah True be knocking on her door, but right now, Carolyn Lair Reader having a, a good go. Yeah, no, she uh, certainly is. And again, being kind of an instigator uh, on the bike ride. So definitely had energy and, uh, you know, something that she was trying to accomplish there. So give her credit for that and uh, continuing to hang on well on this run. And again, nice and cool conditions today. So um, hopefully she uses those to stay consistent uh, throughout this run. But we've got two of the cyclists. So it actually looks like that must be the lead amateur yep. cyclist. Uh, with that male runner on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and we've got some other the race officials there uh, riding with our second-place athlete at this moment, and that's Larry Reader. But again, with Sarah True looking like she's coming up on Sarah Svensk, uh, Sarah True's going to have kind of lock target on Larry Reader here pretty yeah. soon. Yeah. Because she just looks, she's like, it just looks natural watching Sarah run. Right? Sarah True, yes. Sarah True. Like, yes. it just looks like that's how she's been running since she was a kid. Like, she's just, okay, I'm out running, bouncy, uh, good energy, and, uh, you know, looks controlled throughout. Back on screen with Sky Monch having a great run again, opening that stride a little bit from what we're used to seeing. Yeah, she looks fantastic. Still very, very early stages here. Uh, Sky through 3K, headed towards the next timing map, which will come at 7.7K. We'll see how her progress continues, as well as see if Sarah True uh, can chisel down uh, that deficit she's got to our race leader. So don't go away. We'll come back. Uh, this Hoka Marathon underway well and truly here in Frankfurt. We'll be right back.
Poolgaz is the indoor training software that our coaching business relies on. Our private club room makes it super easy to meet up with group rides, not wasting any time. It's the first thing they see when they log in. My athletes have never been more prepared for the specific demands of each bike course. It works for first timers, professionals and everyone in between. Full Gas has transformed the way that I train my athletes. Welcome back. We're at the front of the race with Sky Monch uh, going through some of the showers to cool down, even though the conditions aren't too hot out there, but she has taken advantage of the back half of this bike course, kind of waited for the group to come together, did her work when she needed to early on in the bike, but uh, was able to overcome a six and a half minute gap to the leaders, including uh, athlete Sarah True, that she's gonna end up racing here for the bulk of this marathon. and. Uh, ended up putting in a very, very good effort at the end of the bike ride to split things up and give herself that three minute cushion that she enjoys now. We're gonna see another split here pretty soon, but uh, Sky Monch definitely impressing me in how she looks uh, early in this marathon and certainly an athlete that has looked at what she needs to improve and done everything she can to improve upon that so she can achieve that goal, having a top performance at a world champion. So here's the Sarahs. Gonna Maybe talk a little bit. We got Sarah True passing Sarah Svensk, and there's there's a lot going on there, Dee. Let's listen in and see. I love the sound of this, and see if they're saying anything. Yeah. Come on. That's a negative. Yeah. <laughs> That's a negative. Uh, but love it, and I'm sure you all appreciated that break from us <laughs> talking. Uh, but Sarah True. She's got that kind of game face, that focus on that we're used to. Not used to seeing her uh, playing around and smiling and putting the tongue out and waving like she did in the bike ride. Uh, now she's back to it. She knows that this is where it matters. And she's gonna do the math. She knows that Sky Monch didn't do, or did race Ironman Kona and she yeah. didn't the last time they raced. She knows that that three minutes was probably important at Ironman Arizona, but she also knows that she, she really feels like she had that win here four years ago. And I, yes. think, I think there's that for her. Sky is a very different athlete than she was then. Uh, she's gone through a lot of changes, a lot of Ironman wins at this point, but uh, certainly uh, Sarah True putting in the good work. She's now moved herself into third place and no offense uh, to woman on screen, Lair Reader, but it is just a matter of time yeah. until she moves into second I, I, place. Like, I, hate, I hate to say that and I cheer for her and uh, she's had a, a super performance uh, thus far, but just looking at the run form and, and the posture a little bit, she's not as well stacked and not as well connected, just not running with the same efficiency um, as actually both of these yeah. two women. And she's moving well. She's only lost 90 seconds yeah. to Sky Monch, but looking at how she's running, at and some it, point it, that's that going to degrade. Sustainable. Yeah. Right, that is not sustainable over the distance <sighs> of a marathon, look, just some form. Look how ridiculously smooth Sarah True looks. Yeah. Like we're talking about that heel kick of Sky Monch. Like this is the next level. Like this is a pure, this is a runner yes. that's run in the Olympics to get a fourth place, not far off of the podium, has been running quick for 20 years in triathlon and now has transferred that into, let's not forget, she was fourth at World Championships in Kona, one of the last yep. years that she had everything firing. And if you look at the results of her going into Kona that year and her last year going into Kona without the sickness, you'd say she was probably in a better position to yep. race well. Different fields, so you can't really um, compare the two, but she is a world, world-class athlete and she's showing it early in the run. But through that last timing match, she had not made up any time on our women's leader, Sky Monch, and let's see if she has. So she's made up 10 seconds in the last four and a half kilometers. That's virtually Not nothing, yep. uh, but it shows that I think we're gonna have these swings until it stops swinging and one person gets the momentum. And to your point, a matter of time now before Sarah True and possibly Sarah Svensk uh, close in on, on Carolyn Lairreader um, having a great run. I mean, Carolyn, again, one of our athletes who does not yet have her Kona slot, so she looks good for that. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Sphinx also needs to pick up a Kona slot, uh, but there's four available, so there's there's not a lot of pressure at this point. It's just holding it together. No, there are for sure, and I think, uh, yeah, you're right, and it's just getting to the finish line. If that's the goal, 
they can do it. And here we go. This is an, another shot of Sky, and I hope we can get uh, a little bit, we'll get a little bit closer shot, kind of one that we're used to, and maybe that side angle. But, Didi, correct me if I'm wrong, please. But it does look like the stride's a little shorter already. Yeah. And she gets, like, she's kind of gets hunchy in the shoulders, like her yeah, neck. Yeah, the posture, yes. And that's what I'm used to seeing. All that being the said. The arm swings not quite as nope. freely. They get a little bit locked up. It yeah. gets a little locked up, and she knows it. She, so yep. she's, she's trying to work it out, and it even, like, looks like it's stretched out a little bit just then. Yeah. And so I think it's degrading a little bit, but when she goes back to that, she can still run a 3 or a 302, right? Right. But it does seem like she might be going through these moments of, this efficiency of this new stride that's going to take a lot more energy, I think, in certain ways, muscular energy. Um, well, because it comes so unnaturally, it may yeah. ultimately be more efficient, but because oh, for sure. you haven't executed it in the same way, it's going to take time to build that efficiency. Yeah, and like yeah. on a slight, slight downhill, which it looks like this is, she's going to be able to open up a little bit more, but... She looks different than she did 20 seconds ago. And I think we're going to maybe see that. And again, I might be making all this up, but she almost looks like her torso is straighter than it was yeah. 30 seconds ago. Yeah. So she's going to be going through I can't through tell this. where that comes from. Is it the posture through the shoulders? I think so. She is, like gets is it a lack hunchy. of hip extension that, she, that causes her to fall forward like that? But um, you can see she's thinking about it. It definitely comes back and keeps resetting it. Uh, as we look at second place, Carolyn Learreader, um, her time here in second, uh, maybe on borrowed time, but we'll find out after we come back from this quick break. Don't go away. to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt. You're watching third place Sarah True. She's moved herself up one spot so far in the marathon. Uh, she's got second place on her radar, ultimately trying to chase the woman on the left of your screen, Sky Munch, down for the win. This is a, this is a rivalry that dates back to this race and possibly not longer, uh, but this race several years ago where these two did battle, that was Sarah True uh, who had the upper hand until less than a thousand meters to go in the race. Um, both of these women uh, feeling they deserve the title of top American long course athlete um, and they meet time and time again and it's another opportunity to claim dominance in America <laughs> on the 4th of July ish ish for sure and yeah no I think that's I think that's something uh for sure and I think uh Sky definitely uh takes a lot of pride in that uh, she's talked about that with the rivalry that was often spoken about with Heather Jackson and uh you had Sarah Chu in the background being like hey I'm I'm from the U.S. too don't forget yeah. and I don't think that I think she takes pride in being an American and being there but like she just wants to that's less important than her yeah. winning this race, yeah. for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, this, uh, this is a, a bit of a rematch, for sure, from a few years ago. And uh, both these athletes are, are putting it all out there, that's for sure. You can still see Sarah Svensk uh, in the background there. But uh, I don't think, at the moment, it's looking very promising that she's going to be able to hold on to Sarah True. But uh, still in the background there, so running well and, and moving well, just at a slightly slower pace. Uh, then Sarah True, but Sarah Svensk uh, hanging in there in fourth place. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, she 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 looks like she's running 
in a manner biomechanically that she's going to be able to hold it together or has the opportunity to. Where, like, I right now would probably bet on her over Lev Reader only because of that, uh, even though Lev Reader's a little bit farther up. I don't want to root against anybody, but that looks more sustainable. Yes. Yeah. No, it, it, I, I don't disagree, despite the, the differences in pace. Um, yeah, long term, if you're playing the long term game. Yeah, I agree 100%. But uh, Sarah True, looking good, moving well. No, absolutely. Getting it done. Yeah, no, she certainly is. And uh, she ta generally takes time to kind of settle in and she'll look like more comfortable as the, the run goes on. Um, you know, she might get a little more of a head bob later in the run, but uh, she looks, yeah, here we go. The sky is kind of getting that hunch again. Yeah. Just a little bit from, she's shaking it out. She has these cues, posturally, She's figured out that it's either wherever it's coming from, it's from the neck or it's from the upper thoracic something. She knows that to get out of it now, at least she knows the cues. So I think we're going to see her cycle through that off and on a lot today. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be less on and more off um, might be. As, as fatigue builds. Um, I, I think we're sort of seeing more of the old and less of the new, even at this stage. And um, she's just 10 kilometers in, not quite. So, um, but yeah, I mean, good that she's mindful of the change and good that the changes are, are happening to get herself to where she wants to be, not only here, but on a worldwide stage. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like, you know, obviously things are different through different timing mats, uh, but it looks like she has slowed down. At least her, her pace through yes. 9.7 has gone to 419. Yes. Um, and she hasn't really exposed much more time on Carolyn Leftrider, and I think we're going to see a split here to Sarah True pretty soon. That's going to be telling. It was 3.05, yeah. then it was 2.55, and now it's going to be 2.40, 2.45. We'll see. It, it could could certainly be 2 the 37. same. 2.37. There it is, 2.37. Another so, 20 seconds. Yeah, it's, that's significant. Yeah. It's definitely significant. Uh, 10 kilometers in, so again, we talk about a four-lap run course. Uh, Sarah True moving very, very well, uh, is starting to make some inroads on, on Sky Munch. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at right now, if they both hold the same pace, it shows, and this is very much extrapolated, that Sky finishes a minute in front of Sarah True. So very, very tight. Very tight. Well, let's take it down to uh, some athletes who are right there down on the course and athletes that have experience here on this Ironman Frankfurt course. We are going to bring in Clement Mignon and Marjolaine Pierre. Guys, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what, uh, what are you guys doing to keep busy today? You watch, you've, been, you've been watching watching the race? Yeah, yeah we are at 72.3 Sabludoran to cheer. Uh, Father Smarjlen and uh, my brother. Oh, your brother's out racing. Yeah, and the father of Smarjlen also. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. And uh, how are the legs feeling? A pretty good race for you last week? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was nice, but recovery a little bit uh, tough. But uh, <laughs> it's better now. <laughs> that's awesome. So you don't, you don't wish you were out there today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little. A little. Well, you know this. You know this course uh, well. Um, what do you think the most difficult aspect or the di most difficult part of this Frankfurt course is? Uh, I think it's an amazing race because I had chose this race uh, last year for my first Ironman race, and yes, yeah, for me it was uh, amazing to the, the feeling of the people. And I think maybe the run it's difficult because it's marathon, but uh, with uh, a lot of people, it's very nice to to run in this condition. And and as a follow up to that, what aspect of this Frankfurt course fits particularly your strengths, or what type of athlete do you think will do very very well on this Frankfurt course? I think it's um, I think it's important to 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 be an um, uh, athlete, uh, very uh, complete athlete, uh, very nice on the flat, on the bike, but it's not uh, very flat and so a little bit uh, slim, not long, but uh, it's not steep, but it's very nice and it's important to have more power on the bike. 
and I think it's important to to be a good runner to to finish uh, this race. Yeah, no, very well said. As we see, uh, Sarah True passing a uh, play reader, um, and uh, yeah, Marjolaine, uh you know, you've, you're a peer of these athletes. You race at the very front of these races with a lot of these athletes uh, that we've all been watching. And I think you've probably been just as impressed as we have been with how tight this race has been. What are you noticing in the early sections of this run as far as who really looks like they have it on the day? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to, to turn to the party because I... Uh, I really want to try uh, Ironman distance, but it's very nice to, to see this race and this amazing athlete. I think uh, Sarah, uh, she is in very good shape and yeah. she has a lot of experience. And I think if, if she runs like this, she will be able to run like this uh, over the end of the marathon. And maybe on this fast uh, course, she will be able to make a, a very nice time. And uh, it will be very nice for her after his uh, his baby. And uh, yes, he's a very, very amazing athlete. So I think it will be a very nice course because behind her, there is a lot of huge athletes like Sky Munch, uh, Sarah Zweng. So yeah. the podium will be very nice. That's, uh, that's awesome and well said. And so watching this race and again, knowing all these athletes, is there anything that surprised you today that's that's what's occurred on the race anything that's really surprising to you um not a no, lot no, uh, uh i think sarah's bank made a, a very nice bike course uh she's known for push a lot on the bike and uh, the difficult of the of, of bike course is to be able to run quite fast after and uh, clement told me like in frankfurt he's quite good because during the run there is a lot of tree and you are not too hot with the temperature and you can make a very nice marathon. Yeah. So. Uh, Clement, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, you just won Ironman France in Nice on June 25th. I imagine your decision to race there was strategic as a preview for the VinFast Ironman World Championship in Nice. Um, what did you learn in your race in Nice that's going to impact how you prepare for the world championship there coming up later this summer? And don't worry, nobody else is watching. Yeah, don't you? <laughs> Tell everyone all of your secrets that you learned. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough race and it's uh, very difficult because a lot of people think uh, about the, um, the bike is, uh, is hard, but I think the most difficult is uh, the run because it's uh, flat, but very difficult with the heat because uh, they don't have uh, trees to protect athletes. And also it's very difficult mentally because it's 5k uh, on way and 5k on back. Yep. So, yes. And four times, so it's very difficult to to, to know because the promote is anglais, it's uh, flat, but uh, lots of uh, things uh, seems hard after each uh, K. So yes, but also the most difficult of, um, of this uh, Ironman is the bike because it's very technical. But I think the, the future of uh, winner of this race will be uh, a guy who is very uh, complete because it's very important to to be good on the claim, be good on the be good on the downhill, but on the flat also because they are long flat of 40k yeah. uh, at middle. So yes, I think it's very important to to be a complete athlete. So yes, it's very very nice. So so my follow up question is going into the world championship, how complete of an athlete do you feel like you are? Yeah, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope, but uh, yes, it's it's difficult to to know because uh, also the condition because the last week uh, very heat, uh, but in September normally it's almost the same weather, it is, but uh, also lots of uh, good good guy come for World Championship because it's the World Championship, 
Yeah. But um, yeah, I have done um, Kona the last year, and uh, I like Kona also because it's uh, a difficult on the bike because uh, don't don't ill to to uh, to have recovery the legs. Yeah. So yes, yeah, it's very particular and nice because um, the last part is almost 40k on the downhill. So yes, it's very nice for the leg, but on the head is very difficult uh, to maintain um, uh, a good speed or so because we think about the running, but it's important to be focused because it's very, very technical. Uh, and final question for you both. I'll ask you this separately, but as a couple who uh, trains together and travels the world racing together, talk about the historical significance of the fact that the men and women will be headed to different venues. Obviously, the Ironman World Championship for women uh, will be in Kona, uh, and yeah. the men will be racing in, in France in separate venues on separate days. Talk about the historical significance of that as a, as a couple who tends to race together together um what that would mean for couples but what it means for the sport and the future uh of men's and women's racing in, in ironman triathlon uh yes there is uh, some good part and some bad part because uh, the good one like uh for this year i will be able to cheer for clement in nice and uh, um yeah it's it's great to, to be able to be for him for the world championship and he will be next year in Nice uh, for me for the world. But um, yeah, it's quite uh, difficult to separate the men and the women because the, the race is not the same and we are happy to have both uh, men and women on the same race. But for the communication and the impact of uh, yeah, brand, social media, I think to be to have two races can be better for the women because we will saw more their their performance like Chelsea Sudaro last year in Kona. So I think it will be great for the future of the sport and yeah, we will see. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we appreciate uh, that insight for sure and uh, both of y'all's time and wish you both best of luck in your preparations for uh, world championships and the rest of your season. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the race and good luck to your family members racing. <laughs> Uh, as we were conducting that great interview, and they're a wonderful couple, super talented couple, uh, again, traveling and racing the world uh, together. Uh, we've had some some developments as you look at uh, Carolyn uh, Lair Reader there has stepped off the course um, and it, she stopped her watch. It doesn't look like she is intending to continue at this moment. It looks like she is... Yeah ill, uh, almost waiting perhaps to let the stomach settle, see if she can eliminate some of that, if she will continue. But at this point, it looks like she may be um, electing to withdraw from yeah, the race. Yeah, getting, she's getting emotional at this point and, uh, you know, no fault to her. She's kind of turning away from the camera. It's a tough, tough spot uh, for her to be in and uh, definitely not one that we wanted to see her in because she was such an impact uh, throughout uh, the early portions of this race and for, for that matter, the later portions uh, of the bike ride as well. Um, and back to Sarah True. And again, that's, or not, sorry, excuse me, Sky Monch. That's something we haven't seen before. So she's, she's realizing she's holding tension in her upper body and she's yep. doing this is something Cam Whitoff at old school used to do like to reset things. Right. Yep. So that this is very new for her and we'll see if this resetting of her form uh, allows her to hold off the fast charging Sarah True. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. 
I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Back to the action here. Sky Munch continues to lead the race. Carolyn Lairreader uh, has stepped off the course. We don't uh, think she is planning to continue. It's Sarah True now in second place, two minutes, 17 seconds back. And Sarah Svenx uh, moves into third place at 4.12 back. Yeah, no, things are, things are moving. Things are moving. There's a bunch of changes, and I think it's opening up uh, doors for a lot of those athletes from behind that maybe we were just talking about for possible uh, Kona spots, not just, it's a huge accomplishment, but uh, certainly doors open for athletes like uh, Yurzik to move into top contention with Lay Reader, uh, you know, stalling a little bit, and uh, Maya Stage Nielsen as well, uh, able to continue her pace but the women on screen right now this is where the real battle is there's sarah true on the right that just looks so peppy and energetic <laughs> she uh that flavor maybe wasn't the one she was expecting <laughs> um but uh she just looks like she's out for a jog and uh definitely more focus and uh urgency on the woman on the left hand side of the screen was sky Monch, and there's there's an energy involved with that like every a couple seconds she's resetting and trying to hold that form and focusing on this and focusing on that and doing that where Sarah True's just kind of running. Yeah, I mean, it, it just speaks to, I think, that Sky of the two of them is the one with more improvements to make in terms of her run form um, and the fact that she is dedicating that attention right now is going to pay dividends. Is it going to be enough for her to hold off Sarah True? Well, time will tell, but she's holding two minutes, 17 seconds right now. And, and we know that the margin of error for Sky is very small, yeah. right? She's not, even if she loses the form, we anticipate that she will still put together a sub 305 marathon. But is that enough to stand up to Sarah True if she puts together 257? No. Right. And that's the thing <laughs> is that if Sarah True can, she can sit on a three hour pace for the first half of the marathon. And if she's getting anywhere, she can stay on that. Or if she realizes she needs more, she'll have gear if she's paced uh, her energy consumption well, because she has that ability to change gear. She might not need to run a 255 yep. to beat Sky Monch. So she's going to set up and maybe put herself in a position for a negative split if she needs it. But right now, by looking at these two women on screen, if she keeps running like this and Sky keeps running like she's running, Sarah True is going to pull back sky as far as i'm concerned seeing what i'm seeing on screen and it's not a ton of time like i'm not saying she's gonna like it could be within a minute but it's 45 seconds in 12k that she's made up and more of that has been in the last 5k to me that's telling and the fact that the first three or four k we didn't see sky doing these biomechanical resets and we see her do a couple every time she's on screen now yep. that it's it's going to start straining mentally the more you do that, the more you think you're weak, right? Or you're trying to adapt to something new where she's got a lot more going on in her head where Sarah's just trying to run. It's just more simple for Sarah right now. It's, it's very much more simple because it's a, it's a stride that comes naturally to yeah. Sarah and it's a, a new stride, potentially some, some form changes for Sky and, it, and a change that, that she's got to affect. But here's the thing, I don't, I don't slight Sky for doing it. This is oh, when you've no. got to do it. Yeah. No, in, in no way am I being negative. I am so impressed with what she's figured out, yes. what she needs to unlock. I cannot be more impressed with Sky Monch right now. Yeah. But that could take time. Like Expecting that to stick maybe the first right. marathon is going to be challenging, especially when you're doing it trying to win a European championship. Um, but this is part of the process. And, you know, most things with professional Ironman athletes are not, a this year process. It's a this year, next year, the year after process. And if she continues to improve on this in two or three years, she might be running 252s, 253s because she has that capability cardiovascularly. Well, if you're watching this race and you're uh, anxious to get in on the action but not sure what your plans are going to be uh, next July, I want to talk to you about the Flex 90 program, which allows athletes that register. In the first 90 days that registration is open, the flexibility to defer, transfer, or receive a partial refund if you are no longer able to participate in your race. You can enact those benefits up until 45 days before you race. So if your plans change, your race can too. 
Check out the Flex 90 program at ironman.com slash early dash benefits. Pretty cool program, no doubt. Um, back to the front of the race with Sky Monch. Again, kind of cycling in and out of that long stride. You can see her flick the neck a little bit, reset the shoulders, as it looks like she's got one of the lead uh, amateur males coming by, giving a little round of applause and cheering her on as best he can. And she gives a little bit mm, back to she him. She gives a look. <laughs> yeah, she, there's a little something there. But, uh, man, I, and again, if anything I'm saying sounds critical, I do not mean for that to be because I am super, super impressed with Sky and the changes that she's made and how good she looks when she's kind of firing on that. Uh, what looks to me and us as kind of a new biomechanical approach to her running form. Um, so, so impressed. And we'll see how long she's able to kind of manage that. And no easy feat. Like, if it wasn't for Sarah True, she'd be able to pull pull back a little bit maybe on the pace and settle into something different. But she's managing three minutes, which she knows and, and, is not and that much. Under pressure. Sure. Right, yeah, sure. totally sure. different situation. Absolutely. Very much. And we see the athletes behind everyone moving up a spot. That is more um, the impact of the withdrawal. Some attrition. Um, yeah, some attrition from the race. But uh, the race continuing to unfold here. Sarah True sitting in second, 217 down. Sarah Svensk at 412. Uh, Yursik having a great day, four and a half minutes back. So yep. um, a great, great performance for her so far. Maya Stage very much uh, in the conversation at 737 back. That's just three minutes out of fourth place um, and about three and a half minutes out of third. So very much in it as well. And uh, Jansen, uh, the rookie. Uh, second fastest second fastest runner on course behind Sarah True at yep. this point. So uh, running really well and <clears throat> giving herself an opportunity to move into that top five uh, position uh, here if she keeps that pace up, uh, having run two minutes into Maya Stage Nielsen already with just two minutes to go to get in that fifth place. But yeah, as you said, uh, Yerzik, woman on screen, uh, super impressed by uh, her ability to uh, to continue to run this well. I mean, she has not lost much time. She's 430 behind the lead, and she started out three minutes behind the lead. And, and she's not, uh, her pace not dissimilar uh, time on course to uh, Maya Stage Nielsen, who is is a, a brilliant runner. So she's 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 doing quite quite well. Yeah, no, I would agree. I would agree completely. Um, and uh, yeah, super impressed by uh, Lauren Jansen uh, being consistent. And again, for a rookie, uh, you know, we'll see how it ends up. But uh, it seems like still a tempered pace. It's not she anything crazy. She just took crazy. the cup out of that age Cooper's hand. She just <laughs> ran through. He had his hand up and she swiped it from him. So apologies, uh, age group male. Um, she didn't mean it, I'm sure. <laughs> she did not. And I've not seen so many. We had a couple shots there. We had uh, Sarah True making a couple shots in the trash can. I've never seen so many athletes so excited uh, to get their trash in the proper receptacle. I'm pretty <laughs> pumped about uh, what we've got going on here. I'm making up for maybe a couple inadvertent bottle drops uh, on that uh, ah, section the of the bike. So, I know, it was the cobblestones for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, super impressed uh, by these uh, women out here at this point, uh, running very, very well. A lot left uh, to come, Didi, uh, on this marathon run course. Uh, still another split at the 18-kilometer mark that's going to be pretty telling. But again, to be 12K in and to have our top four, four and a half minutes separate is a pretty darn tight uh, marathon and Ironman uh, competition at this point. And we'll see if it gets tighter or if things start to open up a little bit uh, as we go through this race after this commercial break.
back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. We are on the second of four loops for our professional women here who are entrenched in battle. It's Sky Munch trying to hold off a hard charging Sky True, the Battle of the Americans on German soil. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Sarah True versus uh, Sky Munch, uh, definitely a battle we've seen before in uh, different races over different continents. And uh, now it's back at a European championship, which I believe is the first time they locked horns uh, years ago, uh, but back at it and they're, they're both fighting, but this time in different position with Sky in the lead. And if you are loving these German crowds, I want to make you aware of another race opportunity on September 12th. Come and race Ironman 70.3 Erkner on September 10th, as I said. The charming town of Erkner is a short distance from Berlin. You'll be amazed by the idyllic landscape of the Oder Spree region with its wide meadows, impressive forests, and dream-like lakes. Don't miss out. Register now at ironman.com slash Europe. There you go. If all the crowds are this uh, this great in Germany, it seems like a great place to go to do some racing. And uh, Sky definitely appreciates racing here. She's come back time after time and uh, continues to have good success. And no doubt she's having a great race today. And we'll see in this next split if she's able to continue to hold off the fast charging Sarah True. Um, but uh, yeah, holding it together quite well. Again, cycling through that, being able to open things up, get that uh, posture correct, uh, that posture that she wants to kind of move to um, does seem off and on, kind of seems like she's bending over that right shoulder again a little bit, but going to be overly critical only because we can see that difference is something she's trying to hold together to hold off the woman on screen now, Sarah True, who just seems like that run just comes so naturally. We could see that Roka race weather report, sun's coming out, no mixed clouds anymore, so 73 degrees uh, clear skies, humidity down even lower, just a tiny bit of wind that might uh, help cool the athletes down a little bit. This will start to feel, quote unquote, hot, but not hot enough that should actually affect uh, the athletes. Well, the good thing not to get all, you know, meteorological on you, but uh, <laughs> while well, the temperature increases, the fact that it's being paired with a drop in the humidity yeah. Uh, it, it's it's still comfortable conditions. I think if that humidity was yeah. holding true or even climbing, uh, it would feel very different down there. But as the temperature rises, the humidity is falling. Uh, great storyline here for Yersik, uh having a great, great performance. Uh, she is in search, I assume, of a Kona qualifying slot. And right now, our first athlete, well, she's got Sarah Svensk ahead of her still. Um, but uh, sitting in position to claim one of those slots, the other major storyline that I think is just so incredible um, with the withdrawal of uh, Daniela Blymel uh, earlier in the race due to hypothermia and the recent withdrawal looks like stomach problems for Carolyn Lairreader, our Ironman rookie, Lauren, uh, Laura Jansen becomes the first German out on course. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. she is right now first German out on course. Uh, what an honor for this Ironman pro rookie. For sure, and to, to do that at Ironman Frankfurt is a big deal, especially European Championship. Huge, huge field coming out here. When and I'm sure she's, she's towing the line against athletes, you know, in Daniela and Carolyn that she's looked up to, I'm sure, for, for years and, and uh, big names in the sport. The fact that she is now carrying carrying the banner of uh, fastest German on course or first German on course certainly at this stage uh, yeah. has to be a, a, a great um, great thrill excuse me a great thrill for her oh absolutely and here's a nice shot of Sarah Spence still uh, running quite well and again you know she lost some time early continues to lose pace uh, to the two athletes uh, in front of her but holding quite well and still has a gap on uh, Yerzik and but Yerzik is, is closing. I yeah, think Yerzik's going to move into that, into that third position here uh, pretty soon. We might actually be able to see her in the background. Almost had it there as we get back to uh, our women's leader, our race leader, excuse me, Sky Monch. As we can see her uh, running through those aid stations, getting everything she needs to stay as cool as possible. We'll say loving the new hat from her. I don't is think I've seen hat? that before. I, think I feel like I've seen that one before. Maybe I haven't. I've been uh, not paying attention to the hats. But anyways, I like her hat. Okay. It's nice. yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'm surprised uh, she opts for the pink as opposed to the purple. 
it's like an uh, it's off a, it's purple. A, it's a highlighted tone. It's yeah. it's a matching tone, but I would expect you know more purple power from the purple power powerhouse. Yeah, no, she's uh she's stepping off that just a little bit, but uh, it's good. And again, now she's moved into that. This looks how she was running the first two K, yep. like fully open, good arm carriage, faster turnover. So she just keeps cycling in and out when she has the energy. And I, I think we've talked about this before, Didi. In, in Ironman racing, you get these quote unquote micro box where for like 30 seconds you'll like slow down and sugars are low or whatever and then you something changes and you're like, okay i've got it again and you'll see athletes like change the running pace a few times in three minutes right and, sure. it, and it feels like at least form wise she's kind of cycling through that pretty pretty frequently yeah and it, as we would anticipate um the the deeper into the marathon and the more the fatigue builds sort of those waves of sort of off form or breaking down in form versus on form, that ratio changes. But um, Sky looks great. Uh, she looks very, very good. Um, holding on to a two minute and 16 second lead over Sarah True. But Sarah looks great as well. <laughs> she just does, right? And it's, uh, you know, it, it looks like she's out for a Sunday run and often that just translates to someone having the ability to maintain the pace that they're running when it just looks that casual. And obviously they're very different It just runners. doesn't look as, yeah, she's not. And Sky looks Sky great. Sky looks efficient. Like she, she, the improvements that she's made in her run form are notable. That's yeah. all we're talking about. Yeah. But there's a lack of efficiency in the new efficient run stride. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, for sure. A little bit, no doubt. But like the difference is that this is like the default Sarah's running at any moment. This is what she looks like, right? And it's not a not a pressured run form. And, uh, you know, I think she's doing a great job. It's great to see the uh, support uh, <laughs> support cyclist both get some nutrition from the aid station and also manage to get his cup in the trash as well. Are like, you keeping track on uh, the yeah, yeah, cups yeah. and trash cans today? Everybody, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty high success rate at this point. Um, and here we go. Uh, that is uh, Maya. Maya uh, having... She looks great. This is the first shot we've seen of her for a little bit on yep. the run. And, uh, you know, again, she moved herself into fifth place. I kind of thought, if I'm being honest, that she would move up to kind of her catching Yerzik was just going to happen. But, no, she's still got three minutes to pull back and because Yerzik's having Yerzik's a, running really, really well. I mean, Yerzik's about run. to overtake uh, Svensk. So uh, career day for, for Yerzik out of Poland. So... Um, good, good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You're back to Sarah Svensk, and uh, we might be able to see Yurzik in the background here and not too much longer. Uh, definitely closing on this athlete, even though they are both seem to be running pretty efficiently. I do think uh, Sarah Svensk kind of settled in, took maybe a little bit longer to settle in than some of the other athletes. So I think she's running a pretty consistent pace at this point. Uh, those two athletes, I guess 15 uh, seconds per kilometer difference through that less checkpoint. So it's probably just a matter of time unless uh, Sarah's able to kind of get on the gas a little bit. But she looks good, looks efficient. And, and sometimes that's the most important thing in a marathon, and not so much the current pace. Yes. It's how efficient it is and whether or not and can you sustain degrades. it. As always, it's not how fast you run the first hour. It's how fast you run the last hour. Totally. Right? So, uh, yeah, uh, the fact that her pace is slightly slower than some of the other women around her, not ideal right now, but if that is a sustainable pace across all three hours, then she is absolutely doing the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. We get some shots of our uh, age groupers rolling through and back to our women's leader, and that's Sky Monch uh, rolling through uh, this kind of sun-exposed uh, section of the course. And, and she's found a, a really good pace partner. Yep. She's been running yeah. uh, behind this... Uh, male age group athlete for quite a while. And here's the athlete we've been talking about a little bit. Didi, that's Lauren or Laura Jansen, excuse me, uh, having a great run, looks super, super smooth and uh, powerful. And I think that's the important thing. Looking at those half marathon run splits. Yeah. If it was pure speed, then I didn't, I didn't have much hope, but if it was power based running, then I have a lot of hope. And, and looking at this makes me think she's going to be able to hold on. She's got a lot more left to go, that uh, kind of uncharted territory for the rookie. But let's cross our fingers and watch on the other side of this commercial break.
we are back, and we're back with Sarah Svensk. Uh, put a lot of effort in on the bike ride after a little gap in the swim, and uh, did a lot of that on her own, Didi. And yes. then, uh, you know, helped, uh, you know, inject a little bit of pace in the lead uh, bike group, and, and now she's still run, running well in third place, uh, trying to hang on to that position as we see uh, Sky Monch again with her running partner uh, at this point. Uh, age group male seems to actually be looking out for, making sure he takes the wide. <laughs> takes the wide he took the wide leg there. That's, that's an awareness line. and uh, um, full respect. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah, try not to get in the way, and I think she's, uh, you know, at some point she'll probably give him a pat or a, a thank you uh, to some extent. But So she's gone through the 18.2 Okay, she's gone through at 412 a kilometer pace, which is about what she went through the last checkpoint in, but it did lose her a little bit of time to Sarah True that was running around four minutes a kilometer. We see her go through the aid station, looks efficient, not not walking at, at this point yet, so no over over stress going through, but she does look to the right, I think, on this out and back section to see if she sees her competitor uh, coming through, and I bet she probably is if we look in the background. It's going to be pretty close, and so we might see Sarah True going the other direction if we see a moto vehicle near her, but going through that kind of aid station, that section of the course, and uh, this next split is going to be it's going to be telling, and there, there it there, is. That there was Sarah, yep. Sarah True in the background there, so it's going to be another few seconds, and we'll get that split uh, from these two athletes. But again, this is part of the reason this run course is so brutal and possibly <laughs> really quick because – you just can't get out of sight and out of sight is out yeah. of mind. And when you're in sight, especially when you're the one being chased, that just is not a comfortable place. Well, again, I think at different stages of the race, it's nice to be the, the leader and to set the pace. I think at other stages, you feel slightly more vulnerable and the power goes to the chaser. Dude, when you, when the person that is chasing you, is bouncing along like they've been running for a hundred meters. It's it just well she it's, can't see that. It's never going to be. She sees it. <laughs> she sees it for sure. Um, but the the split hasn't come through quite yet, so it, it looks like it hasn't uh, come down too much. She's getting splits. I think somebody yelled two minutes to her, so that sounds about right. But we'll get the split here. Two fifteen. So she actually has not lost yes. any more time. Yep. At all. One second. So it's all it's all right there. Here we go. The shot. There you go, from uh, Sarah's uh, camera moto uh, showing uh, Sky Monch going the other direction. So almost halfway through, and it's stalled at 2.15. Which I think is great news for Sky right now as yes. we check in with our race weather. Uh, the sun is now fully and truly out. That early cloud cover now gone. Temperatures 73 degrees. That's 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, humidity nice and low, 48%. That's down from the... Uh, low 70s earlier this morning, and the winds picked up ever so slightly, 8 kilometers per hour. But with that drier air, that breeze might actually help uh, cool the athletes a little bit. We saw Sky go through that last aid station, uh, enacting all of the cooling tricks. She had ice down the top and water over the head and trying to keep things cool. Yep. And uh, that's keep it cool, Sky. Keep it cool. <laughs> keep it cool for sure. And it's important uh, the longer you can keep that core temperature from rising, the better. And I was a little worried. One of the shots we had, it looked like Sky was a little bit flush. Uh, uh, and uh, But it seems like she's doing all the managing things. Uh, she started on the sponges pretty early. She started on the ice and the water pretty early. And, um, you know, she's, she's one that, uh, you know, says she's very, very comfortable in the heat. But some days it just can affect you a little bit more. Sure. But I, I'd be surprised if she was really affected by the heat, especially with the, the current humidity that these athletes are dealing with. But uh, continuing... Uh, to look well as uh, just those those two top athletes, the only ones through that 18.2 kilometer checkpoint at this point. Yeah, I've got my eyes peeled to that to see if Gersik mm -hmm. has been able to make it past Svensk. Uh, would be a huge uh, breakthrough for her to be on a podium at this European Championship. Um, both of those women in need of Kona qualifying slot, but since there are four on offer, um, other than some prize money and, and the podium, um, both of them still sitting comfortably uh, for Kona qualification. Yeah, no, absolutely. And they just got to keep ticking over. And if they, they keep moving, they're, they're going to get that qualification spot uh, for sure, unless something uh, pretty drastic happens. Uh, but someone who already has their spot and feeling pretty comfortable about it. And I'm sure excited uh, to get back to Kona to 
uh, kind of erase the last year's DNF off the books. And again, as you stated, uh, it was impressive that she even started because she she was pretty pretty set going into that uh, Kona. But she'll be excited to get back there, as will uh, this woman on screen uh, getting there if she continues. And Didi does look like Yerzik has moved in to third place. Yes. Uh, with Maya Stage Nielsen on screen, but uh, the podium has changed, and I, I did not expect to see Yerzik moving up to the podium, if I'm being no. honest. And I'm, I'm, I'm super impressed and uh, stoked for her. And, man, Maya looks really good. Like, she, yeah. she looks... I think better than she did before. Just kind of that, like she's a little lopier than like a Sarah true, but she looks comfortable. looks like she's just out for a job. Yeah, no, she does. She looks great. We know she's mentally very, very strong. Yep. Uh, again, I come back to her golfing background and, and she has said that, that um, she'll be the first one to tap on her head and say, it's all up here. And, and she's, she's got it together. Um, she was, Certainly an aggressor on the bike and, and tried to, was at the front charging of that chase group uh, when the group converged and it was a large group of eight. She sort of tried to be aggressive through that stage as well. Might have paid a little bit of the price of it, uh, gave up some time back into transition, but she is running very, very well. Yeah, and at this point, uh, Sarah Spence has lost over a minute already to uh, Yurzik in that last uh, 5K. Uh, so we, we might expect to see uh, Maya move up uh, to Sarah Spence's position and not too much longer, especially if can, she continues to look as well as she is. As we take a look at our VinFast performance analysis graphic here on Sky Munch, average pace 4 minute 12 second kilometer. So ticking along very, very nicely. That is very similar to what Sarah True is running and only a couple of seconds per K faster than Yursik is running right now. So our top three women on course pretty evenly matched in terms of their average speed so far. Yeah, absolutely. And if I look at Sarah True's estimated finish time, uh, it's 3.16 p.m. Uh, so if they stay on this pace, uh, Sky is in the driver's seat. But as we know, a lot can change and we've got to continue to be consistent. But very, very good sign to me that Sky, I don't see her doing that biomechanical reset quite as much. And the fact that in 5K, she didn't lose any time, yep. that is super, super telling. And I think for herself as well. Like, I think she's telling herself, you've got this, you've got this, you don't need to run scared. Um, and and she, she is holding her own. Again, so much running left to, to do. Oh, for sure. And I, I do think it's a, kind of a gift that she's uh, found uh, one of the other competitors that's running a, a similar pace. And we often see that in professional racing, yep. either lapped athletes or athletes that start at a different time. And, uh, you know, the luck of the draw kind of on that one. And, um, but also you kind of make that choice, right? You're like, okay, this person's running the pace. We'll, we'll stick on this one. And, um, cause if you do that to anybody that could, doesn't always end well. Yeah. <laughs> True, but she'll be checking her pace and yeah. say this pace is still reasonable and it allows her to sort of unplug a little bit from the pace setting um, and just focus on maintaining the pace that her not on purpose pacer is is setting and for her to focus just on her form. And uh, right now it's holding up for us. She continues to hold her lead over Sarah True, unable um, to to close down that gap. We'll see if that continues when we come back after this quick break. Don't go away. We're coming right back. Check this out. This is Venom Gold by Hyperize. You stick this pod on this pad and boom, instant relief wherever you need it. With nine different variations of heat and vibration, you can soothe your sore muscles instantly. The tight spot on your neck, that little knot on your back, that shoulder that always bugs you and your tight calf after a ride, say bye-bye to the pain and soreness. Heating up six times faster than any other heating pad. Ooh, that's hot. It's designed to get you out and moving. What are you waiting for? Back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. You are watching the race leader, Sky Munch. She took the lead more than.
than halfway through the bike, I would say maybe three quarters of the way through the bike, uh, yeah, leading the, the charge into into transition. She had company um, along the way, but has been able to uh, hold on to the lead right now. Her nearest chaser, the other American, Sarah True. Yeah, no, and uh, you know she looks great, and this is a battle that kind of started a rivalry, Dee Dee, and it was uh, 2019 we saw Sarah True and Sky Monch race, and Sarah True had a, a pretty commanding lead, to be honest, and then the heat and the nutrition, it just all fell apart, and she had like 10 minutes, and then this started happening, yep. and it was, I, I was calling the race, and it's probably one of the hardest calls I've ever done, because it did look dangerous. I mean, she was in a spot where I even get emotional looking at it now that she was she was in a dangerous place. Yes. Um, but Sky was chasing and kept kept running. I mean, look like she could barely yes. move. And this is within a cane and a half of the finish. And this is where I think a lot of people obviously not on course and, and not able to communicate to her, but we're saying just keep walking. Um, throughout that, the beginning stages of that, of that meltdown back in 2019, she yeah. kept trying to run and all she needed to do was keep walking and then exactly. this happens. Yeah, and then her forward momentum stopped and uh, the medics saw her and it looked like an emergent situation and uh, she didn't move from this point forward. Yep. And as I said, Sky talked about she didn't know she was in the lead till K to go. She, she wasn't. wasn't in the lead. No, she ran past uh, a Sarah True that was in the medic tent and uh, she was able to kind of get a surprise win. And again, you raise the people on the day, so all credit to Sky for her breakthrough. Uh, but this is kind of what started uh, a rivalry, and maybe it's just our rivalry. Maybe we're making that up. But we like to stir the pot. These two have battled, uh, but now in different positions. And, uh, you know, it certainly looks like uh, they're both very, very evenly matched at this point, And they just went through another checkpoint, and Sarah True just got one more second. Yeah. That's not a lot. It's not enough. No, it certainly <laughs> isn't. But this that video shows you a little bit more. That video probably doesn't have much effect for the woman on screen. No emotions really attached no. to that, except she wants to win this race again. That video has a lot of emotional impact, I'm sure, on Sarah True and why she wants to win this race. Well, yes, I don't think emotional impact. I don't think Sarah True spends a lot of time thinking about that moment. I think Sarah True is, she certainly had her struggles in particularly extreme heat. Today yeah. is not one of those days. No, but I think when you're with, when hindsight's a thing and you're within a K of winning and now you look, you're like, man, I could have walked yeah. backwards and won yeah. that race. No disrespect to Sky. Uh, you want to go back and try to do it over. And especially, you know, she knows she's in a good position. So that's kind of the backstory there. And uh, impressive racing by both of those athletes on that day. Uh, again, stubbornness uh, describes uh, Sarah in that situation. And, uh, you know, Sky Sky was able to to push through and get that win, and she's she's pushing again here and uh, right behind that moto. We're gonna get some uh, good shots of hers. She looks like she's waving uh, a little bit to maybe some friends out there, but she's gone through lap two in one twenty eight oh four. So that pace would is, be a breakthrough marathon. Very for her. much a PR for her. Yep. And I, I haven't gone through and broken down. I don't. I think she's like a pretty close to even splitter, but yep. not a negative splitter. So that could end up being realistically about a three hour marathon pace yep. uh, if she kind of holds things together. Um, so we'll see what Sarah True uh, has going through there. And all that being said, I don't know Sarah True is a, a negative split runner either. She usually has a gear if she needs it, um, but uh, things are things are pretty close. I, that is the, the first time I've seen a smile uh, on Sky Munch's face, really enjoying the crowd and the support that she's getting. Uh, the crowd's really coming out there. She's blowing kisses to the crowd, which is, to me, not a Sky Munch no. typical kind of thing that she would do mid-race, but she is absolutely soaking up the atmosphere here in Frankfurt. Yeah, it's hard not to get uh, caught up in that. Uh, there we go. Some waves to the camera. And, uh, yeah, maybe uh, uh, blowing maybe, a kiss uh, to I the think family. The cameraman was maybe egging her on a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely was. But she indulged him, so. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and that is a sign, right? Like, when you are calorically defend, uh, you know, de hat. deficient, uh, you can't 
really respond to those kind of things, or that might actually make you a little grumpy if somebody's yeah. asking you to do something like that. So the fact that she's in that space to get a smile and uh, play along is interesting. Is she a good lost. Sign. She lost the hat. The hat came off her head, uh, but at an aid station. Yeah. So it's. Uh, we'll see if she goes through on the next lap and gets that hat gets back. That. <laughs> um, that'll be interesting uh, to see. But you know that can be an effect. It's going to start. That, that'll increase her perception of the heat, heat out there today. And if she's pouring water over her head, it won't stay as cool considering it's not in a hat. So these little things do add up over time. Um, but again, kind of one of the, I think, women that we're most impressed with today is Yerzik uh, going through 126.08 through that 20 kilometer mark, just five minutes off of our lead at this point. Yeah, she is having a career kind of day uh, certainly a performance that we did not expect out of her, but uh, incredible performance from her thus far to be sitting in a podium position halfway through this marathon. Yeah, and Sarah Spence going through at seven minutes uh, back, so two minutes behind uh, Yerzik, uh, continuing to hold on uh, to that effort as we see Sarah True uh, getting through this kind of uh, more crowded section uh, being supported by the spectators as she goes through. She's got her little lap bracelet on. Uh, showing she's gone through there and getting through lap two. Again, 127.15 for her split halfway through the running portion on the Hoka run course. Sarah looks great. She just hasn't been able to make uh, any any inroads, unfortunately. Uh, that uh, she, she came out about, what, a little over three minutes uh, behind Sky and mm -hmm. uh, was able to take some time out of her in the first 10K, but it sort of, as you said, has stalled. Yeah, but I, I think in reality, I think if I remember correctly, this is pretty similar to what happened in Arizona. Like you, they both lock into a pace, and in Arizona, Sky faded, and Sarah didn't. And I think it's kind of going to be the same situation. I don't think it's going to be a blow doors down, uh, dramatic run that wins the race. I think it's going to be a couple, three minutes, and it's pretty much up to Sky. I think to just hold the pace she's running and, and she'll have a great, great opportunity to win. But if Sarah has a huge amount of energy left, she might be able to pull that back. But I do think it's just kind of going to be a uh, tit for tat run battle uh, for the next 20 kilometers. And this woman on screen continues to impress looking back through some of her results uh, came from a short course background, raced the WTCS series uh, in 2016. Uh, moved up to some 70.3 racing starting in 2017. Uh, her first full distance Ironman was in 2019 uh, and finished off 2019 with a fifth place finish at Ironman Western Australia, where she ran 3.14.02. Um, and she had a, a very respectable seventh place finish at Ironman Israel yeah. in 2022. And that was her only race result of 2022. So to me, with only one race result, well, in 2020, that was pandemic related, yeah. uh, but then only one, nothing in 2021 and one result in 2022, perhaps injury, perhaps diversion in life, but uh, sure. certainly saying, making a statement here that she is back and, and oh, she's a force to be track. reckoned with. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, she's uh, one of that, that kind of, uh, you know, surprise athletes as far as being up there as much as she is. And we see Sky definitely feeling the heat a little bit more. We've seen the ice down. The chest we've seen uh water over her face using that sponge again so uh certainly focused on cooling and again that perceived heat uh the fact with the fact that she's lost that hat is going to be a little bit of an effect certainly not something that she would have uh chosen so we'll see if uh, she finds a way to remedy that at all or just uh, make sure she continues to remind herself that maybe that's just perception not actually uh affecting her core temperature could be but as the as the temperature continues to climb and the sun continues to beat down she's lost the ability to do things like put ice in the mm -hmm. hat to help totally. continue to cool her uh she's not wearing the cooling headband as we see uh your sick utilizing there so could have an impact hopefully not a significant one we'll find out when we come back
the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championship, Frankfurt, brought to you by Hoka, Fly Human Fly, and by Gatorade, fuels you forward. There we go on screen, Maya Stage Nielsen, uh, running through really well still, uh, hasn't quite gotten through that uh, run lap two portion, but Sarah Spence has, and she's gone through in fourth place, as has the woman on screen, Sky Monch. Uh, she went through there in a time of 135.14, holding that four minutes per K pace. And I think if she does that, she's in a pretty, pretty darn good spot. Yeah, no, no doubt. A uh, little congestion here on the course, just the nature of this four loop run course as the age group athletes uh, continue to pour their way onto this Hoka run course, but she's got an escort there who is uh, no doubt letting the age groupers know that their lead professional women is coming through. Oh, she got the hat back. Almost. Yep, back in hand. <laughs> There's a bit of a smile. <laughs> there you go. She, uh, she was very excited to get that hat yeah. back. And uh, there you go. And uh, <laughs> I guess the high five too. <laughs> There you go, and it's uh, that's technically with the race, so she yep. can accept uh, assistance from the race. Yes. Uh, really wanted that hat back, and was kind of, uh, you know, she dropped that hat because of congestion at that aid station, so yep. uh, no intent there, so all good for her. Happy to see her get her lucky hat back. Um, I know, Didi, you wish it was a little bit more purple, but I, I do appreciate that hat, and I appreciate that she has it back. I'm sure she appreciates that <laughs> she has it back probably almost more than you do. I would just I think, go on out on a limb here. I'm just going to, I'm going to venture a guess. Absolutely. And so I think the, the thing here is like, so Sarah True is going to be able to see this lead moto. She's probably saw her on that bridge. 219. She knows 219. So she's lost five seconds since that last split. So yep. it's back and forth and back and forth. And to me, the most telling thing is, Sky has some of that positive energy. She's laughing. Yeah. She she took that hat, gave the high five. So different things like that, that if you're calorically deficient at all or getting close to kind of the bonk zone, you're not doing those things. There's no, no extra energy going out. And Sarah True has kind of gone back to the game phase focus, no extra energy being spent. And that might show that the momentum is moving to uh, the woman on screen. Well, in part because she's just not getting the feedback that the, the split is coming down. Yep. Um, if anything, to the second, it's increasing ever so slightly. I think, you know, she's obviously not seeing our tracker splits, but, you know, and, and to the eye or by the watch of a spectator, probably just getting the same split. But the fact that the split, it really, it's, she's just run into a wall. She can't make any headway sort of changes your emotional energy a little bit. The, the, some of the frustration, I'm working really hard right here. She's not faltering at all. Not that you would expect an athlete like Sky to falter, but right. she's just not making inroads. No, certainly not. And, and it does turn out that at this point, that, that move uh, that Sky has made uh, or made earlier in the bike to get that gap is, uh, is paying off and it's enough of a cushion. You know, it would be a lot more tactical if these women came off the bike together. Sure. It would be a much different run. Something I think we would have liked to have seen a shoulder to shoulder marathon between uh, this is pretty exciting too between Sarah True and Sky Munch would have would have been good, but it's 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 still been pretty darn good. No, absolutely, and uh, you know we're gonna get a bunch of good racing to come this year. Uh, a couple world championships up for grabs, and still uh, world championship coming in December of 2024. And Tapo New Zealand will welcome the very best professional and age group triathletes at the 2024 VinFast Ironman 70.3 World Championship. So in one of the world's largest freshwater lakes, ride through beautiful rural landscapes and enjoy the lakefront views and spectators on your run. See you in Taupo in 2024. Go to Ironman.com slash IM73 World Championship 2024. Yeah, you've got to start planning your, uh, your assault uh, to get that qualifying slot to head to that race. So uh, here we have a, a playback of the, the return of the, the beloved hat. Um, Look at the smile. There psyched. it is. <laughs> she is. I got my hands on it. Pretty pumped. She went backwards style. That's yep. a mid race, mid race change. The backwards style. <laughs> Man, she is 
loving this moto. Yeah. He got her to blow some kisses earlier. I uh, got the hat back. It's a, it's a whole situation. Um, but here we go. And that's uh, one of the long stretches along the riverfront here. Uh, we see uh, Sky still holding a great pace uh, and, and running well again, running about even with Sarah Chu getting a few seconds back in that last split. Uh, but through that 22.8 kilometer, Yurzik still yeah. holding on to that third place position. But yeah. Sky's got that hunch again. She's got, she had that hunch there for a second. We'll see. Uh, okay. She's really struggling with the hat. She's given the hat back. <laughs> She's now given the it's hat a lot. back. There's a lot going on with that hat. Um, as we look back at this is uh, our personal needs uh, station, I believe, and our first German out on course, the Ironman uh, rookie. Laura Jansen. Having a great day of it. Laura Jansen had pulled over to the side of the road there, uh, grabbing the baggie full of, of supplies with a four-lap course. Athletes will have access to that um, any lap they choose. Okay. Um, so she is electing to go in here. Uh, she's not quite yet halfway, or um, but but diving into those those uh, personal needs. Uh, you can stash that bag ahead of time and have access to it out on the run course. Just a slight diversion. Yeah. Uh, from the course, put the great volunteers in there. You typically just call out your number, but in this particular case, it looks like up oh, there's a table for the pros. So yeah. she took the second. It seems like such a big investment in time, right? You, you uh, 15, 20 seconds. Um, you don't want to be giving away time, but th that nutrition, if if what you have is special and personal to you, uh, it's going to pay dividends to get what you need to be out on course. Uh, this, uh, this Taking care of the small things now means you're not uh, maybe creating larger issues later. And uh, she's you know making a move of a, a, a veteran Ironman athlete by making sure she gets what she needs uh, sooner rather than later. And that's one of the reasons she's one of the faster runners on course at this point. And, man, she just looks so smooth and strong. Certainly uh, this rookie has a, a big future of Ironman racing ahead of her and – in her first season, it looks highly probable she's going to make it to the world championship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Abs absolutely. And uh, what a what a great thrill for her to be doing it um, here in Germany. So she's going to be getting a lot of a lot of support out there as the first, um, I should say, female German on course. Uh, we certainly have some age groupers out there who are in and amongst our professional women, but as the first pro athlete uh, from Germany out on course, uh, huge thrill for her. No doubt, she is. Uh, getting carried along by these amazing fans down on course here in Frankfurt. Uh, Sky continuing to impress and, and look good, um, holding her own against Sarah True, uh, whose charge has, has stalled somewhat. We now have four athletes through 22.8K. Sarah Svensk uh, coming through at eight minutes and four seconds down. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, I'm impressed with Sarah Spensk holding, holding on to that fourth place position at this point. She's, uh, she's having a solid race. Again, she's had uh, better runs in, in her past. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got to deal with where you're at now, and she's making improvements um, and trying to get back to the state that she was uh, before some of, those, some of those issues. Again, she's been consistent, right? So what we look for are obviously changes over time. Um, so the pace that she's running now is not dissimilar uh, to paces that she was running on the first two loops. It's just a slower pace than her competitors. Yeah. Um, so the fact that um, she is where she is, she is still running consistently for her. Uh, it's just she's not able to, to hold on to the pace of uh, yeah. Sky and Sarah. No, for sure. And, and even Gearsick at this point. Yeah, and with that, like, the form that she has, we you know, might expect her to hold that pace that she was running. And, and kudos to her, her for going out at a pace that she felt like she could, she was in the fitness in to uh, be able to maintain throughout the whole marathon. But, man, these two women uh, definitely in battle, uh, both running very, very well, different running strides and form and uh, look to be doing it in a, a little bit different manner. Uh, but, Dita, let's talk about the different, like, they're so close now, but they've gotten here in such different ways. To this stage of the race or to this stage in their To this careers? stage of the race. Oh, like, sure. Yeah, I mean, you're talking Sarah True six and a half minutes in the swim. Yeah. Uh, Sky Monch outriding Sarah True, who's a good cyclist, by 10 minutes uh, just to get a three-minute gap, which is about what she needed to feel comfortable. I mean, if she was a minute and a half, Sarah True could have made a tactical decision to close. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of uh, Sky 
uh, kind of masterclass uh, tactical race as far as I'm concerned today and then backing it up um, with the strength and obviously the training put in to, to, to back it up back half the marathon. Well, and it, it was likely a calculated decision on yeah. behalf of Sarah True because they were in the same group for a while riding. Um, Sarah True, uh, or I uh, sorry, Sky coming up um, to the, the, to uh, Sarah who was riding by herself for most of the first lap. Then obviously a lot of the, those pro women came together at the end of the first lap of the bike course. Uh, and it was at that point that uh, Sky got a little bit more aggressive uh, and Sarah didn't answer. Yeah. So whether that was a physical inability or a calculated decision on behalf of Sarah, we won't know. Um, but it gave Sky the cushion that she has and the cushion that she's holding on to uh, this stage past halfway in the marathon. Yeah, I mean, it, my gut would tell me that that was a body couldn't respond or she was in the wrong place at the wrong time uh, by Sarah True because I think she's tactical enough that she would have stayed in that shadow knowing that Sky would have been really nervous if she was there. Possibly, And yep. maybe tapped out of that effort. Um, but again, yeah, you're right. We, we probably will never know. Maybe get some post-race interviews and, and hear about that. But the uh, big thing right now is, is Sky's performing and, and she's able to to tap into this uh, faster run speed and uh, biomechanics that's putting her in a good spot through uh, 22.8K now in fifth place, Maya Stage Nielsen. Uh, so she's gone through holding on to that fifth place. We'll see if Laura Jansen has gotten anywhere uh, closer uh, to the athlete in front of her and uh, fighting for that fifth place spot. And again, split screen here. We have our women's leader, Sky Munch, and the rival, Sarah True, trying to chase her down. It was a handful of years ago that these roles were reversed with Sarah True, with a commanding lead in this race, but a very different uh, kind of race dynamic, very different kind of day. Um, and it was, uh, as to your point, very difficult to watch the meltdown of, of Sarah True across that course. I don't think that is was the primary motivator in her coming here. I think it was a race opportunity to race the best yeah. uh, in the sport, get a get a pulse on fitness relative to other greats in the sport and other women that she'll have to race at the World Championship in October. Uh, I don't think she's thinking about that, that moment uh, at all, other than the fact that she would like the opportunity to take that win that she feels like she right. earned and deserved back in 2019. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, I think that's well said for sure. Uh, just update going through that 22.8 kilometer mark. Uh, Laura Jansen has gone through 12:09, so just one minute back now from Maya Stage Nielsen, and that's uh, she's put in two and a half minutes uh, since the beginning of this marathon. So, pretty close here. And the motor driver giveth and the motor driver taketh away the hat of Sky Munch. Uh, she launched her hat um, and uh, decided that, hey, I don't want it. Have it back. <laughs> uh, a lot of, lot of action here. The drama. Uh, I didn't know that when we had eight athletes within uh, 30 seconds of each other on the bike that the drama we'd be talking about would be the, the hat. Yeah, hat, hat the, gate. The, the, the run hat. 2023. Um, but uh, again, battling this athlete on screen right here, Sarah True, who's holding in. And, and again, they're just handing each other seconds back and forth. But our amazing uh, Fighting Chance crew uh, was able to get out on uh, down in Frankfurt and uh, was able to chat with Sarah True and uh, let's catch up with her and see what she had to say coming into this race. I wouldn't say I want redemption here. It would be nice to have a great race. My very first Ironman was Frankfurt and then I did it the following year. It went really quite well until about 700 meters to go. I wouldn't say I want redemption here. It would be nice to have a great race, but I didn't circle it and say, I must redeem myself. Nothing that dramatic. I love coming to Frankfurt. You get through these small towns on the cobblestones and you get all the spectators as you go up the hill. There's just so much energy that you get from the crowds. Crossing the finish line, the last 100 meters, whether you're winning or you know just covering the distance, feels really similar. For me, it's it's, how well have you executed on the day? Got into triathlon and decided that this is something I can do? That's absolutely my family, where 
Most, most sane people would say, what are you doing? Use your university degree. But you know, my, my family said, listen, if you want to try it, go for it. We totally support you. Yeah, I really give them a lot of credit for letting me live out a dream. That's it. So certainly some history for Sarah True on this course, but not driving her decisions. It's not a, a redemption race to take it back, uh, more of an opportunity to come race the best in the sport. Although I think if she were to get the win, it would probably mean an awful lot. Yeah, I think she'll feel pretty good if she gets that win. But a lot of work uh, left to do uh, for Sarah True, and uh, she still looks great. And again, I keep saying this, but uh, the next split will tell us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but when it stays the same, it doesn't tell us too much. I think if once we start getting to 30K and 33K and it keeps staying the same, then yes, it's going to tell us a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's 0% there's degradation in her form. Mm -hmm. um, she still is very light on her feet, uh, getting good return off the ground. Form and posture uh, are excellent. Uh, just not making inroads in, in the sky, and she's running out of time for that to happen. Yeah, she is for sure, but when you're looking at the time left to run and the gap needed, you know, you're talking a couple miles where yeah. somebody's struggling and 30 seconds a mile can come pretty quick. So still, well, still if plenty. anybody knows it on this course, it's Sarah True. <laughs> this is true. She lost 10 minutes in a K, essentially. Uh, but, uh, yeah, looking great and uh, back on it. And a little cooler day than that day uh, we saw earlier. So we'll see if she can hold this form but increase the pace before the end of this marathon. Welcome back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship. Frankfurt, you're watching American Sarah True trying to hunt down uh, Sky Munch, her fellow countrywoman. Uh, these two have a rivalry that goes several years in the making and sort of started on this very course. Um, Sarah right now charging hard, but unable to make inroads into our women's leader right now, Sky Munch, uh, running within seconds of each other. Uh, it's been a second here, a second there. Uh, Sarah did do some damage in the opening kilometers of the marathon, but her progress has stalled, and she sits at 2 minutes and 20 seconds down of our race leader. Again, behind our two race leaders, the impressive one is Jursik out of Poland, uh, having a great, great race here. She's yeah. five and a half minutes down, running very, very strong, has inserted herself onto the podium, going past Sarah Svensk. Uh, Sarah having a very good race, doesn't look to be in danger, just not holding the same pace. Same thing, Maya Stage still running well. Yep. Um, Laura Jansen, very impressive in her rookie Ironman, being the lead uh, professional female German out on course. We had a couple of big names drop from the race earlier, and so now this rookie finds herself in an unusual spot. Yeah. Uh, and sitting on a Kona qualifying slot. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, she's still running quite, quite well. Uh, just 12 minutes down, a minute behind Maya Stage Nielsen, but uh, still a fair bit behind these two women on screen who are uh, our marquee a race at this point and uh just to note we've both you and i have used the word rivalry a fair bit we've not heard that word come from the mouth of either of these two women on screen uh but we are putting that oh, on them but what's keeping us from stirring the pot no yeah it's fine yeah. um as we see uh sky uh go for a banana there uh just coming up on the 28k mark i will say we we aren't 
necessarily fabricating it because there was a time back before Heather Jackson retired from triathlon racing uh, that Heather and Sky used to go back and forth about who the top American long course athlete was. And, and I think it used to give Heather a kick uh, to, to hear, you know, Sky say, I'm the top American long course athlete. And, and Heather used to like to stir the pot back. So maybe we're just inserting Sarah True into that equation. And, and it's a fitting parallel. Well, and I have had that conversation. Someone had to take the torch after yeah. Heather moved over to Well, in interviews. And like Sarah would argue that she never dropped the torch. Yeah. She just <laughs> she had, had a baby. <laughs> you know, like uh, she had, uh, you know, a fourth place uh, in Kona that, uh, you know, Sky certainly had not equaled uh, until, you know, she got that fourth place in St. George. So, um, you know, definitely a, a battle up for that, but uh, not one that uh, Sarah True knew she was not a part of at that point. <laughs> um, so, again, we'll see. Waiting for this 28.8 K mark, but uh, Sky Mach seems like she's holding quite well that form uh staying a consistent definitely more focus back in the face uh you know maybe less playful than she was a few minutes ago when she was uh, playing around with the hat and uh, chatting with people out on course but uh a little more of the shuffle uh but still looks really good she lost her pacer too i don't know if he is in front of her or behind her but yep. uh could have several effect. kilometers there she uh had an age group competitor that she was running um alongside with helping sort of a bit of a distraction at this point in the race you're looking for just about anything uh to sink your mind into other than uh, what's actually going on right um disassociation uh becomes your friend in these late stages of the marathon but uh right now sky looking very solid you know she uh she really really does and uh yeah cruising through uh over halfway through coming up on uh three quarters of the way through the marathon here pretty soon. So uh, still on pace for a great time all in all, as we see uh, Roca race weather back up, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, still clear sky, humidity still pretty low, 44%. Uh, percent. Uh, the winds come up a little bit, eight kilometers an hour. Um, so, you know, that might be sections where there's a tailwind uh, that feel a little bit warmer uh, or headwind might feel a little bit cooler. So you might see that pace kind of the, the back, that last lap, alter, you know, depending on which way they're going, uh, considering the wind. Of course, we were talking about Heather Jackson, and uh, now we're watching Sky eat a banana, and I can't help oh but boy. smile and, and think about uh, Heather Jackson, one of the great champions of our sport, has moved on to a, a fantastic career so far in dirt, uh, doing some gravel racing and some ultra trail running. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just I see the banana. It makes me think of Heather. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Uh, we've got Age Gruber asking if she needs anything. I think he was offering the used sponge that was in his jersey. Uh, that's <laughs> Thank a, you. No. That's a hard pass from Sky <laughs> at that point. Uh, but uh, well-intentioned and awesome to see uh, support from all the different competitors out there. Uh, you know, that's so much of what makes our sport uh, exciting and kind of makes everybody feel like they're a part of the elite competition as we're all on the same course at the same time. So pretty cool to be able to see uh, Age Groupers and pros Mix it up, and uh, Sky gets some encouragement and even some pacing at times from other athletes out on course. As we have a uh, view from above for Yurzik, uh, still running in third. And, and as far as I'm concerned, I think you, you might agree, Didi, the race of the day uh, for me, uh, this athlete, uh, having a breakthrough running in the podium position. Oh, absolutely. Uh, big, um, I don't want to say surprise because she's had some she's had some good results, but she would be an unexpected addition You're to the surprised. podium. You're surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm is surprised. okay. Yeah, I had to do some Googling. I, I, I did not recognize her name on the start list as oh, a, a familiar name yeah. to Ironman racing and certainly not championship level racing. So, uh, but that has changed now. Yeah, yes. and she's, she's holding her form together. We haven't seen much of a degradation in how she started uh, her run. And again, you said she has a bunch of short course racing experience. So, um, you know, holding it together, this would be a, a easy pace for her compared to the, the paces that she's run in the past in those short course races so uh hats off to Yurzik. literal hats off if you're sky, if you're sky. <laughs> um but hats on hats off <laughs> hats, hats on hats off that's all hats all over the place um <laughs> but she's definitely hitting up these aid stations as she goes through with these age groupers getting as much water as possible and those sponges are popular today and no doubt about that um as we see our podium athletes at this point uh getting very close to our next checkpoint at 28.8 kilometers uh to be able to get a new site on kind of where these athletes are at. 
And with the arrival of that 28.8 kilometer marker, we'll wrap up the third nearly of four laps. So uh, athletes making great progress. It's one of the things about a multi-loop course like this. Um, I think depending on the athlete, perhaps depending on the, the dynamic of the race, um, athletes, some athletes prefer the single loop course where you can run and hide and, and not have these optical uh, out and backs where you get eyes on your competitors. At the same time, I really believe that these multi-loop courses, the, the kilometers tend to melt away a little bit faster. Absolutely. Um, when you're on familiar stretches of, of territory, okay, here I am again. I remember the last lap, here's what I was thinking, here's what I was feeling, here's what was happening, uh, and sort of reestablishing that benchmark. I, I think you can chart progress a lot more quickly. And of course, the other benefit, the density of the crowds. Uh, yeah. This is a city urban Great environment, point. dense urban environment. Uh, so the number of spectators, especially when you factor in the, f the course being four 10K loops, there are spectators absolutely everywhere on this course. You are never alone out there. No, absolutely not. And uh, yeah, really good point about that uh, You know, ability to kind of remember the spaces you're going through and, and uh, familiarize yourself with them as we see Sky go through that 28.8. Okay, Mark still slowing down a little bit, 422. So again, each little section is uh, a little bit different. So we'll see, and she gets the, the hat, hat back, back again. Um, so off and on, off and on. Um, but uh, I think the other big thing about courses like this, DD, are you can come in with a race plan that is either each lap, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do 45 minutes. And then that's your goal. And if you go through the first one in 43, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta, I gotta slow this down. Or you can even have, you know, each out and each back, you know, is whatever, 22 minutes, something like that. So you have these little goals to hold you accountable. It's one thing to look down and see what your pace is, what your average pace is. But if you've got a hard number on what you're trying to do each lap in or each 10 kilometers in, it's, it's really helpful. And even when preparing for the race, you can have that kind of in your mind ahead of time. So it almost feels like you're preparing on the course in some, some way. Well, my guess is while the temperature hasn't climbed very much, it looks like the core body temperature of Sky Munch is climbing. She has asked for the hat back, uh, received it back from the moto driver and went through uh, several of the, the cooling and strategies. Didi, sorry, but Sarah True has gone through in 124 back. Uh, so that is a huge, huge, huge swing in yep. 5K. That's a minute she's gotten back. So that's 413 yep. per kilometer versus 422. So right now she's taking that top off. Whether she's cool or she needs to use the restroom, we'll see in a second. Uh, so if she has to use the restroom, we'll see that pretty quickly. Uh, but it, 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 we've seen her do this before, those videos we had from before. I think she's, she's tucking in, again, just yeah. watching her, her behavior there. If she was going to uh, dip into a, a porta potty there, I don't think she'd take yeah. the care to... to Tuck, but she's tucking in, which to me says that she's just trying to cool herself down a little bit. Yeah, and this shows this is similar to what she had before, you know, that video we saw. She had the, a similar setup there, so uh, very good for her. And again, Rice race is tightening up. Again, we've got some controversy about the hat that maybe we can talk about from a rules perspective. Is a moto driver holding Sky's hat considered outside aid? Uh... It, it is a, it's someone that's involved with the race. So if you look at the letter of the rules there, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly allowed. I think there's people that would probably, uh, you know, oppose that. And in the end, uh, it's, uh, I think Sky probably wouldn't ask for that if it wasn't uh, continued to being offered to her. Um, but in the end, I don't think it's going to make or break a race, but certainly something uh, that people get to focus on. It, it is, it's a comfort. I, I will harken back to other races where uh, a lead uh, or an escort cyclist has carried uh, nutritional products and it has created a little bit of a stir. So um, just curious, just bringing it up. Uh, yeah, but right now we've uh, got the woman on screen who's doing her best uh, to you know, make that point moot and catch uh, the athlete that's in first place. And it does look like she's like, okay, I want to be in the lead pretty close to this fourth lap. Yes. Am I wrong in that this is an injection of pace here? Yes. Like this, this looks different. She looks like she's like, okay, enough messing around. And like I'd said earlier, to me, that's the difference between Sarah True and Sky Monch is that... Sarah has uh, a variety of gears where it doesn't seem like Sky does. Sky's changing that, and she looks like she's working on it. But Sarah, she was fourth at the Olympics where you run a 10K as fast as you can. Yep. 
that means she's got something a little bit different in her legs. Certainly, and to be able to draw on that this late into an Ironman is, is certainly impressive. And yes, there is an injection of pace, a sense of urgency that uh, doing what she was doing was not getting it done. And she had to inject the pace if she wants to win this race. She couldn't, yeah. she could no longer count on Sky. And I don't think ever just knowing Sky, Sarah wouldn't doubt her ability to hold on and wouldn't necessarily expect her to falter. So now she's just being more proactive about it. She's got to go hunt her down. She's running out of time. Yeah. And it's a, it's a snowball, right? So if Sky's getting splits that she lost a minute, yep. then Sky's going to get tightened up and get nervous and it, it changes the whole dynamic. So even if, Sarah doesn't think she can hold this pace for the next 10K. It doesn't matter if, because in Ironman late, you're you're playing a poker poker match, right? And it's whoever plays the best cards at the right time is the one that's going to win. Certainly, you have to keep moving. You have to be able to uh, run well. But this could be a bluff where Sarah's like, I'm going to get as close as I can, freak Sky out. Sky's going to go to management mode, and I go in and pass. And then as soon as I get out of sight, I reevaluate all these things she and hope that she is charging yes. hard. Uh, She's she did look like she was running comfortably for for a lot of this race, but she has definitely found another level. There is drive and determination behind this move right here. Absolutely, and it did seem like maybe she saw uh, Sky at a certain point, or maybe she realized that, as you said, you know what, 10K to go, I've got to be yep. in a tighter a lot spot. Because yep. she respects that athlete, right? So, um, you know, she's she's putting in this move, and it's 2K from that last check to the, to the next one, and I think we're going to see her under a minute, and I think that next time they do that lap, and that this could 100% be that poker move where Sarah being like, I'm going to close as much as I can, so on that last lap, Sky saw me, and I was two and a half minutes. And the and next time, I'm, it's going to yes. be 45 seconds. Yep. She is going to absolutely lose her confidence. Yep. And ball is in Sarah Chu's court. Well, it's it's where the, the power of the chaser comes in and that she is, you know, you'd think this late into a marathon, Sky is well in control. But uh, Sarah is, is playing the card she's dealt. She's got to make that move, get into Sky's head a little bit uh, and see if she can't cause... Um, Sky to perhaps make some errors or at least certainly feel the pressure that she's there, even if this is the move she's got and she shuts it down, but with one lap to go, can't close again. But she's making a move. She's going for it. No, she absolutely, absolutely is. And uh, this is kind of what we were hoping and maybe expecting and yeah. why we were talking about the three minute gap and like tactically what that meant. And Sarah knows that. Sky knows that. They've been playing this poker match since kilometer one yeah it's just been playing out a little bit slower um if i knew more poker metaphors i'd use them but that's that's it i'll try to bring some other sports into it later but uh certainly some bluffing uh going on and uh you know great running too both of these athletes running under three hour marathon pace uh, after a, a scorching bike ride and a, a fast swim so it's uh it's all on and pretty soon we, we might see these athletes uh come together at least get within sight of each other, but I do think there's probably a goal for this lap uh, as far as distance behind that Sarah Tree wants to get. And Sky keeping it together again, each lap um, coming to its conclusion. She still has a little bit more than a lap to go. Um, and Sarah True making a charge, trying to make a statement. And you're continuing to impress. Uh, running in third place, she's five and a half minutes down. She's, now to 28.8. She's only lost two minutes to Sky. Yeah. Like over, Overall. Yeah, yeah, over 30 kilometers, yeah. two minutes is absolutely nothing. Yeah. Do the math. It's too hard for me. But it's, uh, you know, very, very impressive. And certainly not someone we would have picked to be in the podium at the start of the race. Nope. And neither of us if we're being honest, would have picked her coming off the bike nope. to be in the podium either. Absolutely so, not. Uh, we love to be wrong, uh, especially when it comes to somebody having a breakthrough performance. And, uh, well, we love to see, to see the injection of a new name uh, For sure. and, and, and new talent uh, arriving on the scene. The level of uh, racing, both for men and women, uh, just getting better and better and better. And here's this bridge. And I think the bridge is important, too, because uh, 
Sarah is going to get some motivation because no doubt they were on that bridge at the same, same time. time. And she could see her uh, up that bridge and she's going to be able to look to her right and see Sky Monch as she, she's she exited down the bridge. And, and run down the bridge or as she's just off the bridge, depending where they're at. So Sky's just gone through 30.7K right before that lap three where they're going to see each other kind of in this little out and back section. And look uh, at that pace. Look at that pace oh, through yeah. that last segment. Uh, that is it. That not is, great. yeah. And here we go, overhead shot. So that's the bridge. So she went right and then took another right to get on the straightaway. Uh, so Sarah Tree is going to come through this mat in, I'm going to try to do the three, two, one thing, but it's not going to work. Three, two, one. Didn't work. But she's coming here pretty soon. But Sky holding on. She's got more of that shuffle. Her posture is better. Sarah Tree through now. 31 seconds back. Yeah, that's. Uh, th I just saw the pace. Um, Sky, Here it is. Yeah, Sky went through a rough patch there, and the, the pace per K dropped from about 415, 420 to 449, and that has opened the door for Sarah True, who now the blood's in the water. That She's got eyes on her. Yeah, absolutely, and we're going to see the pass here pretty soon, 30 seconds. So we've got a little bit of time, but no doubt she's gonna go up to the shoulder of Sky Monch. We're gonna see if Sky is able to react. I don't think Sarah's gonna put a pace as she passes that's gonna allow her to, nope. but then it's gonna be how much Sarah really pushes this. We're gonna sneak away for a very, very quick commercial break and get back for more action. Iron Man Frankfurt. And if you're just tuning in, you have picked the most epic time to tune in. You are looking at race chaser Sarah True, who was three minutes down starting the marathon. She charged ahead, got it down to 214, but it plateaued. Stalled. It lagged. It stalled. Uh, and now uh, here we are uh, inside 30 kilometers and the the. the attack is about to happen. It is, but it looks like it's you know, I think there's blood in the water it's a fight or flight situation right like sky can sense that she's there she sees the moto she sees probably more media around than she did a little bit ago she might even be able to hear a commotion behind certainly she's getting some sort of split saying that she's right there so she's she's fighting she's playing her cards to try to keep sarah as far away from her as possible but it's coming and it's inevitable at this point and again this is uh Definitely a change from what we saw in 2019. Yeah. And Sarah True is... It's a uh, horse of a different color with a with a shoe on a different foot. I don't know what any of that means, <laughs> but I think you're probably right. But Sarah True looks like she's settled a little bit. She's, she's like off the accelerator a little bit. You can only, as we said, kind of those micro pace changes. She's probably 20 seconds back at this point, uh, but she's doing her best. Uh, she's trying to get some space from some of the other age groupers back, waving her arms uh, and getting as much space as she can, but trying to close that distance, Didi, on Sky Monch, who has had a fantastic marathon to, to this point. But you can see the, the stress, um, and it's the first time we've seen that um, from Sky. Again, acknowledging the crowd, uh, which is great, but also uh, the look on her face says a little bit of stress. Yeah, and when she hears this, he's going to cheer on and have everybody cheer for Sarah True. That's going to give her, that's a little kick to the gut. Yeah. Right? Oh, shoot, she's right, right there. there. Like, she can see me. And it's so much more uncomfortable being the one in front of yes. the situation. You're so in control when you're in back, and it takes, like, courage uh, and this tenacity to, to be able to hold when you're in front, knowing that that person 
just is looking at the back of your head the entire time, and you just don't know what's happening back there. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen attacks like this before. We saw it at the Iron Man World Championship when I believe it was Sarah Crowley came up on uh, Lucy Charles Barkley and closed it down, was on her shoulder, and then wasn't able to, to, to close the deal. I don't know. From, from what it looks like, I mean, Sky is such a fighter and so ferocious that she is not going to give this up without a massive, massive battle. No, it's 15 I seconds now. Yeah, it is. So she's half that gap yep. just in uh, a little over a kilometer. So through lap three, they're three quarters of the way through. Great side shot. Pretty soon we're going to be able to see the distance uh, between our women's leader who's led from the very first step of the marathon here, Sky Monch. And you can see with the orange shoes, yep. uh, that is Sarah True just behind. You can see the little rider behind her, uh, one of the lead uh, cyclists as they go through a Manova banner. So that is Sarah True trying to get back on that podium again. She was second place here again behind uh, Daniela Reef in her first Ironman years ago, then was in the lead by, I think it was 10 minutes. It was an insurmountable lead, we thought. And then a K to go, yeah. it all came apart. And that, that process took a while, but the K to go, she was out of the race and Sky Monch passed her standing still. Um, I don't think it's going to be a standing still type pass nope. here, Didi. I think there's some battling once they get up to the shoulder. And this this will go down as one of the best marathon battles we've seen yes. at the European Ironman Championships uh, to date. And uh, man, no two better athletes to go to this kind of gutsy battle than these two women. And Sarah True, again, in the power position. She's got eyes on Sky, but Sky's still leading the race. The pass hasn't happened yet, so it's not over till it's over. Um, I think Sky is probably going through um, her thought process at the moment and how she's going to manage it uh, if, and it does seem likely, uh, and when uh, Sarah comes by. Does she have to let her go and regroup a little bit for one final attack uh, at the end of this concluding lap? to this Hoka Marathon course, or does she go with her? I think she's got to go with her. She, she, she has to try, right? And and, and she, she's kind of putting in that effort now. So there's two ways to handle it, right? You either soften up your pace a little bit, rest so that when that athlete catches you, you have the ability to respond, or you make it as hard as possible for that athlete to catch you and hoping that you crack them before they close that final gap. And I think right now it seems to me that Sky Monch is doing that effort now. So she'll get on the shoulder, but it might not last long. Yep. But again, we don't know what, Sarah, again, it's a poker match. Sarah True might be like, okay, I'm recovering. I'm going to take five minutes to recover, get on the shoulder, and then I'm going to bang, hit her with some fast pace. But so many different ways it can pan out at this point. <laughs> and uh, here we go. That great overhead shot still. We can see Sky. She's definitely pushing because she's going back to that uh, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit hunched uh, position, shoulders coming forward a little bit posturally. Uh, she's going to try to continue to open up her, her pace and her, uh, uh, her stride to be able to uh, hold off the fast charging Sarah True as this race just three minutes separated these athletes over 30K to go. And now it's tightening up. We can see Sarah True in the background, just about 20 meters separating these two athletes, having absolutely uh, an insane battle just with 10 kilometers to go, Didi. And both athletes' uh, are pace is, is fading, obviously not surprising when you're nearly 33 uh, kilometers into uh, an Ironman marathon, uh, but it is Sarah True who is holding about 20 seconds per K through that last segment faster than Sky. Um, Sky's got to find another gear if she has any hopes of, of holding on here. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's we always think it's the the chaser that's in the driver's seat when there's a catch, but it depends how the person in the front has spent their energy, but right. we've seen it. And it, it seems like Sky has been spending that energy. She, it seemed like the, the game she was playing, which most people would, was just don't let her catch you and you'll win, which right. seems to be kind of obvious, uh, but sometimes it's a, a, a little bit more than that. But I doubt she's going to have much of her response. But again, Sarah just did a pretty good effort. effort to, yep. So she, and th that's why I'm saying that it's not always the chaser that has the upper hand because sometimes they they get too excited and they spend the energy, yes. right? And uh, that can end up. And being And I a bad think that's thing. what Sarah's got to be careful about is not to do it too much too soon, right? She had a really encouraging uh, block there where she's brought the lead down to about I don't know 
10 seconds. Yeah. Um, it, she, she brought Sky to within 10 seconds, but she's done a monster effort to do it. Uh, the temperature is climbing. Um, things are heating up out there, both literally and metaphorically. <laughs> um, so, again, the race in 2019, while not at the forefront of Sarah's mind, certainly not far from it in knowing how to manage effort and, and not spend all of the chips before the finish line. Yeah, for sure. As they go through this aid station, Sarah's, Same aid station now. Sarah's gonna uh, make some time up as Sky slows a little bit. In other news, uh, Yurzek has gone through a 5.11 back, so actually making time back up on our leader. Uh, I, she doesn't have to worry about, uh, Sky doesn't have to worry about her, I don't think, but look at the stress on her face, yeah. it, which is uh, you know, not surprising that she'd be stressed. She's getting caught late in the marathon, going through an aid station, there trying to stay cool. And they are in the same stretch, just about 10 meters uh, between these two athletes as we have uh, Sarah True coming up on the shoulder of Sky Monch. And how does, how does Sarah play it? Does Sarah charge through her? Uh, doesn't want to give her any hope that she's going to stick with her. Uh, can Sky try to hold it? She gave a thumbs up. That's that's surprising to yeah. me. Um, and, and again, not because she's not a good sport, but the, no. the yeah. No, not at all. I think to me that is, uh, you know, it could be gamesmanship. I no do not response. think it is. It is her being a uh, competitor that appreciates that battle. She knows how hard that is, um, and it's nothing personal. If there's a rivalry, we might have made up that rivalry, but. It also hurts a little bit more when the athlete that passes you gives you encouragement and then drops you. Yeah. Right? And I don't think that's the intention of Sarah True at all. But uh, amazing. Hey, you want to you wanna send the message like, hey, good job. Sure. I'm not going to see you again until after this is yeah, all thanks. said and done. So good luck to you for the last 10K. Thanks for coming out. But I do think <laughs> Sarah True does not underestimate Sky Monch at all. And, and somebody that cannot be underestimated in Ironman racing, just did a 7.26.20 at Ironman Hamburg uh, with some crazy times. 401 bike split, DD, and a 2.31.38 run is Dennis Chevreau, and he's going to get on here and chat with us. And uh, Dennis, you've been watching. What do you think? This is a pretty crazy race, huh? Yes, uh, we are on the last lap and uh, still, uh, still a fight for the win. Yeah, it's absolutely. Crazy. And what do you think about that gesture from Sarah True as she finally made that pass? Uh, I think I think it's fair. Some some people do some up, some people don't. Yeah, it depends on the athlete and the, the relation between the athletes. And so, so what if you're in this position, which you've been in before a few times, and it's this close, this late, and you've maybe just made the pass? Are, are you trying to put a little bit extra distance into that athlete to, to not allow them to have any hope, or are you just doing what you can in the moment? In Hamburg, I, I overtook uh, Jan uh, 15K before the finish, and uh, I increased my speed. <laughs> I don't want to let him expect he could stay with me. Obviously, Dennis... Talk. Obviously, Dennis, it will depend on who your competitor is, but uh, when you head out onto a, a Hoka run course, uh, what is your plan, and, and is there a, a time gap uh, that to you is insurmountable that you're like, okay, I can't even think about those guys who are X number of minutes ahead. I've just got to work on me, and what is that time gap? I don't understand the question. Sorry. Yeah, when you get on the run, and if you're if you're behind uh, athletes in front, what's that, that time that makes you think it's possible to catch? And at what point is that too much time? Is it five minutes or six minutes? It depends on who is yeah. at the front. And when it's, when, before, when it's, before Hamburg, I was uh, thinking I should be under three minutes with Jan and uh, under seven minutes with Christian Ogunov. So you, you know before the... Me, I know before the race, uh, my gap, and it was three minutes with Jan. So when I heard in T2, I was just 120, I said, okay, I can do it. And then I just focus on my run, on my nutrition, on doing it, and stay relaxed, doing my thing at my pace. That's awesome. And, and what, is it, what does it give to you, uh, confidence-wise, going into world championship season, uh, when you are able to overcome you know, someone that we refer to as the GOAT, 
uh, you know, in, in a marathon and, and have a run split like you did there in Hamburg? Um, I didn't think it was Jan Frodeno when I overtook him. It was an athlete I want to, I want yeah. to finish before him because if you start to think he's the goat, maybe you can uh, you can lose your mind and uh, not be focused anymore on the, on your race and on, on your pace. Uh, and, Dennis, uh, you. You, you have qualified uh, for the VinFast Ironman World Championship in Nice. Obviously, Kona has been a special part of our history in Ironman triathlon, but talk to us a little bit about uh, why you're excited to go uh, to Nice and what you think will be different about that venue as compared to where we've raced in, in the past. And do you think that's a better course for you for the World Championship? Uh. I'm happy that the World Championship is in France because my friends, my family will come and uh, it's easier for us, of course, than traveling to Hawaii, Kona, which is very far, 25 hours trip. <laughs> uh, the bike course is not good for me because uh, I'm heavy. I'm, uh, I say heavy, not fat. Uh, <laughs> I'm 26K when I'm fit and... Uh, the bike course is 2,400 uh, D plus, so it's not for me. Um, I can't fight against the gravity, but the run course is very fast. It's very fast. Um, it is on the promenade des Anglais, four loops, no turn point, except at the two opposite on the promenade des Anglais. So it will be a first run, and, uh, a fast run, sorry. And I expect to, to do a good and strong run to, to run fast and uh, try to overtake some guys. I love it. I love it. Well, good news for you is that uh, what goes up must come down. So I bet you go downhill pretty quick. And I don't think anybody would ever think someone who could run a 231 is fat. So I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much about that. But um, back to the race that we've got on screen, just a few kilometers to go. Uh, Sarah True has gotten in the lead. Sky Monch is not far behind. What advice, if you were out on course, would you give to both of these two athletes with just over five kilometers to go? I would say it's not over. Anything yeah. is possible. And uh, even for Sky, she's just just back. And uh, I, w I will uh, say to her, drink and eat and uh, just, just go to fight, just run fast. And uh, to Sarah, um, I would say you have to charge. Don't let her uh, hope she can uh, she can come back. But uh, I think we have 20 seconds now because we we saw uh, the the turn point and uh, yep. 20 seconds is going. It's good for Sarah, I guess. Yeah, well, that's uh, awesome. Great insight, and uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I'm sure you got some big uh, training on tap for the rest of the day, getting ready for World Championship uh, season, and can't wait to uh, watch you in person uh, go up that hill faster than I think you you think you can. So uh, excited to watch you at the World Championships, Dennis. Thank you, and thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, awesome uh, uh, privilege to be able to talk to these uh, top athletes, uh, you know, on a training day for sure for most of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, both athletes that are, are pretty excited, um, or all three athletes we had, I'm pretty excited to have uh, the race in uh, France for kind of obvious reasons, yeah, I right. think, at this point. Uh, definitely waited. Uh, no bias there that, whatsoever no from, bias. The, from the French. Uh, but super impressed with the woman on screen here. Still definitely in it, as we saw with that footage from last year. In the last 10 kilometers, anything can happen. Like let alone the last kilometer. So Sky Monch chasing women on screen, Sarah Svensk uh, still in fourth place, but so much more to come just after this break.
want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Back to the action here at the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt. For a long time in this marathon, we would have said that the woman on screen was your race leader. But in the last five kilometers, that dynamic has changed. Sarah True put in a hard charge uh, and is now in the lead, leading Sky Munch by a handful of seconds. But that lead is growing. Yeah, it is for sure, and it's uh, it's opening up. Um, but uh, this woman on screen seems to have made that effort and then settled in, uh, and uh, now I wouldn't say has control, but she's got a gap that she can settle into her pace and be okay with. Um, but many Ironmans uh, out there to do. Another one that is a fantastic one is the Ironman Portugal Cascais. A revel in the seaside splendor of Portugal's Atlantic coast at Ironman Portugal Cascais. With its sandy beaches and beautiful coastline, Cascais is an incredible triathlon venue. Enjoy the unique experience of cycling on the Estoril Formula One circuit. Marvel at the coastline vistas as you run. Register today. Go to ironman.com slash IM Europe. There you go. Here's an overhead shot of Sarah True. We do not see Sky Monch in the background at all. So that gap as we thought. And uh, I love one of the, my favorite things about that interview is while we're talking, Dennis is doing splits on the turns. Yeah. He was uh, looking at that clock. He knew it was 20 seconds. Uh, definitely a pro athlete through and through. Um, so we'll get uh, a split here uh, that will probably uh, – go along with uh, Dennis's observation. And I think it's going to be over that time at this point, as you noted, uh, Didi, that the pace going into the checkpoint before Sky was caught, she was losing 40 seconds yes. a kilometer. And she she picked the pace up to try to hold off. Um, but I, I kind of think that was probably her effort and her move. And I think that gap is going to be a little bit bigger. And, and she will have to manage because... Yerzik is not, she's not fading. And she's only no. lost uh, five minutes uh, to Sarah True and two minutes to Sky Monch throughout this race at this point. Uh, so certainly the ability for her to sneak up if Sky really comes apart. Yeah, Sky's going to have to really come yeah. apart, which isn't something we're used no. to seeing from Sky. It's so that is pretty far from our not level likely. of expectation. But the uh, but she is the one to capitalize. She is there, and, and she's kept this a... Uh, an honest race. Uh, she's held that sort of distance to these two sort of icons in long course racing and has every reason to be to be thrilled with her performance so far today. For sure. And kind of as we said earlier, the sometimes to beat the superior athlete, you hang out in a spot to sweep up right. if they do something. And there's no doubt Sky is all in for the win. And, and yeah. maybe the fact that she has that rev limiter probably kept her from going too deep because she just can't pick them up and turn them over quick enough to go that deep. But she's definitely going to still have to manage. Um, but Sarah True seems like she's settled in. She's comfortable uh, having a great uh, run after that closing of that pace and, and certainly increased. They both yeah. kind of kind of slowed, though. So at this point, 256 marathon, if Sarah True continues to hold this pace where uh, Sky Monch, if she holds the pace that she's on, is going to be around a three-hour marathon. And Didi Sarah Spence still crossing in fourth place. Yeah, again, Sarah has, well, although she is less than, she's about eight seconds ahead of Maya Stage Nielsen in fifth. So right a battle going on right now in fourth place. Those two quite a bit back uh, from podium potential at this stage of the race, but certainly a battle for fourth between Sarah Svensk uh, and Maya Stage Nielsen with Maya breathing down the neck of Sarah uh, to move into fourth place. But uh, yeah, Yersik just holding absolutely steady. Um, in her mind, if I'm her, I'm not thinking about Sarah True or Sky at any point during the marathon. She is racing her own race and has has done a fantastic job and will post an amazing result uh, as a result. You, you know who these people need to start thinking about is Laura Jansen. Yeah. 12.43 down, 30 seconds behind Majestays Nielsen yep. and 40 seconds behind Sarah Svensk and running significantly faster. 20 to 30 seconds um, per K. I mean, 10 minutes to yeah. this point faster than Sarah Svensk. So she's putting in a bid pretty solidly for fourth place. Uh, and 
kudos to Yurzik uh, for holding and holding as much gap as she has to make it unattainable for Jansen to bridge up to her. She has been, Yurzik has been absolutely just bulletproof throughout yeah. this entire race. Um, she hasn't put herself in a position to get into trouble and um, she's capitalized on some pacing errors from others on the bike and just has stayed safe and is running her race. She didn't run out of transition trying to match the pace of those around her. She, she set out to run what is my best marathon pace that I can hold and she's been super consistent. Totally and, and I'll, I use words like courage that can be maybe a little dramatic because you know this is just racing but for a rookie on the bike yeah. to be around athletes like Bly Mill and to bridge up to them and then to drop them and then to try to bridge up to these other athletes and doing the whole thing on her own is a foreign thing to be out there for five hours riding on your own and then to have the gumption and uh, you know the grit to be able to get go out at a run pace that's going to put you in a position to have a top five finish. And if it wasn't for a breakthrough performance from Yurzik, a possibility at a podium finish yeah. at a European Championships yeah. and a Kona spot in her first Ironman. Uh, the two races today that are, are super impressive to me are Yurzik and Jansen. Uh, really, really impressed by these two women. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and certainly rookies at this race and, and Jansen without any professional Ironman race experience at all. So... Uh, full, full credit uh, within uh, spitting distance, I'll say, of the podium. Uh, likely going to come up a little bit short, but may well insert herself into fourth place in the process. Oh, no, it's awesome. And the confidence that she'll get uh, coming out of that is uh, is impressive. And, um, you know, we assume that she would go ahead and take uh, a Kona spot. Uh, if she if she gets one, it would be hard not to. Uh, but certainly uh, something, uh, you know, she has options now that she's at this level of uh, maybe staying in Europe and trying to get that first uh, victory. But we'll see uh, what happens when the slots are given out. Great overhead shot. We of, see that. Yeah, the finish line. I was just yeah. noting the crowd that has amassed at the finish line awaiting uh, these amazing professional women who have done battle all day long. And, and I know, you know, we've said that it, it's just another race. She loves it here. But I kind of think that, and I know you, you said that Sarah hasn't been replaying this over and over, but there was probably a couple weeks where she was replaying that over and over again, that race before. And when she gets to that finish line that she wasn't able to cross the last time, that will feel a little different than another Ironman finish. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. And, and especially because this crowd is just that amazing too. Right. I, I mean, you can't have an experience as dramatic as the one she had here in 2019 and not think about it. I understand her saying it wasn't the motivation for her coming here, uh, but I think she will run past that spot uh, where the meltdown happens um, and and think to herself, you know, I'm a, I'm a different athlete. I'm a smarter athlete. I've, I've learned. Um, still has faced some struggles in the heat and still trying to figure that out. But, yeah. um, but I think she will... Um, have a great deal of satisfaction to have come back and sort of conquered this course. Oh, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, there's not many athletes that could put themselves in that position. That's the thing, right, is the, the stubbornness she had to continue on. I mean, I put her in the level of kind of the historic athletes that we've seen go through that struggle with a Chris Lee, a Julie Moss, Wendy Ingram, yeah. Paulie Newby Frazier on Elite Drive. Those athletes are legendary, and they're legendary because they have the mental fortitude and the toughness and the stubbornness to get into that spot. Yep. Sarah does as well. When things are going better, that stubbornness and that will will get you a win at a European championship yep. and put her in a, a position. Let's not forget, Sky was ninth at Kona. Yeah, She was fourth at World Championship in St. George, and Sarah True has now put her in the rearview mirror twice. Yeah in the last 10 months. And I think it's, I don't think Sky at this point would even argue who the best American is. Chelsea Sardaro's put her name in the hat a little bit maybe. Um, but uh, Sarah True certainly is showing that she deserves to be in every conversation that we talk about fast uh, women in the American scene. And no better time than uh, coming up on the 4th of July uh, for these athletes to celebrate great performances. Uh, absolutely, and and for for two Americans to come in and have such uh, fantastic performances uh, here in Germany, I think just speaks to the level of American racing. Uh, yeah. Unfortunate for some of the Germans today, some of their big names 
uh, having to withdraw from the race, but also inspiring to look at Alora Jansen and see what the future is uh, for German racing. Oh man, and and like how big of a deal, Didi, is that? Especially if she moves all the way up to fourth place oh, to be the German that gets you know on that long podium. I, at I mean, I, I hate I hate to say it, and I'm not saying that the German fans aren't gracious to every single <laughs> athlete out there on the course because they absolutely are but that stadium will erupt absolutely if she comes across if she can move her way up to fourth place Dude, it's kind of like a dream come true right yeah. like clearly like maybe she has hopes that she would have had a better result i kind of think the way she raced she's a realist and she was putting it all together and she's going to be very excited about this but to go down that finish line to be the first trip like she wouldn't have thought that she was going to beat blimel she wouldn't have uh, hoped that. She think put herself in a position to do so if the opportunity arose. It arose today, and uh, she's going to feel uh, like a local hero, no doubt. Uh, but woman on screen right now is uh, the American uh, that's gone into the lion's den uh, to try to win a European championship. And uh, as I said, she's put everyone in the rearview mirror, and she did it tactically. She did it, Didi, with such an impressive swim let's not forget she got six yeah. and a half minutes and 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 there's times where we forget about uh, uh the the fact that it is the consistent athlete across three disciplines yeah. and you can do it so many different ways sarah true just had that consistency she let other people ride a bunch of time into her or yep. whether she let that happen or not is a different question but she's the one that put the most consistent three disciplines together to this point. Still, some some things can happen. I don't see that being a, a thing that's going to happen. But very impressive. The you talk about consistency with Sky. Sarah True is incredibly consistent as well. Well, and the patience that she had because she has the talent and the ability across each of the disciplines. I have no doubt Sarah probably could have ridden a yeah. little bit faster. I think she probably could have been a little more aggressive in the first half of the marathon. But it was a very calculated, um, patient assault on the championship title here today. Clearly, because when she made a move, it was like all that time came back. And like, we'll go back and look, but like seven Not or eight that K. Much, right. And whether it was a coach that said something or she had a plan that said, you got to be within this distance at the K. Or maybe in one of those out and back, she saw something posturally or that uh, made her think that, Sky was opening up uh, her confidence to be broken uh, by Sarah, and Sarah pounced. And to your point, if she put in more of an effort late in the bike, she might not have had the energy to do so. Right. Uh, just a tactician, and it's uh, impressive to to watch her to watch her race. And I will note, Didi, she hasn't waved or joked around since yeah. about mile seventy of that bike ride. So yeah. she's uh, she's pretty serious, and and we'll see. I'm hoping she opens up a little bit with some K's to go to maybe especially enjoy that last kilometer and a half that she didn't get to before. I was gonna say she she deserved that win uh, in 2019. She had such a commanding lead. Uh, at this stage of the bike, or sorry, this stage of the race, um, so much more than she does now. And uh, due to the circumstances, obviously she didn't get the job done because there were nutritional shortcomings that put her in that position yep. anyway. Uh, but it was an unfortunate set of circumstances that took the title from her. Um, she has righted a lot of those wrongs uh, and I think come back here a smarter athlete. That's one thing I think if I... Think of Sarah True and the, the adjective that comes to mind. She's incredibly smart, very oh articulate, gosh. very thoughtful. And I think she has put together a very thoughtful race here today. Uh, I think that's uh, very well said. Uh, she is very, very smart yes. and very calculated. As we noticed, people overlook the fact that, you know, just her choices on the calendar. Yeah. It takes a smart and patient and calculated athlete to be like, no, I'm not going to race seven times before July. Yes. I'm going to race once. I'm going to go to a race I know I've done well at. I've maybe got some things to prove, maybe not. And then she's probably going to do maybe one more race and then world championships or whatever she has on her schedule. But and I'll tell you what, she's not going to the world championships to participate. Oh, no. I mean, she said that <laughs> outward. She's not going to participate. She will only go if she feels she can be competitive and if she doesn't feel that way and that might happen after this race, it may happen leading into the world championship. I guarantee she will not go, but we're gonna see her uh, at the finish line shortly. Don't go away.
and welcome back to the Minova Ironman European Championship. Frankfurt being led right now by two Americans. This one with quite a story to tell about her experiences here in Frankfurt. In 2019, it was devastation. It was about this stage of the marathon where we saw things starting to go not according to plan. And Sarah True has come back here on a mission, had a fantastic swim holding the feet uh, of Beck Clark and Lauren Brandon uh, did a majority of the bike on her own, particularly on that first lap, uh, got into a group yeah. on the second loop, but protected herself, didn't do anything reckless, let some people get away, came into transition with work to do on the marathon, but she waited. She was patient and calculated, and she is reaping the benefits of that right now. And confident. Yes. You can't let that... Like we thought there might have been a mechanical. You can't let that gap yes. open early on the bike. And both of those women that did that might not have seemed aggressive early, but they're both outside of the top eight. Or Rebecca Clark is in eighth place at the moment. Uh, they've faded uh, greatly. Sarah True let that go. She did put an effort in that probably cost her some on the swim, and maybe that's why she made that choice. Okay, I'm kind of gassed. I got to take my time here. And, and that takes confidence, right? And she had all that time kind of in no woman's land and still backed herself and then made all these decisions that you've talked about tactically. And she's gone through, DD 39.3 kilometers, uh, so just 3K uh, to go. And Sarah Trues goes through at 20 or sorry, 244.28 for her run split. So if she holds on, it's going to be a 256 run split, which is about what we thought she would do if she has a good day, 255, 256. And the conditions made it probably easier around 256. I think this is a, a pretty challenging 256 for her, right? And again, this overhead of the out and back, still no sign of sky headed mm -hmm. towards that turnaround. So she has opened up quite a gap here in the closing kilometers. Oh, she certainly has. And, uh, you know, we're going to see uh, here soon if, if Sky's within a minute, uh, her coming into the picture. But I do think uh, we'll probably get that split uh, and maybe not see that visual because I think Sky's... There she is. We got her. Yep. Okay, so she's she's holding pretty well, you know, and, I, and, and she's got that. She went to the old shuffle form and uh, she's still... Looks maybe like she's smiling a little bit. She's got a little bit of that hunch, uh, but she's she's hanging in there. And you know she put herself in a position to try to win the race. And when you do that, things get hard afterwards. Yeah. But then she's coming back a little bit, right? And uh, and again, I think that shows the champion she is. So she's gone through one minute and 24 seconds back that she's lost in the last uh, five five k. Um, no doubt that the that's race. A, that's a decent chunk. It's a lot. It's a lot. And uh, and that's because Sarah True is just that good of a runner and was able to open the pace and then settle back in. And, and yeah, opened up the pace to close down the deficit yeah. and then has gone right back to, I mean, she's still running four 15-minute Ks and, and Sky has slowed. I mean, the, that was her slowest pace. Yeah. I, I think she had one really bad spot where she was upwards of almost five minutes per K in, in yeah. one segment. Uh, but her new level set is at, at four and a half. And so Sarah has just been able to, to hold true to that pace. Yeah. Um, it, having done the surge to, to shut her down and then gone right back to what has been her metronome-like pace since the start. You said Sarah holds true. Uh, yeah, pun I know. Um, but no, I yeah. meant to do that. <laughs> you I did. did. You definitely did. She... Uh, Amazing performance, and and to me, in hindsight, maybe one of my favorite parts of this battle was the fact that if we've hyped up this rivalry or contention, uh, we need to for drama to a certain extent. But Sarah True giving the thumbs up, giving encouragement in a genuine manner to uh, Sky Monch, who was out there because she knows it takes courage to sit in three minutes in front of somebody that's chasing you down for a marathon with all these out and backs. Uh, love to see that camaraderie uh, by the two American athletes. Uh, no bias there at all, but uh, Sarah True, true, true champion. Again, going uh, to the European Championships and taking it to them. Um, we, we thought maybe it was going to be these two athletes, uh, but surprised that there aren't a couple other names that were in that battle a little bit later. And surprised at the names that are still there, right? Like so much credit to, uh, to Yurzik 
and uh, Nielsen and Jansen still battling it out out there. And names that we might not have thought would be in that top three. Top oh, five. certainly Jursik and Jansen are names that I hadn't anticipated. I was optimistic for Sarah Svens. Yeah. Um, and optimistic for my stage. So I don't want to. I don't want to pat myself on the back, but a lot of the contenders that we thought would be there are absolutely there um, with the addition of some some new and exciting names that we didn't know about. For those uh, that can't see the studio, she's literally patted herself on the back I, right I, now. I'm just a little, <laughs> a little tricep stretch. Uh, it's awesome, but uh, no, such a great performance. And, and again, Didi, the names maybe that we didn't think we'd see, and then the fact that the race, I mean, we had seven athletes within 30 seconds or eight athletes within 30 seconds mile 80 of the bike ride and then separated two groups like a couple minutes apart well let's Such also talk race. about the number of athletes that held the lead for a period of time yeah. i mean some of them very very brief but uh, so many different names Eight? at the front of the uh, at the front of the race which yeah. is also really unusual in a race that it's it's world championship caliber it's a you know regional championship and it's a it's a very incredible field but almost every favorite um held the lead at some point yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, Clark, Nielsen, Svensk, Jurzik, Monch, True, yep. obviously. Yep. Uh, yeah, a bunch of a bunch of great athletes. Can't forget that uh, Lair Rider uh, was in the lead as well, pushing the pace and uh, succumbed to uh, looks like sickness or just kind of overexertion there uh, to a certain extent. But uh, it came down to the cream rising to the top, yep. and 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 this go, it's it's Sarah True, and um, again, she's coming up on that section of the course yep. that she just literally did not see the last time, and yes. uh, this is a section where things got a little bit scary right. calling her, and uh, the, to me, it was the toughness that day that, like, you would see her fade, and then as soon as she had a moment of, I can't call it clarity, because nothing was clear, she started running as fast was, as yeah, she could. Run again, run again, yeah. It's yeah. just so and, gutsy. And, and again, <laughs> I think looking back on that with the gap that she had, had she power walked a little bit. Again, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Oh, and that's what we were yelling on screen yeah. was like, somebody tell just her. Just stop trying to run. Just walk it in. You'll be fine. Uh, but in the moment, um, you don't have the clearest head. But right now, I think she is very clear thinking. Uh, she has been clear thinking from the time the gun went off this morning. A very calculated effort here as we come back to uh, this is Laura Jansen and what a race she's having. Yeah, absolutely. And I think at this point we can't see, but it, I'm, I'm going to assume that she's moved herself into fourth, uh, fourth place. Fourth place. Uh, most likely it's possible just uh, fifth at this point, but she was pretty close to Sarah Svensk and uh, Maja Sage Nielsen. Uh, so I believe that's probably where she's at at this point, but having a fantastic race. Um, but Didi, thinking about Sarah True for a little bit, I'm looking back and in the last 12 months, Ironman 70.3 Eagleman win. Ironman Lake Placid win. Didn't finish Kona Sickness, Ironman Arizona win, Ironman European Championships win. There are not a lot of athletes and certainly no North American athletes of any gender that have won that many Ironmans in the last 12 months. And yet somehow... Underrated every time. She sails below the radar. And maybe it's because she doesn't have an enormous social media presence, right? She doesn't have time for it. She lets the racing talk for Yeah, her. I mean, she, she literally is an athlete that people, when she's not racing, people aren't necessarily talking about her, and she's 100% fine with she it. She loves it. She has way more important things to be doing in her life than, than things like that. I don't think she cares whether or not she's underrated um, going into a race as, as long as her racing speaks the way that it does. I think it gives her a tiny bit of motivation yeah. in the end. And Didi, so calling this race, she was still running off and on at this point. And where, and she's going to get the jersey up uh, so she can enjoy this last period. But to me, where it started to get scary was coming off of this bridge and you could like she almost like hit a pole on the way down and she was just sending it as much as she could so very different experience she's in the lead uh less of a gap than she had that physically time physically able to put her kit back up physically <laughs> able to put her kit back up she is going to probably have some smiles give some high fives is aware yes. there's no way she could have put a kit up 
no. in that in that case, right? No. So very different experience. So delighted to be able to uh, have the pleasure of uh, calling her kind of retake uh, the win that um, you know could have been hers. It was this woman on screens because she did everything right and was able to capitalize. And again, we've talked about that. That's what you do when there's an athlete maybe that's better than you. You put yourself in a position to, if they mess up royally, you, you come in and take the win. And that's what Sky did. And it bolstered her career to where it is today. But woman on screen right now, so impressive. And I can't get past the amount of Ironman wins that this woman has had in the last less than 12 months three Ironman wins, all with great fields. Uh, I mean, again, I think the motivation comes from the fact that she's got so many other great things going on uh, with her young family, uh, with her schooling, um, that she is saying, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna race, I'm gonna absolutely make it count. I'm not just going to, to your point, participate. I'm going to, to make a statement about where I'm at. And she chooses her races very carefully that they fit in to all the other things that yeah. she has going yeah. on, and she comes to perform and then goes right back to, 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 to life, which is so full in very many other ways. Totally, but what she doesn't avoid is competition because we're talking no. about this top American. Yeah. Who'd she beat at Lake Placid? Heather Jackson. Heather Jackson. Who'd she beat at Arizona? Sky, Sky Monch. Monch. And she's done it again yep. here, right? So uh, she's not afraid uh, to go against the best, and uh, she continues to put her best foot forward uh, as she get a close-up of uh, the, zip the zippering. Um, this is what you were all waiting for that's her getting her kit all the way back up and uh it's a zipper it's, it's so that's how they work compo <laughs> that is uh it's a it's Sorry. a clinic clinic put on uh yeah. by sarah true she goes through 41.2k uh so just the slightest bit of distance to go but again dd right about here is where she in is fact, where right there mm -hmm. yep within within a k to go uh she she just couldn't go anymore and uh the concern of those athletes and a staff around her, uh, you know, kept her off course and, uh, you know, kept her safe. And it was so hot that day. Yes. It was unbelievable. So uh, anyways, excited to see her move past that point. Uh, I kind of think I would say she probably would get emotional passing that point, but she doesn't remember it. Yeah. She doesn't remember the last five kilometers. No way she remembers that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I can't be happier to see an athlete, let alone Sarah, any athlete overcome that to me is inspirational uh, as she goes through, or sorry, Sky goes through that checkpoint. Two, two minutes, minutes, 10. Two minutes, 10 down. At that point, not surprising. She's just she's just getting to the finish line. Yeah. She knows she's not catching Sarah True, so uh, she's going to get herself to that finish line and, um, you know, be proud, I hope, of uh, the effort she put in today. And again, with all those changes, I, I could not be more impressed by Sky Monch than I was today. Uh, again, Sky also very calculated in her application of effort across this race. She was very patient through the first half of the bike. Uh, when Sarah, they caught up to Sarah and Sarah was part of that pack, I think Sky was one of the aggressors in, in trying to separate that pack out um, and then did what she needed to do on the marathon to give herself a chance. Um, she's also, we can see visibly doing things in her training, has made changes, obviously a coaching change, but making some changes in in her run form, in in how she attacks the marathon, that that are going to pay dividends later in the season. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I think uh, you know she should have more confidence going into the World Championship season. Um, you know, she she has a lot of conf confidence in her ability to withstand the heat, and she's got some time to try to continue to work on the things that have impressed us today uh, with her run and uh, you know her pacing and just the way she was able to execute today. But Sarah True putting that hat up, making sure people can see her eyes as she's coming through here, D. She's getting near that finish shoot. Ah, uh, there's the smile. There's the smile. I hope she takes extra special time to uh, enjoy look at this, this, given the, I mean, look at this finish line. Come this is why on. the athletes come here. Come look, on. I mean, that's, I hate to say it, that rivals the finish line at a world championship event. It oh, might absolutely. even surpass it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing to see all these spectators and triathlon fans, as you said, triathlon is huge in Germany and uh, certainly here at the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. Uh, they are so pumped to watch these athletes succeed and get across the finish line. Big smile for Sarah True. She will be your Minova Ironman European Champion, Sarah True. There's that smile. 
Oh man, that's uh, we're getting used to seeing her hold a banner over yeah. her head, Didi. And uh, taking an, taking an extra second to read that one to be like, okay, Frankfurt, and I'm holding the banner. To Check. me, that to me that means a little like that little fist pump. Yeah. That's more than an athlete to yeah. me jumping up and down. That's like, yeah. okay, we did it. We did the work. I executed uh, some confidence coming from that. Sarah True, everybody. Just the quiet confidence, all business, uh, comes in, gets the job done. Not a lot of fanfare, doesn't, doesn't expect a lot, just comes in, does the job and goes home. Here we have uh, the unofficial run split presented by the Wahoo Element rival. Uh, 257 23, yeah. you had said all along, on pace for about a 256, so slightly higher than that, but what a performance for Sarah True. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, she was able to, to be consistent over that marathon, enjoy that last little bit. She's looking around for people to enjoy this with. Uh, we did see uh, our CEO Andrew Messick in the background, uh, giving her um, some encouragement and uh, applause, no doubt, as we see uh, Sky Mach uh, with the hat on. Uh, getting to that finish line, you can tell she's put herself to the edge. Yeah. And she's going to be right in that, you know, 301, 302 zone, getting a high five from uh, the bike that escorted her for just the last little section. Uh, you traded places as that second place female, but she's still smiling. You know, I, I feel like in some ways, something else to her approach has changed because it seems to me that she had more fun today, too. It did seem like right? she was sort of taking it all in, engaging with the crowd a little bit, uh, having a bit more fun as she makes her way uh, towards the right uh, column there, make her way to the finish line uh, around an age group athlete who's heading out for another lap, but engaging with the crowd, high-fiving. She, she made Sarah True win, and you know yeah. ultimately Sarah did, but she, she, took she forced it. She, you know, she put herself out there and gave herself the chance and, and made Sarah beat her, and, and Sarah was able to rise to the challenge. She certainly did, and in that interview, she said that she was doing it for the experience and wanted to enjoy it, and often athletes are kind of shining it on a little bit when they say that. We now know, watching her through this race, she was genuine, and look, do you, do you think she's enjoying this yeah. experience? As she's going to take something away, even though she didn't get that win, she's going to learn a lot from this race here. And uh, amazing, amazing performance today, and so impressed uh, by your second place finisher at the Minova Ironman European Championships in Frankfurt, Sky Monch. <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> Trying to read lips, I can tell. Uh, they're both stoked. I love it. Super positive racing from these two women. Yeah, just leading examples of, of professionalism in sport and uh, great for Sky to acknowledge just how unbelievable Sarah was. Um, Sky put the pressure on her. Um, Sarah tried to attack early in the marathon, got the lead down to 214, and it plateaued right in, in and around that 210 to 220 for several kilometers, and it was later on when Sarah said, it's now or never, and uh, boy, did she get it done. Oh, she absolutely did, and uh, in the end, winning by two and a half minutes after trailing for about two and a half minutes for a majority of that marathon, and it looks like it stalled, and, and more, you know, credit to Sky for, she's the reason that gap stayed the same. She, she was trying to yep. play that poker match early and have Sarah maybe give up, and then I think it was almost a death rattle where Sarah really push that effort and say, okay, I got to see if I can close this. And um, you can see definitely took some effort for Sarah to do that today. She's definitely a, a little bit tired as we see. She's starting to get a smile on her face, our third place athlete, one of the races of the day. And that is Yurzik coming in and she's 749 back at 41.2K and she has to be pumped with this result. I would imagine that this was not what she had imagined her day <laughs> would end up being. Um, certainly you go in with hopes and expectations on how you want to execute the race, but so much of it you're at the the mercy of your other competitors for them to execute or not. And certainly a lot of athletes open the door and um, uh, Jersik was happy to walk right through it. She has put together a fantastic race, uh, kept herself out of trouble on the bike, uh, was in great company on the bike and just got off on two feet and said, I'm going to run my best marathon. And this is, I believe, going to be a marathon PR for her. 
Yeah, and I would say she she was really smart on the bike. We never she might have been one that never actually got to the lead. Yes. Right. She she was like, like who's that kit that's always kind of around, <laughs> right? Because um, we're not used to seeing it. But she played it very very smart. Didn't waste any energy because she knew she needed it for the marathon again. She was in that lead group. There's no reason to be in the front of the lead group, especially if you don't have uh, the palmares of a lot of the athletes sure. around. But, uh, I mean, if you told her she was going to get on the podium uh, two months out, she would have signed that signed that check pretty quick. I mean, this is a, a amazing breakthrough performance uh, for this athlete. Oh, absolutely. And she, she only came up to full distance racing in, in 2019. Uh, with one full, two full distance races in 2019, her best being um, a fifth place finish there at Ironman Western Australia. Uh, she entered a very competitive field uh, at Ironman Israel at the end of last year and finished a very respectable seventh place. Uh, but to catapult yourself onto the podium uh, at a regional championship, I think is absolutely extraordinary. Oh, absolutely. Uh, amazing, amazing performance from her. And the woman on screen there, uh, you can tell it means something uh, to Sarah True. Uh, definitely a special finish for her after not being able to cross that finish line a few years ago. Uh, again, I think that little fist pump uh, says a lot as a competitor. I think we all know what where that comes from. And uh, amazing, amazing performance uh, from our champion, Sarah True. I would say a, a very understated celebration for the magnitude of that win and what she overcame to to be here and and to to be your winner here today totally but that's an exuberant sarah tree yeah <laughs> that's as much as you're ever going to get out of sarah because there, there's humility involved right yeah. and like perspective she's like okay yeah. that was good let's when's the next one yeah. right that's uh that's the attitude you need you know this is an athlete that worked on four-year cycles in the olympics right like sure. things have to stay smooth and yeah. steady uh, for you to manage that but uh, another athlete that was kind of on that cycle as well coming through here kind of in a, a discipline that's uh certainly a lot different uh, she's getting hyped up by uh that cyclist as well she's starting to get that smile and to realize uh, that she's going to get on the podium yeah. of the european championships that's pretty heavy Frankfurt. stuff dude that's crazy yeah. that's a that's a career changer uh for an athlete like this no doubt and a kona spot yep. um a, amazing amazing result uh by this young woman yeah, forget the fact that there's four on offer here. Um, she is very safely and deservedly yeah. uh, going to earn herself uh, the opportunity to race the best in the world uh, in Hawaii in October. And she's soaking up yeah. this finish line, and I don't blame her one bit. Uh, what a great experience it must be coming down this finish line. Listen to her uh, as she, uh, she, she, she yells back at the competitor, yeah. the spectators uh, calling her across the stage. Go. You got the pom poms out too. Yeah, it was a name we did not know well at the start of the day, but certainly a name we will not forget and look for in our races to come. What a performance! <laughs> man, man, these women are so awesome. They're so supportive of each other, and uh, everybody is uh, impressed with each other's performances. Look at that, Sarah, uh, congratulating her on a podium at a championship race. <laughs> Let's listen in. Yeah, I heard so happy and oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Look at that. Uh, just seven minutes. And that is an absolute thousand watt smile. Yeah. The third place finisher, but the biggest smile we've seen so far. Eight minutes between that podium uh, when all is said and done. Those run splits 257 23, 303 02 for Sky and a 305.14 uh, for Yerzik. That is a very, very impressive run from her. And then just a few minutes to go, we're gonna have uh, some interviews with these three athletes, uh, then a podium performance, but also we're gonna see Lori Jansen coming yeah. across that finish line. Uh, she's gonna be just over three hours uh, with her run performance, but as that first German, uh, that's going to be something to see. Yeah, sure. that stadium, they're going to they're gonna bring down the house uh, when they welcome the first uh, professional female German into the stadium. And uh, our podium ladies uh, showing the same respect uh, to their host country and waiting to welcome in uh, young Laura Jensen as well. 
Yeah, and uh, and Didi again. She looks just as she good as just as good as she did uh, when she started this this marathon. And again, she managed it like a like a veteran. Yeah, you know, watching her pace herself evenly, uh, running strong and proud, uh, never really overextending herself, um, but also being smart about you know going into that uh, special needs and, and making sure uh, she got everything that she uh, she needed to to accomplish this marathon in a consistent manner. You're watching the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt, brought to you by Breitleg. Aspire for the ultimate finish line reward. And by Hyperice, made to move. You can almost read the thoughts of, uh, of young Laura Jansen now saying, well, this is my first Ironman, and shoot, I think I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> it's one of those realizations you... Uh, uh, you, you like to find your talents and, and thrive in things that you're good at, but when you realize that one of those things hurts as much as an <laughs> Iron Man does, it can be a sobering realization. <laughs> it certainly can be. I think, uh, yeah, that's, that's hilarious. I think she's going to be pretty excited about it, though. Um, certainly uh, first go out to be top German and getting that Kona spot is, uh, is impressive and uh, it just looks so smooth and composed uh, the entire day. Uh, thoroughly impressed uh, by this uh, young lady, Lauren, Lauren Jansen, having a fantastic uh, race throughout, but marathon. Uh, again, and to, to have said to her uh, when you're lining up against names like Daniela Blamal, um, certainly that you will be the top German at the end of this day, I think she would be like, nah, no. Nah. No, that's not right. <laughs> no. Yeah, she would have. Uh, she would have signed up for that, uh, no doubt, no hesitation whatsoever. And uh, just as we said for uh, Yurzik, uh, a, a career a changer for sure yes. for this athlete, even if it's just off of self confidence. But I do think uh, the sponsors will pay attention. She'll get a little bit uh, more excitement going into that world championship, and uh, you know, certainly an athlete that has a strong, strong future in the sport of Ironman triathlon. What a moment for her as she leans to the left to try to get past some of those age group athletes and move herself into position uh, to take that left-hand turn into the finish line stadium. What a celebration. This crowd's going to go nuts. Oh, they absolutely are. Again, that first German, super, super important, uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, someone that actually, you know, is a rookie performance um, and uh, a young athlete uh, trying to do uh, her best to make a name for herself in the sport. And let's just take it down to the ambient sounds at the finish line to hear this crowd erupt for your first professional female German athlete across the line. just happened i know that's what she's she's thinking. looking around she's like did, did i do that right is that is that, <laughs> is that it uh unbelievable performance uh by this rookie uh certainly no doubt she has a, a strong future in the sport and uh what a marathon performance 303 56 uh for laura jansen uh puts her into fourth place at this ironman european championship she looks shocked she really does what do I do now? I know she's like now I gotta I gotta uh, book tickets to Kona. I wasn't really thinking about that. Right? right there, there goes your second qualifying slot, right? To to Laura Jansen. Amazing work, and it looks like we'll probably have uh, Maya Stage Nielsen uh, coming through in fifth place, and uh, Maya and Sarah Svensk holding strong, holding on to those two positions, uh, fifth and sixth place. Uh, some of our uh, athletes that were pushing that pace early on the bike ride, um, and uh, sorry, late on the bike ride and early on the run. Yeah, Maya Stage all, uh, already has the Kona qualifying slot, but uh, Sarah 
Sphinx uh, will pick one up. Uh, so she was in need, and our third qualifying slot on offer will likely, uh, barring catastrophe in the closing kilometer, uh, go to Sarah Sphinx. Too awesome, too awesome. Great performances, and, and you get a surprised to. I was surprised by so many athletes in this top six, right? Not that I ever doubted any, but again, many different names. We think when there's different names and they look a certain way at the start of the run, maybe they're not going to hold on, but uh, some impressive performances. The woman on screen on the right hand side of the screen, uh, you know, was able to, to hold on for that podium. Impressed by that. Sky Monch obviously making changes. Uh, here's her coming across the finish line. So impressed uh, by this woman today in how she raced uh, tactically. Uh, overcame a swim that maybe had a b gap bigger than she wanted. Um, her attitude, having fun, uh, yeah. smiling, enjoying the process, and then clearly showing the work that she's done in the off season to kind of put everything we said to rest about the fact that she's got a rev limiter. She's like, no, I'm, I took that thing off this off season. <laughs> it wasn't and, helping me. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't helping me. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to get there. She ended up running uh, what we thought she might. But, um, man, she's, she's put in the work and uh, so impressed uh, by Sky Monch. Yeah, I think I, I'm trying to read lips there as to what she said to Sarah True at the finish line, but I, I, I think I made out I'm so impressed. So uh, <laughs> we all are uh, by all of these amazing women's yeah. performances here today, uh, from some new and fresh faces to uh, some, some veterans uh, who have been not only around the block a few times, but uh, certainly on this course a few times uh, and are continuing to, to write the history of our sport. No, absolutely. And uh, it's great to see uh, some new names like uh, the woman we're watching across uh, that finish line again. Uh, you know, she's definitely one for the future, as is uh, Laura Jansen. Very, very cool. And there's our podium finishers. Uh, they're going to we're going to get an opportunity to chat to them here in just a few uh, moments. And uh, I think we're getting pretty close uh, to chat with our women's champion. And that is Sarah True. You know, we'll take it down to the Hyper Ice Recovery Zones for some post-race interviews. This is where we have guessed what's been going on, but we'll hear it from the athletes themselves. Our champion, Sarah True. Oh, my goodness, Sarah. Balancing being a mom, having a family, finishing your studies, and winning the Ironman European Championship. You know, triathletes are multitaskers. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, no, it's... um. I, I've gone into this with uh, reduced expectations, shall we say. You know, I, I love the sport. I'm so happy to compete, but I'm not, I, it, I didn't come in expecting to win and I am just so happy right now. <laughs> let's, let's think of your feelings now compared to how you felt the last time you were in Frankfurt. Uh, about this time I was in the medical tent, so yeah. Always nice to finish a race versus not finishing a race. I mean, if we're gonna make it that that basic, uh, but yeah, of course, I'm I'm much happier with this race than the last time I was in Frankfurt. I know in a fighting chance, you said it, you weren't here specifically for redemption, but what a way to come back to Frankfurt. Yeah, you know, I think uh, both both Sky and I, you know, really wanted this race quite badly. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't. A goal of mine to necessarily win, but I, I wanted to have a good race here, um, and yeah, winning, winning's always nice. It doesn't get any better than winning your minor over Ironman Frankfurt European champion from the USA, Sarah True. Congratulations! Thank you so much. We're going to let you go and freshen up. We're going to get our second place. Sky Manch is going to join us now in the hot seat. Thank you so much. Sky Manch was uh, doing a lot of work on the bike, a longtime leader on the marathon as well, where she was flying human. Did you fly, Sky Manch? What a race! I mean. <laughs> You know, you, you were very tactical on the bike. I was watching, that was very, very cleverly done. You made that move. You were in the front for so long though on the run as well. Yeah, I mean, I executed the race in the way that I thought I could win the race. So that meant breaking away from that pack on the bike. Um, you know, when you get in a pack like that, a lot of times no one wants to work. So I thought I would exploit that. And yeah. if I could get away and maybe get a couple other girls to go with me, then I thought we could put in some time. And I honestly wasn't sure if anyone came with me for a while. And I was like, well, and I wasn't even sure I was breaking away. But then uh, it turns out we did put some good time in. And um, yeah, I, I knew Sarah would be a big threat on the run. So 
When I heard three minutes, I thought, okay, if I have a great run, I'm going to make her have the run of her life to beat me. Um, and I was having a decent run. And then, um, yeah, on the third lap, I really had a rough patch. And then I was kind of like, okay, let's just get to the finish line. I mean, not that I gave up, but I kind of, I did not feel good. And I thought, well, this will be hilarious if I don't make it to the finish line this year. So, um, excuse me. Anyway, um, Sarah's a great runner and, you know, I, she caught me and I was happy to hold on to second. So yeah, I, I executed the best I could and proud of the effort, proud that, proud that we got away on the bike and, you know, did what, did what I could. Yeah. You know, you've, you've had the win year before. Yeah. The crowds are incredible. I mean, I would imagine that win and the crowds and the support is one of the things that brought you back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Frankfurt and Europe kind of in general, they love triathlon. Uh, it's just way bigger over here compared to the U.S. So it's a great experience to come over and man that run like you're never alone you're never not being cheered for um it's just so engaging and so fun and i certainly felt the boost especially coming down here and you you commentating hearing my name uh yeah i got a huge boost and definitely ran like my fastest k's on that section i think so yeah well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Second place in the mine over Ironman Frankfurt European Championship for the USA Sky Monch. Congratulations. Thank you for your time. We know you want to grab something to drink. We're going to get Agnieszka from Poland to join us now. If you can manage those legs, I know are hurting. But a brilliant third place from Agnieszka Jerczyk. Wow. Agnieszka, watching you come down the finish line. You, you were celebrating like you had won the Minova Ironman Frankfurt European Championship. Yeah, it's true. Um, I come here only to take a slot and I take a podium too. Uh, two dreams in one uh, race is incredible. Yeah, my two, uh, re two years uh, was very um, hard and I... Uh, can uh, uh, come back on the high level and uh, I think uh, this day is is day when I, I'm back. <laughs> you are back without any doubt. It was a strong, consistent bike, but that run, you were destroying everybody. Yeah, it's true on the bike. Uh, I uh, When I push harder, I feel a cramp and uh, I think still big claim, Agnieszka big claim, and uh, I give uh, everything what I have in my leg on the run. I was concentration and I uh, say on my watch and, uh, um, and, and I run in my plane. You did an incredible job. It was wonderful to see your finish line celebration. Gratulacje on your third place at the European Championship and your slot to the Vinfast Ironman World Championship. Third from Poland, Agnieszka Jerzyk. You're watching the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt. Brought to you by Vinfast, Boundless Together, and by Athletic Brewing. Brew without compromise. Didi, amazing podium we had, and then just such gracious uh, interviews and, and words from those three women. I have to say, I'm also equally impressed with the English skills yeah. of so many of our foreign athletes. Uh, I think if I were to travel to a foreign country and be interviewed in their native language, I would be, be I mean, obviously English is not the native language to Germany, but yeah. my point being their English skills and to conduct a, an articulate interview in that manner uh, down there in the hyper ice recovery zone is super impressive as we take a look at uh, Sarah Svensk, uh, um, getting some hyper ice recovery in there, chatting up uh, battle stories with Sky, uh, and as it will go on into the evening. Yeah, absolutely. They're definitely going to be uh, trading stories uh, for sure. And uh, Sarah Spensk ends up uh, actually coming across in sixth place with uh, Maya Stage Nielsen uh, getting that fifth place spot. Uh, and just coming across in seventh was uh, Konskela. Uh, so that's your top seven uh, at this point, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. So uh, amazing performance uh, by all our women in the, that top uh, seven, and uh, certainly that podium that we just uh, got, to, got to listen to. What surprised you the most out of those three interviews, Didi? Um, 
I, I think th- what surprised me most is just the performance of uh, Jursic on the day. Yep. Yep. Um, and I think that is probably one of the lasting impressions, a, a new name to watch in the future. It's certainly that of Laura Jansen as well. Uh, both of those women earning their Kona qualifying slots, Sarah Svensk, uh, and then Konskala in seventh place uh, will take the fourth one. Um, it will be offered to her whether or not they elect to take it, uh, then it will roll down. But um, yeah, I think just the performance of uh, Jursik overall uh, on a big stage, just not folding to the pressure and having the poise and wherewithal to say, I, I'm staying in my own lane. I, I'm looking at my watch. I'm not getting sucked into the performances from these other people. And Didi, uh, you know, when you're getting cramps on the bike yeah. and you're able to to manage that yes. and to find your way through that, that and, and then have a, a great breakthrough run, that is much easier said than done. And, uh, you know, that's... That's something that comes with experience uh, for someone uh, beyond her years, that's for sure. And, and I think, too, the, the, the thoughtfulness of Sarah True saying, I, I came to this race wanting to execute a good race. I wasn't necessarily thinking about the win and sort of what I'm going to insert as the add on comment. She doesn't need the win. She has so many fulfilling things in her life um, that the opportunity to continue to get to race as she juggles all of these other amazing things. uh, The fact that she can still come away with the wind is also incredible uh, given all of the demands on her time. Yeah. And and is there something to that? And and again, I agree. And I, I love her attitude, but is there a certain way that, or aspect of there being just, she's basically said she didn't have any pressure. Was she wasn't expecting to win? She wasn't necessarily trying to win. Does that kind of give you a, a, a leg up on your competition when you just go in like genuinely just wanting to be out there? Yeah, I think you go in certainly with less pressure, but I don't think Sky necessarily had pressure. She right. had a Kona slot. She's you know, well on her way to focusing on world championship season. Um, so the pressures in that regard, I think from, from both of them, yes, I think they both wanted to win. Um, right. and, but I think again, the balance that Sarah has in her life that had she been second or fourth or 16th would go home and life would pretty much be just like it would had the right. result been different. Totally. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Uh, very well said. Uh, you know, life will be the same when she goes home. She's going to have yep. a little bit more money in her pocket when yeah. that European championship. That'll have an effect for sure and maybe take uh, some stress off of uh, uh, some other things uh, in life in general as uh, having a family and a, a young child certainly isn't cheap. So and traveling across uh, the world to, to race triathlon ain't either. So uh, certainly something these athletes uh, appreciate and, and going to give her confidence uh, going into world championship season. And just a little bit of sights and sounds from out on the course. This wonderful German crowd providing entertainment both to athletes and spectators alike. One of the reasons we love this race course here in Frankfurt. Yeah, uh, so much, uh, you know, joy and personality in in these fans and uh, volunteers and uh, yeah, spectators out here and. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to argue whether or not they love their triathlon here, seeing that finish line and the support <laughs> that's out here. Absolutely. And as we wait for our podium celebration and the presentation of the flowers, we have Rebecca Clark uh, across the line in eighth place now, 25 minutes and 50 seconds back. Uh, great performance from her today. Faded a little bit in the marathon. Didn't have that marathon uh, performance. Certainly she was hoping for, uh, but a learning lesson. Nevertheless, I think anytime you have a race that didn't go according to plan, uh, you learn more from it. And certainly right. not a, a performance to be disappointed with. What a great swim from Rebecca Clark, which we're used to seeing and um, uh, really hung in there on the bike, just faded a little bit on the marathon. And she will take some uh, experience from that and apply it uh, towards her world championship perf- pursuits in October. We will see her out in Hawaii as well. Absolutely. Yeah, no, she she put herself out there. And I think that's, that's part of what these athletes are, uh, you know, looking for looking for right and and they're trying to see how deep they can go in case they need to in a world championship you know against the best in the sport and Didi I'm just kind of looking through to see where our early leader went and I don't see her she's not in any of uh, the results through uh you know 20k of the marathon so uh, she's either out there on a long walk or uh did not uh finish the race today yep unfortunately as we welcome uh, DeBoer across the line from the Netherlands, she will be 
a part of your top 10, finishing in ninth place. So congratulations to her. Busy, uh, busy finish line there all of a sudden. Yep. Uh, uh, they're all kind of And here comes out. Groman. Yeah, uh, Katarina Groman across uh, rounding out your top 10. So pretty competitive uh, there yeah. for uh, eighth, ninth, and, and 10th place. All of those women stacked up uh, pretty tightly as well. And we did end up with three Germans in the top 10. So definitely representing uh, the home country race. Uh, Two Americans on top, but three Germans in the top ten. I think they'll they'll take that one. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and might might have thoughts of what might have been had some of their giants not yep. stumbled uh, earlier in the race, but uh, will be a lot of pride nevertheless. And this party down at the finish line, I'm telling you, is just getting started. As as impressive as those crowds look, um, it's only going to get better from here as we welcome finishers across the finish line into the night. Yeah, indeed, he's such a perfect day uh, for the racers and the spectators. Uh, yeah. They're able to be out there not suffering uh, in that scorching heat that we've seen out here before and uh, certainly enjoying, as we see uh, some of our male uh, amateur competitors coming across uh, the finish line, enjoying uh, that that crowd and that finish line just as much uh, as our female pros that had, had crossed earlier. And no doubt these men coming across this early are going to get spots uh, to the World Championship in Nice, which I'm sure yes. they're pretty excited about just down the road. So uh, easy access uh, for them and to try a different course for a World Championship. I was going to say, I think for a lot of particularly the European athletes oh, yeah. are extremely excited. Uh, a lot closer uh, trip family that might not have gone to Hawaii otherwise will be able to come and support in Nice. So um, it's going to be an exciting race there. So a lot of our age group male competitors in pursuits of those slots. We're going to come back for our podium celebration in just a minute. Don't go away. We'll be Check this out. This is Venom Go by Hyperice. You stick this pod on this pad and boom, instant relief wherever you need it. With nine different variations of heat and vibration, you can soothe your sore muscles instantly. The tight spot on your neck, that little knot on your back, that shoulder that always bugs you and your tight calf after a ride, say bye-bye to the pain and soreness. Heating up six times faster than any other heating pad. Ooh, that's hot. It's designed to get you out and moving. What are you waiting for? And we are back at the Minova Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. We've seen the top 10 women cross the finish line. Now we're seeing some of our age group competitors cross that finish line as well. And uh, same vibes, uh, regardless whether or not you're a professional or one of our elite uh, amateurs coming across the finish line. In, you just want to sit time. down. <laughs> yeah, you want to sit down. Uh, you want to enjoy this this athlete walking across that finish line, making sure they soak it up as much as they possibly can. And it, it, it means something. Little f fist pump there for bib number 1498, being welcomed to the finish line. High five from race organizers. Uh, that coveted finisher medal. Yeah, absolutely. Well-deserved out here for sure. Um, no doubt these athletes uh, deserve the accolades and, uh, you know, a rest. Uh, standing still for a little bit sounds pretty nice, I'm sure, for all these athletes. As we have another one of our amateurs coming through. I believe that's 423. Getting across that finish line, looking strong, doing so. Um, getting welcomed in by one of his competitors. Yeah, it looks like those two might have shared a moment out there on the course, and so he's waiting uh, to congratulate. And that's the, that's the great thing. Uh, these athletes, friendships made out on the course, uh, bonds established in, in the suffering together and the celebration of victory, even people from different countries. Uh, as we're going to go down to our hyper ice recovery zone for our podium presentation with our women's professional podium. Yeah, just like those age group uh, men, the women definitely shared some experiences yes. out there as well. They're going to share uh, this podium experience here also. And uh, just here in a few moments, we'll get down to the Athletic Brewing podium presentation. 
All right, we're going to see Sarah True. She's got her energy back. She's got yeah. that head bob, the sass that we're uh, used to seeing uh, from Sarah True. Uh, Sky Monch still giving her a little pat on the back uh, as the athletes are getting ready uh, to get their athletic brewing on and uh, get up on those steps. Uh, it's, you know, we'll see how much help they need. That was a long day. Uh, some of those steps can feel a little, a little taller after uh, an Ironman finish, but we will see them uh, get on them soon enough. Absolutely, organizers just getting things settled down there and uh, athletes getting ready. The longer they sit, uh, I want to encourage Sky to stand up. The longer you sit, the harder that step is up on to that podium. So um, all of our athletes here uh, sharing some war stories from the day on how things all went down and we are getting ready to celebrate our top three female finishers. Uh, some familiar names and some new faces of the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we see, uh, you know, the athlete on the right hand side of the screen, definitely one of our newcomers and uh, your Zick having a breakthrough performance, no doubt. And as she said, she feels like she's back uh, after a few years of struggle. Um, a lot of athletes go through this. She gets that uh, blanket off. So I think that means we're going to head down to the athletic brewing podium presentation here with your Zick. Auf dem zweiten Platz, in second place, breaking the nine-hour mark here in Frankfurt, in 8.50, 7.30 from the United States, Sky Mensch! <laughs> and what a Frankfurt comeback! You might want to call it a Cinderella story after collapsing two years ago, 700 meters from the finish line. She's bringing it home in style. Your 2023 Amain over Ironman European champion in eight hour, hours, 54-53. From the United States, Sarah True. some fun down there Didi. I think they're wanting to uh, they enjoyed a, a couple of sips of their athletic brew there and I uh, didn't want to wear them but celebrated uh, by launching them into the air simultaneously <laughs> I think that's great sportsmanship well uh, from our top three women and well coordinated that no one wanted to be wearing the athletic brew uh, as they made their way uh, back towards their accommodations here to get themselves cleaned up uh, and prepared for the party that will go on all night long yeah no absolutely I think uh, Sir Chu pretty excited about that athletic brewing and it uh, looks like she's going to keep that <laughs> oh, glass. She, she was, she was drinking excited. it very enthusiastically yeah. and uh, I it's think was going to take that extra athletic brewing home with her to enjoy later on with her feet up. Uh, for sure. Uh, Didi, what a, what a great race today uh, from start to finish. I mean, drama in the swim, we don't see that very often, but so many different things that made this race so exciting. Well, let's take a look back at how it all started this morning and what got us to our finish line celebration here later this afternoon. Yeah, Didi, it started a long, long time ago <laughs> on that uh, little entrance. We saw Lauren Brandon on the far right side of the screen, and uh, she started with some fast strokes, never looked back, uh, maybe once uh, after that Australian exit, but uh, she got a gap early, uh, taking uh, with her uh, Beck Clark and uh, our eventual winner, Sarah True. 
Yeah, very impressive swims from Rebecca Clark. Uh, certainly Lauren Brandon is a familiar face, but there was some drama further back in our women's field as Maya Stajic Nielsen and the group she was with got lost in the swim. Uh, that sun glare you can see uh, just made those buoys really difficult to see. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's harder than it looks, especially when you're down at a swimming level, as we see Lauren Brandon got out of the water first. Uh, this is the exit uh, at the end of the swim, and they didn't even have to look back. You see no one in sight from these athletes, and all said and done, six and a half minutes uh, to that next uh, chase group, and it was Beck Clark first to the bike. Beck Clark first to the bike. Lauren Brandon not far behind. What was surprising, Sarah True giving up a minute and 10 seconds in the opening handful of kilometers we thought maybe something was was off but uh yep. nope uh there was some bumps along the way some bottles launched yeah and uh you know no harm no foul on that and we saw sarah true uh do the same but the, the graveyard of bottles it really was there's probably some <laughs> collections down there but it was that chase group that really uh was getting after it uh driven uh for a lot of it by Carolyn uh, Lefreeder and Maja Sage Nielsen uh, really pushing that pace to try to close that six and a half minute gap that they had out of the swim. And it was through the first loop of the bike that the women really converged. And we saw some emotion uh, here from Carolyn Lechreiter wanting some help, wanting the women to pull through. And as they made their way back into town, that lead group that had been a couple followed by a solo Sarah True all yep. came together and it was a very dynamic second half of the bike. It sure was, but then off the bike, it was a move from Sky Monch that separated things. So it was three athletes, including her, Carolyn uh, Leifreiter, and uh, Rebecca Clark uh, that were able to stay in the, sorry, uh, Sarah Svensk uh, were able to stay in the front. And then early on, it was Sarah True moving up to the shoulder of Sarah Svensk to put herself in that podium position, uh, passing uh, Lay Reader right before Lay Reader eventually uh, pulled out of the race. Yeah, Lay Reader, unfortunately, with what looked to be some stomach issues, perhaps some exhaustion, uh, and then it left it to Sky Munch, who continued her drive towards the championship title, but, not to be had, Sarah True had other thoughts in mind. She certainly did, Didi, and with uh, about a 10, 12K to go, she made a huge move, pulling two minutes down to a minute, then a minute to, to catching uh, our previous leader, Sky Monge, and then it was Sarah True staying consistent and steady, surprised maybe even to herself, uh, getting across that finish line first. And a long delayed celebration that might have happened several years ago, <laughs> but better late than never for Sarah True and Sky Munch holding on valiantly for a very strong second place finish. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it was uh, it was clear that she made some changes and some improvements, uh, but it was uh, this athlete on screen that was maybe one of uh, the most impressive athletes of the day, having a consistent race and a great run to finish it out. Yeah, absolutely. Rounding out our podium and earning herself a trip to the Ironman World Championship in October. Yeah, Yurzik had a fantastic race today, Didi. Uh, so impressed, and we could talk about uh, this race uh, for a long time with kind of the ups and downs, and uh, great to see uh, those pictures and visuals uh, from today, kind of how that race developed. But uh, certainly, we wouldn't have written it down how it ended up of uh, such a dynamic race with uh, different names that maybe we didn't expect. And as we take a look at our top 10 leaderboard uh, in 10th place out of Germany, Groman, uh, ninth place out of the Netherlands, De Boer. Yeah, then we had uh, Rebecca Clark in eighth, uh, Kunskala in seventh, uh, Sarah Spence holding on quite well uh, to finish in sixth place. Uh, one of our instigators, instigators early, Maya Stage Nielsen in fifth. And of course, then it was the, the newbie, uh, Lara Jensen, uh, with a surprise first German across the finish line, earning herself a trip to Kona in the process and the first German across the line. And then, of course, our podium. Yeah, absolutely fantastic result from those three. Yurzik, Monch, and True made it a battle to the very end, Didi. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for watching Ironman Now coverage of the Minova Ironman European Championship Frankfurt on the Ironman Facebook and YouTube channels, as well as Le Keep Live in France. Our next broadcast is on July 9th when we will bring you Ironman Switzerland Tune. Coverage of the professional men's race will begin at 6 a.m. Central European, 12 a.m. Eastern time. The broadcast will stream live on Ironman Facebook and YouTube channels and on the Keep Live. For Matt Lieto, I'm Didi Griesbauer. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the moments and images from today's race. <laughs>